Having to bear the deep hatred and vengeance to avenge his clan since a young age. Every day, Yep Shen had to punch tens of thousands of times to fight monsters, wrestle with tigers starved for three days, so that one day he could take revenge for his clan. Five years passed, Yep Shen with his supreme martial arts skills and powerful techniques, he returned to the city to carry out the mission assigned by his master. At this moment, a girl who was dialing her phone caught his attention. Hey beautiful, I see your fate line has darkened, today you will surely encounter great calamity. He solemnly said, it'd be better if you shed some blood to dispel the evil fate and prevent future disasters. The girl was surprised for a moment after hearing this, shed some blood? She rummaged through her bag, then breathed a sigh of relief when she saw she had brought sanitary pads with her. After that, she made a hand gesture to Yep Shen. You scoundrel, a bastard like you wants to hit on me? Those who want to have this old lady are still lining up in France. After the woman walked away, Yep Shen smiled bitterly. I kindly gave a reminder but got scolded instead. But thinking about it, this is not the Kunlun region after all. Everywhere here are just ordinary people, it's normal they don't believe. Yep Shen was born in Shanghai, his family of three was extremely happy and harmonious, but one day his father saved a little girl, offending a prominent figure from Beijing. A few days later, during a banquet, the entire Shen family was massacred, leaving only him barely surviving. Those who used to be allies of the clan also stood by watching the entire family being killed. Thinking of this, Yep Shen swore to himself, blood debts must be paid back thousandfold. At this moment, Yep Shen's body unintentionally emitted a fierce murderous aura, invisible pressure swept the ordinary people around. A while later, Yep Shen finally came to his senses, he quickly recalled the murderous aura. After everyone had recovered, they all felt dizzy. Yep Shen took this opportunity to leap up to the top of a building dozens of meters high. Not long after, Yep Shen arrived at the top company in Shanghai. In front of the gate of Wame Group's building, he swept around once, could this be the place master mentioned? Ha Ruo Shui of Wame Group in Shanghai, three days ago, Yep Shen's master broke the heavenly order, discovering that the niece of his old friend Ha Ruo Shui would encounter great calamity in the next 100 days, so he sent Yep Shen here to protect her. Thinking of this, Yep Shen pulled down his hat, preparing to enter the building. But as he approached the door, he was stopped by two security guards. Yep Shen smiled and said, is there someone named Ha Ruo Shui here? I have something to find her now. Hearing this, the security guard became annoyed. May I ask if you have an appointment? Those without business cannot enter. Yep Shen's expression changed slightly. I don't have an appointment but I really have a very important matter. If it's inconvenient, I can sit on the sofa and wait for her. But as soon as he finished speaking, the security guard grabbed Yep Shen's shoulder. Wait, where did this bastard come from? How can a poor wretch like you meet President Ha? Get out immediately. Yep Shen didn't expect the security guard to be so unreasonable. In an instant as he turned his head back, a surge of murderous aura emitted from Yep Shen's body, the two security guards immediately collapsed to the ground. After that, ignoring the shocked looks of everyone, he brazenly walked straight into the grand hall, then sat arrogantly on the sofa saying, call your manager here. At this time, the entire grand hall was silent. Everyone had their mouths wide open looking at this seemingly weak young man. But suddenly, hurried footsteps sounded, he looked back to see a group of armed security guards running over, they quickly surrounded Yep Shen. Then a man in a suit stepped out from the crowd. I'm the head of security here, sir, you're causing trouble here, don't you think about the consequences? Facing the man's warning, Yep Shen's gaze was icy cold, he coldly said, I'm looking for Ha Ruo Shui, I really have something important, don't stop me anymore. As the words ended, the man suddenly felt a chill down his spine, he felt as if he was facing a demon. Of course he was no ordinary person to be able to become captain, so he immediately changed his attitude. I'm sorry sir, President Ha is not here today, or you can leave your number, after President Ha returns, I'll pass it to her, is that okay? Yep Shen scratched his head helplessly, not here? Then there's no other way. When the man thought Yep Shen was about to leave, but a second later he saw Yep Shen sitting down on the sofa again. Anyway I'm free, I can sit here and wait, just ignore me everyone. The man was anxious, he thought, a dangerous person like this, in case he causes trouble here, I might lose my job. 
Thinking of this, the man yelled, waving his hand. Sorry then, everyone catch him for me. At the crucial moment, a cold voice rang out. Everyone stop for me. Hearing this, everyone stopped. A beautiful figure stepped out from the crowd. Her voluptuous curves under her office attire made her look like an unreachable goddess. Her appearance almost made everyone around lose their minds. She had a beauty unmatched by anyone in Wame group except the icy cold president Ha Ruoshui. When the woman approached, her eyes were fixed on Yep Shen, her gaze surprised and puzzled. She stood next to Yep Shen and smiled gently. Hello sir, I'm Sundi, may I ask how I can help you? Upon hearing this name, Yep Shen immediately stood up and looked at the girl in front of him, his eyes lit up. Sun Di was one of the names Yep Shen couldn't let go of in the past five years. He recalled the past, he had sat next to her for many school years, but after graduating due to differences in status they lost contact. Until his clan had an incident, everyone severed ties with the Yep family. The Yep family also became a target of criticism, scorned and beaten by all. The Tianjung group founded by his father was also seized, almost everyone was shrouded in the shadow of that man from Beijing. But Sun Di didn't care about her family's opposition, enduring fear and rumors, she alone buried his family members for him. Until now he still didn't understand how a weak girl like her could be so gutsy. How could Yep Shen bear her sacrifice? He didn't know how long passed, a voice pulled him back to reality. Sir, have you gotten too close to me? Yep Shen awkwardly smiled. I'm really sorry, you look very similar to someone I used to know, I was just distracted for a moment. Sun Di giggled. Sir, that pickup line is outdated. But to be honest, you really resemble a former classmate of mine. After speaking, Sun Di turned around and instructed the security guards around. If he wants to wait then let him wait here, don't make trouble anymore. At this time, as Yep Shen watched Sun Di's back, he whispered. Many years not seeing you, Sun Di you've matured now. It seems she doesn't recognize me. Then his eyes gradually turned cold. Now it seems I have to put aside Ha Ruizu's matter first. A few hours later, after Sun Di had instructed everyone, she went down to the parking lot. As she was about to drive away, looking in the rearview mirror she was scared to death. Yep Shen had somehow appeared in the back seat of her car. Sun Di suspiciously asked. When did you get in here? Weren't you waiting for someone? Yep Shen smiled lightly. The matters over there are unimportant, priority is here. The vague response made Sun Di even more confused, she asked him, what's your name? No matter what, I can't let a stranger get in my car. Yep Shen quickly replied, my name is Yep Shen. The reason why Yep Shen followed you into the car is because on Sun Di's forehead there is a black fog stain with blood, this is an omen that something big is about to happen. Yep Shen absolutely cannot let her suffer any harm. Not long after, the car drove into a luxurious building. Under everyone's gaze, Sun Di wore an elegant evening gown, slowly walked into the grand hall of the party, while Yep Shen following behind completely clashed. The two ignored the looks, they walked to a round table and prepared to sit down. At this time, some voices called out to Sun Di. She looked back, it was some lecherous men wanting to impress the beauty. Yep Shen of course had no interest in this kind of party. His eyes were always observing the surroundings. Soon many glasses of wine were brought in front of Sun Di, they gave all kinds of excuses to toast her. Seeing Sun Di's embarrassed look, Yep Shen directly came up to receive the wine glass. Let me drink a few glasses with you gentlemen in place of Sun Di, is that okay? These men clearly weren't good people, they looked displeased. Who the hell are you? When's it your turn to toast? Sun Di quickly waved her hand at Yep Shen. Drinking in place of someone isn't done like this. Leave this place to me. After speaking, Sundi raised the wine glass, her face showing a charming expression. I don't know how to drink, I can only handle one sip. I hope everyone understands, don't bully a small girl like me. As soon as she finished speaking, they were all infatuated by her appearance and charmed by her. But suddenly an unfriendly voice rang out. Miss Sun seems a bit excessive. An indecent man approached, his face full of arrogance. When Sun Di saw this man, she shuddered in fear, even trembling. It wasn't hard to find out from others' conversation. This man was named Jen Feng, from a family with considerable power. At this time, Jen Feng stood in front of Sun Di, he coldly said. Last time you left without saying goodbye, clearly you don't give me any face. 
Now you must drink this entire bottle to redeem your offense, you should know this is not an invitation, but an order. Sun Di's expression was a bit awkward, she recalled last time, she knew his wine wasn't normal, surely it was spiked, so she had offended him. She tried to appease. Master Jen, I really can't hold my liquor, just one glass will do, okay? Jen Feng snorted coldly, he looked at Sun Di fiercely. I've already booked the presidential suite upstairs, if you get drunk, just go up there and sleep it off. Hearing this, at this moment Sun Di felt regret for attending tonight's party. Encountering this scum would only bring disaster upon herself. She couldn't offend him, but if he put something in the wine, then surely tonight she wouldn't be able to leave this hotel. Seeing Sun Di hesitate to take the wine bottle, Jen Feng immediately changed expression. Who do you think you are? Don't pretend in front of me. Today no matter who's backing you, even if Ha Ruoshui comes, you still have to drink. At this moment, Sun Di stood there paralyzed, not daring to move, the corner of her eyes reddening. She came from an ordinary family, had dropped out of school early to step into society, with great difficulty climbed to department head. Although she always seemed superior in others' eyes, she knew compared to these young masters and nobles, she was nothing. Just as Sun Di felt hopeless, suddenly a hand appeared grabbing the wine bottle. Yep Shen's figure somehow blocked in front of Sun Di. Seeing this, Jen Feng was furious, just about to erupt in curses, but before he could utter a word, in his eyes he saw the wine bottle smash down on his head without warning. Before he could react, with a loud smack, the bottle powerfully struck his forehead. Jen Feng was in too much pain, kneeling on the ground clutching his head, screaming in agony. He raised his bloodied face staring at Yep Shen. Damn you, who the hell are you, daring to hit me? Not even my father has hit me before. Yep Shen coldly said. What are you? Daring to force her to drink? These words being uttered, everyone present felt it was outrageous. What was Jen Feng? He was the precious young master of the extremely wealthy Jen family in Shanghai, and the Jen family had prominent political figures in Shanghai. Most fearful was it was said the Jen family was protected by ancient martial artists. A thought arose in everyone's mind. This brat probably won't make it through the night alive. Sun Di was also extremely worried. Yep Shen was innocent, she secretly blamed herself for dragging him into this. Thinking of this, Sun Di hurriedly tried to salvage the situation. Sorry Master Jen, no matter how much wine tonight I will drink it all, please spare my friend this once. Jen Feng immediately slapped her across the face. You cheap whore, what right do you have to negotiate with me? You haven't even settled your own matters tonight, that brat is definitely dying. But a second later, Jen Feng's voice abruptly stopped. Yep Shen had kicked straight between his legs. The pain instantly shot up to his brain, his legs clamped together as he knelt on the ground, his face twisted horribly. At this time Yep Shen lifted his head and said in an icy cold tone, just now you said you wanted someone to die right? But before he could speak, Yep Shen slammed his head down onto the ground again. But at this moment, a stern voice rang out. Stop, release him to me. Very quickly a middle-aged man with a square face strode in, his face full of severity and anger. Following behind was an old man with a hunched back walking lightly. Glancing around the scene, Yep Shen noticed the old man. He was slightly surprised because a special aura billowed around him. He thought perhaps this was the ancient martial artist of the Hua family they spoke of? Seeing Jen Jungchuan arrive, Sun Di's heart was uneasy, she muttered. It's over, it's really over this time, how did Jen Jungchuan also come here? She had guessed the following scenes would surely be very tragic. She worriedly looked at Yep Shen, hesitating in her heart, was there any way to save Yep Shen? But Yep Shen's expression was extremely calm, he removed his hand from Jen Feng's head then stood up. Seeing his father appear, Jen Feng immediately rushed over, tears and snot streaming down his face as he cried to Jen Jungchuan, Dad, this brat kicked my privates and beat me for no reason at all, you must get justice for me. Jen Jungchuan glanced at Jen Feng, noticing his head was covered in blood, his face sank. Then he turned to look at the old man beside him, Master Min, can you discern the brat's origins? Master Min smiled. This brat is also an ancient martial artist but looking at his age he probably entered the inner strength realm not long ago. Hearing this, a sinister light flashed across Jen Jungchen's face. Master Min, I'm weak-hearted. If he begs for his life then spare him leaving his corpse intact. 
Master Min lightly nodded, then stepped forward a few steps, just a few steps from Yep Shen. Boy, at such a young age yet having this level of attainment is no easy feat, but unfortunately, you dared provoke someone you shouldn't have. As he finished speaking, his legs pressed together as his body vanished. In an instant only a residual shadow was seen flashing by. A second later, he reappeared right in front of Yep Shen, gripping Yep Shen's shoulder coldly saying, If you beg for your life I can leave you intact. Yep Shen looked at him eagerly, Tell me to beg? The one begging is you, don't you know if you've picked a coffin yet? Seeing Yep Shen still unafraid, even speaking provocatively, the old man was truly furious now. He lashed out with a move fast as the wind, chopping down at Yep Shen's right arm. But Yep Shen's speed was faster, he lightly evaded every move. At this time Yep Shen raised his fist, concentrating power into his arm. A second later, Yep Shen swung his fist at such fast speed the old man couldn't react, punching straight into his mouth. Blood sprayed from his mouth as his whole body heavily slammed into the ground along the punch's direction, landing with a loud bang, several cracks appearing in the floor. The old man lay unconscious on the ground. Seeing this scene, the faces of Zhen Zhengchuan and his son suddenly became extremely frightened. They didn't dare believe the invincible Master Min was actually defeated, moreover by a youth. How is this possible? At this time Master Min had regained consciousness. He struggled to raise his head, squeezing out a sentence from his throat, Just who are you? How can your martial arts attainment reach this level? Yep Shen looked down on him arrogantly. You suddenly changed temperament seeming to feel you're above all things, gazing down on mortals. I'm someone you'd never dare offend. Yep Shen's voice roared like thunder throughout the hall. Master Min still hadn't recovered, he was so shocked he spit out a mouthful of blood from this remark. Then Yep Shen turned to look at Zhen Zhengchuan, striding in front of him. His entire body exuded a chilling murderous aura. You're Zhen Zhengchuan, right? Earlier you said you're kind-hearted so you'd leave my corpse intact? Zhen Zhengchuan immediately felt a chill down his spine, his whole body trembling slightly as he took a step back, ordering the guards behind him. Do you all want to get fired? Quickly restrain him. As soon as he finished speaking, a group of guards rushed forward. In just a moment, seven or eight fists came at Yep Shen. Yep Shen helplessly shook his head, then swung once, carrying a gust of Kai spreading in all directions. The group of guards got swept up in the Kai and were blown away. After dealing with the guards, Yep Shen rubbed his arms, looking at Zhen Zhengchuan with icy eyes. At this time the Zhen father and son no longer cared about anything else. Both knelt down before Yep Shen begging for their lives. Expert, it's my fault for not teaching my son well, please spare our lives. A mocking smile appeared at the corner of Yep Shen's mouth, his eyes flashing. Like father like son, throwing away your pride is easy as saying it, but some debts still need to be paid. Just as he finished speaking, the hall doors were suddenly flung open. A group of armed men charged in. A woman stepped out from the crowd, pointing at Yep Shen. You there, get away from those two. Then looking around, seeing signs of a fight, she was stunned seeing Zhen Zhengchuan kneeling on the ground. Why is he kneeling? He's the patriarch of the Zhen clan. Seeing the armed group arrive, Zhen Zhengchuan breathed a sigh of relief. My life is spared now. In his mind, what were the Hua clan's ancient martial artists? Worthless before the official authorities. At this time the woman also noticed the old man in kung fu robes nearby. She was even more shocked. Isn't this the Zhen clan's ancient warrior? Why is he in such a sorry state? Then she scrutinized Yep Shen closely. This was all done by this brat? But Yep Shen didn't move an inch, even grabbing Zhen Zhengchen's hair and lifting his whole body. Comrade policewoman. This brat molested a decent girl. I only lent a hand to help. You have to look closely now. The woman immediately pulled out her gun aiming at Yep Shen. Release him, or I'll shoot. Yep Shen calmly looked at her insignia and said, Comrade Bai Lingbing, this is personal vengeance, don't interfere. She was infuriated at Yep Shen's disregard, yelling louder. I warn you a second time, hands on your head sitting down. Yep Shen's eyes iced over, his entire body exuding a chilling murderous aura. You insist on intervening? But before he could finish speaking, Sun Di rushed over grabbing Yep Shen's wrist. Sorry everyone, his hands and feet must be having cramps. Then she whispered in Yep Shen's ear. What are you still dazed for? They'll really shoot. 
Yep Shen was about to struggle free, but Sun Di held him firmly and made him sit on the ground. Yep Shen's expression was helpless. What now? Wait to be arrested? Sun Di shook her head. Leave the rest to me. Follow them to the police station to give a statement then you can go home. After all, you were just legitimately defending yourself, it's fine. Hearing this, Yep Shen didn't say anything more, he just nodded. Before long, night had fallen. A man was reporting to Bai Lingbing. Captain, we've watched the hotel surveillance videos no less than 10 times. Aside from the deleted section, the remaining footage all shows Yep Shen was only acting in self-defense. Bai Lingbing's expression turned icy. What? Deleted? Which section was deleted? The man handed her the surveillance video. Look, here Jen Jungchuan even brought along the old man to confront Yep Shen, but a while later the old man collapsed. During that time period there's no footage at all, don't know what happened. After watching this, Bai Lingbing immediately fell silent in thought. We arrived at the scene as fast as we could, yet someone still managed to delete the footage. Can't rule out there's a huge power backing that brat. She sighed. Without sufficient evidence, we can only rule he acted in legitimate self-defense. Release him. Not long after, two figures walked out of the police station. Sun D stretched and heaved a sigh of relief like a huge weight was lifted. See, didn't I say so? She took another long breath. The fresh air outside is still the best. Go home, take a nice bath, wash away all the bad luck. Yep Shen didn't say anything. He knew the existence of Jen Jungchuan and his son would always be a latent threat to Sun Di. Once he left Shanghai, Sun Di would surely have to endure the Jen clan's wrath. So he had decided to find a chance to resolve those two. At the same time, Sun Di also sensed an inexplicable danger from Yep Shen. She couldn't help glancing at him a few times. Sensing her gaze, Yep Shen scratched his head. I just thought, I only arrived in Shanghai today, really don't know where to sleep. If there's no other way, I can only sleep in the park tonight. Sun Di hesitated for a bit before finally making up her mind. She softly said, why not come to my place? I have a spare room. It's not big but better than sleeping in the park. Yep Shen leaned in front of Sun Di joking. Manager Sun, you're not afraid I'm a bad person? Or is it because today I heroically saved the beauty, you want to repay me with your body? Sun Di gave him a look. Who's repaying with their body? I just asked if you want to stay or not. Having said that, she walked away. They didn't notice a car passing by. Inside, Bai Lingbing stared at Yep Shen. Aside from the deleted footage, the Gen clan's guards were all retired special forces, yet in front of this guy they cowered like children. She then made a call. Eldest senior brother is on a mission? There's something I need to trouble you with. Please help me analyze the man in this video segment. In the remote Ural Mountains of Siberia, there was a specially reinforced safe house built for the VM clan's special forces team. The house contained all kinds of weapons, from the smallest stiletto dagger to the largest artillery cannon, all for killing. A young man in a tank top disguise sat on the bed, hanging up his phone muttering. This junior sister is really restless, with her family status she could just stay home and live it up, yet she insists on being a police officer in such a small place, spending her days looking for me to crack cases. After all, Ying Ching is the captain of the Long Hun commando team, now it's like I have nothing better to do all day. But then a cold glint flashed in his eyes, his five fingers grasped at the air two meters towards the laptop. Suddenly the computer flew into his hand. Although complaining out loud, Ying Ching obediently opened the laptop and clicked on the video Bai Lingbing had just sent him. Only a few seconds after the video started, he guessed it was just a normal brawl, but looking at the guard's hand movements, he recognized them as retired special forces. Then his face showed disdain, ganging up on a youth, really shameful. Suddenly his pupils contracted, bolding up straight in his seat. He paused the screen right before the youth lightly pushed, blowing away the guards in the next second. Ying Ching even slowed down all the young man's motions in the video, the more he watched the more fearful he became. This was an ancient martial artist, and not just any ancient martial artist, but a grandmaster sect leader at the peak. Then he suppressed the shock in his heart, calling Bai Lingbing, Junior sister, I need all the data on that youth in the video, right now. Meanwhile, Sun Di brought Yep Shen to her place. She had just showered and wore loose pajamas, looking even more alluring. Seeing this, Yep Shen unconsciously gave a thumbs up. 
He thought this girl really didn't guard against him one bit. He shook off the distracting thoughts then went into the bathroom. The water from the showerhead washing his body reminded him of the events five years ago, when he fell into the lake and was saved by his master. He had thought it great luck, but it was the beginning of a nightmare. At first the old man didn't teach him anything, only throwing him into a cage with a tiger that had been starved for three days, saying, one man, one tiger, only one side survives. No one knew what happened inside, and no one expected a teenage boy barehanded could survive. From then on, every time the old man trained him, he would bring him to dangerous places to experience trials. Each time, he had to face hopeless situations on the brink of life and death, but each time Yep Shen survived through his indomitable willpower. It was his boundless anger and hatred that sustained him until now. He swore to find every person who attended the Vanyu Mountain Villa banquet that year. Blood debts must be paid in blood. At this time, Sundi thought Yep Shen probably didn't have spare clothes. Suddenly her beautiful eyes widened as she remembered her newly discarded underwear was still in the bathroom. Thinking of this, her cheeks immediately flushed crimson. She hurried to the bathroom. Yep Shen, wait a moment, I'm getting some things. But right then Yep Shen had just finished showering and hearing the noise opened the glass door. Their eyes met, at this moment it seemed time stood still. A few seconds later Sun Di finally snapped out of it, turning and fleeing. She ran back to her room, embarrassedly hugging a pillow, her mouth ceaselessly murmuring to forget the earlier scene. After Yep Shen had dressed, he stood outside Sun Di's room hearing the endless murmuring from within. He figured the girl wouldn't come out tonight. Then a cold gleam flashed in his eyes. Just in time, I also have something to take care of. Weeds must be eliminated at the root. On the outskirts of Lam City, Shanghai, there was a luxurious over 10-acre villa. Though the architecture was grand, the atmosphere was somewhat strange now. Zhen Zhengchuan paced back and forth anxiously in the living room, extremely irritated in his heart. Zhen Feng sitting beside couldn't stand it anymore. Dad, stop panicking, you're making me dizzy. Finally Zhen Zhengchuan stopped, striding in front of Zhen Feng, slapping him hard. If not for that damn brat, how could Master Min be so gravely injured, now reduced to a cripple? Without Master Min, and the old master not here, our Gen clan is finished. Gen Feng shrank back, disagreeing. Dad, you're too worried. Though Grandpa's not in Shanghai, he's still alive. Who would dare make trouble for our Gen clan? Gen Zhengchuan clenched his fist. Now just thinking of Yep Shen made him feel extremely afraid. Then he hardened his resolve. Tomorrow we'll go to Mount Woody to invite the old master down the mountain. Gen Feng was immediately overjoyed. As long as grandpa makes a move, he will surely capture that brat. When the time comes I must break his limbs, slowly torment Sun Di in front of him. As the Gen father and son were still immersed in joy, an icy cold voice rang out from behind them. You all dare make moves on Yep Shen's woman too? The laughter abruptly stopped. Zhen Zhengchuan and Zhen Feng were stunned, as both were far too familiar with this voice. Yep Shen leisurely walked in front of the two, sitting down on the sofa opposite them. Zhen Zhengchuan could no longer restrain himself, saying in a trembling voice, What exactly do you want? Today I already knelt before you, what more do you want from us? Let me tell you, our Zhen clan has a Grand Taoist sect martial arts grandmaster. If you dare touch us, you will face the wrath of our grandmaster. Yep Shen raised his head with a mocking smile. A condensed air arrow formed in his palm shooting towards Zhen Feng. Before the words could leave Zhen Feng's mouth, the air arrow pierced straight through his throat. Yep Shen looked at Zhen Zhengchuan with icy eyes. Now do you say I, Yep Shen, dare make a move against you? At this time Zhen Zhengchen's face was ghastly pale without a drop of blood. He looked at his motionless son, tears flowing out. Why viciously ambush us? We clearly have no enmity between us. Hearing this, Yep Shen laughed crazily. He stood up, slowly stepping towards Zhen Zhengchuan. His entire body surged with powerful murderous aura as he looked down on him arrogantly. No enmity between us? Let me ask you Zhen Zhengchuan, do you remember five years ago at a banquet in Vanyu Mountain Villa? The deep couple died, and the extremely malicious words from your vile mouth? Zhen Zhengchuan froze in shock raising his head to look at Yep Shen incredulously. No one knew how greatly Zhen Zhengchuan was screaming in terror inside. Then Yep Shen bent down, leaning to Zhen Zhengchen's ear. 
Before you die I'll let you in on a secret. Actually I'm not an ancient martial artist as you guys say, but a cultivator. In your eyes ancient martial artists may be heaven, but in as cultivator's eyes, no matter how many martial grandmasters back you, even if you have the support of an entire sect, I, Yep Shen, can still slaughter you all with a single sword. As he finished speaking, a powerful murderous aura swirled around Yep Shen, directly piercing through Zhen Zhengchen's chest. At the same time atop Mount Wudi's peak, an old man in Taoist robes floated midair. Heaven and Earth's spiritual energy constantly poured into his Dantian. Suddenly his expression pained, falling down from midair, mouth spurting fresh blood. A second later he sensed from somewhere, the bloodline he left behind was beheaded one by one. What infuriated him more was at the crucial moment when he was about to break through, he was forcibly shattered. His foundation of ten years destroyed in an instant. Whenever he thought of this he was enraged to the extreme. Jen Baokwok swore to the heavens, he would personally find and shred you into a hundred pieces. Early next morning, Yep Shen awoke early while cultivating. He had intended to cultivate a while more, but Lam's spiritual energy was far too thin and weak, completely incomparable to that place. Now if he wanted to improve his cultivation level, he had to refine some pills as supplement. Then he glanced at the objects beside him, only a photo frame and a black stone. This photo he had taken from the deep house that year after being saved. Calculating the days, it would be his parents' death anniversary in a week. As for the black stone, it was a gift his father gave him on his 11th birthday. His father said it was an heirloom treasure left by the clan, to this day Yep Shen still didn't know its use. Suddenly he noticed a small inscription on the stone, vaguely it seemed to say to drip blood or something. Without further ado, Yep Shen let a drop of fresh blood fall on the black stone. In an instant, a powerful ray of light flashed and quickly penetrated deep into Yep Shen's mind. His vision darkened, eyelids heavy, finally unable to resist anymore he passed out. He didn't know how much time had passed when Yep Shen awoke from unconsciousness. Just as he tried to stand up, suddenly a piercing pain surged in his mind. It took a while for the pain to subside a little. Yep Shen's eyes shot open. He felt the screaming cold winds around him, along with dense black fog, as if he had come to some netherworld hell. Even more horrifying was seeing nearly a hundred densely packed tombstones before him. Around these tombstones were planted thousands upon thousands of swords, seemingly forming an enormous mystic formation. Before Yep Shen could think, suddenly the ground violently shook. The hundreds of tombstones also shook. Then thousands of swords withdrew from the ground, flying up to the sky. The black shadows quickly condensed into a sun, the swords floated under the shadow, now seemingly under its control. Suddenly the shadow morphed into a colossal face. Amidst the sky a voice boomed. With just the late stage of foundation establishment, you dare enter the cemetery of reincarnation? Do you seek death? The weakest tombstones will. You're already immobilized. If you don't want death then scram immediately. As the voice ended, in an instant Yep Shen felt numerous feet trampling his body. The tremendous power once again blurred his consciousness. After a while, he awoke outside that world. Yep Shen suspiciously looked at the black stone in his hand. Could this be that ancient treasure artifact master mentioned before? Based on that voice's meaning, it seems wanting my strength to reach a certain threshold, then I can activate the tombstone's omnipotence? Ridiculous. The cemetery of reincarnation has hundreds of tombstones, could there really be hundreds of omnipotents? At this time, knocking sounded at the door. Sun Di's voice came from outside. Yep Shen are you awake yet? Breakfast is ready, it'll get cold if you don't eat. Hearing the familiar voice, Yep Shen suppressed his inner terror. Then he carefully put away the black stone. Yep Shen got dressed and went to the dining table, looking at the breakfast she had prepared, clearly taking no small effort. He felt warmth in his heart. Sundi, you're so good to me, I don't want to leave anymore. How about I give myself to you, cook and wash dishes for you, and warm your bed in winter, what do you think? Sundi giggled. Warm the bed? Don't dream of taking advantage of me, I don't need you in winter, there's a heater at home. Then she reconsidered. But if you really want to stay it's not impossible. First you pay monthly rent, then help with housework. Yep Shen awkwardly revealed he currently had no money. While Sun Di was stunned, Yep Shen took a napkin from the table and wrote a few lines with a pen. After finishing, he stuffed it in Sun Di's hand. 
This is the formula for refining elementary retention pills. Although it's low level, it can still support a listed company's finances. Using it to pay rent definitely won't be an issue. Sun Di glanced at Yep Shen. What is this? Support a listed company's finances? Do you misunderstand something about listed companies? Yep Shen affirmed. I'm not mistaken. Isn't Wame Group your company involved in cosmetics? Give this formula to your R&D department, they will surely understand. At minimum it's worth 10 million. Just after Yep Shen spoke, Sun Di's phone immediately rang. On the screen displayed the name Ha Ruoshui. Sun Di answered with a serious expression. A level S meeting? Yes manager Ha, I understand, I'll be right there. After hanging up she turned to Yep Shen. I'm busy with urgent matters, no time for your boasting now. If you're free go find a job, don't ponder foolish things. A black stone accidentally picked up on the roadside, inside were hundreds of sealed tombstones. Each tombstone was formed from the will of the strongest beings ever. If the owner's strength reached the threshold they could control the will of the mighty for themselves. A teenager possessing such a heaven-defying artifact, now unable to pay rent so resorting to quackery at the street corner. Miraculous bone-white rejuvenation, barely breathing yet still alive. Speaking so arrogantly immediately attracted a large curious crowd. They gossiped. What asylum did this madman escape from? Who still believes this nonsense nowadays? Yep Shen looked at the cursing crowd, helplessly shaking his head. Just as he prepared to pack up and go home, suddenly a young lady stepped out from the crowd. You fraud, come with me for a trip. Soon after, the girl led Yep Shen to a grand and magnificent estate. Looking around, Yep Shen couldn't help exclaiming, the rich really live in comfort. Then he said, young miss don't worry, leave it to me. I guarantee the patient will immediately become as healthy as an elephant. The girl shook her head. You misunderstand, I didn't bring you here to heal someone. I, Sham Mengai, am looking for you because of your ability to bluff without a script. Seeing Yep Shen about to leave, Sham Mengai quickly took out a card and handed it to him. Help me with one thing, the 100,000 here will be yours. Yep Shen immediately grinned. Young miss, please instruct me. Even scaling mountains and crossing oceans, I won't decline. Tears welled up at the corner of Sham Mengai's eyes, her voice slightly choked. My father is critically ill. The doctor said he won't live more than a few days. But my parents' relationship is very good. I'm worried if my father really passes, my mother will have a breakdown and do something foolish. I hope you can pretend to be an immortal and take my father away before he dies, pretend to take him to the mountains for healing. I believe as long as we get through this period, my mother will definitely accept the truth. After listening, Yep Shen couldn't help sighing. This young miss mindset is really strange, filial yet not very rational. Then the corner of his mouth curled into a smile, but with me here things will be different. He patted his chest, leave it all to me. Then, Sham Mengai led Yep Shen into the estate. Yep Shen also met her father, currently lying in bed, eyes shut tight, lips purple, body nothing but skin and bones. Yep Shen even sensed the aura of death shrouding his chest, if it spread to the head, even the great immortal Kim would not be able to save him. Seeing Yep Shen's solemn expression, Sham Mengai explained beside him, Last month my father, Sham Hai Feng, was diagnosed with late-stage lung cancer. Even the best doctor was helpless. Then we invited the renowned Dr. Chu from the capital, but yesterday he told us my father can only live one more day. Fortunately my mother still doesn't know yet. I hope you can keep this from her and help me, I beg you. I will fully pay you. Just as Yep Shen was about to speak, he saw a lady in grey hurriedly come over, followed by an old man in a white coat. The lady came before Sham Mengai crying. Gi Gi, Dr. Chu said your father won't make it past today, is it true? If Hai Feng is gone, what meaning is left for me to live? Sham Mengai's beautiful eyes widened, staring straight at Dr. Chu's face. Because before she left home, she had clearly colluded with Dr. Chu not to tell her mother the truth. But why was he now betraying her? But before she could speak, a mocking voice sounded from the doorway. Mengai, one must be honest. Birth, old age, illness and death are common affairs. How can you deceive your mother? Don't worry, I've already arranged the funeral, guaranteed to bury your father properly. Hearing this, Sham's mother cried even harder. Sham Mengai angrily stared at the young man. Sham Munglong how could you be like this? Don't you know mother's health is poor? 
But not only did the youth not stop, he went further saying, Father living in such suffering, wouldn't death be liberation? I'm the filial one, I can't bear to see father suffer so. Rest assured sister, after I inherit this household, I definitely won't mistreat you and mother. Sham's mother had already been sobbing uncontrollably. Hearing Sham Menglong's words, she nearly fainted. Sham Mengai roared. Father's already like this, you don't even pretend one bit. Just for a little more inheritance you want to anger mother to death? You're a beast. Sham Menglong was clearly infuriated by this. He swung his hand up. You cheap servant girl dare insult me? What's it to me if she wants to die? Say that one more time, do you want me to rip your mouth open? At this critical moment, a fist landed squarely on Sham Menglong's face, sending him flying outside, his whole body crashing to the ground. He's not dead yet, what's the hurry? Hearing the commotion, all eyes in the room turned to Yep Shen. Dr. Chu hurriedly shouted, Who is this brat? Do you know in no time this young master will become the Sham clan's head? Yep Shen simply raised a finger and nonchalantly said, Just give me ten million and I, Yep Shen, will cure him. Wanting to reassure her mother and cover for Yep Shen, Sham Mengai said, Don't worry mother, his medical skills are miraculous. Father will definitely recover, let's go outside and not disturb him. Once the door closed, only Yep Shen remained in the room. He looked at Sham Hai Feng taking his last breaths. Looks like your time hasn't come yet. Luckily you met me in your final life moments. The master taught me heavenly medical arts enough for me to pull you back from the gates of hell. As he finished speaking, Yep Shen circulated his mental focus. A faint golden aura of vital energy flowed out from his dantian, slowly gathering at his fingertips. Yep Shen's hands swiftly changed gestures, his whole body forming a series of golden rays. Heaven and earth profound emperor, devils and ghosts returned to Yang form. A second later, Yep Shen directly channeled the mystic art into Sham Haifeng's body. Something inexplicable happened. Sham Haifeng's whole body floated mid-air, countless ancient talismans swirling around him. Yep Shen didn't hesitate, immediately pulling out acupuncture needles from his bag. With a flick of his wrist, dozens of needles scattered through the air. He's been surrounded by death chi for many days, his meridians blocked, he should have certainly died. But if one channel can still be connected, his life can be retained, which is the Yangming channel. As he finished speaking, Yep Shen manipulated the needles to directly pierce the major acupoints on Sham Haifeng's body. As time slowly passed, Yep Shen's inner qi also rapidly evaporated until the last strand of death qi in Sham Haifeng's body was forced out. In that instant Sham Haifeng fell back onto the bed. After finishing, Yep Shen panted heavily. He couldn't help sighing. Killing is easy, saving is hard. I didn't expect saving him would consume so much strength. I must diligently cultivate in the future. Once his breathing steadied, Yep Shen pushed open the room door. Everything went smoothly, the person inside will soon awaken. Give me the money. Sham's mother was slightly incredulous, really? Hai Feng will soon wake up? Yep Shen nodded. But just as Sham's mother was about to hand over her bank card, it was snatched away by Sham Menglong. Mother, get a hold of yourself. Father has late stage cancer, how can he possibly be cured? Then he threatened. Brat, it's not so easy getting 10 million. At the very least I need to see results first, otherwise. But before he could finish, Yep Shen directly locked his five fingers, lightly twisting them and bending Sham Menglong's entire arm 90 degrees. He painfully knelt on the ground screaming. Anger showed on Yep Shen's face. This is the medical fee I rightfully earned. Also, the old man will awaken but can only live three more days. He looked at Sham's mother. I'll take the money. In three days come find me, if after three days without my medicine, even heaven can't save him. Yep Shen swiftly vanished before everyone. Sham Menglong struggled to get up, ceaselessly shouting, this beast dared hit me and rob my money. I'll definitely call the cops and have him killed. But at this moment, a figure appeared before everyone's eyes. Sham Mengai covered her mouth to keep from screaming. Sham Menglong's face showed only fear and disbelief. Clearly late stage cancer yet now revived. Sham Hai Feng looked around and urgently asked. Where is the divine doctor? Where did he go? He stepped in front of Sham's mother. Dear, Mengai, fortunately you invited the divine doctor, now father is much better. Then he coldly looked at Sham Menglong. Recently you've done many good things. 
Sham Munglong, don't think I don't know what a beast like you did while I was ill. From today on, don't dream of getting a cent from me, you disgrace. If you can't find that doctor, I'll have you killed. At the same time in Hoame Group's conference room, the atmosphere was rather solemn, with some size. Among them, Sun D was also frowning. The reason was their competitor had developed a highly effective new cosmetic, causing their stock to plummet and facing great difficulties. If they still couldn't roll out a new product, it was only a matter of time before collapse. Everyone in the conference room was discussing countermeasures when suddenly Sun D felt something off with her chest. When no one was looking, she pulled down her collar. To her surprise, she pulled out a slip of paper, the one Yep Shen had written for her that morning. It had some scribbled lines she didn't understand. When did that Yep Shen stuff this paper in? But for now, she recalled Yep Shen had said this paper was worth millions. Sun D felt it laughable. As she was pondering this, a hand suddenly reached from behind and snatched the paper. A woman's voice sounded in her ear. Let me see what treasure manager Sun had to hide in her bosom. She thought it was a hotel address from some senior executive, but it turned out to be a medicinal formula. Even boldly titled, Retention Pill Elementary Level. Now she started mocking. You got this from some fraud? Yet you still treat it like a treasure? Sun D clenched her fists staring at her. Tuo na, return that paper to me. The girl coldly laughed. You're so anxious over this scrap or because you already slept with him. Then she tore up the paper before Sun D's eyes. Seeing this, the anger in Sun D's heart ignited. She pushed Tuo na. Don't bully others too much. Though it's just paper, it's mine. What right do you have to tear it up? Tuo na also stepped up to hit back, unwilling to lose out. The two grappled and scratched at each other. Everyone else turned their eyes to them. This scene was far too familiar, not the first time it happened. Amidst their quarreling, the conference room door opened. Ha Ruoshui was already furious over the company's matters. Seeing this scene now, her anger immediately erupted. After the background music ended, the conference room atmosphere became unusually solemn. Ha Ruoshui glanced over everyone. I believe everyone knows the purpose of today's meeting. Now others have produced advanced new products, yet after so many years, why are our products still stagnant? After she spoke, no one in the conference room dared make a sound. A few seconds later, Ha Ruoshui looked at the R&D staff. For three whole years, our products had no upgrades at all. Does your R&D department really intend to stick with the old products till death? The R&D staff quickly shook their heads. Manager Ha, it's not that we didn't try, but the cosmetics market is too fiercely competitive. We've researched all existing formulas, truly unable to find a better replacement product. Our R&D department has even gone to many countries worldwide, spending huge sums to acquire new formulas, but beauty formulas have always been scarce and are now even more scarce. Even searching ancient books, we can't find anything suitable. Hearing this, Ha Ruizu's heart grew heavy. She had spent five years building up the largest cosmetics company in Shanghai, her goal being for her parents to call off the engagement. Now was she really to give up? Accept that marriage? When the conference hall was silent as death, Tuona's voice suddenly rang out. Just a cosmetic formula has everyone this despondent. I happened to see manager's son had one earlier, called retention pill or something. When the last words were uttered, that R&D staff suddenly changed expression, retention pill. That's a lost secret formula from ancient times. Then excitedly standing up, Manager Ha, if Manager Sun truly has that formula, our company will be saved. Ha Ruizu's furrowed brows relaxed. She turned to look at Sun Di. Do you really have the retention pill formula? Seeing all eyes on her, Sun Di was slightly stunned. She hurriedly explained. Sorry Manager Ha, actually it was just someone's nonsense scribbles. Ha Ruoshui seemed slightly surprised but still unwilling to give up even a ray of hope. Just take out that formula. Sun Di had no choice, pointing to the scraps of paper on the table. Under everyone's scrutinizing stares, all doubted. This is the priceless retention pill formula? Why is it written on a napkin? Tuo Na looked gleeful to see others in trouble. Clearly she had achieved her goal of embarrassing Sun Di. While everyone else felt this ridiculous, that R&D staff member picked up a paper scrap, inspecting it closely. The more he looked, the more shocked his expression became, even trembling all over. He turned to Ha Ruoshui, Manager Ha, this formula is real. What's more, our original formula was developed based on this medicine. 
The pity is the formula wasn't complete then. As long as we restore this paper, we can certainly break through our current quality. Then he angrily looked at Tuo Na. This formula concerns the company's life and death, yet it was destroyed by this cheap servant Tuo Na. Tuo Na panted, her face twisted. She couldn't believe the formula was real. Hope lit up in Ha Ruizu's eyes. She instructed everyone to restore the paper at all costs and obtain the formula on it. Then coldly at Tuo Na. Since you're so free, it happens a new store is short on sales staff. Now you can take a loss and go work as a counter girl. Night fell, despite the R&D staff's efforts they still lacked one ingredient and couldn't recklessly apply the formula. Ha Ruo Shui ordered they must find the writer of that formula. Returning to her apartment, Sun Di had intended to ask Yep Shen for an explanation, but there wasn't a soul inside. She sat on the sofa feeling downcast, thinking, still not back so late, or perhaps he won't be coming back. Able to fend off many people at once, scribbling out a secret medicinal recipe, could Yep Shen be an unparalleled expert? But upon learning his true identity, he disappeared before my eyes? Now Sun Di remembered, even now she still didn't know anything about his background, it was like he fell from the sky. While she was lost in thought, a big hand suddenly appeared behind her, patting Sun Di's head. Yep Shen standing behind her said, I just heard you calling me, what's the matter? Something wrong? Sun Di hesitantly said, that formula paper was ripped up. Yep Shen blankly responded, that formula paper? It was just an introductory method of my sect. If you think the effects are too weak, I can provide some other recipes. He yawned and got up. I'm a bit tired today, going to sleep first. You should sleep early too. Sun Di suddenly recalled something, pulling Yep Shen back. I remember the first time we met, didn't you say you wanted to meet Manager Ha? It just so happens that after I told Manager Ha, she also said she wanted to meet you. Yep Shen disdainfully said. The other day she paid me no mind at all. Now she says to meet her? Meeting is fine, but she has to personally come find me. Whether I meet or not depends on my mood. Yep Shen left those words and closed his room door, leaving Sun Di standing there blankly. In a villa situated in the affluent district of Shanghai, Sun Di reported Yep Shen's attitude to Ha Ruo Shui. She gave Sun Di a few instructions then oddly hung up the call. Lazily sitting on the sofa, a sly smile curled her pink lips. Earlier he caused a disturbance at reception just to meet me. Now he has this kind of attitude, let me see just what kind of person he is. An alchemist going out for the first time to buy medicinal ingredients was drawn to an ancient painting on the shop wall. Yep Shen only looked a few times before helplessly shaking his head. He had determined it was a fake. Just then an old man and young lady appeared. The girl disdainfully said, Hey, country bumpkin, what's with the head shaking? Do you understand this painting's meaning? The old man in Tang attire glanced at her, Tujian, don't be rude. Then curiously asked Yep Shen, Young brother, this painting is praised by some collectors, but you seemed disappointed earlier. May I ask why? Yep Shen indifferently said, because it's a fake painting. You and those collectors are blind, but the imitation is not bad. Just leave it here to fool passers-by. He scanned around, thinking he might find some decent goods in the shop but now it seemed he had thought too much. This remark truly angered the girl. Disregarding the old man trying to stop her, she scowled and strode towards Yep Shen as fury rose up. Then she suddenly kicked up directly leaping several meters high before stomping down on Yep Shen with some force. Seeing his granddaughter employ ancient martial arts, the old man's expression immediately changed. But he wanted to stop her yet couldn't in time. The kick was about to land, but the next second left everyone's eyes wide with shock. Yep Shen used his bare hands to catch the girl's foot. His whole body firmly stood in place. The expression on the girl's face gradually shifted to panic. Not giving her time to react, Yep Shen sinisterly smiled then turned and flung the girl forwards. The girl crashed face first into the ground, unable to resist at all. Yep Shen glanced at her and said, Unexpectedly met an ancient martial artist here, but cultivating martial arts meant for men is not good. Who knows if you'll become crippled in the future. I'm only reminding you this once. The girl had never suffered such humiliation before. She furiously got up, about to unleash another kick at Yep Shen. The old man coldly snorted to stop her, Tujian, won't you cease? Can't you see? This young brother earlier blocked your full force kick without true chi. 
With just your cat martial arts, how can you be his match? The girl said resentfully. What does a country bumpkin like him know of true chi? Earlier I was just careless and didn't dodge in time. Suddenly the girl's face went blank. She felt an eerie aura enveloping her. At this time, the air around Yep Shen had chilled completely, his gaze like the supreme overlord looking down on the world. The girl's legs went numb and she plopped down on the ground. Seeing his granddaughter so frightened, the old man lightly snorted to gloss over the embarrassment, then cupped fists to Yep Shen. Please excuse my foolish granddaughter for the ridicule. She doesn't know the immensity of heaven and earth. Seeing Yep Shen didn't intend to pursue it further, he finally let out a long sigh. His gaze turned back to the painting. May I ask the young brother about this painting? This old man truly can't see anything amiss. Yep Shen smiled, channeling energy into his palm. Then exerting force through his arm, he transmitted true chi onto the painting's surface. In an instant, some words emerged on the painting, left by the imitator. Yep Shen said, Indeed this painting is hard to discern real from fake, so the forger brazenly left such shameless words. But simply applying true qi can make them appear. A while later, Chu Tujian brought the packaged medicine to Yep Shen. Seeing her disgruntled look, Yep Shen joked. Thanks to young Miss Chu personally packaging this medicine for me, but I still prefer your annoyed look from earlier. Hearing this, Chu Tujian's mood erupted again. Don't deliberately provoke me. Today I clearly wasn't your match. If my master was here you'd see what I can do. At this time, Chu Rendik walked over and said, Tujian still doesn't see it. This young brother's skills are no weaker than your master's. He smiled ingratiatingly at Yep Shen. My granddaughter's been spoiled rotten by me. I hope Master Deep can forgive her. Then taking Yep Shen's prescription, he solemnly said, All the medicines on Master Deep's list are in my shop, just the large quantities require a few days' wait. To apologize, they're free for you. May I ask if that's agreeable? Yep Shen shook his head. No need, just charge market price. Then he turned and waved walking towards the exit. I'll come back in a few days then. After Yep Shen had gone far, Chu Rendik still stared at his retreating back. Recalling the events from five years ago, his expression faintly turned grave. If he really is that Yep Shen from back then, I'm afraid this city won't know peace for some time. Chu Tujian beside couldn't help saying, Grandfather, there's no way he surpasses my master right? He just helped you identify a fake painting. Chu Rendik solemnly said, Indeed I was mistaken. He is not inferior to your master, but far surpasses her. His emergence signifies a new grandmaster. Rumor says martial grandmasters can transcend any heavy weapon. Ordinary people are no different than ants in their eyes. Chu Tujian was shocked. He's so young, how can he be a grandmaster? Chu Rendik frowned. You guessed wrong. He's not a grandmaster, he's even more fearsome than one. No matter what, our Chu clan must not provoke grievances with him. At the same time, Yep Shen walked down a road both familiar yet unfamiliar. In his heart he couldn't help feeling melancholy. In no time it would be his parents' death anniversary. Suddenly his pupils constricted as he sensed the suspicious behavior of a man following behind him. He sinisterly grinned, then turned into a deserted alley. Seeing his target enter the empty alley, the man was briefly surprised, then swiftly pursued into the alley. He looked around, clearly it was a dead end, yet the target had vanished without a trace. But at this moment, a black shadow fell from the sky. Before the man could react, a big hand viciously grabbed his head and flung his whole body ruthlessly to the ground. An icy voice rang out. Give me one reason not to kill you. The panicking man hurriedly confessed the truth. Sham Hai Feng has issued rewards all over Shanghai, just to find you there's a million dollar bounty. Yep Shen then realized he had only given Sham Hai Feng three days. If he didn't get Yep Shen's personally concocted pills within three days, he would die for sure. As he walked away, leaving the man behind, he said, Go tell Sham Hai Feng, if he wants to live then stop futile actions. He should personally come find me. Not long after, Yep Shen returned to the apartment. He saw Sun Di with light makeup, long silky hair draped over her shoulder, looking more charming than usual. Hearing the noise behind her, Sun Di knew Yep Shen was back. Turning around smiling she said, In a bit I'll take you out shopping, you've worn those clothes too long. I'll get you a phone too, it's so troublesome when I can't contact you. Yep Shen felt warmth in his heart. 
Looking at his clothes, he felt they weren't too bad. He was about to say something but Sun Di pulled him out the door, not giving him a chance to refuse. Soon the two arrived at a Shanghai mall. Yep Shen changed into a new look, making his slender piercing eyes even more profound, giving off an aura of aloof arrogance. Sun Di couldn't help exclaiming, dressed up, you're really quite handsome. She skipped forward smiling. Tell me honestly, do you have a girlfriend? Want big sis to introduce you to some? I know many beautiful eligible girls. Yep Shen only silently shook his head. These past five years, he struggled between life and death daily, obsessively cultivating, all for the sake of returning to take revenge. Where was there time to care for romance? Recalling the past, five years ago when the Yep family still existed, he liked a girl named Su Qingyuan, the school bell admired by many. One day he mustered his courage to send her a love letter, thinking it would sink into the vast uncaring sea, but unexpectedly it got a reply. Su Qingyuan told him that the next morning at dawn, as long as he could steal the principal's mic and confess to her before everyone, she would agree to be his girlfriend. Back then the naive Yep Shen didn't understand things. For love he really did just that the next day, but unexpectedly, Su Qingyuan rejected him in front of all present. From that day on, Yep Shen was like a soulless ghost, with the name, Trash, and, Cripple, starting to follow him. Yep Shen awoke from his memories, a disdainful smile flickering at the corner of his mouth. Perhaps back then I really was trash, but now even if the Su clan is the top of the four great clans in Shanghai, in my eyes they're nothing. Seeing Yep Shen's shifting emotions, she thought her earlier words had hurt his self-esteem. She tried to console him, but Yep Shen irritably turned his face away. What nonsense are you saying? Don't overthink, just focus on shopping. Sun Di could only nod and led Yep Shen into a luxury store. Just then a surprised voice sounded nearby. Oh my, isn't this Sun Di? Haven't seen you in years, you have a boyfriend now? With one look, Yep Shen recognized the woman before them as Su Qingyuan's lackey. The girl strode forward pointing, Sun Di, your taste is still as bad as before. In school you liked sticking with that trash Yep Shen, now your boyfriend is also some peddler type. You like these destitute miserable men? As she spoke she sized up Yep Shen. Speaking of which, why does this guy resemble that trash Yep Shen? The stout man beside curiously said, Trash of the Yep clan? Any juicy stories? Tell me about it. He Xi'an happily recounted everything from back then, including the Yep clan's destruction. She even gleefully seemed to relish in others' pain. Yep Shen's expression suddenly turned icy. He didn't expect this woman to still be so vicious. He was about to make her shut up, when Sun Di suddenly stepped forward glaring at the woman. Ignore her. Let's continue shopping. Seeing Sun Di about to leave, he Xi'an mockingly laughed, then pressed the man's arm against her chest, coquettishly saying, Darling Tuan, I want to shop too. Tonight you can torment me however you like. The man understood and nodded. At the same time, upon entering the store, Sun Di immediately liked a tailored suit on display. A sales clerk smiled and said, you have great taste, that suit is the finest in our store, priced at 360,000 yuan. If you like, you can take it down to try on. Hearing the price, Sun Di was startled. She turned and awkwardly smiled. Looking closely, the color doesn't really suit him. But before she could finish, a sneering voice cut in. Sun Di, just say straight if you don't have money. No need to make lame excuses about it not matching. Sun Di looked at He Xi'an annoyed. Why is it you again? Whether to buy or not is my choice, what business is it of yours? He Xi'an jeered. If you had money, you wouldn't have dropped out before finishing high school to work because of your sick younger brother. Seeing Sun Di's fallen expression, He Xi'an stepped even closer. When I hit me? Do you know my best friend is Su Qingyuan? If you hit me, don't expect to stay in Shanghai afterwards. While she was babbling, a big hand suddenly struck He Xi'an's face, sending her flying outside. Then Yep Shen's icy voice rang out. I've long wanted to slap that mouth of yours. As expected, it's best to silence you. He Xi'an crawled up holding her face, furiously saying, You dare hit me? Do you know who my boyfriend is? The man beside stepped forward and said, I'm Zhao Tuan, CFO of Biming Group, with an annual income of 5 million yuan. Pitiful paupers like you can't afford to offend a high earner like me. But as soon as he finished speaking, a middle-aged voice sounded from behind. Big talker. 
Let's see who dares exploit my Biming group's name to suppress Yep Shen today. Looking over, Sham Hai Feng was striding forward with a darkened expression. Zhao Tuan was struck breathless, not understanding how a terminally ill chairman could be here now. He quickly fawned. Uncle Sham, why have you personally come? Are you inspecting a new project? But Sham Hai Feng completely ignored him and walked right up to Yep Shen. Gone was his usual stern demeanor, he smiled and said, Mr. Yep, I've searched for you with such difficulty. If you didn't show up I'd probably die. The moment those words were uttered, the surrounding atmosphere suddenly turned strangely quiet. Such a prominent figure actually had a subordinate's respectful attitude, even trying to curry favor with the youth before him. Sun Di was also greatly shocked, swallowing hard with a stunned expression. A few seconds later, Yep Shen finally looked at Sham Hai Feng saying, before I gave you a chance at life, yet your family didn't treasure it. Sham Hai Feng bitterly smiled. Sorry Mr. Yep. That rebellious son offended you last time. I've disciplined him already. Now I'll make him apologize to you. Then shouting behind him, rebellious son, hurry here and apologize to Mr. Yep. Sham Munglone didn't dare delay a second. He hurriedly ran in front of Yep Shen kneeling down. Brother Yep, I'm sorry about last time. Please forgive me. Seeing Sham Menglong kneel, Zhao Tuan beside was scared witless. He understood Sham Menglong's temperament all too well, never yielding to anyone before. Yet now he was easily kneeling. Zhao Tuan's eyes slowly shifted to Yep Shen, suddenly sensing impending misfortune. Yep Shen just indifferently glanced at him, not indicating anything. Instead he pulled the shocked Sun Di's hand to leave, ignoring the shams and walking straight for the exit. After Yep Shen's departure, Sham Hai Feng finally reacted again. He kicked Sham Menglong. See what good deed you've done. If Mr. Yep didn't agree today, you'd have knelt here forever. At this time, Zhao Tuan cautiously stepped forward. Uncle Sham, I think this is all just a misunderstanding. Sham Hai Feng whirled and slapped him hard, roaring. You still dare offend Mr. Yep using the company's name? From today you and your father are both out of the company. Then Sham Hai Feng deeply inhaled a few times before chasing after Yep Shen. Zhao Tuan's face turned deathly pale, collapsing to the ground. From that moment, he had lost everything. A billionaire chairman abjectly fawned over a youth, even being coldly treated, yet he still offered gifts of tens of thousands. Just minutes ago, Sun Di and Yep Shen had been laughing and chatting while leaving the mall, but after walking a few steps, a voice from behind made them halt. Mr. Yep and Young Miss. Please stop. Did you two enjoy your stroll today? Seeing Sham Hai Feng appear, Yep Shen frowned unhappily. What business do you have with me? Sham Hai Feng awkwardly smiled. You misunderstand, I'm not looking for you but the young lady beside you. Then stepping forward. Just now my company's staff insulted you because of my poor management. I've come to apologize, please accept these gifts. Sun Di was puzzled but quickly noticed the gifts were all the clothes from earlier she had liked but was too frugal to buy. Of course Yep Shen knew his intention. Since he couldn't please Yep Shen, he switched targets to Sun Di. Admittedly quite shrewd. So Yep Shen directly stated, Sham Hai Feng, I'll give you one last chance. Tomorrow at 9am I'll come to the Sham residence to find you. But remember, I can save you from the gates of hell, so I can just as easily take your life back. Hearing this, Sham Hai Feng's entire body shook. Mr. Yep, whatever you require in the future, this humble one is willing to be an ox or horse without complaint. At the same time, in an opulent villa in Shanghai, He Xian excitedly recounted everything that happened today to a girl watering flowers nearby. She only nodded indifferently, as if uninterested. Then calmly said, So you're still not certain it's Yep Shen? Just resembles him and happens to share the surname Yep. The girl thought, Sham Hai Feng handles things very cunningly and values face greatly. For him to bow before a youth, the other side must have very high status or great power. Then she coldly laughed. If that trash from before is still alive, he'd just be a street rat. How could he subdue Sham Hai Feng? He Xian still wasn't convinced. But Ching Yuan, what if he really is Yep Shen from before? Su Ching Yuan coldly laughed. Five years ago, his Yep clan was nothing before my Su clan. Five years later, he can still only yearn and admire my Su clan. In a Shanghai high rise, seeing the dazzling luxury goods on the table, Sundi's face was filled with joy, so many clothes. 
All brands I usually don't dare buy due to cost. She suddenly recalled something. That's right, Yep Shen. You really won't go see Ha Ruoshui? Yep Shen didn't respond, only casually turned on the TV. Just then, important news was airing. It's confirmed the deceased as Shanghai Chamber of Commerce Chairman Chen Zhengchuan and his son Chen Feng. Police have preliminarily concluded this is an extremely serious homicide case. Sun Di's expression was horrified. She had been worried the Chen clan would retaliate these past days, but didn't expect Chen Zhengchuan and his son to die like this. At this time, Yep Shen cheerfully said, Some people commit too much evil with enemies everywhere. Their deaths are only natural. Of course this was my doing. I'm the supreme assassin, there's nothing I can't accomplish. I wouldn't actually say that to you right? Sun Di glanced at him. Don't talk nonsense. If you get arrested, what then? You're good at fighting but certainly wouldn't dare kill anyone. Then coquettishly said, ignore you. I'm going to try on clothes. No peeping. Yep Shen helplessly sighed. Nowadays nobody believes the truth. Afterwards Yep Shen went to buy medicine at a nearby pharmacy. On the way back, when passing through a deserted area, a tall figure suddenly blocked his path. Yep Shen narrowed his eyes and recognized the woman's identity, but didn't want too much entanglement with her. So he took the initiative to step aside. Sorry Inspector Bai Liling, I'm very busy right now and can't entertain you. Just as Yep Shen took a few steps, Bai Liling's icy voice rang out. The Chen clan matter was your doing right? Wretched Yep Shen of the damned Yep clan. Didn't expect a powerful expert like you as the trash of the Yep clan from before. But before the words left her mouth, a big hand instantly shot out, grasping her throat and lifting her up. A deadly sensation spread through her body. Bai Liling struggled to speak. Some matters can't be explained for now. I just want to share a meal with you. A few seconds later, Yep Shen finally released Bai Liling. He coldly said, no need for a meal. Don't bother me again in the future. After speaking he left without a backward glance. Bai Liling stared at Yep Shen's retreating back, countless questions swirling in her mind. At his age, he had long passed the optimal period for cultivating ancient martial arts. Even if he desperately cultivated for five years, it's impossible to become this powerful. Just what had he experienced in those five years? After escaping Bai Liling, Yep Shen returned to the apartment and briefly processed the medicinal ingredients he just bought. He pondered that he should take advantage of when Sun Di was sleeping to borrow her vibrating pot for alchemy. After the vibrating pot's timer sounded, thick smoke billowed from the pot. Yep Shen felt a headache coming on. If he had known, he would have brought the old man's alchemy pot. He fumbled in the dense smoke, gathering up the pills inside. Looking at the five irregularly shaped pills in his palm, Yep Shen felt slightly disappointed, but they were more than enough to treat Sham Hai Feng. Early next morning, a sleepy Sun Di stepped out of her room. She curiously looked at Yep Shen hurrying out. Where are you going so early? Yep Shen indifferently said, going to heal illness and save lives. Call me if anything comes up. Sun Di frowned, always talking nonsense. You look nothing like a doctor at all. After Yep Shen left, Sun Di sat down on the sofa depressed. It'll soon be the anniversary of the Yep clan's destruction. After five years I'll probably be the only one making offerings. She sighed again. Don't know what karma the Yep clan created to meet this fate when they were perfectly fine. At this moment outside the high rise, a girl anxiously looked around expectantly. Not far away, two men were whispering. Brother, guess if that pretty girl is waiting for a man or woman. The fat one confidently said, definitely a girlfriend. A girl driving a luxury car must have family background. She'd never sacrifice for a man. The rooster-haired man nodded in agreement. Brother's analysis makes sense. Then at this time another voice chimed in. I think you analyzed it wrong. The two men immediately looked over. The fat one pushed up his thick glasses and said, Anyway, I'm the secret crush of hundreds of beautiful girls in games. Pointing at Yep Shen he said, And you are? You understand women better than me? Yep Shen shook his head. I truly don't understand women, but at least that girl is waiting for me. Hearing this, the two burst out laughing. The fat one sneered. If you want to pick up girls, go look in a mirror first. Even handsome me doesn't dare approach. At this moment, Sham Mengjia spotted Yep Shen, her heart fluttering to the ground. She rushed to Yep Shen's side. Mr. Yep, you finally came. I've waited so long for you. 
As the two men froze dumbfounded, Sham Mengjia took Yep Shen's hand and led him onto her car, leaving the two petrified on the spot. Soon the two arrived at the Sham family villa. Sham Hai Feng looked at the black misshapen pills before him, hesitantly asking, Is it true that just swallowing these pills will cure me? No need for acupuncture or decoctions. Yep Shen nodded. Directly swallow all five pills together. Hearing Yep Shen's confirmation, Sham Hai Feng discarded all doubts. Regardless of any issues, he directly tossed the pills into his mouth. The instant they went down, a strange sensation surged up. Then the pills immediately dispersed within his body, the effects fiercely taking hold. Sham Hai Feng seemed to feel his whole body wrapped in a warm current, his entire being feeling unprecedented comfort. He had never experienced this before, much less could describe it in words, even more intense than the union of life. Without hesitation he grabbed Yep Shen's hand. Mr. Yep, Sham Hai Feng will never forget your life-saving grace. Then he handed over a bank card. This is your treatment fee of 100 million. Please accept it. Yep Shen took the card saying, accepting a treatment fee is just a transaction. No need to thank me. Sham Hai Feng didn't refute and continued. I have an unused house near daddy apartments. This is the key, I hope Mr. Yep will accept it. Also, I hope Mr. Yep can indulge me with sharing a meal. Yep Shen thought it over and finally took the key. It was convenient for storing medicinal ingredients. As for the meal invite, he intended to decline but reconsidered that Sham Hai Feng was a businessman after all. He surely knew quite a bit of market info, for example about Tianzheng Group that his father had painstakingly built over a lifetime, but was seized after the Yep clan incident. Still didn't know what became of it. After a few seconds weighing it, he said, I'll take the house, but for the meal, allow me to host you tomorrow night. I'll send the location then. Yep Shen left those parting words and headed for the exit, leaving Sham Hai Feng's residence. Yep Shen rushed straight to Rendic Hall. Going past the Grand Hall, he entered the rear garden filled with medicinal ingredients. At this time, Chu Rendic walked up behind. Mr. Yep, these ingredients just arrived and are guaranteed supreme quality. Yep Shen had to admit, whether in age or freshness they exceeded his expectations. He couldn't help appraising Chu Rendic, Elder Chu is kind. Total up the cost, Chu Rendic wanted to gift them for free but knew the other wouldn't agree. So he quoted a very low price, 5 million to our Rendic hall will do. Of course Yep Shen knew the value of this batch, at least over 10 million. He thought it best to repay this kindness debt. So he had made up his mind. He wrote a few lines on the paper, also sketching a human body diagram with some inscrutable lines. After finishing, Yep Shen tore the paper and gave it to Chu Rendic, pass this to your granddaughter. If she doesn't understand, let her master see it. This is very important. Chu Rendic nodded and took it, but not being an ancient martial artist himself, he didn't understand what was written. While he was pondering this, Yep Shen added, That's right Elder Chu. I want to ask if you know where to buy an alchemy furnace in Shanghai? Chu Renduk's pupils suddenly constricted. Could Mr. Yep also know alchemy? Legend says China's alchemists disappeared over 1000 years ago. Though some pills still circulate on the market, they're all leftovers from millennia ago, extremely precious. Though alchemists surely still exist, their numbers are minuscule. Any ancient martial family in China with just one alchemist's aid would be like turning into a dragon. He further associated this with Yep Shen ordering so many ingredients. Could it be for alchemy? Seeing Chu Rendic say so much, Yep Shen awkwardly smiled. Elder Chu misunderstands. How could I know alchemy? I just like collecting alchemy furnaces. Chu Rendic was slightly disappointed, but said an alchemy furnace would likely appear at an auction in five days. After getting the intel he wanted, Yep Shen left his contact info and headed for the exit. Not long after Yep Shen's departure, Chu Tujian and her master Tian Yuanming returned to Rendic Hall. Chu Rendic chatted a bit before handing over Yep Shen's paper. Chu Tujian saw the messy writing and strange diagrams, completely baffled. So she tossed it away like trash. At this time, Tian Yuanming snatched up the paper. With just a glance, one second later his eyes widened, his shocked expression as if not believing them. He excitedly grabbed Chu Renduk's shoulders. Elder Chu, hurry take me to meet this master. He has done me and Tujian a great favor. Chu Rendic was now a bit confused, curious what was written on the paper. 
Tian Yuanming noticed he had lost composure and quickly explained. The incomplete Seven Sons Heart Method Tujian and I Cultivate was accidentally obtained in my youth. At the start, my strength indeed rapidly increased and my realm leapt up. But later I increasingly discovered bigger issues, even affecting my organs. Hearing this, Chu Tujian suddenly understood. No wonder I felt uncomfortable cultivating these past days. Could it be adverse reactions from this incomplete method? Tian Yuanming consoled Chu Tujian, no need to fear. Your cultivation level is still shallow, not too affected. On the other hand, if I continue cultivating, I may die from organ failure unless I destroy my cultivation. Hearing this, even Chu Rendic felt frightened. All this time Tian Yuanming had protected the Chu clan's peace. If anything happened to him, the Chu clan would surely be impacted. Just as he didn't know what to do, a sly voice laughed. That was before. Now this paper has supplemented the method's defects. Truly the writing of gods and immortals. From now on there will be no more adverse reactions. Tujian, we have met our benefactor. Chu Tujian was stunned. Her master's towering image had completely collapsed, replaced by the aloof and arrogant shadow of that Yep Shen. His destiny was to leave an indelible mark on her martial path. The youth with just some black pills revived a terminally ill tycoon. Not only receiving 100 million in treatment fees, he also obtained a luxurious villa worth tens of millions. Based on the address printed on the back of the key, Yep Shen found the villa Sham Hai Feng had gifted him. The nearly thousand square meter villa made one's eyes light up. The dazzling decor style, with just the over 100 square meter kitchen alone. Yep Shen stood before the floor to ceiling glass windows, an indescribable loneliness welling up in his heart. Though smaller than this villa, the Yep family home of those days was filled with a happy family. Now only he remained. He seemed to see that night five years ago at Wanyu Mountain Villa like a nightmare, Tian Deng Mountain the burial place of his parents' remains. At this time, Yep Shen's entire body emitted an icy aura tempered from countless struggles between life and death these past five years. The doorbell suddenly rang, pulling Yep Shen back to reality from hatred. Opening the door, he saw movers unloading medicinal ingredients. Yep Shen couldn't help sighing. Luckily there was this building, otherwise he really wouldn't know where to store this pile of ingredients. At this time, Chu Rendik walked up to Yep Shen, with Chu Tujian beside him and a middle-aged man whose bearing clearly indicated an ancient martial artist. Before Yep Shen could ask, the other had stepped forward directly kneeling before him. This lowly one is Tian Yuanming, deeply grateful for Master Yep's life-saving grace. Yep Shen was a bit surprised. He searched his memory but had no impression of this person at all. Tian Yuanming quickly explained, to be honest, I'm Tujian's master. The method you modified didn't just help me break through a decade-long bottleneck, but also eliminated the adverse reactions. From now on, you are my life's benefactor. Yep Shen suddenly understood, but then pondered another issue. Why do you call me Grandmaster? Are Grandmasters that amazing? Hearing this, Tian Yuanming was stunned speechless. As a martial Grandmaster, yet not knowing the realm divisions of ancient martial artists, this is basic entry knowledge for cultivators. Seeing everyone stunned, Yep Shen hurriedly made up an excuse. I just came down from seclusion in the mountains, so I'm unfamiliar with martial realm divisions in China. Tian Yuanming suddenly realized, so Grand Master Yep has always cultivated in deep mountains. Then let me arrogantly explain China's martial system to Grand Master Yep. It's divided into four realms, external classics, internal classics, semi-divine transformation, and divine transformation Grand Master. And each realm has three stages, small success, great success, and peak. For example, Tujian just entered the internal classics realm. While Grandmaster Yep is surely a divine transformation Grandmaster that countless martial experts admire. Yep Shen narrowed his eyes. This division was different from what the old man had told him, but it made sense. How could martial arts compare with his cultivation method? According to the old man, realms were truly divided into primordial body, primordial beginning, energy motion, separation and unity, proper origin, divine wandering and even more terrifying realms beyond that Yep Shen's level couldn't comprehend yet. His current realm was the fifth stage primordial beginning. Based on Tian Yuanming's words, martial grandmasters were probably between primordial beginning and energy motion, much stronger than he expected. 
He wondered which realm the one in the capital was at. A grandmaster? Or beyond grandmaster? Yep Shen pondered briefly before asking. How many grandmasters are there in China? Tian Yuanming considered for a few seconds. The exact number I'm unsure of, but most grandmasters surely have ties with the major families. Those truly in control must have martial experts beside them. At this time, Chu Rendik supplemented. Take for example Shanghai's four great clans, ranked from strongest to weakest, Su clan, Zhao clan, Lu clan and Chen clan. Even the secluded old patriarch of the weakest Chen clan was a grandmaster, though sadly he was destroyed by someone days ago. That fourth spot has now been replaced by the Wan clan. Yep Shen recalled that before Chen Zhengchuan died, he had borrowed the might of that clan's old patriarch. Just didn't know when that old man would return. As for the other clans, he was most impressed by Su Qingyuan. If not humiliated by her that year, he wouldn't have become so wretched, branded as trash and cripple since then. At this time, Yep Shen erupted with extremely powerful killing intent. Su Qingyuan, this time upon my return I will make you understand just who can climb higher. Feeling this killing intent, Tian Yuanming's heart stormed and evil Qi rose up. Grandmaster Yep's hands were stained with so much blood, yet so young but trained to have such heaven-shaking might? After Chu Renduk's farewell, night had gradually fallen. Seeing the bustling crowds, Yep Shen couldn't help worrying about Sundi. That girl had rushed out after a phone call and still no contact since the afternoon. Could something have happened to her family? Suddenly rumbling noises sounded, pulling Yep Shen's thoughts back. Looking around, he finally stopped before the entrance of a restaurant. If he recalled correctly, this place was opened by the family of his good friend Wang Yuhang. He was familiar with Wang Yuhang from often coming here before. Thinking of this, warmth welled up in his heart. Even during his worst times, Wang Yuhang had persisted by his side. Yep Shen then entered the restaurant, but oddly, the previously packed place now didn't have a single customer. Still, Yep Shen didn't ponder too much. Sitting down, he called out, Uncle Wang. Get me your restaurant's signature skewers and a drink. At this time, a worried woman stepped up. Sorry little brother, we're closed today. Go eat at another restaurant. If you really want our food, come support our new restaurant tomorrow. Yep Shen frowned, sensing something amiss. He noticed the patch on the woman's face, as if battered. Just then, a limping man brought over a plate of skewers before Yep Shen. Little brother, since you want to be our final customer, I'll oblige you. But eat quickly, we won't charge you. Of course Yep Shen noticed the man's wounds, but the alluring aroma made his stomach rumble first. As he picked up a skewer, about to take a bite, suddenly a chair flew at him from behind. At the moment before impact, Yep Shen abruptly stood up, waving his hand and smashing the chair into pieces. Turning around, he saw some men approaching, not bad skills, little brother. But today I'm not here for you. Hurry and scram, this restaurant is closed. Seeing them, the restaurant owner couple paled, stunned in place. The red-haired man strode up to Uncle Wong, grabbing his collar. Old Wong, you dare keep operating and serving customers without paying us protection fees? Don't need this shop anymore? Uncle Wong gritted his teeth. Spare us, Tiger Clan. We're small time, truly can't afford it. The red-haired man coldly laughed. Don't think I'm unaware. Trying to run away right? I already know your new location. Give me 50,000 protection fee tomorrow or I'll smash up your new place completely. After leaving those vicious parting words, the redhead waved for his group to retreat, but before he could take a few steps, an icy voice sounded behind him. Did I let you leave yet? The redhead halted, body stiffening. He turned to glare at the youth, talking to me? Yep Shen revealed an ominous smile. Not talking to you, then to the dog? As the words ended, Yep Shen instantly vanished then suddenly appeared before the man, slapping him hard. The redhead only felt his head spinning before plopping down on the ground. Yep Shen stared at him asking, can you take it? Just one slap and you've collapsed already. Hearing this, the redhead angrily leapt up, clenching his massive fist to strike Yep Shen. But before nearing, a fierce punch slammed into his jaw, blasting his body away like a cannonball, punching a huge hole in the ceiling. The sudden scene horrified everyone, nobody daring to step forward. Yep Shen's icy gaze swept over them. If anyone dares cause trouble again, I guarantee next time I won't be so merciful. Just a calm, emotionless voice, yet it was like plunging everyone into an ice pit. 
as if it held magic power making them automatically kneel. Then Yep Shen continued his assault, seizing the redhead's head. If you dare appear on this street again, I'll show you a fate worse than death. As his words ended, everyone shuddered and crawled away, scrambling out the door. After all had left, Yep Shen looked around at the mess, regretting not making them clean up first. At this time the restaurant owner couple approached, Uncle Wang staring at Yep Shen. Could it be Shen? Yep Shen was stunned for several seconds but still nodded. You two recognize me? Uncle Wang slapped his shoulder. Kid, seeing you grow up, how could I not remember you? Though now taller and stronger. If not looking closely, I really wouldn't have recognized you. Yep Shen chatted with the couple for a few hours before returning to the apartment. Just after opening the door, a beautiful figure in the living room caught his eye. Yep Shen didn't think too much, assuming it was Sun Di back from dealing with things. He was about to approach and ask, but when she turned around, he realized it was a completely unfamiliar face. The girl stepped forward arrogantly. What's with that look? You made a fuss demanding to see me before, yet now you don't recognize me? Yep Shen's expression instantly darkened. Ha Ruoshui, why are you here? Ha Ruoshui giggled. Sun Di is my best friend. She gave me a key for times I need to find her. What about you? Living together with her? Yep Shen's face sank. You misunderstand. I just arrived in Shanghai without a place yet, so Sun Di took me in. He glanced at Ha Ruoshui, sensing her aura was very normal, not on the verge of calamity like the old man claimed. Stepping aside, he said, as you see, Sun Di isn't home now. Can't you two discuss work matters at the company? Ha Ruoshui looked serious. I can't reach her and she was absent from today's meeting. Do you know where she went? Yep Shen frowned, a hint of unease arising. Ignoring Ha Ruoshui, he turned and walked out. Seeing Yep Shen disregard her, Ha Ruoshui angrily clenched her fist, relying on holding that damned formula. But she quickly calmed herself. She had hired investigators before but oddly, there was zero information on Yep Shen. Meaning his data was protected by someone highly positioned, inaccessible to ordinary people. Ha Ruoshui took a deep breath, swallowing her irritation. His formula is too important to be impulsive. On the other side, Yep Shen blankly stood below the high rise. In a city as big as Shanghai, lacking an intelligence network is like searching for a needle in the sea. Relying only on himself would make finding one person very difficult. He hadn't intended to get involved with that man, but now it seemed unavoidable. As the reincarnation successor and alchemist respected by countless martial experts, yet now having difficulties finding a girl, he really hadn't wanted entanglement with that man, but now it appeared unavoidable in Kanglong Tower, the ring of a phone attracted the man's attention. Only five others in the world had this number, who could it be? He calmly answered, but hearing the voice, his expression froze. It's me. Don't try tracing this call or I'll destroy everything I've given you, including your life. Help me find someone named Sun Di, manager of Wame Group. I want to know where she is and if she's in danger. You have five minutes. The man stared at the phone after the abrupt hang up, his whole body trembling. Three years, I've kept this phone for three years. Day and night waiting, and finally the call came. My lord. Five minutes later, Yep Shen's phone rang. I've uncovered Sunday's whereabouts. After leaving the apartment yesterday afternoon, she drove to Shanghai Hospital No. 5. My sources show she's gathering 70,000 yuan for surgery fees. I have much more detailed intel. Do you need it sent over? Yep Shen's expression sank as he hung up. Sure enough something happened, but knowing her location makes handling it easy. At that time in Shanghai Hospital No. 5, Sun Di anxiously stood outside the operating room. I've emptied my savings, even selling my car, but still lack 30,000 for the fees. Mom, Dad, really no other way? Our home money is completely drained. Only way is asking uncle to lend some. He's done well in business these years and should have savings. Your mom already called him, he should arrive soon. Sun Di slightly frowned. As expected, only uncle left to ask but he's looked down on us for years now. Really don't want to rely on him at all. Suddenly, two vulgar nouveau riche voices sounded, slowly approaching. Ying Kei, Xiaozhang, for something so major, why only look for me now? Before even nearing, the man spotted Sun Di by the door. My my, just a few years not seeing you, little Sun Di's become so beautiful. Truly didn't notice before. Seeing them arrive, 
Sun Di's parents had a glimmer of hope. Yingfu, you know the situation. We really have no other way now. But the man just raised both hands. What a pity, if this had happened a bit earlier it would have been good. Now business is tough and I don't have idle money anymore. His face showed contempt. Looking at you all so poor, could you even afford it? At this time, Sun Di's eyes welled up with tears. But uncle, if the surgery isn't done now, Xiao Zhang will die. The man remained indifferent and aloof. The woman beside said, Dear, remember what Director Li said last time we ate? Weren't you joking about wanting to introduce a partner to Director Li's stupid son? With Sun Di so pretty, it definitely wouldn't be an issue. If the wedding succeeds, what worries about promotion from Director Li? The man suddenly realized, Why didn't I think of that? Though Director Li's son is stupid, he likes girls. Sun Di is definitely suitable. The woman also giggled at Sun Di. Sun Di, do you have a boyfriend yet? Though your uncle's business isn't going well, Xiao Zhang's life is more important. Money can be figured out. Her tone turned serious. I heard Director Li's son at Hangxing Architectural Materials has been looking for a wife recently. If you marry into the Li family, forget your brother's illness, our entire Sun clan can rely on you. Sundi's parents immediately cut in. Sister-in-law, what nonsense are you saying? Selling our daughter? Little D stopped schooling and worked hard for this family. I can't wrong her like that. The woman disagreed. Don't make it sound so awful. It's not selling your daughter. Everything is Sundi's choice. She may even want to marry into that family. Think about it. Xiao Zhang is only 14 with a long life ahead. Can you just watch him die like this, when you're his sister who saw him grow up? Sundi's parents sorrowfully looked at their daughter. As a father I'm truly a failure. Why didn't I earn more money in this lifetime, now making my daughter suffer? Is this my family's fate? Seeing this, the woman secretly rejoiced. They continued fanning the flames. Marrying rich is good. The whole family won't lack money in the future. And you should know Xiao Zhang's medical costs later will be substantial too. At this moment, a voice suddenly sounded behind the two. Who dares marry off my girlfriend? Sun Di was stunned, unbelievingly looking towards the entrance. She saw Yep Shen slowly approaching. Foolish girl. Why hide your brother's illness from me? Do you see me as your boyfriend or not? Sun Di's parents looked at Yep Shen. Your Sun Di's boyfriend. How come I never heard her mention you? Yep Shen directly hugged Sun Di. Uncle, auntie, you know Sun Di's shy personality. The woman beside saw her good affair disrupted and angrily pointed at Yep Shen. Nonsense, she just said she was single. Yep Shen smiled at Sun Di. She doesn't believe us, let's prove it. Sun Di's face flushed slightly. This guy's helping resolve my troubles, have to cooperate. Blushing, she kissed Yep Shen's face. Seeing their intimacy, the couple finally believed he was Sun Di's boyfriend. But they wouldn't relinquish the benefit before them so easily. Sun Di. You should know surgery fees are high, not every man can afford them. Yep Shen indifferently said, It's just 40,000, I already paid on the way here. But the two refused to give up, casually taking out 40,000? Stop boasting, where's the receipt? Must have one for paying. Yep Shen hadn't expected them to be so serious. He thought to himself he rushed over so quickly, when would he have time to pay? By the time he finished paying, Sun Di would have been sold off by these two dogs. He calmly pretended. I didn't pay the hospital, but paid Shanghai's best doctor, Yep Shen. He'll cure Xiao Zhang. The woman continued questioning, Yep Shen doctor? No such person in Shanghai. Never heard of him before. Or is this so-called Yep Shen doctor you? Yep Shen had to admire this woman. She was surely an ex-detective. Truly hard to fool her eyes. Right, I'm Yep Shen. The couple immediately burst out laughing. You a genius doctor? Then I'm an immortal. Ha ha ha, laugh me to death. Their laughter attracted others' attention. An old man appeared at the door. Family of the patient, please don't make a ruckus in the hospital. The man suddenly recognized the old man. Dr. Chu, long time no see. Remember me? I'm Sun Yingfu, we had a meal together before. But the old man caught sight of the youth behind him and his expression changed. Shoving the man aside, he rushed towards Yep Shen. Didn't expect to meet you here. Last time at the shams truly opened my eyes. The old man's fawning stunned everyone present. Yep Shen looked at him puzzled. Who are you? Shams? Ah, little Chu. You've gotten fatter recently. This old man had a strange habit of wanting to touch men. 
Oh Yep Shen doctor, long time no see. Yep Shen suspiciously asked. When did we meet before? The old man awkwardly said. Yep Shen doctor doesn't remember? We met at the shams last time. Yep Shen recalled. Going to the shams last time, there seemed to be someone like you beside madam. So you're not a fraud, I thought you were a doctor who only scams the wealthy. At this time, Sun Yingfu secretly rejoiced. This brat looks like a hooligan fraud. Chu just flattered him a bit yet he's so disrespectful already. This brat's done for. He then mocked Yep Shen. Dr. Chu, this brat's a hooligan fraud. Don't let him fool you. The old man glanced back at Sun Yingfu. Mr. Yep, who is this person? Yep Shen indifferently said. Just a noisy stranger. The old man then snapped his fingers and two burly guards immediately appeared. These two have been noisy and severely disturbed other patients' treatment. I suspect they have rabies. To prevent viral spread, I suggest quarantining them. The guards directly seized the couple and dragged them out, ignoring their pleas. Yep Shen looked at the old man meaningfully. Didn't expect your medical skills mediocre, but your malicious tricks quite ruthless. The old man chuckled happily when suddenly a hand pulled his sleeve. Yep Shen, please help beg for me. We'll definitely pay the full surgery fees. But before Yep Shen could speak, the old man snapped his fingers again. A doctor immediately appeared and the old man said solemnly, prepare the case for patient son Xiaojong. I'll personally pay his surgery fees. After arranging everything, he again fawned over Yep Shen. Dr. Yep, do you approve of how I handled this? Yep Shen suspiciously asked. Xiaojang surgery, you'll be doing it? Can you handle it? The old man looked at Yep Shen with determined eyes. I'll operate personally, there definitely won't be any issues. Then Yep Shen took out a paper. This is an introductory acupuncture manual. It will greatly improve your medical skills. The old man accepted the paper. Didn't expect this to be the long lost qi and blood acupuncture. With your guidance, my skills will surely progress tremendously. At this time, Yep Shen also took out a card. That's right, how much are the surgery fees? I'll pay you directly. The old man waved his hand. No need, no need. I'm doing the surgery, why pay? He solemnly added. Please be at ease, leave everything to me. Sundi's family felt it unbelievable that Xiao Zheng's fees were resolved so simply. Just who was their little D's boyfriend a while later, they left the hospital. Little D, go rest first. Your parents are here. I have something to discuss with you. I know you and Yep Shen are dating, but cohabitation has risks. Before marriage, you two should take safety precautions. Hearing this, Sun Di was both embarrassed and angry. Dad, what nonsense are you saying? Yep Shen walked over joking. Didn't expect your dad's thinking quite open. How can you eavesdrop on others' conversations? Yep Shen helplessly said. It's not my fault my hearing is good. You're only good at making excuses. Let's drive home. Oh right, my car was repossessed. I'll take leave tomorrow to see if I can get it back. Yep Shen gently smiled. Aren't your car keys with me? When was it repossessed? Sun Di's eyes widened. These are my car keys, even the keychain is the same. Yep Shen continued. When the finance company was driving it away, I happened to catch them. As your boyfriend, of course I had to get it back. Before Yep Shen could finish, Sun Di rushed into his arms, burying her face in his chest. Thank you, Yep Shen. Yep Shen hugged her comfortingly. Silly girl, I'm the one who should be thanking you. On the drive back, Sun Di grew more curious and couldn't help asking Yep Shen. Why did you help me? Why should I thank you? Is it because I took you into my home? Yep Shen smiled. You'll probably find out tomorrow. Hearing this, Sun Di was slightly stunned. Tomorrow? More mystery from you. Suddenly the temperature in the car dropped and Sun Di shivered. Yep Shen, I strangely feel cold. Is the AC broken? Yep Shen's expression changed as he sensed the strong murderous aura in the icy air. He looked at Sun Di. Don't ask anything after this, but you need to clearly hear every word I say. First, after I get out, immediately drive back to the apartment at top speed. Absolutely do not stop, no matter what sounds you hear or see, just keep driving. Second, once home, hide my phone in my room. Third, use my phone to call the most recent number. After they pick up, tell them to send their strongest person to your place within half an hour. If you kneel and apologize now, I'll consider sparing your life. Yep Shen's expression was indifferent as he coldly assessed Su Qingyuan before looking away, not bothering with her. 
His only thought right now was whether he could catch the car in time. Seeing Yep Shen ignore her, Su Qingyuan wanted to explode. Her body ignited as murderous intent filled her eyes. A second later, she attacked Yep Shen. A piercing sound rang out as her hand clutched for Yep Shen's neck. He tilted his body to dodge her strike. Immediately after, Yep Shen's hand transformed into a claw, seizing Su Qingyuan's arm while she was still midair. With a light flick, he threw her over his shoulder and she tumbled to the ground Su Qingyuan was completely incredulous. Her strength was not weak among martial artists, so how did she have no power before this man? She no longer had her usual haughty bearing, pathetically sprawled on the ground a while later, Su Qingyuan struggled to get up, still threatening. Brat, no matter who you are, offending my Su clan means you'll never live in peace, unless hiding under the imperial capital's protection all your life. Otherwise, only death awaits you. Yep Shen coldly glanced at her, then covered Su Qingyuan's mouth before lifting her up. He coldly said, a foul-mouthed woman like you need some correcting. A while later, Yep Shen raised Su Qingyuan in his hand and brought her over a trash can. Su Qingyuan seemed to realize something, struggling desperately, but he didn't let her escape. With a crash, Yep Shen flung her straight into the trash can. Only her frantically flailing legs sticking out Yep Shen amusingly looked at the scene and indifferently said, This is where you belong. Then he pivoted and left without a backward glance Su Qingyuan shook her whole body, tipping over the trash can. By the time she crawled out, her former beauty was gone. Her entire body was smeared with filth as she fiercely watched Yep Shen's departure, wishing she could shred him into a hundred pieces at midnight. Yep Shen returned to Grand Capital Apartments but the earlier scene reminded him of events from five years ago. Though Su Qingyuan was hateful, she was unrelated to his parents' deaths and didn't deserve death, so just teaching her a lesson was enough. Of course, if Su Qingyuan dared go too far, Yep Shen wouldn't hesitate to kill her if needed, even if he disliked killing women. If later investigated and the Su clan had intervened back then, the Su clan would also disappear from Shanghai. Thinking this, Yep Shen opened the door and entered the home. Now past midnight, he guessed Sun Di was asleep already and didn't want to disturb her. Pushing open his room door, Yep Shen was stunned for a moment. A beautiful, alluring figure lay on his bed, a girl sleeping with her back to him but Yep Shen reasoned. She's probably still frightened from that day, so slept in my bed. He smiled helplessly, deciding not to overthink it. Removing his outer garment, he gently climbed into bed to sleep early next morning. Sunlight streamed through the window onto Yep Shen's face. He woke up with a long yawn, rubbing his eyes. Sun Di, what time is it? But turning to look, his eyes widened in utter shock. The woman beside also bolded up, her face full of embarrassment and anger as she stared at Yep Shen. Why are you here? Yep Shen was slightly embarrassed, glancing at Ha Ruoshui. He slowly asked, I should be asking you why you're here. But just as Yep Shen finished speaking, another figure entered the room. Yep Shen, you're back already? Didn't you say you wouldn't return last night? But seeing their disheveled clothes, Sun Di froze, blankly looking between the two, at a loss for words a man returns home at midnight and sleeps in the same bed as his girlfriend's best friend. Just now, Sun Di had walked in to see their messy clothes and froze, staring at Yep Shen. Didn't you say you wouldn't be back last night? Did you two do anything last night? Ha Ruoshui awkwardly said, of course nothing happened just an accidental mishap. Don't overthink it. She then remembered last night, her mother had suddenly come to Shanghai saying that has encountered an incident, ordering her to return within a week. But if she returned, she'd certainly be forced to marry that man. So she fled, looking for Sunday to drink away her sorrows. Getting drunk, she ended up sleeping over. Otherwise how could she not have noticed this guy beside her at this time? Yep Shen also felt extremely embarrassed. How could he forget Ha Ruoshui was staying with Sundi? But he reasoned he didn't do anything too out of line last night, though he did hug her all night with some physical contact. He then said, Anyway what's done is done. I'll take responsibility with you. But now tears streamed down Ha Ruozu's face. Take responsibility? With what? You're just a normal person. Do you know the burden I bear? We're not of the same world. Hearing this, Yep Shen let out a cold laugh. Indeed we're not the same world. He then turned and walked out. Outside the room, his phone rang. Answering it, Tham Haywa's voice sounded, Mr. Yep, there's news on Tianjung Corporation. 
Yep Shen's eyes lit up as he asked. What's the situation now? The other end quickly replied. Our legal team found evidence of Tianzheng's intentional theft, but there are procedural issues making it very difficult to resolve, because. Not waiting for him to finish, Yep Shen interrupted. No need to explain much, I trust you. Just tell me what I should do and what the outcome will be. Tham Haihua continued. We have a file that needs Trin Gun Min's signature. Also, Tianzheng, or Qing Group, is currently controlled by a shady force called Tan Man. They need to be eliminated. Hearing this, Yep Shen calmly nodded. I can do what you said. If these two matters are resolved, can you regain Tianzheng Corporation within three days? Tham Haihua excitedly said, no problem. As long as Mr. Yep succeeds, I'll take back Tianzheng within three days. After hanging up, Tham Haihua felt somewhat astonished and suspicious. If Mr. Yep really succeeds, it shows his capabilities far exceed my imagination. Just what kind of person am I pursuing that night? A young man appeared outside Qing Group's building, murmuring. According to Yep Langtian's intel, Trin Gun Min is currently negotiating business here. His eyes instantly chilled. Trin Gun Min, are you ready? Entering the building, Yep Shen took the elevator to the 29th floor. The interior was as Yep Langtian's intel described 33 floors total but the elevator only went to the 29th. The remaining floors needed special access passes. Floors 29 to 31 were work offices for appearances. Floor 32 gathered Tan Man's vicious disciples to handle illegal deals. Trin Gun Min was currently on the 33rd floor, requiring special methods to reach. Thinking this, Yep Shen went to a secluded corner and placed his palm on the glass wall. Strands of qi converged towards his hand, instantly raising the temperature. Ripples appeared on the sturdy glass and soon, the wall melted into a large hole. Yep Shen lowered his hand, a smile at his mouth's corner. Without hesitation, he strode to the window's ledge and leapt onto it. The next second, air currents surged under Yep Shen's feet as he bent his knees, rocketing upwards meanwhile on the 32nd floor, the Tanman gang was gathered, chatting amongst themselves. Suddenly, a deafening sound entered two men's ears. The scar-eyed man was immediately alert. What sound was that? Attackers? Or some fool shooting again? He instructed the men before him. You three, go check it out. Just as he finished speaking, an icy voice sounded behind him. No need to search, I'm right here. Everyone immediately stood up, glaring fiercely at Yep Shen. Who are you? Do you know where this is? Yep Shen's eyes flashed with surging murderous aura. I'm the last person you'll meet in this life. This was a place even hoodlums didn't dare enter, filled with innumerable gang leaders. Yet now a youth had infiltrated and provoked them. The scar-eyed head glared furiously at him, shouting, Brat, how'd you get in here? Seeking death? Just as he spoke, a flash of light streaked past him, abruptly silencing his voice. He then crashed down motionless. The rest paled, slowly retreating back. But Yep Shen wouldn't let these vicious criminals go so easily. Leaving even one alive would be a sin at the same time on the 33rd floor, a middle-aged man was negotiating with a blonde man. Sensing commotion below, the blonde man frowned. Trin Gun Min, seems there's a disturbance downstairs, shouldn't you check it out? But Trin Gun Min disagreed, leisurely saying it was probably the brothers gambling, got into an argument, nothing major. Besides, Tan Man experts guarded this floor, nothing would happen. The blonde man slightly nodded then that's good. Let's continue. My country Mexico has sincere intentions this time. Just provide the airport blueprint for Jiangnan province, and all of Mexico's future trade at the Shanghai border will be under your management. The two men behind Trin Gun Min paled. Handing over the blueprint would threaten VM Ha's safety, it was treason. But Trin Gun Min just coldly laughed. So what if it's treason? At most you get a firing squad. Don't forget you drug and arm smugglers already have enough crimes for multiple death sentences. Why still worry about that? After he spoke, the blonde man held up a finger, saying, Mr. Trin, I have one more condition. My country Mexico agrees to provide your corporation with 10 highly precise automatic machines. Carefully consider this. Each one is worth 50 million on the market. Seeing the generosity, Trin Gun Min grinned broadly and quickly nodded. Your country is truly sincere, we have no reason to refuse. Just as the two were about to shake hands in agreement, a deafening explosion suddenly rang out. The wall blasted apart, 
countless rubble flying amidst the thick dust. Trin Gun Min's group startled violently at the blast, looking over in dismay to see a figure slowly emerging from the dust, sensing the oppressive murderous aura as he neared Yep Shen had heard the earlier negotiation. His eyes flashed with fury at this national trader working for foreigners. Trin Gun Min's face stiffened, but recognizing him, he recalled the Yep family's death five years prior, Yep Shen. After a stunned moment, he tried suppressing his fear and shouted, Guards! Guards! Yep Shen coldly laughed. No use calling, they won't answer. Because they're all sleeping permanently. Trin Gun Min paled, aghast. How can that be? They were top masters. A second later, a stack of documents slammed into his face. Yep Shen pointed and said, Sign this for me. Seeing the file contents, Trin Gun Min coldly laughed. Unconditional transfer of ownership contract. This brat's truly crazy, even daring to take Ching Group's shares. At this time, the blonde man also acted, snapping his fingers and saying to the guard behind him, You, go kill him for me. The guard nodded, taking out a Gatling rotary cannon from his pocket and aiming it at Yep Shen. A second later, his muscles bulged as the barrels rapidly spun, unleashing endless flaming bullets. But to Yep Shen, such heavy weaponry was like a child's toy. An air wall materialized before him, seemingly halting the bullets midair. A few seconds later, Yep Shen raised a finger with condensed death chi, coldly saying, I've seen many heavy arms, but don't like using them. Returning them to you all. As he spoke, the guard's body was powerfully slammed away, his muscular frame crumpling down. The blonde man's eyes widened, unbelieving Yep Shen mocked. What, that's it? At this time, the two men behind Trin Gun Min immediately attacked, snorting disdainfully. Just minor skills, practicing ancient martial arts a few years yet daring to act wantonly here. Yep Shen indifferently said, half-step manifestation realm, could be considered experts in Shanghai. But compared to me, you're still far off. After speaking, his figure shot forth, fingers sharp as claws, lightly sweeping across their chests. Their bodies were powerfully blasted away Trin Gun Min froze at the scene, inwardly raging storms. Martial arts grandmaster, so young yet reaching grandmaster level. How strong was this man? Killing two half-step manifestation realm experts in an instant, those around didn't even see how he attacked the blonde man was also terrified inwardly. He bit his tongue to stop the trembling, forcing a smile. I won't interfere with you all anymore. Discuss slowly, I'll take my leave first. Yep Shen glanced at him with icy eyes. A second later, he kicked towards the blonde man's chest. The man's body suddenly convulsed as blood gushed from his chest, leaving a fist-sized hole. Seeing the bloody scene, Trin Gun Min panickedly waved his hands and screamed, legs weakening as he sat on the ground. Now only two remained in the room, Trin Gun Min and Yep Shen. The atmosphere was extremely tense. Yep Shen looked at Trin Gun Min, gesturing for him to come over. You, come sign this for me. Trin Gun Min shakily picked up the documents and hurriedly nodded, taking out a pen to sign with trembling hands. He then crawled over to Yep Shen, holding out the contract in both hands, begging. Don't kill me, I'll agree to anything. Yep Shen glanced over the contract and coldly said. Then after this, you no longer have value to exist. Trin Gun Min's face stiffened as he looked up at Yep Shen in panic, saying. What? Do you want to eliminate me entirely? Do you know Tan Man Bak's Ching group? Killing me, they won't let you off. Hearing this, Yep Shen smirked. I had only planned to target Ching group, but I changed my mind. Tonight, Tan Man will be destroyed. His eyes turned icy cold. Anything else to say? Seeing begging useless, Trin Gun Min switched to threats. Don't think you're invincible as a grandmaster. Tan Man's masters are also grandmasters. Killing me, not only will you die, Tanman will take revenge on your family. Yep Shen's expression darkened, murderous aura instantly erupting. My entire family died five years ago, at Yunyu Mountain Villa. Hearing this, Trin Gun Min's pupils dilated as he stared at the youth before him. You, you're really Yep Shen? How are you still alive? He immediately changed his attitude. Shen, listen, it was all a misunderstanding. I was close friends with your father, why would I harm good people? As he finished speaking, Trin Gun Min's face was smashed by Yep Shen's knee. Clutching his nose, he crawled on the floor but before he could rest, an icy voice sounded behind him. You deserve to speak of my father, to be my uncle. 
Trin Gun Min leaned over, begging again. Shen, please spare your uncle's life, think of our many years. At this moment, Yep Shen laughed crazily. I should spare you. Why didn't you spare my Yep family back then? My innocent parents? What wrong did they commit against you? As he spoke, he kicked again, sending Trin Gun Min's fat body flying meters away. Yep Shen then fiercely punched his face over and over. Why did you betray them? You took my family, my everything. You think I want to kill? I also wanted to study properly, live normally. Before, seeing chicken slaughtered made me shudder. But now, only hatred keeps me alive. A while later, Yep Shen leaned against a corner, panting heavily and staring at Trin Gun Min's corpse, muttering. I'll keep killing until you vile beasts are all in hell. That night, under Yep Langtian's arrangements, Yep Shen left the building. The remnants would be handled by Yep Langtian's subordinate Tun Dao Fu. Turning back to look at the building, Yep Shen's expression was extremely tranquil. Next is dealing with Tan Man. Just then, an alluring voice called out. Yep Shen, what are you doing here? Yep Shen was slightly impatient. Officer Bai Liling, I should be asking you that. Oh, criminals around? Bai Liling simply replied. Secret mission, can't disclose details. Yep Shen could only shrug. Then I also have no obligation to answer you. Just as Yep Shen was leaving, something sudden happened. A deafening explosion came from above them. They reflexively looked up to see thick smoke and dust billowing from the top floor as raging flames erupted. Suddenly, an enormous boulder plunged towards Bai Liling at extreme speed, too fast for her to dodge. In that split second, Yep Shen had vanished from where he stood, charging towards Bai Liling. As the boulder dropped, he grabbed Bai Liling and his legs explosively propelled them outside the impact zone. After reaching safety, he asked, Are you okay? Bai Liling finally came to her senses, but her legs had weakened. She leaned on Yep Shen, ears blushing. Yep Shen, thank you. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Amidst the hazy dust and smoke, another huge explosion boomed overhead. Countless debris rained down from above. Yep Shen had just released Bai Liling, who was clearly terrified. Her face pale here is the English translation using the converted character names. At this time, the top floor of the building was burning fiercely. Yep Shen shook his head helplessly, dissatisfied inwardly. Is this Tan Dao Fu style? Disregarding the lives of others, even wanting to erase evidence doesn't require blowing up the whole building. If I hadn't saved Bai Liling earlier, it would be like I killed her. While Yep Shen was thinking, he suddenly noticed two men rushing out with the crowd, both with the same tattoo on their necks. At the same time, Bai Liling beside also spotted these two men, and of course recognized the tattoo as the symbol of Tan Man. She couldn't help thinking, could this explosion have been their doing? The reason Bai Liling came to the Qing building was to investigate Tan Man. This force shied from no evil in Shanghai, like a tumor, yet the police still lacked evidence. But now there was evidence, so Bai Liling hurriedly bid farewell. Sorry Yep Shen, I have something to take care of, we'll find you after. Yep Shen slightly nodded, murmuring, truly impatient. His face then chilled. Next is seizing the opportunity to handle the aftermath. Not long after, Bai Liling followed the two men to an abandoned factory in the suburbs. To avoid stirring up trouble, she didn't report her actions to the station. Hiding in the shadows, she saw the two fumbling at a door for quite a while and guessed this could be a Tanman base or even headquarters. She circled around then used her strength to leap up at some gaps. Through the window she clearly saw the interior, just as she predicted, filled with vicious-looking armed men. Though curious what was being transported in the crates, Bai Liling didn't dare expose herself too much, only covertly taking photos as evidence here as an English translation of the passage using converted character names. However, all signals in this area had been deliberately blocked, so she couldn't call for timely backup. Just then, a shout reached Bai Liling's ears. She turned to look. The two men who had escaped the building earlier were now panicking and kneeling before a muscular man. Boss Da, please spare me, I don't know anything, the building just suddenly exploded. The brawny man said, I had planted so many people in Qing, yet only two trash like you survived. Worse, you were followed without realizing. This is a crime deserving death. Hearing this, Bai Liling's pupils contracted. She realized this, Boss Da, was an ancient martial arts master, much stronger than her. Otherwise he couldn't have easily noticed her. 
A second later, she darted for the exit but the man was faster, instantly behind Bai Liling. He stretched his claw-like hand to seize her shoulder, coldly saying, Having come here, you still hope to walk out Tanman's doors alive? He then forcefully flung Bai Liling to the ground. Shortly after, the man lifted Bai Liling up. An evil smile appeared at his mouth's corner as he said, unexpectedly a little beauty. I must enjoy you well. Bai Liling gritted her teeth, knowing she had no retreat, and coldly warned, I'm a cop. My colleagues already know of this place. You best retreat. If anything happens to me, your Tanman will surely be destroyed. She had just finished when she was fiercely tossed outside. The crimes this lord has committed already deserve endless executions. How can I be threatened by a woman like you? Today my brothers will have fun with you. If this brawny man before you wanted to be your boyfriend, could you persist not leaving home for days? The man had removed his clothes, flexing his chest muscles as an evil grin appeared. Little beauty, don't be tense. Today I just want to get acquainted with you a bit. Bai Liling angrily roared seeking death? To be frank, my father is Bai Li Hong of the Southwest Military Region. If anything happens to me, your Tan Man dying 10,000 times still won't find a burial spot. The man's expression stiffened. Of course he had heard of Bai Li Hong, a senior official. Even the big families of the capital had to give him face. But who could believe his daughter was just a cop in some tiny city? Still, a second later the man coldly laughed. So what about Bai Li Hong? We'll cleanly handle things after. Who will know? Hearing this, Bai Liling's face paled. She regretted acting alone, she shouldn't have become a cop in such a small place. Living leisurely at home would have been better right? Her expression hardened. Looks like I'll die this time. I'd rather die than let these villains dishonor me. The man approached with a lewd smile as Bai Liling prepared to bite her tongue and commit suicide. Just then, an icy voice rang out from overhead. She didn't agree, so why force her? The man's gaze froze as he hurriedly looked up through the moonlight. He saw a youth standing above, hands clasped behind his back like a grandmaster. The man suddenly looked fierce, roaring, Brat, who are you to dare come to Tanman's turf? Seeking death? Yep Shen's mouth curved into a cold laugh, then I must apologize. Today I came not just for Tanman, but to slaughter all of you. The man started in shock, you said slaughter us all? But a second later, he burst out laughing loudly, slaughter us all? Do you know how many masters Tan Man has? Even martial arts grandmasters don't dare speak like that. Pointing at Yep Shen, he ordered. Brothers, give this ignorant brat a harsh lesson to show our might. Immediately, a rain of bullets shot towards Yep Shen. As the guns fired, Yep Shen lifted his foot and leapt down from above, murderous aura condensing behind him. Like an immortal descending, his speed was extremely fast. In a flash he landed on the ground. Wherever his hands passed, bloody rays shot out. The others paled at this scene, not daring to recklessly approach. But then a man calling himself Jia the boss appeared. He gently pushed up his glasses and said, Looks like you all don't understand at all, just playing around. Any internal energy expert could do this. Daring to come to Tan Man alone, you're gutsy. As he finished speaking, his entire body leapt up as he threw a massive fist at Yep Shen but Yep Shen had already acted, his face showing mockery, too slow. A second later, Yep Shen's original position was empty. In a blink, he appeared before the boss and fiercely punched, nearly twisting Jia boss's face. He flew in a parabolic trajectory several meters away. Bai Liling had witnessed everything, inwardly shocked. Every move was lethal with no wasted motions, just like a combat machine. Why did such a fearsome person exist in Shanghai? Jia Boss was floored with one punch from Yep Shen, but this didn't make everyone else fearful. The self-proclaimed boss Da coldly laughed at the scene. Didn't expect Shanghai to have masters like you. You've likely reached the pinnacle of internal energy. However, before my perfect body, you can't even harm a single hair. If you now kneel and repent, submitting to me, I can still accept you. Just as he finished speaking, Yep Shen's figure appeared before him like a ghost. Before the man could react, Yep Shen smashed his jaw. His entire body rocketed upwards from the force. A few seconds later, the man shakily crawled up, clutching his dislocated jaw. His heart was filled with fear. He realized the youth before him was extremely dangerous the man decided to stake his life against Yep Shen. Seizing the opening, he leapt up but Yep Shen was faster. 
In a flash, another direct punch smashed into the man's organs. A second later, the man painfully clutched his stomach, face full of horror. As Yep Shen stepped forward to finish him off, the man stammered. Wait. Let's make a deal. Whatever you want, I'll agree. Weapons, women, they're yours. Hearing this, Yep Shen's eyes chilled. You talk too much. Murderous aura erupted from Yep Shen, condensing into a sharp blade that stabbed into the man's body. With a light wave of his hand, the man was sliced in half soon. The ground was littered with corpses. No one in the Tan Mon gang had survived. Bai Liling blankly took in the scene, shocked that such a mighty gang had been annihilated by him in just a moment. Now Yep Shen's gaze fell on Bai Liling. Terrified by his stare, she was paralyzed, only able to watch his hand slowly approach. Just as she thought she would be finished off, she felt her legs being parted. Shocked, she hurriedly withdrew her legs and yelled at Yep Shen, despicable lecher, taking advantage of the situation. And I thought you were a good person. Yep Shen's expression was calm. Your knee joints were dislocated with some fractures. Do you want to become disabled in the future? After speaking, a strand of qi lightly adhered to Bai Liling's knee before slowly permeating her body. A hot current suddenly swept through Bai Liling but she felt no discomfort at all. Instead, it was like being in a cozy stove. Soon, her legs fully recovered with flexibility. She couldn't help but exclaim. Didn't expect to already be healed. Thank you, Yep Shen. If you were a doctor, you'd surely become an outstanding one. Yep Shen indifferently said. I'm not interested. Go gather their phones, there should be useful evidence. I'm leaving first. Bai Liling said in surprise. It's so late. Where are you still going? There are still some remnants to clear up. After tonight, the Tan Mon gang will be gone from Shanghai. Not long after Yep Shen departed, there wasn't a single survivor left in a building on Shanghai's outskirts. Guided by clues in the phones, Bai Liling had found this place. Entering the building, a corpse in the corner caught her attention. Having long investigated Tan Mon, she recognized this was Tan Mon's leader. She was shocked that a martial arts grandmaster had died like this. From his expression, it seemed he had seen something extremely terrifying before death after an unknown time. Bai Liling finally snapped out of it and dialed her phone. Big brother, something's about to happen in Shanghai. The grandmaster actually died right in his own turf, with a look of horror after death, as if he saw something truly frightening. Far away overseas, Ying Ching had just taken Bai Liling's call and was slightly surprised hearing her voice. Junior sister, you said everyone in the video, including the grandmaster, were killed by Yep Shen? Bai Liling nodded. I think he did it alone. What's more, he saved me. Hearing this, Ying Ching's expression instantly became serious. I'll immediately come to Shanghai. Remember, absolutely no more contact with this person. He's extremely dangerous. Bai Liling felt a little worried after this. But brother's mission. Ying Ching cut her off. Nothing's more important than this man. I want to see what kind of monster Yep Shen is. The next morning, Yep Shen had disposed of the bloodstained clothes, sighing. Killing is nothing, just a bit wasteful of clothes. Just then, he noticed a very familiar figure sitting in a cafe, though her beautiful face now held a hint of melancholy. Yep Shen withdrew his gaze and shook his head. Shouldn't get too involved with her, best pretend not to see. But contrary to his wishes, Ha Ruoshui had caught sight of him. She hurriedly stood up, saying to the woman before her, Mother, wait for me a moment. Then she chased after him shouting, Yep Shen, wait. Why are you walking so fast? Yep Shen stopped, looking at her in confusion. What is it? I'm just passing by. Don't tell me you want to invite me for coffee? Fury flashed in Ha Ruizu's eyes. I haven't settled with you about you sleeping with me yesterday. Now's the chance, so help me with something as compensation. Yep Shen helplessly said. Clearly you slept with me, that's my bed. As they argued, a figure emerged from the cafe. The woman scrutinized Yep Shen for a moment before coldly asking. Ruo Shui. Who is this man? Hearing her mother's voice, Ha Ruoshui affectionately took Yep Shen's arm. Mother, why did you come out? As for his identity, he's shy, so feels a bit awkward. Madame Ha stared at Yep Shen, her tone even colder. Ruoshui, do you know the consequences of this? If that young master finds out you're cheating with another man, the Has will be in danger. Ha Ruizu's face stiffened. Fear, panic, helplessness all showed on the once formidable woman's face. 
Yep Shen also felt Ha Ruo Shui trembling slightly beside him, her fingers clutching his arm tightly. Seeing they still wouldn't let go, Madame Ha immediately shouted, Let go. Ruo Shui, you're returning with me today. The clan will take over your Wame group and from now on, you are not to take a single step outside the Haz. Ha Ruizu's eyes were brimming with tears as years of hard work were denied by a single sentence. Countless resentful words nearly made her collapse. Madame Ha took another step forward, voice slightly angry. I won't say it a third time. Ruo Shui, let go now. No man in Shanghai is worth your attachment. In Jiangnan City, you'll meet your true destiny's son. I don't care what relationship you have with this man, but you must understand, no one can defy your father's will. If you insist on staying with him, you'll only harm the boy. At the mention of father, Ha Ruoshui suddenly came to her senses. She knew Yep Shen couldn't withstand the Ha's wrath. Thinking this, she slowly let go, choosing to compromise. Yep Shen was innocent and she didn't want to harm him. So Ha Ruoshui finally released her hand just as she was about to step towards her mother. A large hand grasped her arm while another encircled her waist. A deep voice rang out. Sorry ma'am, Ruoshui can't go with you. She's pregnant with my child and I'll take responsibility. She's an heiress who, to escape her family's arranged marriage, has thrown herself into my arms in front of you. Ha Ruoshui was stunned hearing Yep Shen's words. What child? Though she had slept in the same bed, nothing shameful occurred so how could she be pregnant? Slightly angry, she raised her head to see Yep Shen's firm yet comforting gaze. She was surprised he was helping her, if she was pregnant or no longer a virgin, that man certainly wouldn't marry her. The engagement would be called off. This was the only solution seeing her gaze slowly ignite. Yep Shen turned his face away and thought inwardly. This sly girl's acting is too realistic Madame Ha's face darkened as she clutched her chest, suppressing the rage within. Yep Shen also felt extremely helpless. He didn't like Ha Ruoshui at all didn't care for her, and definitely didn't want to get involved with big clans. But when her tears fell on his arm, he softened. More importantly, after Ha Ruoshui agreed to return, a blood ray appeared on her forehead, he remembered the elders urging to protect her at all costs. Yep Shen dared confirm if she truly returned to the Haz, that blood ray would only grow until she perished Madame Ha coldly looked at Ha Ruoshui. Are that brat's words true or false? Facing her mother's interrogation, of course she couldn't reveal the truth. She answered. Mother, Yep Shen and I truly love each other. Though mentally prepared, hearing this, fury erupted within Madame Ha. She had carefully protected her daughter, yet allowed her to be defiled by a nobody. Unforgivable. Thinking this, she strode forward, seizing Ha Ruizu's shoulders and shouting, Return with me now. I'll have a doctor terminate the child. From now on, you absolutely cannot leave the has half a step. This is an order. I'll handle the wedding. Just as she finished, a hand pulled her away from Ha Ruoshui as an extremely calm voice rang out. Madam, you shouldn't force Ruoshui like this. Madam Ha immediately shoved Yep Shen away, roaring in utmost fury. What are you that you dare defile my Ruoshui? Do you know the has of Shanghai? You'll never reach us. You're not even worthy of gazing at the has ancestral shrine. Even the top shis must kneel before us. Hearing this, Yep Shen smiled, his gaze unshaken, rather brimming with confidence. He took a step forward, aura abruptly shifting, standing loftily above all as if looking down on the masses. He looked straight at Madame Ha. You don't know who you're talking to. Yep Shen's tone was calm, yet Madame Ha unconsciously took a step back. She found her aura completely collapsed before this brat. At this moment, she even felt unable to see through the youth before her. The calm voice continued. Madam, in your eyes I'm currently less than a speck of dust. But give me half a year. This Yep Shen will make you understand what it truly means to be unreachable. Just as he finished, before Madam Ha could react, Yep Shen grasped a delicate hand. Ruo Shui, let's go. A while later, Madam Ha finally came to her senses but didn't stop them from leaving. She only silently watched Yep Shen's back, quickly making a call, investigate someone for me. Yep Shen of Shanghai, recently often in contact with Ha Ruoshui. He came from the mystic Kunlun origin, the cultivation holy land countless martial arts masters aspired towards. Yet now, humiliated by a woman earlier when Yep Shen pulled Ha Ruoshui from the cafe, the two fell silent. After some time, Ha Ruoshui slowly spoke. 
sorry Yep Shen, on my mother's behalf I apologize. Though she values benefits, she isn't a bad person. Yep Shen glanced at her and indifferently said, don't overthink. I didn't do this just for you. Ha Ruoshui was slightly confused. Not for me? Could it be for someone else? She looked at Yep Shen with sparkling eyes, suddenly finding him quite handsome. But less than three seconds later, Yep Shen waved down a taxi saying, you must have a driver. I won't bother with you, I have things to do. Goodbye. After speaking, Yep Shen stepped into the taxi which soon vanished from Ha Ruozu's sight. Ha Ruoshui was a bit stunned. Could it be this guy doesn't want to linger with a beauty a second longer? But then she reconsidered, that has had centuries of history, far beyond what Yep Shen knew. She shouldn't harm him. Thinking this, she called Tang Di, best to satisfy urgent needs first at the same time, in the speeding taxi, Yep Shen was lost in thought. He knew relying solely on his own strength now would be insufficient against other forces. He needed to build his own power. For now, there was Yep Lengtian's aid, but the Jiangnan king was only suited to the shadows. He still required a legitimate force. Thinking this, a suitable target came to Yep Shen's mind. Master, take me to Longyao Bay Villa. Soon, an additional youth appeared in Shen Heiwa's home. Shen Haihua looked at Yep Shen in surprise, a rare honored guest. What brings you here, Mr. Yep? Yep Shen threw a file bag at him. Shen Haihua opened it confusedly as Yep Shen slowly said, I've settled Qing Group's affairs. Shen Haihua started in shock, eyes filled with fear. He didn't expect Yep Shen to truly get Trin Gun Min's signature, resolving it so quickly. How is this possible? How could someone so easily hand over everything? His eyes widened at a thought. Could Yep Shen have killed Trin Gun Min? But Trin had Tan Man's protection. Turns out he really did it. Is this person even human while Shen Haihua was stunned? A calm voice sounded by his ear. Last night I annihilated Tan Man. The next part relies on you. Shen Haihua immediately snapped out of it, suppressing his fear to reply, Mr. Yep, don't worry. Shen Haihua guarantees Tianjung Group will be revived within three days. Yep Shen nodded slightly. Recalling Madame Ha's words, he curiously asked, That's right Director Shen, what do you think of the Ha's in Jiangnan? Hearing this, Shen Haihua could barely compose himself, his heart nearly stopping. The Ha's have enormous influence in Jiangnan province. Their assets are truly frightening, far exceeding Qing Group. Mr. Yep, you can't be thinking of swallowing them up too. Seeing the fear in Shen Heiwa's eyes, Yep Shen waved it off. Look at you scared stiff. I just happened to ask. Shen Haihua also sighed. That's right, how could it be possible? He laughed awkwardly. But a second later, Yep Shen's expression became deadly serious. If I gave you a sword, would you dare topple the has completely? Hearing this, Shen Heiwa's face immediately distorted as storms of terror arose within. But seeing Yep Shen's solemn face, he opened his mouth. Mr. Yep, this sword belongs to Tianjung Group, right? To be frank, my group's just as capable. Yep Shen's expression was tranquil. Then let's simplify it. If I provide you a protective force hundreds of times mightier than Tan Man, and ultra profitable products, could you make Tianjung Group swallow the has within half a year? Shen Haihua thought for a while before slowly speaking. Since Mr. Yep is so serious, I'll seriously reply. Just that alone isn't enough. Aid from the gongs would be needed too. Moreover, I'm getting on in years and fear not having enough time. Hearing this, Yep Shen sank into thought, recalling Bai Liling's father also held great power. He could consider recruiting him. Yep Shen then took out a pill and gave it to Shen Haihua. For the gongs I already have a method. As for your age, it's easy to resolve. Just take this pill. It can extend your lifespan by 50 years. Hearing the last line, Shen Haihua gasped. This can prolong life 50 years? Many dream of it yet can't obtain, but I believe you. Able to save my dying self, you definitely won't deceive me. Thinking this, Shen Haihua stepped forward to receive the pill, eyes brimming with tears as he looked at Yep Shen. I agree, of course I agree. As Mr. Yep said, I can certainly make Tianjung Group an unbreakable fortress. Yep Shen nodded before heading out the door. Three days later, meet at Tianjung Group. Others will contact you for the rest. After he left, Shen Haihua stared at Yep Shen's retreating figure. He knew his fated elderly death in Shanghai was now completely changed. 
That youth had put him on a gigantic ship, not headed for this small place but the entire world time quietly flowed to nighttime. After leaving Shen Heiwa's, Yep Shen returned straight to his apartment. He was stunned seeing the living room. Two pairs of slender legs on the sofa belonged to scantily clad women with perfect curves. Ha Ruoshui smiled and greeted Yep Shen. You're back, Yep Shen? Yep Shen said helplessly. Why are you here again? With vacant mansions, must you lodge here? Ha Ruoshui glanced at him. Wame group's been taken over by the Haz. My villas also has property now, can't stay there. The bank card's also frozen. Now I can only lodge here. Yep Shen suddenly lost composure. Then where do you sleep tonight? I'll say it first. I can't share a bed with you. Just then, Tang Di walked over to mediate. Now, don't argue you two. Little Tuyit can sleep in my room. Having just spoken, Yep Shen looked at Ha Ruoshui scornfully. What's this? Tang Di's the host, yet you freeload without a care. Ha Ruoshui indifferently said, I'm not freeloading. The issue is I'm unemployed. What, should I work for you? Hearing her say this, Yep Shen sank into thought before slowly responding, Work for me. Doesn't sound bad actually. Ha Ruoshui looked at Yep Shen in surprise, then reconsidered, This guy could provide valuable medicine before, perhaps he's a hidden tycoon. As a first class young miss, she now dared forsake her rich status and consent to work for a young man. Ha Ruoshui confidently stated earlier, Speaking of work, Ha Ruoshui has never disappointed anyone. With me, your company will surely prosper. But first, you must dare use me, especially now. If you hire me, the has will certainly suppress your company. Yep Shen brushed it off. Of course I dare. It's no issue for me. Ha Ruoshui was immediately excited, hurriedly asking, Really? Great. Tell me where your company is. How much investment? What industry? Any supportive policies? Yep Shen awkwardly smiled. Temporarily still unestablished, but almost there. Industries also undecided for now. Ha Ruoshui sighed deeply, looking at Yep Shen slightly disappointed. I'm really foolish to have believed you. But on second thought, perhaps he wanted to fulfill his half-year promise to his mother, needing to strive, though still not understanding the world know that even gifting Jack Ma's Alibaba, he couldn't surpass the Haz economically. The top financial groups of Hua Haz operate in the shadows. At the same time, in a luxurious villa, Ha Ruizu's mother lazily reclined on a sofa. Age left no trace on her plump figure as she sipped red wine in her right hand. A man stood before her. Madam, based on the young miss regular health check, she's not pregnant. But recently, she drank with her friend Tang Di and stayed over that night. However, Tang Di lives with a man named Yep Shen, so a relationship can't be ruled out. Hearing this, Madam Ha could no longer restrain her anger. Standing up, she smashed the wine glass and glared fiercely at the man. Get me that brat's background. If he truly ruined Ruizu's chastity, I'll kill him. The man shakily yet cautiously spoke. Yep Shen's background is very strange. With my capabilities I couldn't uncover anything, it's like he fell from the sky. But I guess he could be the young master of the Yeps who fortunately survived the Vunhu Mountain Villa massacre five years ago. Madam Ha looked surprised. Recalling the incident from five years prior in Shanghai that even shocked Jiangnan province. After all, the Yeps had offended a powerful figure in the capital. The corners of her mouth then curled into a sinister smile. I see. That brat must be resentful his clan was wiped out and wants to cling to us has, using our might for vengeance. Clever plan. The man beside Madame Ha sank into thought. If that's truly so, why would he make a half-year promise? Perhaps he really has capabilities. Madame Ha coldly humped. Then I'll give him half a year. I want to see how he'll make the Haz unreachable to him. On the vast Huaha's lands existed a mysterious army called Longhun Destiny, handling difficult affairs for Waguo. Every member was selectively chosen from tens of thousands, each with the potential to become martial arts grandmasters. In daddy apartments, Yep Shen leaned on a balcony sighing. Despite living with two beauties, it was somewhat troublesome. Like tonight, even showering or using the bathroom led to collisions, always ending with Ha Ruoshui violently chasing him out. Thinking of this, Yep Shen furrowed his brows. Best to focus on the main issue, he had agreed to Shen Heiwa's terms today. The backing force was fine with Yep Lang Tian. Profitable products weren't difficult either, one medicinal formula would do. 
but the crux was the gong's support. He wasn't too close with Bai Liling, so even requesting aid may be rejected. He could only ask Yep Leng Tien if there were any connections just as Yep Shen prepared to leave the balcony, he suddenly sensed something. His eyes flashed coldly, directly peering at the rooftop of the opposite building. A second later, Yep Shen turned with his back to it, switching off the light and sinking into darkness. As he turned, a cold smile appeared at his mouth's corner. Wanna play hunter with me? Let's see who the real prey is. On a rooftop, an outline gradually emerged in the dark night like gloomy moonlight, Bai Liling's elder martial brother Ying Ching. His hand now lowered the binoculars as he murmured towards Yep Shen. No, this brat seems ordinary. Got beaten by a woman twice, his only skill seems to be playing basketball well. Ying Ching then retook the binoculars to re-evaluate Yep Shen, somewhat doubting if he was an ancient martial arts master. But the figure in the binoculars suddenly vanished. At the same time, Ying Ching sensed killing intent appear before him. A silhouette directly leapt into his sight, causing Ying Ching's expression to shift. This building was 80 meters tall yet Yep Shen had climbed up so quickly Yep Shen stood motionless, face expressionless as Qi ceaselessly flowed through his body, twisting the air. A second later, Yep Shen attacked. Where he stood only had afterimages as a tremendous punch shot at Ying Ching. Sensing the icy murderous aura, Ying Ching hurriedly responded with a punch. As the punches collided, a deafening boom sounded followed by a shockwave. But soon, Ying Ching regretted throwing that punch. His arm seemed oppressed by a terrifying force, as if wanting to crush his right arm. He hastily retreated to escape most of the pressure. Yep Shen also didn't expect his opponent's combat will to be so resolute. But he didn't hesitate whatsoever. In a flash, his figure spun in midair, directly becoming a fierce downwards kick. After Yep Shen's ruthless kick landed, the cement floor abruptly had a massive crater, but Ying Ching's figure was absent. Yep Shen then sensed him leaping from behind and laughed, unexpected you dodged that. Some skill indeed, but too bad you can't beat me. Just as the punch was about to land on Yep Shen, a barrier suddenly materialized behind him. Striking the barrier, a powerful counterforce blasted Ying Ching's body, trapping him midair. Now terrified, Ying Ching realized what kind of person he had provoked Yep Shen was essentially not an ancient martial artist but a cultivator. How strong was this man? A protective barrier alone could block a grandmaster's full-powered strike. Ying Ching had joined the Long Hun assault team for years, completing many extremely dangerous missions that constantly bruised death. Yet he had never felt fear like today. When Yep Shen glanced back, Ying Ching didn't hesitate to retreat and expand the distance. He also understood how Yep Shen could annihilate Tan Man and its many Grand Masters so quickly, because he wasn't a martial artist but an immortal cultivator. Thinking this, Ying Ching gritted his teeth. As he knew, cultivators were surely stronger than ancient martial artists. At least at the highest level among ancient martial artists, grandmasters could still beat the lowest level cultivators. It was still worth trying. But suddenly, Yep Shen vanished from his sight. A second later, Ying Ching saw a figure abruptly appear before him. Before he could react, a kick smashed right into his chest, agonizingly painful. Exerting full power, the kick blasted Ying Ching out like a cannonball, heavily crashing into the wall and cracking the sturdy cement. But as a grandmaster, Ying Ching only wretchedly curled up on the ground, his life not endangered. Yep Shen slowly approached as Ying Ching raised his head, face filled with horror. Brother, don't joke like this. I had no ill intent, only wanted to compete a little. But do you really want to kill me? Can we talk this out? Just as he finished, a foot stomped on his chest as an icy voice simultaneously rang out. Who exactly are you? Why monitor me? Who sent you? The shis? Or has? Now powerless to resist, Ying Ching rummaged through his belongings and took out a small green booklet, handing it to Yep Shen. I wasn't sent to kill you. We have no enmity, you can check this if you don't believe me. Yep Shen opened the identity certificate, quickly reading, Long Hun Assault Team Captain, Ying Ching. Ying Ching hurriedly nodded. I'm from the Long Hun Assault Team. Can you let me go now? Yep Shen coldly humped and tossed away the certificate as Qi condensed in his hand, Assault Team? Never heard of it. If you dare monitor me, there's a price to pay. Seeing the looming murderous aura, Ying Ching's expression shifted. Don't. 
we have a mutual acquaintance you're familiar with, Bai Liling. Hearing this name, Yep Shen stopped. You know Bai Liling? What's your relation to her? Ying Ching relaxed, quickly explaining, I'm her senior brother. She told me about you so I got curious and came to find you, only to see your capabilities and recruit you to the team. I absolutely didn't intend you harm. Ying Ching couldn't help but sigh. Didn't expect Junior Sister's name to be more useful than the Long Hun assault teams. I've run into a devil indeed. But to his surprise, Yep Shen still condensed Qi to strike. If you wanted to recruit me, you could have directly approached me. That's no reason to monitor me. Ying Ching's heart thumped again. No longer caring much, he straightforwardly said, Sorry, monitoring you was wrong of me. I apologize. On behalf of the Long Hun assault team, I guarantee I owe you a favor. If you encounter trouble in the future, I'll mobilize the Gong's forces to aid you. Hearing this, Yep Shen sank into thought. Tianzheng Group's development required the Gong leader's help. Bai Liling was the optimal choice, now this guy was delivering himself, naturally best as a cultivator, how strong was he exactly? A protective barrier alone could block a Grandmaster's full-powered strike. After being defeated, Ying Qing had no strength left to resist. He could only pledge the Long Hun assault team's name and the Gong's forces to help Yep Shen with troubles in exchange for safety. Just when Yep Shen was worried over Tianzheng Group's lack of backers, Ying Qing had delivered himself, now the optimal choice. After thinking for a moment, Yep Shen grabbed Ying Qing's collar and asked, What's the Long Hun assault team's status in Waguo? Ying Qing quickly answered, The Long Hun assault team is Waguo's third detachment targeting the occult forces of the world. In terms of status, we only take orders from the second chief and superiors. Yep Shen was surprised at the Long Hun assault team's might, but considered there were likely stronger teams as only the third detachment. Still, it was enough for Tianzheng Group. He indifferently said, I can spare you if your team agrees to ally with a corporation in Shanghai. Do we have a deal? Ying Qing looked at Yep Shen strangely. The prestigious Long Hun assault team protecting some tiny Shanghai company? Are you certain? Yep Shen nodded. I'm certain. Seeing him nod, Ying Qing continued. If I guess right, that would be your father's Tianzheng group. I can't fully decide since we have a unique nature, but I'll help contact superiors. Don't worry. Even if they disagree, I'll find another way to aid you. Yep Shen nodded before taking out a pill and giving it to him. Take this, it can swiftly heal your wounds. Receiving the pill, Ying Qing suddenly felt fear. Aside from being a cultivator, more shocking was Yep Shen having pills too he had heard of but never seen pills before. Ying Qing was no longer calm, looking at Yep Shen excitedly. Yep Shen, do you have more of these pills? Yep Shen's face held a teasing expression as he pulled out a pile of pills from his pocket, intentionally dropping some. You mean these? I have plenty. Ying Qing swallowed. Just how many pills do you have? If submitted to the state, the military would agree. Before finishing, Yep Shen interrupted. What nonsense are you saying? These aren't antiques. Why would I hand them over? If you want some, fulfill my terms first and have your leader personally come negotiate. After speaking, Yep Shen leapt down from the rooftop. Ying Ching shook his head. That esteemed figure was busy with countless matters. How could he personally seek out Yep Shen? But in any case, an extremely outstanding talent had appeared in Shanghai. Soon, Yep Shen returned to his apartment but was now helpless. Ever since two girls moved in, the bathroom was completely occupied. Now he had to queue up for everything, sighing. He took the black stone from his pillow, murmuring, My strength has increased considerably recently. Let's enter the reincarnation graveyard again and see. Not hesitating further, Yep Shen firmly grasped the stone as his mind gradually sunk when Yep Shen opened his eyes he stepped into the space within the stone once more. But surprisingly, this time he didn't get a headache or discomfort, the feeling of exclusion was also gone. He thought, could it be due to my increased strength? Just then, Yep Shen noticed a new tombstone in the reincarnation graveyard. Drawing near, he saw it engraved with, Sha Quan Sex Luo Wantian. Half a month ago during his first entry when his head exploded with pain and extreme discomfort, even getting kicked out by the gravekeeper, None of that happened now now that Yep Shen had progressed another level. He tried entering the reincarnation graveyard again and was shocked to find no discomfort this time. The space didn't eject him either but not only that, 
Yep Shen discovered a tombstone displaying text. Standing before it, Yep Shen pondered. Based on the earlier sounds in the graveyard, it seemed reaching a certain strength threshold could arouse a powerful expert's remnant will. Realizing this, Yep Shen understood he could now arouse Sha Quan Sect's Luo Wantian, so he unhesitatingly gathered qi in his palm and slowly transmitted it into the tombstone. However, when the qi left Yep Shen's body, the tombstone remained motionless as his Dantian's qi drained. Sighing lightly, Yep Shen thought, it seems my strength still hasn't reached the threshold to arouse remnant wills. Best to continue cultivating the next few days were much the same, the girls together at day, him cultivating at night. But after trying everything, Yep Shen still couldn't stir that tombstone. If it was truly an issue of insufficient cultivation level, then raising his strength now required pills. But pills from the VIP room's furnace had no effect on him, he needed those refined from a proper pill furnace. Suddenly recalling Chun Ren's mention of today's auction, yet not a peep so far, not even contact information. Just then, the phone rang and Shen Heiwa's voice came through. Mr. Yep, I've completely taken over Qing Group with entirely new staff. On the other end, Shen Haihua excitedly said, I'm currently processing the name change. The ribbon cutting ceremony can happen in a few days. Yep Shen nods approvingly. You didn't disappoint me, well done. After hanging up, a smile appeared on Yep Shen's face as he excitedly said, In a few days, I'll make everyone in Shanghai know Tianzheng Group has returned. But soon, recalling Ying Qing's lack of contact so far, Yep Shen guessed he was likely all bark. While pondering this, sudden rapid knocking sounded at the door. Yep Shen looked over in surprise, wondering who had come so early. Opening the door, he was startled to see a panting, sweaty Chun Ren, Mr. Yep, finally found you. I waited all morning at Tang Shen number one but you weren't there. Had to use some tricks to locate you. Yep Shen suddenly recalled and felt embarrassed. Sorry Elder Chun, I forgot to inform you of this address. Please come in. Chun Ren waved it off, taking out an invitation card for Yep Shen. No need, something happened at home recently that I must resolve. This is the auction invitation, just take it there directly. Yep Shen nodded gratefully. What happened? Perhaps I can help? But before finishing, Chun Rend had left, indicating something major at the Chuns as an esteemed alchemist, yet without even a basic pill furnace. Fortunately there was an auction today which he had an invite for. Since few things in this world caught his eye, Yep Shen decided to try his luck now at a five-star Shanghai hotel's lobby. Yep Shen deliberately wore a suit. Unlike his shabby clothes last time Yep Shen noticed a familiar anxious face, Chu Zixuan's dark eye circles. Spotting Yep Shen, she greeted, Mr. Yep, you're here. Yep Shen slightly nodded, sensing something wrong and asking, What's the matter? You don't look well. Chu Zixuan forced a smile, it's nothing. Since you're here, please come inside with me. She then looped her arm in Yep Shen's, entering the auction hall while introducing, Mr. Yep, we're still receiving guests now. In our circle, it's mingling time, mainly for acquaintances. Please relax. The actual auction will be upstairs later. Let's eat first. Just as she finished, a female voice called Chu Zixuan's name. Turning around, they saw a man and two women. The man stood out in flashy blue wizard robes. The woman beside him smiled mockingly at Chu Zixuan. Xuan Xuan, so you're here. Why didn't you tell me? The green witch sneered. Tell you what? It's surprising she can even come. After all, the Chuns can hardly support themselves now. Hearing this, Chu Zixuan's expression changed as she unconsciously clutched Yep Shen's arm tighter. Yep Shen asked again. What exactly happened at your home? Chu Zixuan's voice held sadness. It's nothing. Grandfather will certainly handle it. You're a guest, just focus on the auction. Though Yep Shen wanted to help, it was their family matter. If they didn't want to say, he shouldn't pry further either. While pondering this, a voice called from behind and Ha Ruoshui approached in an elegant evening gown. Yep Shen, what are you doing here? What? I was about to ask you that. Seeing this, Chu Zixuan took the chance to go to the bathroom and quickly leave. Ha Ruoshui then leaned towards Yep Shen and asked softly, Who's that girl? How do you know her? Yep Shen shook his head. She's the medicine shop owner's granddaughter, guiding me here. Speaking of which, your cards are frozen yet you still came to the auction. Don't tell me you're here to freeload? Ha Ruoshui smiled behind her hand. 
I did want to try something different since your company's not open yet. If you're participating, how much money did you bring? Yep Shen indifferently replied, around 90 million. Ha Ruo Shui looked at him scornfully, with just 90 million yet you dare come to the auction? Are you kidding? Let me tell you, it's not as simple as it appears. The one controlling this auction isn't to be offended. There's a special group who cultivate mighty abilities to invisibly kill with a wave of the hand. She looked at Yep Shen. Scared yet? Yep Shen pretended to be shocked. Incredible martial arts, so scary. As an esteemed alchemist, how formidable could he be? The man could casually take out a pill even the self-proclaimed, realm-viewing king, coveted. Earlier, seeing Yep Shen's obliviousness, Ha Ruoshui reminded him. Let me tell you, the four top families seem the strongest in Shanghai but there are more fearsome ones, the hidden martial forces like the jinns controlling this auction. It has two rounds. First is antiques for ordinary folks. Second relates to martial circles like cultivation techniques, pills, weapons, or things like furnaces. Those can bid into the hundreds of millions, even billions. Hearing this, Yep Shen had a slight headache. According to Ha Ruoshui, the pill furnace would surely be expensive and his meager funds completely insufficient. He had to think of ways to earn more money. Suddenly recalling something, he asked, Can I auction my own items? Ha Ruoshui nodded. Of course, you must have realized your lack of money and want to sell your stay youth pill right? There's an appraisal department upstairs you can try your luck with. After she spoke, Yep Shen sank into thought. Based on Ying Qing's reaction, alchemists in Shanghai, even Waguo, were scarce. Rarities always had value, so pills would be expensive too. Thinking this, Yep Shen turned and strode upstairs. Let's just go see. Soon, he arrived at the appraisal center Ha Ruoshui mentioned but strangely, the four people inside were playing mahjong. An old man excitedly yelled, Ha ha, my win again. No one understands the sun like realm viewing King Mi. You all owe me 10 million, no dodging debts. The other three were clearly unhappy but still fully paid up. Seeing this, the corners of Yep Shen's mouth twitched slightly. Didn't expect them to be playing high stakes mahjong here. Just then, Realm Viewing King noticed Yep Shen and asked, Younger brother, what business? Need appraisal of an item? Yep Shen nodded, taking out a pill. I want to auction this. Realm Viewing King was slightly stunned. This scent seems like a pill but I wonder of its effects. The other three also looked over, hissing doubts. This is a pill? Nowadays, no real pills exist. Most are just herbal pills. Realm Viewing King waved them off. Don't make noise. No one understands pills better than me. Realm Viewing King then carefully examined the pill, his gaze growing serious. The scent and color didn't match the rubbish goods, so I must inspect closely. He took out a magnifying glass and instantly recognized it as genuine, breathing sharply and crying out. Cloud markings, true cloud markings. This isn't medicine but a real pill. Hearing, cloud markings. The others were surprised and rushed over. What cloud markings? Let me see, you're definitely not tricking us. Realm Viewing King's expression was grave. Absolutely no mistake. I dare confirm those are cloud markings. Moreover the rich fragrance and clear markings are like recent refinement. Hearing his confirmation, everyone wondered. Could an alchemist have been reborn recently? None remain in the mortal world, and pills have long been sky-high prices around 100 million each. Whenever pills appear, countless martial forces madly snatch them. When Yep Shen took out the pill, all present in the appraisal room eagerly asked about its origins. Looking at the flushed old faces, Yep Shen found it strange. There's not even one alchemist here? He doubted. Could I be Waguo's last alchemist? After pondering silently, Yep Shen told Realm Viewing King. I can't conveniently discuss this. Let me speak with your backer. Hearing this, Realm Viewing King was overjoyed and respectfully said. Younger brother, please follow me. Soon, Yep Shen followed the old man to a room's door. After knocking, an icy voice came from within, Enter. Realm Viewing King seemed slightly cautious, bowing and respectfully saying, Young miss, this younger brother wants to auction a pill. The woman on the sofa heard and was intrigued, smiling at the old man, A pill? Are you certain? Realm Viewing King hurriedly nodded. I stake my reputation, 100% certain. He then passed Yep Shen's pill to the girl. She raised her finger and the pill flew into her palm. Scanning it, she immediately cried out, It's truly a pill. 
The refinement time clearly didn't exceed a month based on its color. Suddenly opening her eyes wide, they fell on Yep Shen as if realizing something. Realm Viewing King then bowed to the girl. I shouldn't intrude further, so I'll take my leave. He stepped out with just the two left, the girl warmly welcomed. Have a seat, little brother. No need for formalities, I'm Jin Lingan. May I ask how you're called? Yep Shen helplessly shook his head. Just call me Yep Shen. Let's skip the pleasantries. Can my pills be auctioned? Jin Lingan smiled slightly. Of course, how many does little brother plan to auction? Yep Shen raised five fingers, including the one you're holding, total five. Despite mental preparation, Jin Lingian's eyes slightly widened in shock as she evaluated internally. So young yet with pills, likely not personally refined. Pill concoction requires research of formulas and herb expertise, each attempt time-consuming. Moreover, the youth casually took out five pills, so a real alchemist must be backing him. Thinking this, Jin Lingan swallowed and asked, Mr. Yep, auctioning all five pills would minimally value 100 million. Rarities have high prices, so for maximum value, I suggest only auctioning one this time. Noting her attitude, Yep Shen smiled. If so, Miss Jin can quote a price for the remaining four. However much your Jin family wants to earn, I only need a satisfactory price. After speaking, Jin Lingian's breathing quickened as she stared at Yep Shen. Mr. Yep, you're selling these four pills to my Jin family? She immediately took out a card and passed it to Yep Shen. This card has 100 million, the password is the card number's last digits. It's all of my current assets, she solemnly said. Of course this amount isn't enough for your four pills, so I'll add a condition. From now on, the Jins will owe you a favor. No matter what happens, we'll exert full effort to resolve it for you. Just three short sentences made the girl willingly offer billions for his pills, solely because he was Wagwo's last alchemist. Looking at the bank card, the five pills had a minimum value of 100 million. Now selling four for 100 million plus the Jin's favor wasn't a loss either. Jin Lingan valued Yep Shen, or rather the alchemist behind him. Leaving a favor meant future chances to interact. Yep Shen put away the card and turned to say, I accept this price, but the auction will soon start so I'll take my leave first. Seeing his agreement, Jin Lingan smiled and forcefully flung a name card to him. Yep Shen caught it confusedly. What's your intention? Jin Lingan smiled slightly. Loan auction participants like Mr. Yep often prefer anonymity. I hope this helps you. Yep Shen internally humped coldly. Do you want to probe my background with this trick? You alone want to uncover my origins? He then dismissed it, not intending to participate in her scheme after Yep Shen's departure. Jin Lingian's smile instantly vanished, her face solemn. Earlier he caught the name card with my chi, so he's surely an ancient martial artist. But his strength is unknown. I should investigate this Yep Shen and who he associated with recently. She immediately called. Help me look into someone named Yep Shen. I want all related information and who he interacted with in the past six months. When Yep Shen reached the auction hall, he found it packed. Glancing around, he quickly spotted Ha Ruo Shui and Chu Zishuan, sitting between them. Ha Ruizu's pretty eyes looked at Yep Shen confusedly. Did you get enough money? Yep Shen nodded. Just gathered 100 million, should be enough. Hearing this, Chu Zishuan next to him drinking water immediately spat it all out. Ha Ruo Shui glanced at Yep Shen. We haven't met for a while yet your bluffing skills have considerably improved. You think that formula of yours could sell for 100 million? See, even Zishuan doesn't believe you. Yep Shen ignored Ha Ruo Shui and looked up at the podium. The auction atmosphere was heating up as the host loudly announced. The next auction item is the final piece for the first round, a jewelry called Spirit's Tear. At its appearance, Ha Ruo Shui suddenly opened her eyes wide, staring fixedly at the front podium. The host continued. This was the late master jeweler Ding Yuangzheng of Jiangnan's final work, sadly only semi-finished. I heard old master Ding wanted to complete it at life's final moments as a gift for his grandniece, but sadly passed before finishing. This auction piece hasn't had good fortune, stolen years ago and passing through many countries before finally reaching Shanghai today. Now let's start the bidding at 60 million, increments no less than 2 million. Hearing the price, Ha Ruizu's body trembled as her petite hands tightly clutched her dress. Why show up now of all times? Grandpa's spirits tear he made for me before passing? Grandpa, 
I'm sorry I can't obtain what you made for me when living. If I didn't sever ties with the Haz, even if I had to sell all of Wame Group, I'd have bought it, but now I have nothing. I'm sorry, Grandpa. Thinking this, tears rolled down her face Yep Shen saw it all and wondered if the host's story was true, that Ha Ruoshui was master jeweler Ding Yuangjiang's grandniece. The host had said Spirit's Tear was top jeweler Ding Yuangjiang's final work during his life, of sky-high value. Moreover, it was unfinished, with imperfect beauty that sometimes surpassed perfect chain's prices just then, a man in the VIP seats yelled, 96 million. Young masters getting Spirit's Tear for sure. Smirking after speaking. Others might not know, but he was clearly aware the young miss was the Has Darling, closely tied to Spirit's Tear. Obtaining the necklace meant hints of promise with Ha Ruoshui. He could also rely on the has to advance. Hence, he had prepared 140 million to ensure getting it but unknown to him. Ha Ruoshui was also present, blankly watching the podium. She had thought to seek Yep Shen's aid but hearing 96 million, the last strand of hope in her heart was extinguished. Noting Ha Ruizu's tension, Yep Shen excused himself to the bathroom to leave. Seeing no more bids, the host was about to strike the gavel when a female voice rang out from the hall's PA system. An anonymous gentleman bids 200 million. Hearing 200 million, everyone gaped, including Jin Lingan who was also extremely shocked. That brat's crazy. Bidding so high for a mundane necklace, too wasteful even if rich. She coldly humped. Must be buying it for some girl, whatever, at least not his money. The previous highest bidder's face paled. Halfway through, someone had ruined his plan enraged. He glared at the host demanding, Who is it? Who bid 200 million? Where are they? The host smiled awkwardly. The gentleman wishes to remain anonymous. The bid made through an organizer's representative. Suddenly, the man furiously stood up. Who believes that rubbish? No one would bid 200 million for that jewelry. You're definitely playing tricks. Before he could finish, Jin Lingan in gray appeared on the auction stage. An icy voice rang out. You dare question my Jin family? Though unaware of the girl's identity, the man understood others' reactions and quickly said, No. I didn't mean that. Not waiting for his explanation, Jin Lingan coldly humped. The Jin's reputation cannot be insulted. Drag him out and break his limbs. Immediately, two martial artists appeared before him as terror gradually filled him and he shouted, Spare me, I'm Kao Minkai, you can't touch me. Before he finished, two enormous fists directly punched him down as one martial artist dragged him outside most Shanghai families were unaware of Jin Lingian's status. Only ancient martial artists and top families knew the weight of Jin family. Here Jin Lingian's icy gaze then swept the hall and she declared, From now on, no one from the cows may enter this auction hall, violators die. Just two short sentences suffocated the atmosphere. The host then shattered the silence, the wooden gavels pounding echoing as Spirit's tear finally sold for 200 million Ha Ruizu's face sank further. She didn't care who obtained Spirit's tear and would have gotten it back from them at any cost. Now she didn't even know the buyer's name and face this was a mundane auction, but a fearsome force stood behind it. A man casually questioning was immediately crippled and tossed out, yet it didn't impact the auction at all after the host's gavel fell a third time. The first round ended and the second for martial artists soon began Jin Lingian's voice then rang out. Due to an emergency, the final item is no longer the hundred herbs cauldron. Please await details later. Hearing this, some who came for the cauldron reacted, now unwilling to put all eggs in one basket. If Jin Lingian said this, the final auction piece would surely be more valuable than the cauldron while everyone discussed, the first auction item appeared on stage. Bathed in spotlight, its entire body radiated dazzling light, fitting its name Golden Brilliant soon after. A sword manual emerged on the big screen, heating up the atmosphere in the mortal world. Whether techniques or treasures were precious, coveted things. Chu Zixuan also fixed her eyes on the displayed auction pieces, unwittingly sighing. So many items have been auctioned, all at sky-high prices, even secret arts. Truly an eye-opening experience. However, the bored Yep Shen beside her lacked any interest. To him, most were useless junk, golden brilliance, the martial arts manuals, no different from trash in his eyes. He thought a pile of rubbish still madly snatched over showed the huge gap between ancient martial artists and Kunlun these ancient martial artists thought themselves exalted, unaware they were no more than specks of dust there Yep Shen then glanced towards the podium. 
two martial artists were struggling to carry something covered by a white cloth onto the stage. When unveiled, an ancient massive bronze cauldron appeared before everyone Jin Lingan waved down the clamoring crowd. This is the Hundred Herbs Cauldron, fortuitously obtained by my Jin family on Mount Shenong. It can concoct medicine and also store items, originally the final auction piece but now second last. Starting bid 300 million. At this moment, Yep Shen's eyes blazed as his breathing quickened. The cauldron on stage was the long-awaited pill furnace. Moreover exceeding his required level competition in the hall grew increasingly fierce, the price soon pushed to 430 million. Just then, Jin Lingian's phone rang and she confusingly read Yep Shen's message. Obtain the hundred herbs cauldron at any cost. She smiled. As expected you came for the cauldron. If I guess right, this is what the alchemist behind you needs, correct? Before she could reply, an arrogant voice shouted, 450 million, the cauldron's mine. As the voice finished, none dared compete further, recognizing the speaker as the Tang's third young master, one of the three top martial families in Shanghai. The Tangs also had influence like the Jin's it was rumored Tang Wenlin was cruel, obtaining what he wanted by any means. Those confronting him never had good endings at the same time, Yep Shen received her reply. Mr. Yep, don't offend Tang Wenlin. With his martial family backing him, it's best to give up the cauldron and not contend with him. Jin Lingan had thought Yep Shen would give up, but he simply replied, bid. Jin Lingan gritted her teeth, eyes showing despair. Using 100 million to buy your pills was already very profitable for me, a small price is reasonable. This time I'll reluctantly help you. No matter the item, even wandering immortals were tempted. Jin Lingan knew offending Tang Wenlin of the Tangs was unwise but an alchemist's value deserved her choice to Tang Wenlin's shock, she shouted, an anonymous gentleman bids 500 million. As the words left her lips, the hall erupted into clamor and discussion. Someone dared contend with Tang Wenlin. Though anonymous, the Tang's means could uncover their identity, likely leading to another's death tonight displeasure showed on Tang Wenlin's face before he raised the bid. 530 million. The wait was extremely long. When the third call came from the podium, the corners of his mouth lifted. Sure win this time. 530 million has peaked for the cauldron. No one else will dare compete now. Contrary to his wishes, a cry came from the podium. An anonymous gentleman bids 700 million. Tang Wenlin's face darkened in anger, unbelieving someone dared oppose him at this price far exceeding the cauldron's value. The buzzing discussions around him further soured his complexion Tang Wenlin slammed the table before him and the redwood instantly shattered. Rising, his ruthless gaze swept the hall as he threatened. Damn it all, no matter who you are, daring to provoke my Tang family. No matter how you hide I'll find you and make you regret everything today. On the podium, Jin Lingan saw Yep Shen's expressionless face and helplessly shook her head before hammering. 700 million going once, any higher bids. After the gavel fell a third time, the cauldron sold for 700 million. Below, Yep Shen excitedly clenched his fist finally have a pill furnace. With this hundred herbs cauldron, I can concoct stronger pills and quickly upgrade my realm. Wanting to quickly move on, Jin Lingan clapped her hands. An old man carefully stepped up with a box. Next is an invaluable item my Jin family just obtained. The finale of today's auction, a genuine pill. The moment the box opened, the rich fragrance instantly permeated and over ten people stood up, breathing heavily as they gazed at the pill on stage. Legend said pills could rapidly boost cultivation, becoming practically mythical in Waguo's martial world. Unexpected for one to appear at this auction after a period of shock, Jin Lingan continued. I personally appraised this as a genuine 100% pill. Starting bid 400 million, increments no less than 20 million. As she finished, the hall instantly grew lively with over 10 madly bidding. From 400 million, it rapidly jumped to 500 then 600 million Ha Ruoshui was slightly surprised, no way? It's worth this much? My first time seeing such a frenzied auction. Soon, with the final gavel pound, the auction successfully ended and everyone headed to the banquet hall as Yep Shen prepared to leave, his eyes bulged upon seeing Tang Wenlin who had contested the pill furnace. He laughed inside. If Tang knew he had spent 800 million on a pill refined by the same person who snatched the furnace from him, how would he feel Yep Shen's pondering was interrupted by a ringing phone? A message from Jin Lingan inviting. Mr. Yep, please come see me. 
After my father learned of you, he requested I compensate you. Beside him, Ha Ruoshui said, Yep Shen, we're not attending the banquet so let's head back together. Oh right, didn't you say you had 100 million? Yet I didn't see you buy anything. Yep Shen smiled, nothing caught my interest. You and Zixuan chat, I'm going to the restroom. He thought, I wonder what compensation Jin Lingan will give. Just thinking about it felt exciting already. Happy Halloween! Uta da yo! <laughs> the youth casually taking out pills could sell for astronomical sums over 100 million and coincidentally won a beauty's favor after the auction ended. Jin Lingan alone met Yep Shen and respectfully handed a card, saying, Mr. Yep, this card has 150 million. My father told me to compensate you. That price was too unfair for you after all. Though the Jin still owe you a favor. Yep Shen didn't stand on ceremony, directly taking it and looking at Jin Lingan. I didn't come for your money but for the hundred herbs cauldron. Please leave your address and number, I'll have someone deliver it tonight. Jin Lingan smiled slightly. Right, will you stay for the banquet? My father wants to treat you to dinner. But before she finished, Yep Shen directly rejected. I won't attend the banquet. My friend already prepared food at home. I'm not used to eating out. Remember to send the item tonight on time. After instructing this, Yep Shen left. Jin Lingan watched him with a strange gaze. In Shanghai, who dares reject my father's invitation? Could he not see my father was trying to save him by inviting to dinner? Offending the Tangs means only death without a powerful backer's protection. Thinking this, she looked Yep Shen over again and sighed. The Jins gave you a chance but you didn't treasure it. If anything happens to you, don't blame us. Meanwhile in the five-star hotel's monitoring room, the surveillance operators laid dead in pools of blood. Tang Wenlin sat beside, seemingly relaxed while carefully holding the fragrant pill. Didn't expect a pleasant surprise today. This pill is very authentic, different from those my Tang family collected. The old man beside him added, Young master, based on the pill markings, it was likely refined within 10 days. Tang Wenlin was slightly surprised. Don't know where the Jins got it to auction without hesitation. Could they have grasped some pill supply channel? The old man nodded, very possible. If the Jins really control a pill channel, they'll skyrocket, far exceeding the Tangs. A cold glint flashed in Tang Wenlin's eyes as he looked to the man checking the cameras. Find what I told you yet. The man quickly nodded, showing Tang Wenlin the footage. Young Master C. Today Jin Lingan only met this man. I suspect he's the one who snatched the hundred herbs cauldron, and the Jin's pill likely came from him too. Hearing this, Tang Wenlin immediately stood up, fiery killing intent in his eyes. Daring to take what's the Tang's, seems you're tired of living. Meanwhile, Yep Shen, Ha Ruoshui and Chu Zixuan left the hotel. Chu Zixuan bid them goodbye. You too, I'll take my leave here. But as she turned to go, Yep Shen called her back. Zixuan, honestly tell me. What exactly happened to the Chu's? In Yep Shen's mind, with the Chu's standing, Chu Zixuan would always have a driver waiting whenever she went out. Now she was in the situation of having to take a taxi home Chu Zixuan repeatedly shook her head, eyes unnaturally glancing elsewhere. Seeing this, Yep Shen helplessly sighed, thinking Chu Rend had helped him considerably. With the Chu's in trouble, he couldn't ignore it he extended his hand. Let me see your phone for a bit. Chu Zixuan honestly complied. Yep Shen took it, saved his number, then returned it to her. I saved my number in there. If anything comes up, you must remember to call me. If I can help, I certainly will. We'll take our leave first. Watching Yep Shen's departing back, Chu Zixuan's eyes gradually reddened. Thank you Mr. Yep, but for this matter, Grandpa said the Chu's can't implicate anyone else. As the last Waguo alchemist yet truly an expert cultivator, you obtained an supreme pill furnace from the auction but also caught the attention of an infamous playboy. After bidding Chu Zixuan farewell, Ha Ruoshui couldn't help laughing. Why does that girl keep calling you Mr. Yep? So pretentious and odd sounding. Yep Shen helplessly shook his head. Just nonsense, makes me sound old suddenly, his eyes flashed a cold glint and he glanced back. Ha Ruoshui was puzzled. Yep Shen, why aren't you going? Yep Shen restrained his killing intent and pointed to the cafe ahead, I suddenly want coffee. Ruo Shui, please go order me a cup and wait for me there. Ha Ruizu's expression was strange. Now? You want me to wait for you there? What are you planning? Yep Shen smiled. I'm using the bathroom. 
Hurry and go, my treat no matter the cost. Ha Ruoshui now admired him. This Yep Shen has gone to the bathroom so many times today yet I didn't see him drink much water. After she entered the cafe, his harmless smile completely vanished, replaced by a frigid, murderous face Yep Shen's sweeping gaze looked through the bustling crowd. They probably don't know my principle, to kill any threat while it's still an egg. After speaking, he headed northwest where no streetlights existed, only darkness enveloped by the night not far away. Tang Wenlin and the old man had appeared. The old man whispered. Young master, seems that brat noticed us. Tang Wenlin coldly humped. So what if he did? He still has to die. And that girl entering the cafe doesn't look bad either. After dealing with the brat and taking back the cauldron, forcing him to reveal the pill secret, I'll play with her for a few days. Suddenly, a hand grasped his head from behind as an icy voice rang. I've waited one minute and five seconds for you guys to finally arrive. The old man's expression changed, shocked that the youth had escaped his notice and uncertain when he got behind them. He reacted, bracing himself. Young one without martial ethics, sneak attacking and daring to move against the young master. You die tonight. After speaking, he shot forth like an arrow leaving its bow. When only three meters from Yep Shen, he suddenly halted midair. Naughty child, taste this old man's five lightning strikes. Yep Shen also moved, one hand on Tang Wenlin's head as his body fleetly jumped to the other side, speed extremely fast, leaving only afterimages in the old man's eyes but before he could land, Yep Shen was already below him. Yep Shen unleashed Qi, heavily punching upwards and causing deafening rumbles as if the sky would explode. The shocked old man was directly struck flying by Yep Shen, sending him to his death with one horrifying punch Tang Wenlin's face turned ghastly pale without a trace of blood a half-step environment realm who couldn't withstand one punch from him and even died in one blow. Just who is he? Why does Shanghai have such a monster? The famed and mighty sect leader of chaotic primordial boxing, yet killed by one Yu's punch. Witnessing this, Tang Wenlin was extremely frightened, unwilling to believe Master Ma with his lightning whip mastery could be so defeated before he could react. Yep Shen's icy eyes shifted to look at him, slowly approaching step by step. By now, Tang Wenlin was panicking. With his bodyguard dead, he would naturally be next seeing Yep Shen nearing. Tang Wenlin's entire body trembled. You can't kill me. I'm the Tang's third young master, Tang Yuanyi's son. If you kneel now admitting fault and become this Tang Wenlin's dog, I'll forgive the past and guarantee you glory and wealth. But before he finished speaking, a hand suddenly descended and heavily slapped his forehead, instantly silencing him. A few seconds later, Tang Wenlin collapsed unsupported to the ground. Yep Shen's eyes indifferent he wasn't a vile monster, only protecting those by his side. This man's death prevented future harm to them. After finishing, Yep Shen was in no hurry to leave, instead glancing aside and coldly saying, How much longer do you plan on watching? As he spoke, a man emerged from the darkness, directly kneeling before Yep Shen. Please spare me Mr. Yep, I'm Jin Tiam of the Jins. The young miss discovered surveillance intruders and sent me to protect you. After saying this, Jin Tiam also felt it funny. Protect what? His strength exceeds mine at least tenfold. I'm unfit to protect him. Hearing this, the murderous aura around Yep Shen completely vanished. Jin Lingan, your intentions are good but I dislike others interfering in my life. Tell her not to do unnecessary things or the Jins will become the same. Also, help dispose of the bodies below. Jin Tiam hurriedly nodded. Please be assured Mr. Yep, I'll certainly convey this. But there's something I'm unsure if I should say. Yep Shen halted, hearing the solemnity in his tone. Mr. Yep's might is unrivaled, surely having reached the sect master realm. But the Tangs are formidable. Patriarch Tang Yuanyi ranks 514th on Waguo's sect master list. Tang Wenlin was his son, killing him invites disaster. Yep Shen was surprised. Sect master list? What's that? And over 500 are ranked above Tang Yuanyi. Looks like ancient martial artists in Waguo aren't so simple. Yep Shen then waved Jin Tiam away. Thanks for the reminder, I'll be careful in the future. Farewell. As Yep Shen took a few steps, Jin Tiam immediately called, Young Miss, big trouble. Tang Wenlin is dead. Hearing this, Jin Lingan swiftly arrived at the alley and seeing the two cold corpses, her face paled. Tang Wenlin third young master of the Tangs, is truly dead. Tang Yuanyi will definitely rage with shockwaves through Shanghai. 
She then asked. Jin Tiam, are you certain they were all killed by Yep Shen alone with no chance to resist? Jin Tiam respectfully replied. I'm positive. One was a half-step sect master expert yet couldn't withstand a single move. Only a true sect master could accomplish this. As he finished, traces of fear flashed in Jin Lingian's eyes. Such a young sect master with an alchemist backing him. Now adding the Tang's third young master, turmoil is coming to Shanghai. Thinking this, she immediately instructed, quickly dispose of the bodies. Send them anonymously to the Tang's then erase all traces including the messenger after he returns. This is beyond the Jin's control. The Tang's will eventually discover Yep Shen despite our efforts, then we can only stand by and watch. In the ancient martial world, an extremely authoritative sect master list existed because early generation martial artists in Waguo were incomplete, lacking higher realms beyond sect master in truth. There were three major realms, external, internal, and transformation. And these split into minor realms, but after transformation nothing more was differentiated, collectively called sect masters. However, sect masters had varying strengths, hence the later sect master list to rank power levels, though not as comprehensive as cultivator's system. The cultivation path began with decay, primordial opening, qi motion, separation and convergence, original essence, and the currently known highest realm divine traveling. Each realm then split into nine layers, with Yep Shen now at the peak of the fifth layer primordial opening after dealing with Tang Wenlin, Yep Shen and Ha Ruoshui returned to their apartment where Song Di had prepared a feast. Ever since learning of the sect master list, Yep Shen's expression had turned solemn en route home. Yep Shen had probed deep Lingtian about Tang Yuanyi in this list. Seems it wouldn't be easy. Unsure of his own ranking, if the 514th ranked Tang Yuanyi came seeking vengeance, Fighting him would give Yep Shen a general idea of his position just then, Song Di suddenly said. Little Shen, our beauty's birthday is next week. Thought of a gift yet? Yep Shen pretended to be on his phone. In this day and age, just transfer 250 yuan red packet. But before finishing, he felt a kick under the table and looked up to see Ha Ruizu's eyes nearly spewing fire. Tell the truth, you plan to send exactly 250? Yep Shen immediately cowered and corrected himself. I misspoke the numbers, as 520 okay. As he finished, another gaze pierced him. You're really sending 520? Seems you two have quite the relationship. Yep Shen was at a loss for words. 502, I'll send 502, that should be fine right? Just after speaking, Yep Shen's phone suddenly rang with a strange numbers message. Frowning as he read it, he saw several worried words from Chu Zishuan. Yep Shen understood something big had happened to the Chu's early next morning. Before entering the Chu residence, Yep Shen discovered the entire home surrounded, and approaching the main gate he sensed hidden weapons targeting him. Any abnormal behavior would trigger merciless shots. He wondered what had happened to necessitate this military force. Though unafraid, if the Chu's had done wrong and were under siege, forcing entry would only complicate things for Yep Shen after some thought, he decided to use his connections. Calling, he said, Bai Li Bing, help me enter the Chu's home which is currently blocked by the military. With one call, he could mobilize a high-ranking officer to assist. After ending the call with Bai Li Bing, Yep Shen found a nearby spot to sit but no contact came after half a day. Frustrating him just then, a square-faced man approached Yep Shen. Mr. Yep, I'm Le Jung Guo sent by Miss Bai on her request. Yep Shen sighed. You finally came now to trouble you with the next step. The man nodded and they went near the Chu Manor's main gate where he took out a small red booklet, showing the guard at the entrance. We need to go in, is my rank sufficient? Seeing the red booklet's information, the two guards quickly stood at attention saluting the man then. Yep Shen entered the Chu residence with Le Jung Guo. In just a few days, the once rosy-cheeked Chu Ren now sat on the sofa ghastly pale with sunken eyes, aged a dozen years beside him, Chu Zishuan consoled. Grandfather will be fine, I found someone to help already. Chu Rend lowered his head, voice hoarse. Zishuan, stop wasting effort. It's hopeless now, anyone you find is useless. But as he finished speaking, Yep Shen's voice came from outside. Elder Chu, since I'm here, it's not necessarily unsolvable. Hearing this voice, Chu Rend raised his head and asked. Zishuan, why did you call Mr. Yep? Now you've made him take an unnecessary trip. I'm ashamed. He covered his face apologetically. Mr. Yep, 
Zixuan doesn't understand matters, causing you trouble. Don't get involved. I can endure this alone. Ignoring his protests, Chu Zixuan said, Mr. Yep, here's what happened. A few days ago, an important figure came to Shanghai but fell ill so he got some medicine from my grandfather. However, after taking it he had problems because it contained a deadly nightshade, even though grandfather personally prepared and double-checked it. There's no way he could have mistaken it. Yep Shen's eyes narrowed. Then clearly something went wrong during the intermediary stage, the medicine was swapped. Otherwise, the Chus couldn't make such a detrimental mistake. He then asked. What's that person's condition now? Chu Rend clutched his head, body trembling, still in emergency care. If anything happens, not only as Chu's in Shanghai but even those in Jiangsu province will be implicated. Yep Shen's expression relaxed, as long as he's not dead yet. Which hospital is he in? Take me there immediately. I can save him as long as there's a breath left. Chu Rend looked at Yep Shen in astonishment. By his understanding, Mr. Yep was a martial arts sect master, truly formidable. But sect masters only knew killing not saving Yep Shen disregarded their looks, indifferently saying. This is the Chu's sole chance. I'll say it once more, take me there. Finally, Chu Ren staked the entire Chu clan's fate and led Yep Shen to the hospital on the other side, seven or eight men stood outside an operating room in a hospital. The previously spacious corridor now had a solemn atmosphere. Among them, a tall man stood right by the door, staring fixedly at it but just then, a yell rang out. Make way, we need to go in there. The sudden shout startled the man as his gaze turned to them. Seeing Chu Ren behind, the man immediately exploded. The rotten old geezer who harmed my father still dares to come. What is this place? I'll kill you now. As he raised his fist to punch Chu Ren, Yep Shen extended his hand and directly halted the powerful fist, coldly saying, Before that man inside awakens, you've no right to attack. A 70 plus elder now punched by a burly man. What was left of conscience or humanity behind this shielding Chu Ren? Yep Shen coldly stated. Before he awakens, you've no right. At the same time, a formidable energy erupted from Yep Shen, pushing the man back. The man's expression changed as he retreated several steps. Once steady, he glared coldly at Chu Ren. I said you shouldn't have come, so you found a sect master as backup. But so what? Waguo has no lack of sect masters. Just him can the Chu's be protected. But just then, the operating room light switched off as the door opened and two doctors hurriedly exited with less than pleased expression seeing this. The man immediately turned and questioned. How is my father? The doctor regretfully replied. Sorry, the toxins in the governor's body have spread. We really tried our best. The man directly grabbed the doctor's collar, roaring furiously. Useless, you're all useless. What do I feed you for? But suddenly, a shadow flashed by and looking up, he saw Yep Shen entering the operating room. A cold hump sounded. Other than shouting, you're the real useless one. The man's gaze flickered with confusion. What are you doing? Stop immediately. At this time, Le Jung Guo finally spoke. Give Mr. Yep a chance, he may be able to save the governor. If not, I'll bring this to court. The man calmed upon hearing this. He naturally knew Le Jungguo's reputation for prudence. If he said this, the brat must have some ability he then responded. I'll believe you this once, but if he fails, not even Bai Li Hong can protect you. Inside the operating room, a withered, sickly elder lay on the table covered in brown spots. Yep Shen also sensed the lethal aura radiating from him he couldn't help but admire this elder's tenacity to still cling to life in this state. But time was limited. Yep Shen hurriedly took out a pill. Crushing it in his palm he then channeled his chi into the powdered pill. A stream of vitality instantly emanated from his palm. Sensing the right moment, Yep Shen raised his hand drawing the silver needles over his palms gradually pressed together with the needles suspended between them, the swirling vitality invading each one a second later. Yep Shen's chi-infused palm thrust the silver needles into the elder's chest acupoints in an instant. Green light emanated from the elder's body. As it slowly faded, the trembling needles oozed black chi, as if expelling toxins along with them. This process lasted around five minutes before the black chi completely vanished seeing the elder's complexion gradually reddening. Yep Shen finally relaxed. The detox was complete and he'd soon awaken Yep Shen then noticed the elder's fully wounded body and couldn't help but admire him for fighting so valiantly for the country despite his age. Who could be so cruel as to harm him like this?
But meeting Yep Shen saved his life, it felt like doing the nation a service Yep Shen pondered no more, turning to leave. But after a few steps, a feeble voice called out behind him, Divine Doctor, please halt. An 80-plus elder, given up for dead by doctors after being poisoned, revived by Yep Shen's silver needle. But before Yep Shen's departure, the elder awoke from his stupor. Divine Doctor, please let this old man know your noble name. Yep Shen stopped, surprised by his quick awakening. He replied, No need, I saved you only for another reason, not intentionally for you. Just remember two things. First, the poisoning is unrelated to the choose so resolve that misunderstanding. Second, your poison was chronic, starting over a month ago, with your status, outsiders couldn't manage this so investigate internally. Yep Shen's words flowed smoothly out. Without waiting for the elder's response, he pushed open the door and exited the previously tense atmosphere became even more so at Yep Shen's emergence the burly man glanced at the time and angrily said, what a waste, I thought you had some ability. But you were only inside for eight minutes before coming out. Are you toying with us? But suddenly, a feeble elder emerged from the operating room, causing the man's expression to shift as his raised fist halted midair at this moment. Everyone gaped in disbelief. The elder on his deathbed now able to stand and walk after the youth's brief minutes inside ignoring their shocked looks. The elder smiled. If not for that young man, you all would truly have had to prepare a coffin for me. Never expected that in this old man's remaining years, I'd encounter a reincarnated divine doctor. Seeing his father say this, the man also quickly changed his attitude. Kid. I mean, divine doctor, sorry, I apologize to you. But scanning the corridor, no trace of Yep Shen remained. Vanished into thin air the elder heavily sighed before looking towards Chu Ren. He approached the elder. Sorry, the Chus are innocent. My son misunderstood. This time we wronged your family, please forgive me. Chu Ren quickly waved it off. No no, please don't say that. I can't bear it. The elder nodded and switched topics. That divine youth was invited by the Chus? Do you have his contact information? I'd like to express my thanks. Chu Ren's expression was a bit awkward. Governor, his name is Yep Shen, a friend I happened to meet. As for contact details, Mr. Yep dislikes disturbances. The elder thoughtfully nodded not forcing the issue further since obtaining someone's information was easy as flipping his palm for him meanwhile at the northern Shanghai Four Seas Inn, the atmosphere was extremely heavy. Two coffins were arranged in the courtyard with a middle-aged man in exercise clothes standing to the side, bloodshot eyes staring at the youth within one coffin. Just who dared kill my, Tang Yuanyi's, son. As he finished, a youth stepped up. Father, investigations are still ongoing. We only know when Wenlin attended the auction, the pill cauldron he fancied was snatched by a mysterious figure. Not long after, Wenlin died. Tang Yuanyi furiously roared. Go investigate every single auction participant. Remember that, every single one. The man nodded obediently. Tang Yuanyi then tightly clenched his fist as an extremely cold aura surged through his body. Even if I have to flip Shanghai upside down, I'll find the murderer. I'll kill him and make him watch those around him die miserably one by one. The once gloriously rising Heavenly Justice Corporation fell after Yep Zhengxian and his wife's deaths at the Cloud Lake Villa banquet five years ago, torn apart by other powers five years later, through some remaining clues to reclaim his father's corporation, tomorrow Yep Shen would announce to all of Shanghai. Yep Shen has returned the Heavenly Justice Corporation. After the call with Shen Haihua, Yep Shen would announce to all of Shanghai. The Heavenly Justice Corporation under Yep Shen has returned Yep Shen returned to his villa. Before long, Jin Tiam from the Jins brought over the gigantic cauldron and materials, Mr. Yep, the hundred herbs cauldron and spirit tier have been delivered. Please inspect them. Yep Shen eagerly stroked the cauldron. With it, his pill refinement efficiency would skyrocket, more potent pills and faster cultivation speed just then, Jin Tiam moved closer and softly said. Oh. The young miss relayed that the Tang's rage now exceeds initial projections. They're investigating every auction participant and will surely discover you soon. She worries Tang Yuanyi will target you and hopes you'll leave Shanghai for now. Arrangements were made. But Yep Shen interjected. Convey my thanks for Jin Lingyan's kind intentions, but I won't be going anywhere. It's even better if they come find me. Hearing the latter part, Jin Tiam shuddered and stammered, Mr. Yep, what do you mean? 
You can't possibly intend to directly confront the Tangs, right? That's impossible. After dismissing Jin Tiam, Yep Shen looked at the cauldron. Next, let's use this to refine pills and see. As he spoke, two fingers shot out a stream of qi enveloping the herbs the next second. He waved sending the herbs floating into the cauldron Yep Shen guided the pill fire. Golden flames blazed from his palms. He pushed out, igniting a vigorous fire within the cauldron Yep Shen didn't dare be negligent, tightly shutting his eyes to concentrate. Pill refinement required steady focus without distraction pills could be separated into nine grades, each further split into levels. Higher grades meant more patterns and stronger effects this pill Yep Shen was refining was to cultivate spirit energy and boost his cultivation speed he wasn't certain if this cauldron could produce patterned pills with the materials at hand after some unknown time. A faint blue glow emanated from the cauldron's mouth Yep Shen shielded his eyes, heart thumping anxiously. The light's too strong. Did it succeed he peeked inside and saw a glowing orb steadily rise. As the glow faded, an azure pill emerged Yep Shen excitedly extended his hand drawing the pill from the cauldron straight towards him. His palm precisely caught it examining the pill in his hand. Yep Shen's eyes widened in surprise, it was a tier 3 spirit pill. The quality was extremely high, impossible. By Yep Shen's estimations, these average materials could at best produce a low-grade tier 3, 3 patterned pill. But this completely exceeded his expectations after some thought, his gaze fixed on the cauldron. The only explanation was the hundred herbs cauldron enhancing the medicinal attributes Yep Shen concluded this was certainly due to the cauldron amplifying the herbs effects. Only this made sense at this realization, his eyes shone brightly. What great fortune. The cauldron had vastly surpassed hopes. A huge windfall indeed subsequently, without further thought, Yep Shen directly swallowed the spirit pill and began cultivating as he swallowed it, an extremely potent stream of spirit energy surged within his body, as if soaking in a celestial spring this pill now had enough might to propel his breakthrough Yep Shen didn't hesitate. Quickly sitting down cross-legged to circulate his mental energy his body was instantly enveloped in a halo suddenly, a black stone floated out from his pocket. Hovering above his head under the pouring spirit energy, the black stone seemed to be refining the next second, a pillar of light shot into the sky with mighty momentum, shaking the very earth at the decisive moment. Yep Shen roared. His state exponentially increased he had succeeded in entering the sixth layer not until the next morning's first sunlight shone upon the villa did the surrounding heaven and earth chi recover normalcy he was astonished. In just one night, he'd skipped two minor realms. Unbelievable even a seven-patterned pill couldn't have such tremendous effects suddenly. Yep Shen noticed the black stone still floating over his head curious. He reached up to grab it but upon contact, the stone fell directly into his palm clutching it. He found the stone surface had become transparent, somehow different than before he guessed. Don't tell me with your help I consecutively broke through two realms. Re-entering the cycles, that place remained desolate except one changed tombstone on its surface circulated faint, illusory lights, ceaselessly spinning around an ancient inscription Yep Shen halted his steps, stroking the tombstone. This time he noticed the anomalies, he even felt just focusing could summon La Un Tien simultaneously, he sensed La Un Tien would only appear once. After, the tombstone would be destroyed this was an extremely critical card so Yep Shen naturally wouldn't use it until absolutely necessary scene change. Song Di was looking at his phone when he suddenly became very surprised. Just then, Ha Ruoshui had stepped out from showering and inquired upon hearing Song Di showed her his phone. The headline news. The missing Heavenly Justice Corporation to return in two years, but Ha Ruoshui only felt the name seemed vaguely familiar. Song Yi Dan grew increasingly uneasy internally the Heavenly Justice Corporation was founded by Yep Shen's father but inexplicably vanished. Could Yep Shen now be controlling everything but Ha Ruoshui suddenly exclaimed upon seeing the corporation's legal representative was also listed as Yep Shen she felt this was peculiar. It's him right? He really opened a company like he said? I wonder if he's doing this to oppose his mother. Does he have enough strength? Many powers also took note of this news, including the Su's in Shanghai in a meeting at the top floor of a building. The atmosphere was already tense Su Xuanian stared at his phone, shocked internally. The Heavenly Justice Corporation has returned. The legal representative is also Yep Shen. How can this be? Isn't he dead? What is he trying to do? Sitting at the head, Elder Su's voice was grave. 
Investigations confirm the Heavenly Justice Corporation's registered legal person is precisely that useless Yep Shen expelled to Dongqin Lake five years ago. He then opened an image on the computer. This is the photo of the registered representative. Su Xuanian looked up and seeing the large screen, his entire body shook and he stammered. How can it be Yep Shen? That useless Yep has no qualifications as a club inheritor. Elder Su glanced around and continued. The corporation's return isn't concerning. What's worrying is it's built on Tan Ha Corporation's foundations, yet Zheng Ming and his men were all eliminated days ago. What does this mean? The Heavenly Justice Corporation is founded on corpses. Such a force can threaten our Sus. We must uncover who is backing the Heavenly Justice Corporation. At this time, Su Xuanian's mind was blank. Su Xuanian's heart felt pierced by an invisible needle noticing his abnormal complexion. Elder Su hurriedly comforted. Xuanian, I nearly forgot. Didn't Yep Shen have designs on you back then? But don't worry, with his capabilities how could he match our prestigious Seuss? I reckon Yep Shen is merely a puppet pushed on stage. Dot the true puppet master is behind him. Just as he finished, a new investigative report appeared in his hands. Yep Shen is backed by North Ming's Shen Haihua Corporation. The entire Heavenly Justice Corporation was established by Shen Haihua. Previously, Shen Haihua had cancer but somehow survived. After reading it, he distributed the document. It seems Shen Haihua has gone insane from illness to dare take the Heavenly Justice name. Let's see how he manages to open for business tomorrow. No one in Shanghai with any sense would support this. Meanwhile in an opulent villa, Ha Ruizu's mother looked at the documents before her with disdain. Yep Shen, you think establishing the Heavenly Justice Corporation can shake my family's status? Keep dreaming. She then commanded the man in front. Spread word. Any who dare congratulate or send flowers for the Heavenly Justice Corporation's opening tomorrow, be they enterprise or individual, will become my family's enemy. The man nodded, surprised. Madam, this will completely destroy a company. Push Heavenly Justice into desperation. With the Ha family's influence, Heavenly Justice's opening tomorrow would surely be desolate and frigid. Even Shen Heiwa's North Ming Corporation would be impacted at this time, Yep Shen was immersed in cultivation. Compared to the morning, the aura emanating from him was even stronger not until sunset when Yep Shen's phone suddenly rang. Drawing his attention seeing it was Shen Haihua, he swiftly answered immediately. Shen Heiwa's anxious voice sounded, Mr. Yep, big trouble. The Haz and Seuss are boycotting our Heavenly Justice Corporation. Even Shanghai's three other big families, the Zhao's, Lus, and Wan support this tomorrow. Surely no one will dare attend the opening ceremony since that means offending Shanghai's four top families plus the Haz of Jiangsu. Moreover, my North Ming Corporation is also affected with plunging stocks. Yep Shen coldly laughed. All this falls within my calculations. If they want a boycott, let them. Hearing this, Shen Haihua was utterly confused. How can you be so unconcerned? This isn't just about a simple opening. In the future, surely no one will dare cooperate with us. Should we postpone the opening date? Yep Shen smiled confidently. No need to change it, tomorrow is planned. Don't worry, just rest early. Leave the rest to me. Not only will I ensure the Heavenly Justice Corporation has a normal opening, I'll make them lose face too. Yep Shen hurried back to his apartment. During this time, he called Yep Lingtian. Though Yep Lingtian desperately wanted to show up, it was better for him to remain in the shadows given his special status upon opening the door. Yep Shen was stunned by the sight before him the two girls' eyes showed clear worry. Yep Shen, where have you been the past few days? Why has it been so hard to contact you? And the Heavenly Justice Corporation is yours? Yep Shen nodded. It can be said to be mine. After all, it was my father's company so this is me inheriting his enterprise. Before he finished speaking, Ha Ruoshui already hugged him tightly. I'm sorry, Yep Shen. I didn't expect my family to order a boycott on the Heavenly Justice Corporation. Despite pleading many calls, my mother refuses to relent. Seeing Ha Ruizu's self-blaming expression, Yep Shen quickly comforted. No need to blame yourself. This isn't your fault. I've already prepared. If you really feel guilty, give me a kiss to comfort me. Before he finished, Ha Ruoshui was already leaning in. The scent of her perfume mingled with the soft touch of her moist, red lips upon Yep Shen's cheek Ha Ruoshui looked directly at Yep Shen. Does this comfort satisfy you? 
the other girl was stunned that she actually kissed him he stroked his cheek and said, this is the best comfort, don't worry. Everything will go smoothly today. Meanwhile, the sun was slowly rising, banishing the darkness blanketing the city. But one place remained gloomy and bleak despite the sunlight the gaunt Shen Haihua stood outside the entrance. Though mentally prepared since last night, the emptiness was too desolate. Not a soul stirred in the vast area gradually, despair showed on his face. He could only hope Yep Shen would arrive soon so he wouldn't have to shamefully stand here alone but just then, a middle-aged man in a suit approached. Scanning the surroundings, his eyes held sympathy looking at Shen Haihua. Shen Haihua, you're here. Hearing the voice, Shen Haihua jerked around. Recognizing the man, his face lit up, Zhao Yucheng. You wouldn't forget our decade of brotherhood. Friendship is most important. But when Shen Haihua moved to shake Zhao Yucheng's hand, Zhao Yucheng recoiled in disgust, Shen Haihua, intentionally or not. After a decade, don't blame me for not warning you, the Heavenly Justice Corporation is very dangerous. That useless Yep brings you no benefit. Just then, Yep Shen dressed in a suit walked over. Suppressing his anger, he went to welcome Yep Shen, Mr. Yep, you finally came. Hearing how Shen Haihua addressed Yep Shen, Zhao Yucheng frowned. Shen Haihua, are you crazy? Why respect a useless nobody so? Unable to restrain himself, Shen Haihua bellowed. Zhao Yucheng, if you came to show support, I, Shen Haihua, sincerely thank you. But if you're here to spout nonsense, get lost as far as possible. Zhao Yucheng's face darkened. I kindly advised you yet you respond like this. Daring to associate with that useless nobody, be careful of dying without knowing why. If you remain deluded, our three joint projects this year are cancelled. Now their hostile stances were openly displayed Shen Haihua bellowed. Zhao Yucheng, overturning the milk cart for money? Just billions? Get lost you son of a bitch. Zhao Yucheng coldly laughed and left Shen Haihua looked at Yep Shen helplessly. Mr. Yep, this is the situation. I've called many but none dare come. What should we do now? Don't worry, just stay calm. After leaving Shen Haihua's sight, Zhao Yucheng approached a girl. Young Miss Su, it's almost nine now. No one else dares support him. Hearing this, Su Xuanian hugged herself arrogantly. I'm very curious how that useless Yep Shen will escape this predicament. Meanwhile at a villa in Shanghai, an elder smoothly practiced Tai Chi, hands evading each beat as if fusing with the space around him not far away. Three men watched tensely and worriedly only when the elder exhaled and wiped his brow before walking over did the military garbed man speak up. Father, the Heavenly Justice Corporation is opening soon but still no one dares show support. Clearly deliberate. Chu Jungdu nodded and looked at the other two. Boycott just like that. The regional families under you are quite terrifying. Tell me. What wrong has the Heavenly Justice Corporation committed? His steady voice rang out like thunder beside the two men they hadn't expected the elder to summon them this early morning just to ask about Heavenly Justice the two glanced at each other. Understanding the major family's coordinated boycott. Who could have guessed Elder Chu was Heavenly Justice's backer under Chu's icy gaze? The two also hurriedly ran out. It's happened already so whether we're involved or not, we must swiftly make amends. Once the two vanished, Chu Fuluo approached the Elder. Father, is Yep Shen worthy of us doing this? Chu Jungdu closed his eyes, the cloudy orbs seeming to glimmer. Fuluo, why can't you improve at judging people? You dueled and confirmed he's a martial arts master right? You've witnessed his martial prowess. I witnessed his unfathomable medical skill. A prodigy of both martial arts and medicine, the force behind him is surely not simple. If we don't support him today, we'll lose the chance in the future the has may have the most wealth in Jiangsu, but none rival the Chu family's power. What does offending the has matter? Since when have merchants dared surpass the government? In the man's mind arose new thoughts. Everything's ready. Let's be on our way meanwhile at the Heavenly Justice Corporation's opening. It was already nine yet nothing had changed. The vast space remained desolate without even the wind lingering not far away. Some media outlets prepared their mocking reports. Shanghai Enterprise's shameful history. Unveiling the Heavenly Justice Corporation's secrets, outside. Zhao Yucheng sneered continuously. Young Miss Su, no need to waste time here. No one will come for sure. Su Xuanian nodded. 
She only wanted to see Yep Shen make a fool of himself, but now didn't need to see any more. The evening paper would certainly publish the humiliating story of the Heavenly Justice Corporation's opening, but just as Su Xuanian prepared to leave, she suddenly saw two graceful, beautiful women walking the red carpet hand in hand. Their elegant attire highlighted their graceful bearing at this moment, they shone like stars. Just the two stepping onto the carpet, smiling and glancing about already attracted all eyes the crowd buzzed excitedly as the frenzied reporters snapped photos seeing Ha Ruoshui appear, Su Xuanian's expression instantly changed. Didn't the Has want to blockade the Heavenly Justice Corporation the two girls approached Yep Shen. Song Yi Dan winked smiling brightly, Yep Shen, what do you think? We bet on getting kicked out any time to come here. Let's head inside first. Song Yi Dan glanced around, standing behind Yep Shen. She knew he was under immense pressure with only her and Ha Ruoshui showing support but just then, the crowd stirred again. A luxurious car stopped before the red carpet as a hunchbacked elder stepped out this man's arrival silenced everyone. A top figure of Shanghai. The man behind the Jade Star Club had personally come to show support countless businessmen and even the major families of Shanghai addressed this man respectfully as, Elder Dai. Now Yep Shen finally smiled. Shen Heiwa's face also overflowed with hope. How could he have invited someone so esteemed but what shocked everyone more was Elder Dai not only walked the red carpet but personally approached Yep Shen to congratulate him deferentially seeing this. Ha Ruoshui was amazed and surprised. Staring intently at Yep Shen realizing this man was no simple figure meanwhile, Zhao Yucheng's mind went blank. He stammered at Su Xuanian. Young Miss Su, surely Elder Dai isn't behind the Heavenly Justice Corporation. Having just recovered from the shock, Su Xuanian also didn't know how to respond to Zhao Yucheng's question before she could speak. Two more luxury cars glided over. Seeing the license plates, everyone was astonished they were two titans of Shanghai indeed. The two middle-aged men in suits stepping out were the same two who had cowered in fear at the Chu Villa no one expected them to appear here, shocking everyone but before they could recover, a military vehicle arrived, tightening everyone's hearts it was from the Southwest Division, the main fighting force carrying out cross-regional border missions for Waguo the vehicle stopped and a military uniformed man stepped out, heading straight for Yep Shen now everyone was completely dumbfounded. Before such might, the combined opposition of Shanghai's four families seemed insignificant and feeble next. Another luxury car arrived and a woman stepped out, briskly approaching. But upon seeing the celebratory couplets at the entrance, she frowned. They dare warn me in the has. Truly gutsy. She commanded the man beside her. Investigate who dares defy the has warning. Ha Xiaofei returned with a grave expression. I've looked into it. Elder Dai of the Jade Star Club. Shanghai's top two officials, and La Zheng Guo. Behind Elder Dai is Wang Yelimshin of Jiangsu, and behind La Zheng Guo is General Bai Li Hong. Unsure if this was their own volition or directed by someone, Ha Xiaofei coldly sneered. I know Wang Yelimshin and Bai Li Hong wouldn't bother with a small corporation like Heavenly Justice. With just Yep Shen and Shen Haihua, how could they connect with such figures? However, making Elder Dai and La Zheng Guo support that brat Yep Shen to show some ability. I've underestimated him. After pondering, she continued. Still, there must be consequences for daring to oppose me in the has. Elder Dai and La Zheng Guo I won't rashly provoke, but Shanghai's top two must be forced into early retirement. Having said that, the woman strode down the red carpet. Bring our gifts over to present to the Heavenly Justice Corporation. Ha Xiaofei nodded. Following behind her the reporters outside anxiously wondered. Why did the has also appear? Were they intimidated by this group too approaching Yep Shen? Madame Ha's tone was mocking. President Yep is truly impressive, achieving such success at a young age. I wanted to send congratulatory flowers but the shops were sold out, so I can only reluctantly part with my most precious gift for you. Ha Xiaofei presented an object wrapped in black cloth. When Madame Ha unveiled it, Everyone's expressions changed it was a bronze statue of a failed business. Gifting this on opening day was the worst possible omen, implying the company would squander money into ruin outside. The crowd also buzzed curiously, wondering how Heavenly Justice would respond to the has attack Ha Ruoshui and Song Yi Dan shook with fury, shouting in Yep Shen's defense Madame Ha's face darkened, glaring at Ha Ruoshui. Do you still care for the has? Even standing with outsiders. Disobeying your mother's orders, 
Then she pointed at Song Yi Dan. As for you, President Song, instead of working you're here. Don't come to the company starting tomorrow. Song Yi Dan scowled at her. Fire me if you want to. Who needs your family's company? I quit. Seeing the girl dare speak like this, Madam Ha ordered Ha Xiaofei to teach her a lesson Ha Xiaofei didn't hesitate and threw a punch despite her gender. But Yep Shen swiftly grabbed his wrist, shoving Song Yi Dan behind him. His icy eyes glinted with killing intent, ready to paralyze the man but just then, a hulking middle-aged man approached, coldly sneering. The prestigious has are so domineering. Can the has alone cover the skies of Jiangsu? Hearing the voice, Madame Ha froze. She hadn't expected Yep Shen to invite Chu Fuluo Ha Ruo Shui nudged Yep Shen's side. How do you know Chu Fuluo? He's the Chu family's young master. Yep Shen was also a bit surprised. Though they had conflict before, now Chu Fuluo had come to support him. Chu Fuluo came before Yep Shen, bowing in congratulations. On behalf of the Chus, I congratulate the Heavenly Justice Corporation's opening. He suddenly noticed the failed business statue in Ha Xiaofei's hands, discerning the Has scheme. His icy gaze flashed at Ha Xiaofei, gifting this on opening day. What's your aim? Seeing Ha Xiaofei's panicked expression, Chu Fuluo strode forth smashing the statue heavily Ha Xiaofei didn't dare react. Only watching the statue shatter seeing this, Madame Ha couldn't restrain herself. What's your aim? You dare destroy my gift from the Has? On your own accord or the choose? But immediately behind her rang an authoritative voice. That brat has no right to represent the choose. Or must this old man step in? She stiffened and looked back to see an elder in traditional attire approaching at this moment. Madame Ha felt like she was struck by lightning, heart thumping rapidly. The elder didn't even glance at her, walking right past. He went to Yep Shen. Yep Shen is this old man's friend. If the has dare make trouble for him, the Chu's won't hesitate to act. Of course, provided your husband, Ha Hong Yi has the courage to oppose the Chu's. His steady voice left Madame Ha feeling suppressed without any chance to speak despite her dissatisfaction. She didn't dare show disrespect toward Elder Chu. Knowing he could obliterate the has with a wave of his hand after a few seconds of thought, she could only call Ha Xiaofei to leave in humiliation Yep Shen bowed in thanks to Elder Chu. The elder said, Mr. Yep needn't be so courteous. It is you who saved this old man from death's door. I should be thanking you. Not far away, Su Xuanian witnessed everything, eyes burning with anger and helplessness. An influential family of Jiangsu like the Su's could only leave in shame the once useless Yep Shen was no more, even protected by the Chu's. The Su's no longer had any qualifications to touch him. Seeing Su Xuanian depart, Zhao Yucheng hurriedly chased. Young Miss Su, don't go. What will I do without you? But before he could get close, Zhao Yucheng was kicked flying by Su Xuanian. He lay limply on the ground, mind blank. His first reaction was that everything was too late, but suddenly he glimpsed Shen Heiwa's figure. Flipping over, he anxiously called out, Brother Shen, I'm sorry, I'll tell the whole truth. He clung to Shen Heiwa's legs, pleading, You're my sworn brother. Surely you won't blame me? It was all the Su's forcing me, they framed you. But Shen Haihua merely lifted his leg, kicking Zhao Yucheng away. You're just a petty man unworthy of being my brother Shen Haihua. Get lost. This farcical scene made Yep Shen and everyone laugh uproariously watching Zhao Yucheng's fleeing figure. Shen Haihua's suppressed resentment all this time now felt extremely gratifying Yep Shen patted his shoulder. Haihua did right. That petty man isn't fit to walk with us. Then he shouted skyward. Now let's start the festivities. Immediately, hundreds of fireworks outside the Heavenly Justice Corporation shot up brightly. The deafening explosion sounded like the dawn of a new era in Shanghai the major figures could not enter of course. But witnessing this historic event was meaningful enough moreover, with the participation of so many prominent people, these photos could sell at a good price but as the reporters prepared to leave, they were blocked by a group in uniforms who said, we're national security by orders above. All your equipment must be inspected. Please cooperate. After the celebration ended, the important guests also gradually departed a few days later at Shanghai International Airport. A group in robes disembarked a plane. The leader was a silver-haired elder with obscure eyes, hands behind his back emanating a commanding aura a man approached the elder, bowing, Grandmaster Tran, you finally arrived. 
I've prepared a banquet to welcome and refresh you after your long trip. He guessed after so many years in the mountains, Zheng Baoguo's level must be formidable to have such a formidable aura he vaguely recalled when Grandmaster Tran led the Tran Corporation, Shanghai's number one. After he went into seclusion, the Seuss usurped that spot. If not for the Tran's destruction, how could he have returned so soon now he was back full of resentment? Shanghai would surely become a bloody battlefield soon after in a restaurant's private room, he respectfully poured wine for the elder. Though frightened by his murderous gaze, he still had to flatter him but the elder completely ignored him, not even bothering to take the glass. He snapped. How goes the investigation I tasked you with? Who annihilated the trans descendants? The trans were once Shanghai's greatest family, who dares do this? His icy tone made Ku Yuding's face go pale. Grandmaster Tran, calm yourself. I've been investigating diligently but strangely, all information about the trans destruction is sealed tight. Clearly the perpetrator holds tremendous power. Hearing this, Zheng Baoguo slammed the table violently, splitting it and sending food crashing to the floor. He shot up. Ku Yuding, I don't want to hear your drivel. I only want the killer's name. Ku Yuding shook in terror. He hurriedly took out a photo. All right, though the details are erased I still found a clue. This is the suspect I'm eyeing. Ku Yuding handed the photo. His name's Yep Shen and is the biggest suspect currently. But I lack definitive evidence. Zheng Baoguo gently raised his hand, the photo seemingly pulled into his grasp. Looking it over, he frowned. This brat's only 20-something. How could he eliminate the trans masters? Could he be of a martial heritage? Next, he crushed the photo in his hand. Regardless, even a hint of suspicion warrants death. The Heavenly Justice Corporation held its first meeting consisting of domestic and foreign talents recruited by Shen Haihua, plus Ha Ruoshui and Song Yi Dan Yep Shen scanned them. Any ideas for the corporation's development? Ha Ruoshui immediately spoke up. What I'm curious about is Heavenly Justice currently has no products at all. What will we use to develop? Shen Haihua also furrowed his brows. If Mr. Yep has no direction yet, I suggest investment or internet companies. But that's insufficient to match the has within half a year. Yep Shen smiled lightly. Heavenly Justice doesn't need the internet or investment. We will only manufacture products that generate maximum profits. He pushed a document forward. This is a dark spot removal formula. I guarantee one course of treatment will make any woman look at least five years younger. Before they could react, he tossed another document. This is a life-prolonging blood clotting pill that can extend any elderly person's life by three years. His steady voice caused some unrest. If truly so effective, these were practically immortal pills. The world couldn't have such medicine. Right then, Shen Heiwa's voice rang out confidently. I stake my life that everything Mr. Yep said is true. In the past, he accomplished the inconceivable and saved me. His words made everyone's eyes shine. If accurate, heavenly justice surely possessed the world's best products. Surpassing the has in six months was very possible now Yep Shen placed both hands on the table, looking around. I've provided the formulas, but just two requests. One, swiftly manufacture and market them. Two, absolute confidentiality. Anyone who dares leak, I guarantee they won't leave here alive. Hearing this, Shen Haihua shot up. Mr. Yep, give me a month to prepare for readiness. Yep Shen was satisfied with Shen Haihua's attitude. Next he asked Song Yi Dan and Ha Ruoshui, now I'll divide up tasks. What do you propose? After pondering, Song Yi Dan said, I can handle marketing to ensure product demand. Does President Yep trust me with this? Ha Ruoshui also wanted to request CEO but before she could speak, her phone buzzed. Reading the message, her heart tightened and eyes flashed despair only hearing Yep Shen's voice did she regain herself, forcing a smile. I don't need a position anymore. Let me be a temp worker. Pay me 10,000 RMB per hour and I'll do my best for heavenly justice. Yep Shen looked at Ha Ruoshui in surprise. This wasn't like her usual style. 10,000 RMB a day isn't expensive since you were a CEO. But why refuse a position? Ha Ruoshui helplessly shook her head. Sorry Yep Shen, I truly want to walk with you, build a career and be your assistant. But sadly, Ha Ruizu's voice trembled at the end. She knew her time was short. Her father's message about the arranged marriage in five months even said she had no right to refuse. 
Marrying into the prestigious Tien family was an honor for her and the has that night in the apartment. Ha Ruoshui locked herself in her room, curled up on the bed. Her face was full of helplessness and reluctance. She was a person, not goods. Why couldn't she refuse this outside in the living room? Yep Shen also sensed Ha Ruozu's unease. He asked Song Yi Dan. What's wrong with Ha Ruoshui? Song Yi Dan helplessly shook her head. I don't know. At home, she locks herself in her room and won't say anything when asked. But right then, Song Yi Dan's phone rang. Madam Song calling her so suddenly but the voice sounded urgent. Song Yi Dan abruptly stood up, face aghast, big trouble. Yep Shen, remember Wang Wuhang? Yep Shen nodded. Of course, he's Uncle Wang's son. When everyone shunned me, he dared to associate with me. A bit silly and kind-hearted but my best friend. I asked Uncle Wang last time, he's studying at Zhangbei University right? What happened? Did he get into trouble? Song Yi Dan's expression darkened. Just now, Madam called saying Wang Wuhang was beaten up and even had his arm broken. It seems the perpetrator has connections, even blocking ambulances from entering the campus to treat him. Hearing this, Yep Shen stiffened as fury rose within him. He couldn't help cursing loudly soon after. Yep Shen and Song Yi Dan hurried to the university gates. Several guards blocked the way, refusing entry or exit Song Yi Dan tried saying, We're students here but forgot our IDs. Please let us through. But a guard cut her off. The situation special now, the school leadership ordered no one allowed in. But Yep Shen didn't intend to talk. He clenched the steel fence, causing the guards to look over. But before they could react, with his strength Yep Shen instantly bent the steel without hesitation. He lifted the fence section and tossed it before the terrified guards whose faces paled a cold voice rang out. Schools nurture people. How can you prevent saving someone? If you still try blocking me, I won't hesitate smashing your legs. The guards cowered down in fear at the same time below the male dorms at Zhangbei University, crowds encircled the area. Most were students attracted by the commotion, faces passive in the middle, Uncle Wang bravely shielded his wife and son with a cane. Seeing his son's wounds, Madame Zhang cried in anguish, you beasts, but they only sneered. The leader said, who did the old hag call beasts? Principal. Who was she referring to? A middle-aged man spoke up. Young Master Du. She meant her son with the broken arm became an unviable beast. Wang Wuhang gritted his teeth, face twisted in pain. He struggled up shouting, Bastard principal. Curse me. I'll drag you to hell with me when I die. Du Chengdong coldly laughed, stepping forward. Said you'll drag me to hell even in death? Then I'll beat you dead now and see if you can still drag me down. He swung his cane directly at Wang Wuhang's head but Uncle Wang bravely shielded it. Eyes blazing with fury. You brat, don't go too far. If you dare touch my wife and son again, I'll drag you down with me. Du Chengdong sneered, stepping forward. Look at you all, like I'm the villain. When it was your profligate son molesting my girlfriend. Even if cops come, only he'll be arrested. Wang Wuhang angrily shouted, I didn't. You tried assaulting a female student behind the mountain yesterday. I stopped you so you fabricated this for revenge. Du Chengdong laughed loudly. Why would a young master need to assault anyone? That girl is the student you mentioned. Now ask her if I did anything. The tearful girl hesitated then shook her head in denial now Wang Wuhang's heart felt suffocated, unable to breathe. Mockery rang out around him Wang Wuhang roared. You shameless sycophants. Can't you see her wounds? Clearly forced to lie, Du Chengdong coldly said, So what if they cover for me? I have power while you're just a poor nobody who dares interfere. Seeing Du Chengdong approach, Uncle Wang was alert. Dare touch him and I'll desperately fight you to the death today. But as he spoke, a thug behind suddenly punched his nape. The blow dazed him, unable to react Du Chengdong added, Let's see who still dares shield you. I'll smash your face first, leaving you unable to speak. He raised his cane, swinging down at Wang Wuhang's face at this fatal moment. A roar sounded from outside. The crowd was ripped open by the storming Yep Shen in a flash. He arrived before Du Chengdong, his palm unleashing a surge of energy straight at him seeing this. Du Chengdong panicked, hurriedly using his cane to block. But it was futile how could he withstand Yep Shen's superhuman power? He crashed heavily to the ground a thug behind reacted and charged over but Yep Shen's backhand swat sent him flying after dealing with them. Yep Shen finally turned to Wang Wuhang, 
face worried Wang Wuhang gawked at Yep Shen, exclaiming, Brother Yep, why are you here? Yep Shen nodded, giving him a pill. Swallow this, your wounds will heal faster and your arm will be fine. Trust me. Wang Wuhang hesitated but swallowed it. The medicine took effect. Warmth spreading through his body Yep Shen coldly glanced around. Don't move yet, let me deal with them first. Wang Wuhang panicked. Brother Yep, don't. This is my problem, don't act rashly. But Song Yi Dan patted his shoulder. Don't worry, he'll handle it well. Wang Wuhang was surprised. Sister Song Yi Dan. You're here too? With so many, will Brother Yep be okay? But Song Yi Dan cut him off. Don't worry about him, just trust him. Now Du Chengdong had crawled up, face covered in blood and even missing a tooth. He wailed. Principal, am I okay? I almost got beaten to death, but Yep Shen was approaching. The middle-aged man hurriedly shielded Du Chengdong. This is school, what are you doing? Guards, call the guards. But in a flash, Yep Shen's slap sent the man crashing heavily backwards Yep Shen's voice rang out coldly. You call yourself a teacher? Get aside, I'll deal with you later. As for you mongrels, break the legs of any who dare flee. Happy Halloween! <laughs> yep Shen's icy eyes glared at Du Chengdong, advancing closer. Du Chengdong retreated in terror Yep Shen glanced coldly at the girl and asked. I'll only ask once, did Wang Wuhang molest you? Dare lie and I'll snap your neck now. The panicked girl hurriedly pointed at Du Chengdong. It was young Master Du's orders. He told me to do it. It was all him. The moment she finished, Yep Shen slapped her hard. Apologize, quick. The girl hugged her face, collapsing to her knees and tearfully apologizing to Wang Wuhang finished. Yep Shen's gaze fell on Du Chengdong, dropping him into an icy abyss. His whole body shook violently. What do you plan on doing to me? Du Chengdong shrieked in terror. Don't come closer. I warn you, I'm young Master Du of the Du clan. But before he finished, Yep Shen had stormed forth, fiercely slapping then kicking him in the groin next, repeated slaps rang out mixed with painful wailing. Though Yep Shen didn't use full strength, Du Chengdong couldn't endure it the instant Yep Shen drew back his hand, Du Chengdong begged trembling. I beg you, stop hitting me. Or my father won't let you off, but Yep Shen coldly said, you're so arrogant relying on your father? Then I'll call him here now. He made a call. Master Da, bring the Du clan head here immediately. I'm at Zhangbei University. Soon, a luxury car stopped before the school. Thugs dragged out a middle-aged man, forcing him to kneel before Yep Shen seeing this. Du Chengdong cried for his father Yep Shen tossed an iron rod before the man. Pick it up and show me how you teach your son. The stunned man hadn't reacted when Yep Shen's voice rang out. If that brat's still intact, the entire Du clan can forget about living. Hearing the blatant threat, the man didn't resist. He picked up the rod and advanced towards Du Chengdong, eyes full of ruthlessness seeing this, Du Chengdong was completely hopeless. The iron rod crashed down and his agonized screams rang out the man relentlessly beat Du Chengdong, roaring. Know who you offended? Fool. Offending Yep Shen without knowing the consequences, more painful shrieks followed. Now Yep Shen signaled Master Da to come closer and bow his head, strip him of the principal position. As for all students here except Wang Wuhang, kneel and slap yourselves 100 times. Slap lightly and I'll knock out a tooth. Liars will have fingers broken. No one is exempted. Master Da nodded, ordering his men. Then Yep Shen approached Wang Wuhang. Wuhang, let's go home. Meanwhile at the Trans Villa, Zheng Baoguo frowned at the documents on Yep Shen unexpectedly the brat's deep Tian son. The deeps were just a minor family in Shanghai. How could they produce someone like this? Beside him, Ku Yuding said, the deeps have been eliminated, nothing to fear. The issue is the force behind Heavenly Justice Corporation. Killing the brat will surely incur revenge. National security may be watching him too. Zheng Baoguo coldly said, even if it's the Chu's or national security, so what? That brat slaughtered the trans, revenge is only natural. Not only that, I'll kill all close to him and plunge him into despair. Ku Yuding suggested, Master Tran, no need to take such risks. Since the brat's a combat arena fighter, we can take his life via life or death challenge. Nothing can interfere on the life or death stage. 
This way, not only can we kill him publicly but also boost your reputation. Even national security and the Chus would be powerless. Zheng Baoguo pondered. If he knows I can kill him, why would he accept a combat arena duel? Ku Yuding sinisterly smiled. Whether he accepts or not isn't up to him. If Master Tran threatens his loved ones, would he dare refuse? Just then, a steady voice rang from the doorway. You plan to make a move on Yep Shen? I'll gladly assist. Zheng Baoguo frowned, turning to look. An elder with a dignified aura entered the moment he appeared, Zheng Baoguo's mind shuddered. The elder's power was frightening yet he hadn't sensed it at all he quickly bowed, so it's Master Zhang. What wind brings you here? But Zhang Yuanli silently strode to the table, heavily smashing Yep Shen's photo down his finger pierced the photo and smashed a hole through the marble table. Then he lifted the photo, coldly saying, naturally I'm here for that brat. Blood debts must be repaid. Hearing this, Zheng Baoguo's eyes lit up. So Master Zhang also has a grudge with the brat? If so, from now on the Trans and Zhangs are allies, Zhang Yuanli nodded. After sitting down, he spoke. I heard you're unafraid of national security and the Chus, wanting to lure the brat onto the life or death arena. I have a better plan I investigated, he has two close girls beside him. We can kidnap one, safely understanding his abilities while making him suffer endless torment not dying easily on the arena thus, the Zhangs will send three top experts here. Zheng Baoguo was impressed, as expected, Master Zhang's schemes are unparalleled. Then the trans will also send our four strongest disciples. Let's see what that brat can do against them. Meanwhile, Yep Shen was worried not seeing Ha Ruoshui anywhere Song Yi Dan also didn't know. Just saying Ha Ruoshui had cried a lot last night before sleeping, refusing to give a reason Yep Shen stood up. All right, if she won't say, don't force her. I'll go visit Wang Wuhang at school. Yep Shen turned back, smiling. You should go to work, or I'll dock your pay. Soon, Yep Shen arrived at the school dorms looking for Wang Wuhang. After yesterday's events, almost all students didn't dare go near him. Yep Shen glanced out the door. Interesting, why not come in and see? Hearing this, the peeping students hurriedly fled. Wang Wuhang scratched his head. Now my classmates avoid me, as if I bullied them. Yep Shen smiled. Because they fear and respect your power. This world naturally venerates strength. Laws only restrain the weak while the strong disregard them. Saying so, he took out a notebook. You have a chance to become stronger. I won't force your decision, it's entirely up to you. Wang Wuhang nervously reached out. No need to think, with strength like yours, brother Yep, I wouldn't get bullied or helplessly watch my parents beaten. Yep Shen was very satisfied with his reply. He continued, Very good. This is the Cloud Thunder Fist Manual. It will give you power. Today you must memorize it all then burn it, not letting it out. Wang Wuhang's eyes widened eagerly. That's right, exactly what I wanted. But Yep Shen was serious. Finally, I must warn you, the martial path is very dangerous. Trust no one easily. Before he finished, Yep Shen's phone rang. Hearing it, his expression darkened. Bad news. Ha Ruizu's been kidnapped. The men I had protecting her were all killed. From the wounds, the perpetrator was surely a master. Yep Shen coldly said, Master Da, find her no matter what. Otherwise, I'll settle accounts with you. Hanging up, Yep Shen hurriedly bid Wang Wuhang farewell. I have an urgent matter, remember my words. Then he leapt out the window. Glass shattered into tiny shards. Wang Wuhang was shocked. Brother Yep, this is the fifth floor. But in a flash, Yep Shen had landed and blurred into the gate meanwhile. The man drew talismans in the air, seeing through all things for signs of life thousands of miles away Yep Shen raced home like an arrow leaving the bow. Entering the living room, he saw a girl's silhouette. You're back. Yep Shen coldly said, thought it was the has, but someone else instead. How could I do that to my own daughter? Where's the protection you promised her? Even her lifeline was severed. You call this protecting her? Madam Ha's gaze was grave as Yep Shen removed her hand. Give me a day, I will absolutely bring her back. Otherwise, I'll let you handle it. Madam Ha scoffed. Who needs your life? I've tracked cameras and mobilized all forces, we'll surely find my daughter. Yep Shen entered the room, sensing the lingering aura. The enemy was surely a master level expert, likely targeting him Yep Shen pondered then decided to contact the police network for help searching. 
But just then, his phone rang from an unknown number the threatening voice said. How do you feel now, useless yep brat? Worried? Yep Shen coldly said. It's certainly your doing. I don't know or care who you are or your aim. But I'll give you one chance to free Ha Ruoshui immediately. Otherwise, you'll die horribly. The other end was silent a moment. About to speak when Yep Shen hung up he took a hair from the bed and raised two fingers, drawing talismans in the air while chanting mysteries. The talismans and hair floated up, a flash of light bursting out in his mind. Yep Shen saw the inside of a shipping container at Bailin Port. His eyes widened, coughing blood. Face pale but still cold. Bailin Port. At Bailin Port, the man glared furiously at the deadline. He thought he grasped Yep Shen's weakness but instead got threatened just then, two people approached. Zheng Baoguo asked. Master Zhang, was that brat very panic-stricken? The man was ashamed. He threatened me then hung up before I could say the location. I didn't even get to threaten anything. Zheng Baoguo frowned. What's Yep Shen doing? Could he not care about the woman's life? He looked toward the tied-up girl. They had meant to kidnap Song Yi Dan but mistakenly took Ha Ruoshui instead meanwhile, Ha Ruoshui was observing them. From their actions, she discerned they had meticulous plans. However, she wasn't harmed, even regularly provided food and water. Likely they knew her identity and planned using her to coerce Yep Shen here as an English translation of the passage using the converted character names. But considering all of Shanghai, few would dare do this while Ha Ruoshui pondered. Master Zhang approached handing her a bottle of water in a commanding tone. Drink. But Ha Ruoshui turned away. Who are you? Do you know what provoking the has means? Seeing her arrogant, Master Zhang threw the bottle away. Drink if you want, don't if not. I've been patient, yet you still act high and mighty? Killing you would be nothing, just trading one life for another. But suddenly, the device at his waist vibrated. Master Zhang was horrified. The sensor reacted. Someone's here. But upon reaching the door, the overpowering stench of blood rushed in. Before him stood a proud figure amidst the sea of blood, surrounded by corpses. It was like facing a demon. Master Zhang was stunned. In under a minute, four top experts had been killed by just fists calming down, he only thought of escaping quickly. But after just a few steps, Yep Shen appeared beside him, fiercely slapping him crashing heavily down. An aura of death shrouded Master Zhang Yep Shen's voice rang out coldly. You're the one who called right? I gave you a chance to live but you didn't treasure it. Blood splattered everywhere. After killing them all, Yep Shen went to where Ha Ruoshui was held. Seeing the familiar figure, joy lit up in her eyes. She rushed into Yep Shen's arms as tears flowed out Yep Shen wiped her tears. It's all right now, let's go home. Ha Ruoshui was surprised. I thought you sneaked in? What about my kidnappers? Yep Shen calmly said. I dealt with them, no one survived. Hearing this, Ha Ruoshui was shocked. Though untrained, she knew they were no lightweight suddenly, she thought of the Tian clan's young talent set to marry her. She had thought them unequal, but now Yep Shen was fully comparable. Could she persuade her father to cancel the engagement thinking so? Ha Ruizu's cheeks slightly flushed suddenly she felt herself lifted up. Yep Shen thought she was in shock and couldn't walk feeling his broad, sturdy back, Ha Ruizu's emotion surged. She wanted down but said, I want to be piggybacked, walking is tiring. Meanwhile at the Zhang clan's headquarters, two elders stared at the screen. They felt choked, finding it hard to breathe logically, a master level fighter should have killed a twenty-something youth right? If this spread, they'd become a laughingstock. Luckily we prepared, or even both of us together couldn't have killed him. Zhang Yuanli nodded. Considering now, Yep Shen's strength is at least at the master level. He disappeared for five years but even geniuses can't improve so quickly. So what does Master Tran plan? Will he continue using the life or death arena to challenge him? Zheng Baoguo roared, of course. He slaughtered my trans, I must have revenge. Without destroying him, my martial path will forever be obstructed. Zhang Yuanli pondered, we need extra insurance. If he dares accept, I'll invite Mr. Yuan as referee. Zheng Baoguo was shocked. You mean the elder ranked 400 on the top experts list? Zhang Yuanli sinisterly smiled. The very one. I want to see what that brat can use to win now. Meanwhile, Madam Ha upon receiving Yep Shen's message immediately went to the apartment. Seeing Ha Ruoshui, she checked her from head to toe for any injuries. Seeing she was fine, 
Madame Ha finally breathed relief she said sternly. How did you let Ha Ruoshui get kidnapped? Come home with me now, your father has sent more reliable guards. Saying so, she pulled Ha Ruizu's hand to leave but didn't dare upon seeing Yep Shen's icy gaze. The aura of death from him made her shudder Madame Ha quickly changed her attitude. Ruoshui, mother isn't forcing you. Remember your birthday is in a few days right? Come home with your mother for a few days then return here okay? Seeing Ha Ruoshui hesitate, Madame Ha continued. Your grandmother came from overseas just for your birthday. You know she's old now, with fewer years each passing year. Or could it be you don't want to see her one last time? Hearing this, Ha Ruizu's resolve wavered. She bit her lip thinking just then, Yep Shen stepped forward, go home. When your birthday comes, I'll also attend. Then I'll bring you back. Ha Ruoshui smiled, extending her pinky. You have to remember then, or I won't let you off. Yep Shen hooked pinkies with her. Rest assured, my word is my bond. Only then did Ha Ruoshui relax, laughing. Then it settled, no going back on your word. Suddenly recalling, she handed Yep Shen some documents. This is my business plan for Heavenly Justice Corporation. Yep Shen briefly looked over and nodded satisfied. This plan is much better than Shen Heiwa's. Finally under her mother's urging, Ha Ruoshui left the apartment Yep Shen understood she cared for her grandmother and it was good she went home now, it was no longer safe here. Moreover, he decided to thoroughly resolve the threats in the coming days but just then, a knock sounded at the door. Yep Shen opened it to a child handing him an envelope, are you Mr. Yep Shen? An old man told me to pass you this. Yep Shen took the letter and read it. The few lines made him furious. It was a challenge letter from Zheng Baoguo also threatening his loved ones he immediately realized Zheng Baoguo was the trans elder behind Ha Ruizu's kidnapping receiving Zheng Baoguo's challenge letter. Yep Shen decided he would go to the combat arena since the man came seeking death himself, he would oblige. It also saved the trouble of hunting him down just then, another knock sounded at the door. Opening it, a beautiful anxious face appeared. Mr. Yep. Did you get Zheng Baoguo's combat arena challenge letter? Yep Shen nodded. You're quite well informed. I just received the letter. Kim Ling Diem worriedly said. The news has spread all over Shanghai. The life or death arena settles disputes between combat arena fighters. Clearly Zheng Baoguo wants you dead. Refuse the challenge, the trans won't dare do anything. But Yep Shen just smiled. Why should I refuse? I was searching everywhere for him but now he comes seeking death himself, so I gladly accept. Kim Ling Diem was stunned. But Zheng Baoguo entered the master level over 10 years ago. He's very strong, don't go to your death acting rashly. Yep Shen waved his hand, stop talking. I must go to the arena. Thank you for your concern. Saying so, he slammed the door shut leaving Kim Ling Diem outside. She sighed then called to report Yep Shen's attitude the other end coldly said. I was polite to him but now he wants suicide, let him be. Contact the funeral home, prepare the best coffin for him. If alive he's ungrateful, at least dead give him a proper burial. Hold a grand funeral when he's dead. Meanwhile, sitting on the sofa recalling Kim Ling Diem's words, Yep Shen felt irritated. Zheng Baoguo was just an old trans man, he could crush him with one hand but just then, his phone rang. Master Da called, young master, Zheng Baoguo's power is immense, possibly top 600 among masters. Need me to send assassins for him? But Yep Shen coldly said, no need, I can handle him. How did you dispose of the bodies at the port? Master Da replied, all cleaned up sir, he wanted to dissuade more but Yep Shen had hung up. Slumping into his chair, Yep Shen felt exhausted. Why was everyone suddenly so worried before he could settle, the phone rang again. Yep Shen irritably picked up. Chu Zheng De. In the next half hour, almost everyone he knew called persuading Yep Shen not to go to the arena. He got so angry he nearly threw his phone next, Shen Haihua called. Yep Shen exploded. Why are you advising me against suicide too? Listen, it's useless no matter who it is. I must go there tomorrow. Shen Haihua was surprised by his reaction but didn't mind. Changing the subject the call had just ended when the phone rang again. This time, a steady voice. Mr. Yep, I'm Ying Ting. Please meet me and the chief. I'm waiting in the car. At a military base in Shanghai, Ying Ting gave Yep Shen a pass. This grants entry. When meeting the leader, please stay calm for Heavenly Justice Corporation and yourself. 
Yep Shen was silent. He could remain calm but if provoked too much, don't blame him soon, they stopped before a conference room. Ying Ting knocked. Reporting sir, I've brought Yep Shen. A commanding voice inside said. Let him in. The door opened and Yep Shen entered alone. A man stood with his back to him, hands behind him. Though no aura emanated, Yep Shen sensed he was an expert. The man knew all about him, his family, life, and recent actions the man turned around, sharp wolf-like eyes that could see through one's heart. Your achievements in a short time are enough to eclipse a lifetime for others. I wonder where you went the past five years and how you're confident accepting Zheng Baoguo's challenge. Saying so, he focused power into his hand, pushing the teacup to slide swiftly across the table but not spilling a drop Yep Shen reached out, stopping it. The teacup halted, the energy dispersing. He picked it up and took a sip, nonchalant the man frowned. He knew the immense latent power in that teacup, even top experts might not catch it intact. Yet Yep Shen not only caught it but didn't spill a drop he suppressed his astonishment, saying, I'm Lei Shuawei. Ying Ting said you want to collaborate with Long Hun? What kind of collaboration do you have in mind? If you want to join us, I can do more for you. Yep Shen shook his head, I won't join you. I'm used to freedom plus now Heavenly Justice Corporation has problems producing medicine. I just want to ask if you can help, otherwise I'll leave immediately. Lei Shuawei smiled. That's simple. I can help you handle this. But what will we get in return? Yep Shen coldly tossed over a pill. I can give you 200 of these pills, no charge. Lei Shuawei caught it, eyes wide in surprise. This was high-grade healing medicine containing spiritual energy. He had to negotiate for more. 500 like this and I'll help you handle it satisfactorily. Hearing this, Yep Shen walked straight for the door. Lei Shuawei hurriedly said. All right, agreed to 200. Yep Shen stopped. I changed my mind, just 100 now. If not, I'll leave immediately. You have five seconds to decide. Lei Shuawei felt stifled but had no other choice. Reluctantly nodding agreement Yep Shen continued. Have Ying Ting come get the order tomorrow. Additionally, I'll gift 100 more pills to Ingui's veterans. Saying so, Yep Shen left Lei Shuawei watched the closing door, more puzzled by this person. He had thought money was important to him, but now he was giving away free just then. Ying Ting knocked and entered. Sir, I'm certain Yep Shen will go to the arena. Should we intervene somehow? Lei Shuawei frowned. Prepare the jet immediately. I'll urgently fly to meet the leader for approval. If Zheng Baoguo and Zhang Yuanli make a move to kill him, we'll invoke documents to protect him. After leaving the base, Yep Shen went straight back to his villa. In truth, he didn't have 200 pills but currently had enough ingredients to produce them tonight he would surely finish them but just then, Yep Shen's phone rang. It was Song Yi Dan calling, Yep Shen, where did you and Ha Ruoshui disappear to? Still not home this late? Yep Shen replied, Ha Ruoshui went home with her mother. I bought a villa nearby and am staying there. Song Yi Dan didn't believe it. Don't joke around. Villas here cost more than your whole company. Give me the address, I'll come see if you're lying. If you don't believe, just come directly. The doors unlocked. Ten minutes later, Song Yi Dan arrived at the villa and pushed the door open a crack, stunned by the unbelievable sight. Yep Shen sat cross-legged, whole body enveloped in golden light. Before him was a furnace with flames seemingly spurting continuously from his palms. The rich medicinal fragrance wafted out as several lustrous black pills floated up Yep Shen opened his eyes, picking up each pill and putting it in a bag. Checking the quality was still good, unaffected by the speed. He would finish before dawn it took Song Yi Dan a while to come to her senses. Yep Shen took her hand. Come see the house. If you like it, this can also be ours. Song Yi Dan gawked at the luxurious house. The design and furnishings were perfect, extravagant and just her taste stepping into the bedroom. Song Yi Dan jumped onto the soft bed, lying face down unwilling to get up Yep Shen said. If you like this house, I'll have it signed over tomorrow. Song Yi Dan panicked, shaking her head. What are you saying? Why suddenly give me a house? Yep Shen's gaze was sincere. What you did for me five years ago, I still owe you greatly. Song Yi Dan understood he meant the past but didn't want Yep Shen treating her out of obligation. She hugged his shoulders. Can't eat it all yourself, that's not fair. To be equal, I should also freeload here. Then she jumped on the bed lying prone like a child. 
Later when Ha Ruoshui returns we won't have to fight over a bed. There's so many rooms here. You two can sleep in different ones each day of the week without repeating. Yep Shen didn't mind at all watching Yep Shen's departing figure made Song Yi Dan feel melancholic. She hugged the pillow. If he only came near out of obligation, she wouldn't accept it early next morning. The two bags were stuffed full with about 200 pills. Yep Shen was exhausted, clearly having expended much energy. Song Yi Dan brought in breakfast. Ha Ruizu's birthday is in two days. What gift do you plan to give her? Yep Shen was startled. The duel at the arena was also that day. The coinciding events were too much just then, rhythmic knocking sounded at the door. Ying Ting walked in. Mr. Yep, I've come for the medicine as agreed. Seeing the two plastic bags, Ying Ting was embarrassed. You're too courteous, we already ate breakfast at the base. Yep Shen was annoyed. What breakfast? These are the 200 pills we agreed on. Just say if you're taking them or not. Ying Ting hugged the bags tightly. Precious medicine like this yet you put it in plastic bags. What if contaminated? He hurriedly had people bring equipment to preserve the air Ying Ting would rather throw away the blood samples than the medicine. He said blood could be retaken but medicine couldn't. The precious medicine that Yep Shen gave away like vegetables, even stuffing two big bags, about 200 pills Ying Ting blamed Yep Shen for carelessly keeping the valuable medicine in plastic bags. But Yep Shen said his medicine wouldn't spoil easily, if issues arise find him only then was Ying Ting at ease, saying his leader had ordered intervening if needed at tomorrow's match. Yep Shen thanked him and saw him off meanwhile at a tea house in Shanghai, Zheng Baoguo and Zhang Yuanli sat facing each other. Between them was a formidable old man, one of tomorrow's match referees, ranked 400 on the master list despite meeting him often, Zhang Yuanli still shuddered. In 10 years, Mr. Yuan Qingfu had not only amassed many benefits but also became vice chairman of the Provincial Martial Arts Federation, a position many masters vied for Zheng Baoguo presented a gift box. We are but juniors compared to you. This is a respectful gift, hopefully beneficial for your realm. Mr. Yuan opened it 1,000-year-old ginseng. He said, the gift is too expensive, not at all. Only you deserve to receive it. Zhang Yuanli said, Sir, tomorrow Master Tran will duel a youth. He's only 20, may I ask your opinion? Just a junior, why do you lack confidence so? Zheng Baoguo added, that brat's strength has skyrocketed despite being 20. We're worried he'll use drugs to cheat. Mr. Yuan slammed the table. Yuan Qingfu is here. If he dares use drugs to win, I'll make him kneel and commit suicide to atone. Zhang Yuanli continued slandering. That Yep Shen is stubborn even daring to threaten killing Master Tran at the arena. Mr. Yuan coldly said, I can tell, you have a grudge with the brat right? They both nodded. He viciously killed our men. Mr. Yuan sneered. This brat truly deserves death. Rest assured, leave tomorrow's matter to me. The two were overjoyed, bowing gratefully. But Mr. Yuan suddenly said, by the way, help me with one more thing. He clapped his hands. Three beautiful college girls entered. Stroking his beard, Mr. Yuan smiled. These girls study hard and want to learn some martial arts from me. As their senior, I'm happy to instruct. The next morning at Yep Shen's villa, a rock floated above his head, absorbing the scant spiritual energy around suddenly. Yep Shen's eyes shot open, his whole body emitting sharp energy. He had broken through to the next realm stabilizing his breath, he lowered the rock. Yep Shen pondered, with such thin spiritual energy here, his cultivation speed should be slower was it because of this rock? Just then, the rock vibrated, emitting a strange sound. Yep Shen was suspicious Yep Shen wondered if this rock was alive since it had just reacted to him but closely observing, he saw nothing unusual he picked up the rock. It was too mysterious, if it could activate some great power, he wouldn't dare be confident facing it next. Yep Shen took out a tortoise shell piece and three coins to divine his fortune today just slightly shaking the tortoise shell and coins, he could predict anyone's fate. But oddly, the three coins didn't react while the tortoise shell stood upright on the ground but Yep Shen was used to it, his master said even the Jade Emperor couldn't meddle with his fate just then, knocking sounded at the door. Kim Ling Diem entered. Mr. Yep, I've come to fetch you. Half an hour later, Yep Shen arrived at a stadium-like area. In the center was an imposing stone arena quite a crowd had gathered, mostly martial artists spectating. 
Yep Shen recognized some faces like Qin Yuming, Chu Rendik, Bai Li Xin. Even the detestable Su Shuren was present suddenly his gaze stopped beside Dao Jia. If not looking closely, one would think it was Master Da. But looking again, his determined gaze to protect Yep Shen at all costs just then, the crowd stirred looking in one direction. Three imposing experts walked out. The match referees Li Lianyuan, Yuan Qingfu, and Wang Jiang Kim Ling Diem reminded these were all top 500 masters, surely impartial. Kim Ling Diem continued. Among them, Yuan Qingfu is most dangerous, likely already top 300. Seeing this, Yep Shen was more vigilant. He realized Yuan Qingfu was extremely dangerous, perhaps having entered the qi manipulation realm Kim Ling Diem spoke up. Becoming an arena referee isn't just about strength but backing too. He's the martial arts federation vice chairman, few dare provoke him. You should try gaining his favor. Sensing Yep Shen's independent nature, Kim Ling Diem quickly added. Also pay attention to that other one. He has great backing and connections, can restrain Zheng Baoguo from harming you. But the arena drum sounded, cutting her off. Yuan Qingfu's voice rang out. Yep Shen, Zheng Baoguo, on stage, the two lightly leapt up. Hushed discussions about Yep Shen sounded until silenced by threat of punishment Yuan Qingfu shook his head. How tragic for a young martial genius to die unjustly like this. On stage, Zheng Baoguo glared at Yep Shen, blood boiling. But Yep Shen remained cold. Both sides signed a life or death agreement. I hope all will refrain to avoid casualties. Now I declare the match started. Zheng Baoguo furiously said. What did my descendants do to offend you that you acted so cruelly? Yep Shen sneered. They brought it on themselves. Today I'll annihilate the trans. Zheng Baoguo's rage erupted. Icy air enveloped him as he charged like a storm, the ground shattering instantly. Zheng Baoguo's body surged with energy like a tsunami crashing toward Yep Shen. The first move was already fierce but Yep Shen easily evaded. Gliding away, he said, with such crude skills, you expect to hit me? Zheng Baoguo roared, raining fierce fists at Yep Shen. But before the barrage, he lightly avoided without injury to the spectators. Yep Shen seemed to be toying with Zheng Baoguo. Their support also faded Zheng Baoguo angrily yelled. Show some guts instead of running. Yep Shen stopped evading. Icy energy exploded instantly. Zheng Baoguo sneered, unleashing a mighty punch. The two energies collided Yep Shen smiled, far weaker than I thought. Zheng Baoguo's face suddenly changed. He felt like being struck by a huge wave, arms shaking from the recoil. His whole body flew back crashing heavily on stage dead silence filled the arena Yep Shen coldly said. With that level, you still let your descendants run amok? Die for good. Zheng Baoguo struggled up, frowning. You forced me to use that move. Even at the cost of my life, I will kill you. A terrifying energy erupted. Far away, Yuan Qingfu's expression changed. This wasn't an ordinary martial arts move. Now he understood why Zheng Baoguo was in seclusion training meanwhile. Yep Shen felt a sense of familiarity. He recognized this was a cultivation technique, not low level. He also understood the great sacrifice. Zheng Baoguo mentioned cultivators and ordinary martial artists differ. Their dantians are weak, unable to withstand cultivation techniques. Using them would severely damage the organs Zheng Baoguo roared, wind blasting in all directions. The clear sky suddenly filled with dark clouds, lightning flashing. The surrounding energy field became chaotic Zheng Baoguo's feet stomped heavily, his whole body leaping high like an eagle taking flight. Next he dove down from the sky, fiercely punching the ground. In a blink, his fist expanded to several times its size. Faintly glowing such a terrifying move would leave only minced meat if hitting. But Yep Shen wasn't afraid at all he nonchalantly said. I've seen this move before. Sure enough, a massive pillar of light speared down. The entire arena shook, the deafening roar of heaven collapsing and earth splitting sounded everywhere. Everyone held their breath, unsure what was happening on stage Zhang Yuanli thought Yep Shen couldn't escape. But as the smoke cleared, a shocking scene appeared Yep Shen still stood firmly. Below him Zheng Baoguo lay motionless, drenched in blood. Yep Shen hadn't even focused his strength, merely extending his fist to block Zheng Baoguo's attack as he charged in. Just as Yep Shen was about to make his move, a roar came from behind. 
Sensing the killing intent, he quickly retreated it was Yuan Qingfu preventing him, even using a lethal technique. He said martial artists only compete in skill, no killing. But if Yep Shen deliberately tried to kill, he'd have to go through him first at this point, Yep Shen was truly furious. If he wanted to stop it, why not do so from the start? Clearly he was being hypocritical. Today not only Zheng Baoguo will die, but this old dog will follow just then, behind Yep Shen, Zhang Yuanli snuck up to ambush him. He thought with Yuan Qingfu distracting him, Yep Shen wouldn't evade in time a top expert ambushing a youth was truly despicable a strike containing immense power lashed out. Zhang Yuanli sinisterly smiled, determined to injure Yep Shen heavily. But that smile abruptly froze as Yep Shen spun and counterattacked. Zhang Yuanli never expected getting struck by his own move. Yep Shen coldly said, like ambushing? Then I'll have you die right now. He unleashed dozens of continuous strikes, ending by punching through Zhang Yuanli's chest the number 514 ranked master was smashed to pieces right on stage. Yuan Qingfu was stunned. Unable to react in time Zheng Baoguo witnessed it all. Terrified and uneasy Zheng Baoguo pleaded to Yuan Qingfu. Senior, with you here today, surely no one can kill you. But just as he finished speaking, a beam of light pierced through Zheng Baoguo's brain. Yuan Qingfu stood there in utter disbelief Yep Shen coldly said. Not even gods could save him, let alone you. The entire arena was dead silent. Everyone looked at Yep Shen with terrified eyes Yuan Qingfu was furious. The match was over. Why still kill Yep Shen smiled? Why should I listen to a dog like you? Yuan Qingfu's guts felt ready to burst. Unable to restrain his rage, he roared. Just an arrogant brat. Tired of living? Kim Ling Diem sucked in a cold breath. Daring to say that to Yuan Qingfu. No one would speak up even if he died Chu Fulu worried. Yuan Qingfu is no simpleton. Moreover, Yep Shen will hardly escape in terms of skill. Yuan Qingfu raised his hand to the sky, his inner energy erupting like a volcano. It transformed into a massive sword Yep Shen glanced over, so the old dog had some ability after all. He too spat out a torrent of mighty energy. Today you'll know who I am. But suddenly the other referee leapt on stage, stopping them. He said to Yuan Qingfu, as a famed master, why be angered by a junior? Yuan Qingfu scowled. This brat killed ruthlessly with no respect for referees. Should he not be killed? But Wang Jiang replied, by coming to the arena, it's life or death by fate. Zhang Yuanli attacked first, breaking the rules. But why did you intervene in the match as referee? The truly disrespectful one is you. Yuan Qingfu raged. What do you mean? You think you can act arrogantly relying on your family status? You should know this brat is unrelated to your house. If I kill him how does it concern you? His words made Wang Jiang anxious. Seeing Yep Shen's talent, he truly didn't want the prodigy crippled prematurely after a few seconds thought. He turned to Yep Shen. Do you want to join my Wang clan? If agreed, I guarantee no one will dare touch you again. His words stunned not just Yep Shen but the whole crowd too. Countless envious, desirous gazes converged on him but Yep Shen coldly declined. Thank you but I won't join any faction. Su Shuren scorned him inside. So many yearned for this chance yet he rejected it without hesitation. All right, if you decide so, your life is your own responsibility. This is a mistake of youth. Saying so, he left the stage. Seeing Yep Shen's sole chance gone, Yuan Qingfu immediately attacked without hesitation the stage roiled like a hot pot. Everyone saw Yep Shen's actions as suicidal just then, Yuan Qingfu began to make his move. He focused his energy to his fingertips and shouted, Old me will kill you in three moves. Yep Shen was puzzled why he concentrated power in his fingers. But before he could think, Yuan Qingfu swiftly drew talismans the energy transformed into threads covering the entire arena like a spiderweb Yep Shen hurriedly retreated but Yuan Qingfu seemed to have anticipated this. Even the air locked down Yep Shen sensed the immense power from him. As expected, very strong, the ranking was right but he wasn't afraid at all, rather thrilled. Let's see what monster a top 400 expert is under Yuan Qingfu's control. The arena was full of cracks as if sliced by blades the man worried. This was Yuan Qingfu's famous move but Yep Shen stayed calm, easily evading every attack. Losing patience. He took initiative advancing toward Yuan Qingfu Yuan Qingfu laughed loudly, realizing Yep Shen's true power. 
But then he pointed his finger, shooting a stream of energy Yep Shen was startled but too late. His leg was tightly wrapped by the threads, pulling him to the ground Yuan Qingfu was overjoyed, not missing this chance. But Yep Shen quickly calmed down, this energy was nothing, he'd break free soon but Yuan Qingfu gave no opportunity, immediately unleashing the second move. An orb struck Yep Shen's chest directly rather than piercing his chest, it bounced Yep Shen away, making him cough blood Yuan Qingfu found it strange. If it were another martial artist, their chest would at least be pierced though Yep Shen narrowly escaped death, he was heavily injured. Clearly he was forced into a life or death situation Yep Shen didn't dare underestimate him either. Despite his cultivation advantage, he struggled against someone at the Qi manipulation realm left with no choice, he channeled spiritual energy into the stone. The rock vibrated, emitting a strange sound Yuan Qingfu's expression changed, sensing an icy aura. Though unclear what Yep Shen was doing, he had to kill him before completion. The sword Qi stabbed straight for Yep Shen's chest. But he suddenly felt the world fade into silence, his consciousness seemingly entering another dark space he opened his eyes, pupils contracting in shock. So familiar, this was inside the reincarnation tombstone this time he only meant to wake the tomb yet unexpectedly directly entered it his gaze stopped on the gravestone beside, glowing words appearing in the darkness. When the gravestone emits faint light, a shadow emerges. Icy eyes stared sharply at him, at such a low realm yet able to control the reincarnation tomb. Now Yep Shen felt tiny like a boat amidst the vast ocean La Yunxian glanced around, seeing only his gravestone lit, all else pitch black. He felt dissatisfied, was he inferior to them La Yunxian sighed. It seems I really am inferior to them. Then he looked at Yep Shen. You've controlled the tomb, so my legacy won't be lost. Unfortunately, outer spiritual energy is too thin for me to exist long. Learn as much as you can. La Yunxian dissipated into black smoke, entering Yep Shen's body instantly the surroundings vanished. Yep Shen reappeared on the arena but now La Yunxian controlled his body facing Yuan Qingfu's attacking Qi. He only needed to raise two fingers to block it before Yuan Qingfu could react. His right arm was snapped, his whole body flying back. His body cracked loudly as if every bone shattered Yuan Qingfu lay motionless with no aura left. Only fear remained in his eyes. You claim mastery over Qi yet are so weak. Yep Shen raised his hand, tightly clenching his fist. His whole body swirled with surging energy, converging into a massive fist overhead Yuan Qingfu gasped. Unable to believe someone could wield energy to this extent the entire arena buzzed, never seeing such technique. Everyone wildly guessed Yep Shen's identity Yuan Qingfu knew he was no match, like dust compared to a mountain. He quickly begged for mercy, willing to become Yep Shen's slave but Yep Shen was unmoved. Thunder immediately roared, the massive pillar of light spearing down and blasting Yuan Qingfu apart on the spot only Yuan Qingfu's shredded hand remained. Yep Shen's eyes were icy cold. A worm like you deserves to be my slave? This terrifying massacre made the audience swallow their saliva. No one could believe it Chu Fulu was stunned. There really exists an expert like this? I feel that wasn't Yep Shen. Hot blood boiled in Diao Lingtian. Though unclear how, this match alone was enough to go down in martial history the referee retreated, terrified. How can this be? The legend of cultivators annihilating the realm is real. This time Yep Shen caused too great a shock. When the news spreads out, he'll definitely become a phenomenon in the martial world. By the rules, someone from the Martial Arts Federation here has to report everything about this cultivator to superiors. Just then, a man slipped away from the crowd. Yep Shen sinisterly smiled, colluding? Even if you run to the ends of the earth I can still kill you. The man suddenly felt oppressed by energy. But before he could react, a massive force appeared, crushing him like an ant everyone was confused about what happened, only seeing the man collapse fresh blood soaking the ground Yep Shen stood amidst the wreckage. Beside him, La Yunxian materialized only Yep Shen could see La Yunxian he said. This time I caused too much of a disturbance, many will keep eyes on me. La Yunxian pondered, then I'll erase their memories. Just strike their heads with spiritual power. Yep Shen was silent. Surely he didn't plan on killing everyone but La Yunxian had quickly taken over his body. Erasing memories doesn't mean erasing everything. Some will still investigate clues and discover today's truth. What you need to do now is strive to activate the second tombstone. 
Yep Shen raised his hand to the sky. Abundant spiritual power gushed out. Swiftly enveloping the entire martial zone they split into countless tiny threads piercing everyone's foreheads. Erasing the recent memories but Yep Shen kept Diao Lingtian's memories intact suddenly the referee shuddered. Feeling icy cold as if dropping into ice Yep Shen said. Two choices. Loyal to me or forget everything. Continuing to live like worms. Wang Jiang was startled. This pressure certainly came from a high power. But pledging loyalty to a youth was hard to accept yet then he understood, kneeling down. Even if I cultivated martial arts a hundred years, I couldn't witness today's events. Serving you is the greatest opportunity of my life. Yep Shen transmitted a wisp of spiritual energy into Wang Jiang. Betrayal means a miserable death. Then he muttered. I still have some time to find a quiet place and complete the final mission. Back in the secret chamber, Le Yunxian's soul appeared before him. I know you have many questions but no time for answers. Ask what you will. Yep Shen asked. Just one question. How were you trapped in the stone? And why help me? Le Yunxian deeply looked. That's two questions. First, we weren't trapped in the stone but the reincarnation tomb. The stone contains the tomb second. The tomb chose you so you're its master, destined to rule the realm. We only have the mission of helping you eliminate all obstacles to become the undying supreme. Yep Shen pondered then asked. So how to awaken the remaining tombstones? Le Yunxian replied. You need to reach a certain level for them to acknowledge your qualifications. Or accomplish something making them willingly recognize you you may see me as very strong but actually not. Of 100, I'm the weakest Yep Shen was shocked. The other ancient masters could likely tear space itself then he recalled Kanglong illusory realm. After just five years there he had this level of strength, let alone those deep within it their whole lives. Their power would be terrifyingly immense Le Yunxian's voice rang out. My spirit can only last another minute. I'll impart everything to you. Yep Shen quickly sat down, concentrating his mind. La Yunxian raised his finger and torrents of spiritual energy instantly poured into his head his brain suddenly gained countless complex knowledge, mystical weapons and peerless techniques. Even countless battle scenes flashed, overwhelming Yep Shen La Yunxian's spirit gradually faded. He softly said, May I ask you to call me master once? I don't want my life's knowledge to vanish over time. Yep Shen was moved, solemnly calling out, Master. La Yunxian laughed heartily. Le Yunxian, my life wasn't in vain. I hope we meet again. After those final words, Le Yunxian's spirit disappeared Yep Shen contemplated. A chance to meet again but before he could think further, powerful energy erupted from his Dantian. A sign of impending breakthrough when the energy accumulated to the limit, Yep Shen roared. Breakthrough. He halted and stabilized at layer 9 of primordial chaos realm. But the breakthrough process didn't cease, rather grew stronger Yep Shen decided. Today I'll completely transcend a realm. His heaven-shaking yell resounded as surging energy flooded the room. The entire villa shook violently outside, countless people halted, guessing it was an earthquake or explosion. The neighborhood was in chaos Yep Shen's eyes slowly opened, deep as the ocean. His aura was many times stronger Yep Shen clenched his fist tight, he had truly entered the Qi manipulation realm. If Yuan Qingfu still lived, he'd certainly be easily defeated more importantly, he sensed another tombstone, though still very weak. But with his current strength, he could surely activate it just then, the phone rang. A worried voice asked about his situation after the earthquake. She said Ha Ruoshui was waiting for him at the gate. Today was her birthday Yep Shen was startled, having completely forgotten about this at a secret base in Shanghai. The solemn man said, I heard Yep Shen successively killed three masters, even Yuan Qingfu met a grisly end. Is it true? My only impression is seeing Yuan Qingfu's corpse blasted apart? The cause is unclear. Lei Shuawei seemed to grasp a key point. What's the significance of only impression? Why describe it that way? Ying Ting was flustered. I'm also unsure. It feels like no matter how hard I try, I can't recall that memory, only a vague impression. Lei Shuawei slapped the table, standing up abruptly. Could it be memory erasure? I've encountered someone with spiritual abilities who could indeed erase others' memories. He moved closer to Ying Ting. The clothes you're wearing today are what I requested yesterday, right? Quick, take off your pants. Ying Ting shyly covered himself. Sorry sir, I don't have that interest. 
but Lei Shuawei forcefully tore off his belt, revealing a sophisticated device inside. A tiny camera sat in the middle Ying Ting was completely shocked that a camera was planted Lei Shuawei said. National security is more important than personal privacy. I hope you understand. Saying so, he opened the video on his computer. The entire arena event played out. Seeing Yep Shen obliterate Yuan Qingfu with one move, Lei Shuawei froze his whole body shook. Was this even human? Only top 50 masters could do this yet Yep Shen was just over 20 Ying Ting swallowed, with the strength the boy displayed, even using everything we had, we'd hardly withstand one such move Lei Shuawei angrily slammed the table. You should realize how grave this issue is. Remember, absolutely no leaks or I'll prosecute you for treason. Although the arena has jamming devices preventing filming, some special equipment may still record it. Now put everything else aside and investigate everyone present at the arena. If you find anyone with similar materials, I authorize you to completely erase both them and the evidence. Also arrange a private jet for me. I need to immediately report this to my superiors. In a luxurious villa in Shanghai, a beauty stood flaunting her alluring figure. Ha Ruoshui grumbled. Why isn't that guy here yet? How annoying. Yep Shen clearly promised yet he's late. Just then, Madame Ha rushed over. An important guest has arrived. Dear, we must go greet them. It's your fiancé's family member. They sent a master to attend the party out of courtesy for us. He's Tian Nguyenquang, top 600 master. Our family mainly does business so we desperately need martial experts like him. Quickly, Ha Ruoshui was led before Tian Nguyenquang. Master Tian has come from afar for the party, we're extremely honored. My daughter is most fortunate, Tian Nguyenquang politely replied. Young lady, my family's young master wishes to invite you to our Tian residence after the party. We hope Lady Ha will show our family favor. Ha Ruo Shui forced a smile. Young master Tian's feelings have received, but I've been busy lately so can only visit when time permits. As she finished speaking, the room's atmosphere instantly froze. None expected a business clan to dare reject the Marshal Tian family. Seeing her mother continuously nod, Ha Ruoshui hated the Tians even more, firmly refusing to go Tian Nguyenquang's expression gradually chilled, my young master dislikes rejection. If he's displeased, the consequences will be very serious. Just then, the room echoed with carefree laughter. Everyone looked to see Wang Jiang entering, stunning all especially Madame Ha. He happily approached, congratulating the young lady's birthday Tian Nguyenquang snapped. Wang Jiang, what's your intention? All know Ruo Shui will join the Tians, but Wang Jiang just coldly laughed. Please don't speak so soon about the future. Tian Nguyenquang exploded. Your family is no longer the ancient noble clan. Daring to anger the Tians, do you know the consequences? But Wang Jiang remained calm. I admit the Tians now exceed the Wangs in strength. But I, Wang Jiang, represent the Wangs while you're just the Tians dog, far beneath me. Tian Nguyenquang shook with rage, icy energy enveloping him. But Wang Jiang casually waved his hand, completely dispersing Tian Nguyenquang's energy a cut appeared on Tian Nguyenquang's face. Seeing he couldn't win, he left, muttering. This isn't over. Madame Ha approached asking. Master Wang, I remember you were a referee at the arena. May I ask, how was the recent match? Is Yep Shen alive? Ha Ruizu's face paled. What? Arena? Yep Shen is in trouble. Madame Ha sinisterly smiled. The brat courted death, daring to accept the master's challenge. Utterly foolish. But just then, a cold figure appeared at the door, a bit excessive. Even on your daughter's birthday you still hate me. Madame Ha was stunned. The brat actually survived and returned. By her knowledge, he faced two top masters just then. Wang Jiang rushed over, kneeling before Yep Shen. Wang Jiang pays respect to Sir Yep Shen, everyone was dumbfounded. Madame Ha's jaw dropped in utter shock. Wang Jiang represented the entire Wang clan only Ha Ruoshui was elated, like seeing a ray of hope amidst darkness. Though the Tians currently had prestige, Yep Shen's future was limitless in the shadows, Tian Nguyenquang witnessed it all. His gaze shifted from shock to fury. In Ha Ruizu's eyes, he clearly saw her feelings for Yep Shen. Aside from the Tian heir, none deserved her whole heart Yep Shen shook his head, telling Wang Jiang, come now, stand up. A Ruo Shui placed both hands on her hips. 
if you don't give me a satisfactory gift, this young lady will be very angry. Yep Shen thumped his chest. Don't worry, I certainly won't disappoint you. For you, nothing is more precious than me. Hearing this, many felt Yep Shen was boasting. Among the prestigious guests, how could anyone not bring a fine gift? Just then, Madame Ha called out. Time's up Ruo Shui, come on stage. Following the upbeat music, Ha Ruizu's birthday party officially began. Madame Ha gave a short thank you speech, mentioning some major clans. Yep Shen noticed the elderly man behind, likely Ruizu's grandmother. She still looked quite healthy. Where were you all morning? Oh I just had some troubles to take care of. At that time, the gift presentation began. Someone came forward. This is a 50 million jade guanyin statue I spent two years completing. I hope the young lady likes and accepts it. Laughter echoed throughout the hall. The has aren't lacking money. Giving this is no different than jesting. Sun Yidan's face reddened, such an expensive gift still criticized, she'd hardly dare present hers. But Yep Shen comforted that sincerity was most important, she was no less than anyone. Sun Yidan decided to personally give her gift, resigned to ridicule if it came. She approached and presented an exquisite box. Ha Ruo Shui eagerly opened it and her face lit up joyfully at the gift. It was a miniature model of their old apartment. Looking through the window, two tiny figures were in the living room. Ha Ruo Shui was moved, hugging Sun Yidan tightly. She was clearly very pleased. The apartment held special memories for them. Wang Jiang also came over, smiling, truly heartwarming sisterly affection. Now it's my turn to present a humble gift. Since I left urgently, there was no time to prepare. I only asked to give this jade pendant, praying all your wishes become reality. Madame Ha panicked. Why give her the Wang family jade pendant? That's the Wang clan's protective treasure. Quickly return it, our family is unworthy of such a precious gift. But Wang Jiang persisted in handing it to Ha Ruoshui. Compared to your feelings for her and Sir Yep Shen, this gift is trivial. I look forward to attending your wedding soon. I'll definitely prepare an impressive present then. Ha Ruo Shui immediately blushed, her gaze becoming awkward. She didn't object at all. Many gazes in the room turned to Tian Nguyen Kuang. Representing the Tians, this was clearly provocation. Hearing the hushed gossip, Tian Nguyen Kuang's expression darkened ominously. He strode before Wang Jiang. Remember your place. This Tian family amulet is the only supreme one, the rest are trash. He took out a brocade box. Moreover, the Tian specially prepared soul pills. Anyone without martial arts foundation ingesting them can become martial artists, even instantly reaching the pinnacle. Below, everyone shuddered. None doubted Tian Nguyenquang's claims, since the Tian's martial renown spread through Jiangnan province, ranking top three. Madame Ha beamed. Oh, young master Tian is so thoughtful. Let me accept. Later I'll definitely have Ruo Shui go thank you. Just as she moved to take them, a blur snatched the soul pill and amulet, dropping them to the floor. Then a pair of shoes stomped, grinding them into powder. Yep Shen's piercing eyes stared straight at Tian Nguyen Kuang. How dare you give Ruo Shui this trash? Madame Ha's rosy complexion paled. She painfully looked at the shards. Tian Nguyen Kuang raged, courting death, daring to destroy the young master's gifts. But Yep Shen just coldly laughed, taking out a bag of pills. Expired medicine will only cause stomach aches. If Ruo Shui wants medicine, take mine, abundant and satisfying, leaving you healthy and strong. A fragrant aroma spread throughout the room. Seeing the labels made many secretly admire him. Now Madame Ha's gaze completely changed. Too many precious medicines plus Wang Jiang's attitude. No need to say Yep Shen had a formidable background. Yet Yep Shen casually poured all the pills into Ha Ruizu's hands. Then he took out an exquisite box. Those were just bonus gifts. This is the real gift I want to give. If you dislike it, Sun Yidan and I will do your laundry for a year. Ha Ruizu's heart thumped rapidly. Opening the box, inside was just a blue crystal necklace. The lights made it dazzlingly shimmer multicolored. Everyone's expectations gradually turned mocking. Such a big fuss yet just an ordinary necklace in the end. But none noticed the tears streaming down Ha Ruizu's face. She tremblingly gave the necklace to her grandmother. Look, it's grandpa's necklace. He handmade it for me before passing away. Now Madame Ha also had wet eyes. Yep Shen gently asked. 
Ruoshui, you like this gift right? Ha Ruoshui choked up. I love it. It's the best gift ever. Yep Shen sighed in relief. Good you like it, otherwise I'd be doing laundry for a year. But right after, a tender kiss landed on his cheek. Yep Shen froze. Everyone was flabbergasted, unable to believe their eyes. The Tian heir's fiancé publicly kissed another man, utterly humiliating. Yet before their eyes, the soft lips left Yep Shen's cheek, leaving a faint scent. Ha Ruizu's face flushed. Thank you Sir Yep Shen. Witnessing it all, Tian Nguyen roared wildly like a maddened lion. Ha Ruoshui, do you know what you're doing? He raised his hand, sharply slapping Ha Ruizu's face while cursing her shameless. But before he could swing down, a fist smashed Tian Nguyen wrist. Right at the crucial moment, Yep Shen shielded Ha Ruoshui. Tian Nguyen glared at Yep Shen, about to threaten him. But immediately, a resounding slap flew across his face. The immense force emptied his brain. His whole body spun two and a half times before crashing down, collapsing part of the dining table. Tian Nguyen Kuang's face distorted. Since joining the Tians, he had never suffered such humiliation. But it didn't end there. Yep Shen leapt down from above, his landing shaking the ground violently. Yep Shen's voice rang out. What are the Tians? Even if your master came, it would be the same. His arrogant words left many gasping. To dare say that about the Tians. Yep Shen told Tian Nguyen Kuang. You should thank this as Ruizu's birthday, otherwise you'd have died long ago. Then he kicked Tian Nguyen Kuang flying out the door. He sailed through the air, flopping down tens of meters away. Tian Nguyen Kuang struggled up, eyes full of hatred. Just you wait brat. I'll tell the master and he'll kill you without a trace. But Yep Shen just waved his hand. Wang Jiang, go finish him. Wang Jiang looked at Tian Nguyen Kuang with killing intent, charging out without hesitation. Miserable screams rang out, making everyone shudder. Who could expect this ordinary youth to act so decisively, fearless before the Tian's might? Even Madame Ha was persuaded by Yep Shen. Perhaps he and Ruo Shui weren't bad together. She later sought out Yep Shen to talk. Entering a room, her attitude had greatly changed, even personally pouring tea for him. Madame Ha said, I must admit, your recent affairs have broadened my views. I had misunderstood you before, you're truly admirable. But you may not know Ruo Shui already has an engagement with the Tians. That was arranged long ago. Although we control Jiangnan's economy, to survive long term we need martial might. That's the biggest weakness of the has presently. Though we have some masters, it's still inadequate. So Ruizu's father arranged her marriage with the Tians. You could say it's the only path for our clan. Without this engagement, with support from the Chus and Wangs, I'd happily let you and Ruoshui be together. But now it's too late. Later the Tians will fiercely retaliate against you. To avoid annihilation, the Chus and Wangs will cut ties with you. I'm telling you this to warn. Leave Shanghai before things escalate to the Tians. That's the only way you can survive. But Yep Shen just looked at Madame Ha. Are the Tians really so strong in Jiangnan? Compared to the Martial Arts Federation, who's stronger? Madame Ha pondered. They're incomparable. The Federation is a special organization involving most martial clans. In influence, they completely exceed the Tians. Yep Shen smiled then headed for the door. Madame Ha thought he was leaving Shanghai and offered to arrange a private jet. But Yep Shen said, eyes shining, no force has made me bow yet. If the Tians dare come seeking death, I'll uproot them completely. The bright lights in the dark night. Yep Shen wearily sat by the bed sighing. The recent happenings were truly exhausting for a cultivator like him. The bright lights in the dark night. Yep Shen wearily sat by the bed sighing. The recent happenings were truly exhausting for a cultivator like him. Just then, a pair of slender fair legs appeared before me. Sun Yidan in a dress stood hesitantly at the door. Then she sat beside me. Ruoshui said she's not coming back tonight. I wanted to talk about today with you. Ruoshui is engaged. How do you feel about that? Yep Shen awkwardly avoided her gaze. But right after, a faint fragrance filled my nose. Her soft lips pressed against Yep Shen's. The moment felt endless, I couldn't bear to part. Compared to that kiss, who was better? He said, hmm, dot you two kissed different spots. Hard to judge. Or you could try kissing my cheek and I'll consider it? Sun Yidan got a little angry, tightly embracing his back. 
her sensual curves pressed against him. He calmed himself. Now is not the time to assign blame. Let's check on the victims first. Quickly, the two went to the outer floor. Lying scattered on the ground were ten corpses. Seeing the wounds made him furious. They were tortured to death, the methods extremely cruel. Clearly the killers enjoyed the torment. Tham Hai Wa worried. What do we do now? The medicine formulas were also stolen. A cold aura erupted from me. The formulas could be rewritten but lost lives would never return. With so many expert guards yet it was robbed so easily, without even a single surviving witness. All were tortured to death. Tham Hai Wa realized her mistake and apologized, then said, All security cameras here were destroyed. I've sent people to try recovering footage but chances are very slim. Yep Shen frowned. Then look for clues elsewhere. Also compensate the victims' families, 10 million each. Tham Hai Wa nodded, thinking the young master was truly generous, seeing the staff as family. Suddenly he noticed a corpse tightly clutching its fist. He hurriedly pried it open, taking out a shirt button with a strange engraving. Worthy of being trained by Yep Lang Thien, even in their final moments leaving a valuable clue. He immediately called Ung Tin. This is Yep Shen, my phone broke so I'm borrowing Tham Hai Hoa's. I'm sending you an image, help me investigate it. Ung Tin was surprised. Isn't this the Five Emperor Society symbol? They're an international crime organization, influential not just at home but reaching China too. Their leader once dominated our homeland, even having 100,000 disciples, revered like a god. I've clashed with them in China. Though we drove them away, we lost seven people. And recently there are rumors a five emperors group arrived in Shanghai, staying at the Japanese Wharf Hotel. Yep Shen coldly smiled. Send me that hotel's address. He then hung up. Tham Hai Wa curiously asked. Sir Yep Shen, you're going to the Five Emperor Society? Yep Shen coldly said. They lived comfortably yet still dared come to China to commit suicide. Meanwhile at the Japanese Wharf Hotel. A group gathered in a room, the atmosphere extremely tense. A cigar-smoking man spoke up. Unexpectedly we reaped so much this time. The emperor's protection for sure. Akuta laughed in response. You're mistaken. The emperor only protects civilians. We should thank the patron instead. Before them, a bespectacled man said, I contributed too. Yuhara laughed. Don't worry Lu Track Van, we're always generous with those loyal to the empire. Just Japanese residency and 30 million United States dollars as promised when we return. But Lu Track Van's face paled. Can I get an advance? I've betrayed Thien Chin, can't stay in China anymore. Enraged, Yuhara grabbed Lu Track Van's head, slamming it to the ground. You dare order me? Worthless slave, what right have you to make demands? Did I deceive you? Besides, without money what can you do? Serving the empire is your honor. Lu Track Van ground his teeth, wanting to rip Yuhara apart. Now he had nowhere to turn, his life ruined by a moment of weakness. Just then Akuda coldly laughed. You still dare resent us? Mad dogs are useless anyway. He ordered. Drag him outside and kill him. Terrified, Lu Track Van knelt begging. Spare me. I don't want anything, just don't kill me. Yuhara exuded killing intent. Worthless southern flower. Just die. Right as he moved to strike, a cold voice sounded behind. Don't confuse things. The one kneeling is worthless, don't lump everything together. You scum are the worthless ones. Who permitted you to make trouble in China? Akuta was shocked, as if seeing a ghost. How did you reach the eighth floor undetected? Lu Track Van was overjoyed, as if granted salvation. But Yuhara realized the opponent was just a southern flower. He ordered. Go break that brat's arms and legs, but don't kill him. Some drew swords, killing intent erupting as they rushed at Yep Shen. But he just coldly smiled without dodging. In a flash he leapt past, appearing behind Yuhara's back. Yuhara broke out in cold sweat. He didn't know who this guy was yet could reach behind him unnoticed. But Yep Shen was done playing. Today, everyone in this room would die. He grabbed Yuhara's chin. I heard you like to talk a lot huh? Then strongly clenching his fist, cracking sounds rang out as several teeth fell. Yuhara agonized. Yuhara curled into a ball on the floor like a lump of meat, screaming in pain. Akuta yelled. Everyone be careful, this guy's a master. The five emperor members didn't dare underestimate him anymore, attacking from all sides. But Yep Shen just bent down, grabbing Yuhara's bulky arm and flung him straight at them. 
The giant body flew over unstoppably like a bomb. Akuda was shocked. With one hand he threw that 300 kilograms guy? Frightening. His face lit up with crazy excitement. Amazing. We've only met mediocre opponents here. Though it's said there are powerful masters, I hadn't met one yet. But this guy is clearly no ordinary person. Surely a top southern flower master. He drew his long sword, stepping forward. Little Yep, let me send you on your way. I, Akuda, will personally see you off. But I coldly said, less nonsense. You were the one who robbed my medicine warehouse and killed my people right? Akuda snarled. It was Kawasaki since he loves seeing how much pain humans can endure. But before he could finish speaking, Yep Shen had leapt onto his head, stomping down forcefully. The shoe imprint was clear on his forehead. Yep Shen growled. Quickly call Kawasaki here, otherwise I'll let you experience the extremes of human suffering. Akuda's face was frightened. Don't pull my hair, I'm just a tourist. But he still coldly grabbed his hair tuft, ripping it out. Just then, a cold aura rushed in. The door was kicked open as a scar-faced man charged in. So you're Kawasaki. You killed my people? Kawasaki grinned. Ah, Yep Shen. Yes I killed them, but before dying they wouldn't say anything about you. So I slowly broke each bone, crushing them like paper. Yep Shen's face darkened, his body radiating killing intent. Akuta rejoiced. With Kawasaki here, this guy will surely die. Kawasaki is 2.4 meters tall with monstrous strength, even tearing steel plates barehanded. His cruel personality earned him the title, Killing Machine. He's infamous for crushing people alive and piercing steel. The number killed by him is countless. But to Akuta's shock, this enormous killing machine couldn't resist, easily getting all four limbs broken by him. He lay face down like a mud puddle, not a shred of might left. Yep Shen stepped on his back, coldly laughing. Suddenly I feel like playing paper tearing. Disregarding life and death, he continuously punched and kicked Kawasaki. His face showed mad excitement. Kawasaki's body flew up and down through the air. Akuda watched in stunned silence. Next, Kawasaki was flung to the ground like a broken doll. Simultaneously, a large hand grabbed Akuda's neck, hanging him overhead. The force nearly suffocated him. Akuda pleaded. Sir, this is just a misunderstanding. I will compensate all your losses. Compensate? Then pay with your life. He guided his energy becoming wild flames, incinerating Akuda's head. After finishing, he glanced at Lude Track Van. After witnessing the scene, he was completely terrified. Yep Shen walked up to Lude Track Van. He shuddered, collapsing to his knees begging for a chance at redemption. But Yep Shen just shrugged, kicking him outside, breaking several of his ribs. Yep Shen coldly said, How will you redeem those wrongful deaths? Get lost. I won't kill you, but for life you'll never rise again. You will have to live in regret and pressure from the victims' families. He then took out his phone, about to call Yep Lang Thien to come clean up. But just then, a plume of black mist rose up. Kawasaki, who was dead, now stood up as the black mist entered his body. Yep Shen turned around warily. Kawasaki's mouth mumbled unintelligibly. He realized this wasn't Kawasaki alive. Before him, an icy face appeared. Do you know the consequences of confronting the Five Emperor Society? He was slightly surprised, not expecting someone skilled in this technique. But it was good, he was looking to meet their leader. The ghost said, I'm from the Five Emperor Society. Who are you? Reveal yourself. He tightly clenched his fingers into an energy arrow. I'm your daddy, Yep Shen. Then he shot straight at the ghost. It suddenly saw something terrifying and vanished instantly. He loudly said, I'm only warning once. If you dare set foot here again, I'll kill you all off. Meanwhile in an ancient building, a man knelt as black mist rose from his body. Suddenly he opened his eyes, face twisted in agony. Then he coughed up fresh blood. The masters around panicked, hurriedly rushing over. He struggled up. I will definitely kill Yep Shen, leave no body behind. Elsewhere, Yep Shen returned to Thien Chin Corporation, throwing down bloodstained documents on the table. Everyone present shuddered in fear. I said, the attack's been handled. Anyone else have something to say? They were very shocked that he'd recovered the documents so quickly. He scanned each person. From now on, whoever's unhappy can leave Thien Chin anytime. But if there's still anyone who dares betray, the consequences will be dire. At Yep Shen's house. Are you still angry? 
you're home now, put work matters aside. I regretfully said, if I had chosen more carefully initially, this tragedy could have been avoided. But her slender arms embraced Yep Shen. Then don't be sad anymore, feeling a bit better right? The two looked at each other smiling. Her beautiful face gradually drew near. They embraced and kissed, going up the stairs. Traces of love were everywhere. After a period of passion, their nude bodies lay beside each other, sweaty and sticky. Yep Shen tightly embraced her slender figure, full of affection. I've treated you, does it still hurt? Don't endure next time. From now on I'll take more initiative, I know your limits. Sun Yi Dan pouted. No, I have to take initiative. Then she snuggled on my chest. I want to share a secret with you. Then you have to tell me one too. Actually I liked you five years ago already. I was so happy when you returned. Later when I learned of your family matters, I was very angry but couldn't do anything. Until now I could only pull at your legs. But I like being by your side. So I wanted to become the first woman in your life, to make you remember me forever. He stroked her head. I was also very happy to meet you after returning. But don't worry, your place in my heart no one can replace. No one can. You've shared your secret, now what do you want to ask me? Sun Yi Dan excitedly said. I realized you have too many secrets so I don't know which to ask. Then tell me about your five-year disappearance. He stroked her hair. Then I'll tell you about my five missing years. After I fell into Mei Lake, an old man saved me and brought me to a place called Khan Lan. The entrance was deep in the Khan Lan Mountains. It gathered masters. Khan Lan had only one rule, the strong prevail, the weak suffer defeat. I spent five arduous years there but they were truly memorable. Sun Yi Dan was intrigued. Then can you take me visiting in the future? I want to see where you've been. Yep Shen hesitated. Khan Lan is too dangerous, even I barely escaped. But now with the tomb of reincarnation and support from 100 ancient saints, I fear nothing. Then I'll take you to visit when there's a chance. Hearing this, she embraced Yep Shen into the blanket. Then this is your reward. The next morning at the Martial Arts Association Grand Hall, over a dozen elderly men sat together, the atmosphere extremely serious. Duong and Gao asked, Who will take responsibility for Yen Gun Fuck's death? And the death of Jiang Lak Chan that I sent? The elders remained silent. Before Duong and Gao, ranked number 189 on the master's list, everyone was terrified. Duong and Gao snapped. Are you all deaf? No one will take responsibility for this? Or do you think it's my fault? One elder stood up. Chairman Duong, we investigated the incident. Though the exact circumstances are unclear, it was certainly related to Yep Shen. Duong and Gao nodded. That's the issue. Yep Shen is just a useless fool who somehow learned some martial arts then called himself a master. But there's no way he could have killed Yen Gun Fuck. Another elder stood up. Indeed there are still many doubts. Eyewitnesses said Yen Gun Fuck self-combusted, as if possessed by fire ghosts. Duong and Gao slammed the table. He was the vice chairman, destined for greatness. Why would he self-destruct before some trash? As for Jiang Lak Chan, he was in hiding so how did he die too? Another elder said, we interrogated many, their stories were consistent with no signs of lying. But if asked for details they all claimed ignorance. Duong and Gao thought for a moment, then pointed at three elders. You three have the highest abilities here. I order you to investigate Yen Gun Fuck's death in Shanghai. If you find no clues, bring Yep Shen here. Duong and Gao said, this is certainly related to that useless fool. I can eliminate him without evidence. The Martial Arts Association can't let the vice chairman die unjustly like this. Meanwhile at the capital's base, dozens of muscular soldiers waved their fists in synchronized, smooth motions. Loud rallying cries stirred fighting spirit. Two figures strode side by side Ung Tin said, thanks for last night. So why did you bring me here? You said higher ups wanted to meet me? Ung Tin nodded then quickly led Yep Shen to meet someone. Loi Tui V turned around, bright eyes. You came. This time I want to ask your help with something. But before he could finish, I already knew it wasn't good and immediately refused. Loi Tui V awkwardly smiled. Hear me out first. I'm not making you join, just asking you to be the trainer for Team Dragon Soul. Hearing this, Yep Shen scanned the soldiers. This is Team Dragon Soul? Loi Tui V shook his head. Not exactly. Dragon Soul is just their secret codename. Team Dragon Soul Attack is only a branch that obeys leader number one, 
protecting the homeland and sensitive domestic issues. That is Dragon Soul's mission. Yep Shen wasn't certain. For such an important force, you're sure to entrust it to me? Loy Tui V nodded. With your abilities, no one here is more qualified. I know you dislike restraints, just come train whenever you're free. And I guarantee your loved ones will be protected. Hearing the last part, Yep Shen was more interested. What level of protection? Loy Tui V patiently explained. For example, elite snipers would secretly guard your loved one's sides, ready to shoot down threats. That's only a small part. Dragon Soul also has masters guarding around. He thought, treating it like protecting important leaders. Though he didn't expect them to handle masters, buying time would still be very useful. Seizing the opportunity, Loy Tui V said, to be blunt, don't be angry, but recently you've stirred up too much resentment. You may not see them as threats but your loved ones can't be protected 24-7. Yep Shen contemplated. Time slowly passed. Suddenly Yep Shen asked Loy Tui V. So what does the Dragon Soul's head trainer need to do? Loy Tui V was overjoyed. That is entirely up to you to decide. The core task is to make them stronger. The stronger Dragon Soul is, the better. He nodded. Okay, since you trust me so, I will also commit that I will help these warriors kill 10 more masters on the battlefield. Loy Tui V was stunned. Yep Shen really says outrageous things. Being strong yourself versus making others strong are completely different concepts. He saw Yep Shen move towards the Dragon Soul Warriors. Did you all hear my discussion with Loy Tui V? From now on I, Yep Shen, will be your head trainer. The warriors glanced at him with little respect. One stepped forward. I don't accept this. He's not qualified to train Dragon Soul. Many began agreeing. We don't accept either. Our brotherly honor can't be entrusted to this brat. Yep Shen smiled. Don't accept? Then let's fight. Whoever dislikes me come on up. Or just all come at once. Hearing this, the warriors were furious. Never had they seen such disrespect daring to look down on the Dragon Soul attack team. Loy Tui V hurriedly intervened. He dare speak so arrogantly, that shows great confidence. Go all out, gentlemen. One warrior coldly said. Dragon Soul never exploits numbers to bully the weak. One is more than enough for this brat. Then he lunged, legs whipping. Yep Shen coldly said. This is the first lesson for you all. Chi gathered in his foot, force concentrated at the Dantian. The two legs collided with a earth-shattering boom. In an instant, dusty winds howled. The warrior's face was terrified. He realized his own insignificance before this power. Before he could even think, a terrifying aura blasted him, blowing him dozens of meters into a wall. All the warriors were stunned. With Big Bro's best kick yet one move led to defeat. He whistled. If you want Dragon Soul to retain any face, come at me together with everything you've got. Dozens of warriors encircled him from all sides, lunging as quick as lightning Yep Shen deeply inhaled. Chi surging within his Dantian. Then he would show them the full extent of his power. Chi swirled around Yep Shen's fist, he punched straight out, the deafening boom making heaven and earthquake. Terrifying Chi blasted in all directions, blowing all the warriors up like kites with cut strings, chaotically flying then crashing heavily to the ground. Yep Shen's power was completely unrestrained. He asked, Well, do you submit? Many warriors struggled up, eyes fixed on him. Anyone still dare say they don't submit? Yep Shen walked up to Ko Dai Thoi who didn't hesitate, quickly standing at attention in proper salute. Ko Dai Thoi reporting to head trainer. The other warriors also promptly stood, one by one saluting Yep Shen. He was very pleased. These warriors' foundations were truly good, making them stronger would be simple. Suddenly Yep Shen thought of something. After thinking a moment he asked, Do you want to learn the move I just used? I can pass it down to you. The warriors were elated. We can really learn it? Master, I also want to defeat ten masters like you. He gestured. Hold on, I'll only teach two moves, raising your combat power a level first. Because Yep Shen also had his own motives. If he gained the Dragon Soul Warrior's support, the force structure he envisioned would be mostly complete. Thien Chin Corporation provided financial backing. Plus Dragon Soul belonging to the military. That could handle most situations, having power to protect loved ones. At the same time sufficient capital to confront the Long Clan that stole everything from him. Moreover, Yep Lang Thien investigated the Longs but was obstructed by some power. 
Even Loy Tui V had no clues. Proving hidden depths in the capital. The martial sects had to placate them, even stand behind them. Now to oppose them, Yep Shen had to accumulate power to crush everything. The three elders stood below the ruins, eyes fixed. Ma Doi Ki frowned. This destruction. Ma Doi Ky said. This certainly wasn't caused by Yen Gun Fuck. Looking at the traces, some formidable force destroyed it from within. Yen Gun Fuck couldn't do this. To Tuan Tu shook his head. You mean Shanghai has masters we don't know about? Thoi Chan was shocked. Impossible. What if the perpetrator was a cultivator, a legendary figure? Ma Doi Ky denied, not necessarily. But Yep Shen's five-year disappearance, he must have encountered a fortunate chance. Otherwise he couldn't have slain masters in the blink of an eye. Too many anomalies. Meanwhile at Thang Tu First Class Villa, the fragrance of the dishes stimulated the appetite. The three sat down to eat. He was quite surprised. Didn't expect a rich girl like you would know how to cook too. Ha Nuok Tuyit smiled. You can praise me more. I learned from grandma these past few days. He tasted it. Not bad at all. Hard to believe you made this. Sun Yi Dan asked. Yep Shen, where did you go yesterday? He thought then answered. Went to help out at a base, you wouldn't know the name. Hey later I have to visit Hang Tu, you two go shopping without me. Saying so, he went downstairs and saw a military vehicle with a middle-aged robust man. Seeing him, the man saluted properly. Greetings chief instructor, going out? Hearing how he was addressed, Yep Shen understood. Loi Tui Vis methods were crude but he was well-intentioned. Yep Shen said, take me to Shanghai North University. Oh and call me Mr. Yep or Yep Shen outside, not chief instructor. Yep Shen arrived at Shanghai North University. Hang Tu was already waiting in the dorm. Compared to before, he looked healthier. Your item is amazing. Just trained to the first level yet I feel strength bursting all over. Seeing Hang Tu circulating Qi smoothly, he had clearly been diligently practicing. Then he took out a pile of pills. Take one of these pills each week. Initially there may be some discomfort but you must endure it. Hang Tu continued. I've already joined the martial arts club. The seniors are very strong, beyond normal people. I want to sprint ahead of them quickly. Yep Shen reminded. Don't rush it. Your base isn't solid yet. Follow the training plan, your time will come. Hang Tu nodded. Don't worry master, I understand. Right, there's a Kung Fu competition next month. I registered to participate. Please come cheer me on then. Yep Shen said. Sure, I'll come watch you dazzle everyone. The cultivation results will exceed imagination. Hang Tu tightly clenched his fist, face determined. To protect family I must strive to become strong. Yep Shen let Hang Tu continue practicing then strolled around campus. Suddenly an old man blocked his path. Hello friend, please show me where the male dorms are. He pointed ahead then was about to leave but suddenly sensed a threat. He said, I feel you want to ask more than that. Just as he finished, gusts of wind sounded behind as the old man attacked swift as lightning. He immediately jumped aside, dodging the powerful blow. The ground cracked and crumbled. So you're Yep Shen? Not simple, even avoided that move. Yep Shen smiled. Not bad at all. What business do you have with me? The man coldly said, ignorant brat. Fine, just answer me this. What happened at the arena that day and the real reason Yen Gun Fuck died? Yep Shen sneered. Oh the trash from the Martial Arts Association? To Tuan Tu roared. Although Yen Gun Fuck is dead, the association's prestige can't be insulted. He showed a cruel look. Sorry, when I said trash of the Martial Arts Association I didn't just mean Yen Gun Fuck. I meant everyone including you and that sham Martial Arts Association, all trash. To Tuan Tu went mad. This brat dares challenge the association's authority. Whether he confessed the truth that day or not, he would teach a lesson. But Yep Shen just said. What if it was just Yen Gun Fuck I killed? And one more thing, I'll also kill you now. Then Yep Shen flashed over, piercing straight through his neck. Afterwards Yep Shen called. Xiao Deng, come help me clean up this trash. But just then, a phone rang. He looked down at the vibrating phone by the corpse. Yep Shen answered and heard an elderly voice. To Tuan Tu, did you meet that useless Yep brat? Remember not to kill him. The other end was silent for a moment, sensing something wrong and hurriedly hung up. He sneered. Your brain is still nimble. But I have countless ways to find you all. When that time comes, 
A military vehicle roared up and braked sharply. The driver got out worriedly. Are you okay? Yep Shen tossed the phone. Help me trace the location of recent calls. Oh and the Martial Arts Association, prepare detailed files for me. Late at night, he returned to the villa, before him a pile of documents about the Martial Arts Association. After looking through them, Yep Shen understood this organization. The association was founded over a hundred years ago, with deep influence among the twelve martial families. Moreover, each chairman was a powerful local figure. The Duong clan's owner, Duong and Gao ranked number 189 on the master's list but that was two years ago data. His current abilities could probably enter the top 300 but unsure about top 200. Yep Shen pushed aside the documents and held the black stone in his hand. The main threat to note now was this Martial Arts Association's chairman. He needed to find a way to approach him once more. A cold aura enveloped the room as he appeared in the Tomb of Reincarnation, only one light lingered. But to meet that one, his strength was still too weak, he could only quickly enhance his power to activate it. Yep Shen cultivated until dawn when he received a message from Xiao Deng that the investigation yielded results. He immediately called back. They dare stay at a hotel? Seems they don't know one of them is already dead. Then he declined Dragon Soul's support, deciding to handle it himself. Clearly, even if he killed the remaining two, the Martial Arts Association would still seek revenge. For now he just needed to buy time. Suddenly he thought of an idea, if he could enslave one of those two, things would become much easier. Meanwhile at the Shanghai Hotel, the two elders sat silently, faces full of murderous intent. Ma Doi KY said, the last signal from Tu Tuan Tu's phone was near Shanghai North University. Thoi Chan nodded. Since Yep Shen has appeared, we will inevitably meet. This time, no matter what, we must capture him alive and bring him before the president. Their conversation was suddenly interrupted by a knock on the door. The two elders looked at each other. Who could find them here? Ma Doi KY opened the door a crack, only to see a slim figure standing outside. Thoi Chan shook his head. No traces left of Tatuan Tu. Either it's been cleaned up or he left long ago. Ma Doi KY said seriously, most likely the first case. Yep Shen must have masters protecting him. Now we can only report to President Duong immediately. Just then a sword swung, slicing towards Ma Doi Kai's phone. Yep Shen leaned against the window. Although I killed to Tuan Tu, it's still two against one. Why call for reinforcements? The two roared, silence brat. Even if you're a cultivator, you can't handle us together. Ma Duo Iky spat out a powerful hot breath. His fists became countless specters raining down upon Yep Shen but his figure slid around the cramped room easily, not one blow landing. He was even leisurely like strolling. Suddenly Yep Shen grabbed Ma Juo Aikai's wrist and lightly twisted. His whole body spun two and a half circles before Yep Shen slammed him heavily into the ground. Toi Chan awaited his chance, raising his staff overhead to smash Yep Shen's head directly. But just then, he yelled loudly, soul-subduing staff, ghost in and out. The staff emitted murderous aura as specters rushed towards Yep Shen. He was startled, unable to dodge in time and could only use firm inner strength to block. He was pushed back before stopping. Toy Chan laughed maniacally, before my ancestors treasured heirloom, you're just trash. But immediately, Yep Shen calmly grabbed the staff, leaving Toy Chan stunned and trembling uncontrollably. Yep Shen said, I only blocked to probe its power. I've seen many weapons like this before. Saying so, he yanked the soul-subduing staff and swung hard once. Then he looked at it, as expected, a spirit weapon but too wasteful for you to wield. He channeled inner force into the staff. It shone as he lightly spun the staff, blowing Toy Chan away like a bullet that shot into the wall with tremendous speed. The heavy collision made a loud boom, shattering the thick wall and piercing straight into the next room. When the dust settled, Toy Chan lay motionless against the wall. The two people in that room fled in terror without having time to dress. Yep Shen approached Ma Duo Iky, gaze icy cold, choose death or become my slave. Overwhelming dread enveloped Ma Duo Iky, his back drenched in sweat. Alone he was completely powerless. But he thought of something, if he died, his clan would be destroyed, his life's work stolen by enemies. For his clan, he had no other choice. Ma Duo Iky didn't hesitate, choosing the second path, I, Ma Vi Ki, willingly volunteer to be your slave. Please spare me. A top 400 master, yet also defeated by a teenager in the blink of an eye, to the point of begging for servitude just to live. Yep Shen raised his hand, I commend you for recognizing the times. Now I'll drip a drop of blood essence on your forehead. 
From now on, if you dare have thoughts of betrayal you'll be destroyed. He shot a drop of blood onto Ma Juoikai's forehead. It instantly penetrated deep within. Immediately Ma Juoikai felt his body lose control, as if cold eyes were staring at him, filling him with fear. Ma Juoikai kowtowed heavily, I, Ma Juoikai, swear utmost loyalty to you my lord, never to betray. He felt that just daring to betray, just a thought, could destroy his soul. Yep Shen ordered, for the next month I don't want the Martial Arts Association bothering me again. You know what to say right? Ma Juoikai was shocked. With just a month, this brat was confident facing President Duang. After finishing up, Yep Shen returned to the villa, face smeared with blood. He didn't expect this trip to yield such an unexpected gain. Currently he didn't have a suitable weapon, this staff would temporarily do. In a month, he would personally go to the Martial Arts Association to see how strong Duang now really was. But just then, urgent knocks sounded at his door. He opened it to see a pale, worried face. Kim Lin Yen was so frightened even her voice shook. Yep Shen realized something was wrong and quickly invited her in to ask what happened. Did something happen to the Kim family? She took off her coat, revealing a shimmering circular jade pendant under the light. His pupils contracted, face filled with horror. Because Yep Shen recognized this pendant emitted extremely strong chi, able to increase one's cultivation speed threefold. Even in Kunlun it would be considered a treasure. Kim Lin Yen quickly explained, my family specializes in special auctions in Shanghai. We often receive strange items. A few days ago, my dad's friend in Xiangjiang brought this over saying he would auction it tomorrow. But yesterday he suddenly became flustered saying he must take it back that night. My dad agreed but no one came and we couldn't contact him. Worried, my dad went to his home and found his whole family killed, the corpses mutilated. Clearly the perpetrator's strength is terrifying. Worse, those who recently interacted with my dad's friend have also been murdered one after another. It may be because of this pendant. With our current strength, we can't protect it but also can't let it fall into evil hands. So my dad wanted to ask you to keep it. Yep Shen took it, okay, I agree. So what's next? Kim Lin Yen put on her coat, my dad arranged a plane, our whole family is leaving Shanghai temporarily, while you keep it, feel free to use the pendant. Consider it our storage fee. This may be the last time we meet. I wish you well, hopefully we'll have the fortune to meet again. Her eyes lingered on him before leaving. The door closed. Two figures approached behind Yep Shen. Sun Yi Dan asked, wasn't that a beautiful girl just now? Meeting secretly late at night? Ha Nook Tuyet was also curious, who was that girl? He replied, just a friend asking a favor, sorry to wake you too. Ha Nook Tuyet said, anyway, the company is having a press conference tomorrow to launch a new product. Are you going? Many foreign reporters will be there. We have to capitalize on this chance to promote the upcoming product. Sun Yi Dan also said, Yep Shen you must go. Because the company representative giving the speech is me. If you're absent, I'll be nervous to death. Yep Shen nodded, okay I'll go to take some nice photos of you ladies. With me there you'll feel reassured right? Sun Yi Dan's eyes curved like a crescent moon. Back in his room, Yep Shen took out the circular pendant and sighed. He didn't expect it to force Shanghai's top family to flee abroad. This time's foe was clearly very strong. He began circulating inner force. The room immediately overflowed with spiritual energy. Yep Shen felt the stream of pure spiritual power pouring into his danshan like a gushing spring. His inner strength also surged exponentially. He was stunned, truly a cultivation speed boosting treasure, at least 10 times more effective than imagined. But just then, the black stone in his pocket floated out beside the pendant, frenziedly absorbing the spiritual energy. The pendant gradually lost its luster, cracks appearing on its surface. Then with a clang, it shattered into countless pieces. Immediately, an even stronger spiritual force gushed out from the fragments, turning into a small stream pouring into the stone. As if the pendant's spiritual energy was transferred to the stone. Yep Shen sensed the entire tomb of reincarnation also transformed, overflowing with endless spiritual power here is the translation with the character names converted into English, but looking at the fragments, he could only sigh. He didn't know how to explain this to Kim Lin Yen, probably could only make up for it with pills or diamonds. Hopefully she'd feel better. Early next morning at Thien Chin Corporation's auditorium, it was packed with people. Officials and businessmen gathered, chatting energetically, even the city's top leaders were present. Of course the media was there too, hundreds of reporters sitting in rows. Yep Shen scanned the room, recognizing quite a few familiar faces. Ha Nook Tuyet came over, everyone has gathered in full force, it's our turn to perform now. He nodded. Today's elaborate staging, if the launch succeeded, Thien Chin Corporation would take flight. At exactly 10, the press conference officially started. The two girls on stage introduced the miraculous effects of the two new products. 
The first product, Imperial Capital Longevity Pills, helped improve the physique of the elderly, allowing them to regain their youth. The second product, Essence of Lingering Beauty, improved complexion so one could take photos and videos without editing. Immediately, excited whispers and heated discussions sounded in the hall. All were stunned by the product's effects but also had doubts. Sun Yi Dan smiled, I understand everyone's feelings. Next, we'll have five reporters try the products backstage. Many hands shot up but only five were randomly selected. They applied a drop of the essence on their skin and in the blink of an eye, it became smooth and tight, even wrinkles significantly faded. As if they became decades younger instantly. Everyone seemed very satisfied with the trial products. So you must also be curious when it'll launch right? But before Sun Yi Dan could finish, a famous foreign reporter cut in, with such miraculous effects, are the products truly safe? To prove safety and verify, please provide a sample for thorough testing by us. His expression turned cold, asking for samples before sale? Everyone knows your intentions. Obviously here to sabotage. Sun Yi Dan firmly refused, sorry that's confidential trade secrets, we can't provide samples, here is the translation with the character names converted into English, the reporter sneered, or is Thien Chin Corporation afraid of testing? Or do your products have serious side effects? This stirred up the entire hall. Indeed with such miraculous effects, the product composition was suspicious. Sun Yi Dan was flustered, we've been approved by the drug administration, it's guaranteed safe. Please everyone trust us. Ha Nook Tu yet worriedly watched as Sun Yi Dan was prone to panic in this sudden situation for her first time hosting. But right then, Yep Shen calmly stepped up, I can address concerns about the product's safety. The reporter jeered, may I ask who you are? If the ingredients aren't announced today, we won't accept it. He replied, the drug administration has verified our products are completely safe. But you want the ingredients to steal the formula right? Exposed, the reporter was furious, fine. How could there be such a miraculous skincare cream? It must contain added toxic chemicals. Seeing Yep Shen silent, he grew bolder, today I just need the ingredients. Not satisfied. Then hit me. This lit Yep Shen's fury. He leapt up, grabbed a nearby bottle and slapped it directly on the reporter's face. Sun Yi Dan watched stunned. The reporter shrieked wildly. Yep Shen calmly said, who told you to hit? I just wanted you to try the product. Don't believe it? Check the mirror. She hurriedly took out her phone, shocked to find the right half of her face had become smooth and tight, starkly contrasting the other half. Excited whispers once again filled the hall, countless cameras flashed, definitely tomorrow's front page story. The reporter suddenly recalled, wait, this half has the medicine but what about the other half? He shook his head, unrelated to me. By the way, the product's effects are permanent. Consider the beautiful half my gift to you. Then he announced, the product is initially launching here, one month delay everywhere else, here is the translation with the character names converted into English, moreover, Thien Chin Corporation will never sell products in the island nation. Below the stage, reporters from the island nation angrily shouted discrimination, insulting the free market. But he just coldly laughed, today I'll say it straight, if you're not satisfied with my discrimination, come up here and hit me. Moreover those are my products, I have the right to sell however I want. That island nation reporter deliberately disrupted our press conference. Security please escort him out. After order was restored, Yep Shen gave the stage back to Sun Yi Dan, continue introducing the products. Before he could step down, Tham Hai Hoa rushed over to find him, Master Yep. Tham Hai Hoa worriedly said, are you really abandoning the island nation market? They can viciously slander us. But he was calm, what's there to fear? Our product quality is guaranteed, just focus on your work. Ha Nook Tu yet also gave a thumbs up, you handled that beautifully this time. Really cathartic. Speaking of which, many strange incidents have occurred in Shanghai recently, even exclusive news in our city. Namely a private plane exploded midair. Before that, also the Than Ha building incident. He was startled, wondering if it was Kim Lin Yen's flight. He quickly called, Seo Deng, have Dragon Souls Intelligence Unit investigate today's plane explosion. Also come with me on a trip. He arrived at the Kim clan's base, before even entering he smelled the thick stench of blood. Without hesitation Yep Shen kicked the door open. Looking around, his heart sank into an abyss. Blood covered the yard, corpses lay scattered like hell on earth. Regardless of gender or age, all were massacred. Seo Deng was horrified, the top martial arts clan was also completely destroyed. Yep Shen approached a corpse and saw the brutal wounds. Clearly the perpetrator wanted to uproot the Kim clan entirely. Just then Seo Deng received news, Master Yep, according to Dragon Soul's investigation, the exploded plane today belonged to the Kim clan but was empty, here is the translation with the character names converted into English, he breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed Kim Lin Yen's father had foreseen using a decoy plane to draw the enemy's attention. 
Seo Deng continued, Dragon Soul also discovered her father's corpse, Mr. Kim Tuing Min, in the suburbs. From the battle traces it seems he sacrificed himself to delay the enemy, getting his limbs broken. But they still haven't found Kim Lin Yen. Currently her whereabouts are unknown, Dragon Soul is working hard to investigate. A nameless flame ignited in Yep Shen's heart. He turned and waved, Seo Deng, you go back first. I'll handle the rest myself from here. Only cold corpses remained in the yard. Yep Shen was stunned, he didn't expect such a massacre all because of one pendant. Were lives so worthless? Logically he shouldn't get involved in the Kim clan's affairs but they had trusted him with the item, and he had even drained its spiritual energy completely. So he had to intervene in this. He looked at the fragments, remnants of Kim Lin Yen's aura still lingered, enough to perform the spell. Yep Shen made a mudra, chanting faster and faster until a faint silhouette appeared before him. After reaching the third layer could summon the second tombstone. Yep Shen was immersed in cultivation when loud knocks suddenly came from outside. Yep Shen turned back. Eyes full of suspicion Yep Shen opened the door to find someone wearing black standing there seeming injured. Yep Shen glanced over realizing it was a woman. Seeing Yep Shen, she pleaded, let me hide inside for a bit, someone is chasing me. Yep Shen's gaze was cold refusing, absolutely not. Then directly kicked the woman out, even adding, if you dare take another step in I guarantee you'll become a corpse. Just as Yep Shen was about to close the door, a slender arm stretched out, in her palm a medicinal pill. I'll trade this pill to stay one night, quickly let me in. Yep Shen said unhurriedly, I'm not interested in pills. Furthermore if you still don't leave you'll regret it. It wasn't that Yep Shen was cold-hearted. Yep Lang Thien had said before that Zhang Nin's circumstances were recently very chaotic with many hidden forces. This woman appearing at his villa past midnight, although heavily injured was still too suspicious. In this world kindness wasn't wrong but many people also died because of kindness. Just then from afar came footsteps and voices. Where did that girl go, must be nearby hurry search. This situation made the woman extremely panicked. She immediately took out a broken sword from her body pointing it at Yep Shen. I'll trade this sword for your protection just once, please help me. Yep Shen saw the sword, his pupils constricting. Discovering it was a spirit sword. Although broken, its grade was certainly not low. What's more there were methods to repair this sword. Currently Yep Shen's only weapon was the soul subduing staff, which wasn't too satisfactory. Obtaining this sword now was too perfect. Yep Shen revealed a smug smile. From now on I'll protect you. After speaking he carried the woman inside, flinging her onto the sofa and closing the door to restore silence. The woman lay on the sofa. Yep Shen observed her up and down for a while, discovering an extremely heavy bloody stench on her body. There was also some internal injury, preliminarily concluding she seemed to have gone through a great battle. Based on her aura could judge this woman wasn't simple Yep Shen asked, why did you choose this house? The woman lying on the sofa, breathing raggedly, answered, I just took a gamble. I chose this villa because I could sense a very rich aura coming from inside. That shows there's a powerful martial artist inside. Yep Shen casually said, all right I understand, your sensing ability is quite strong. Now take it off. These words immediately made the woman freeze, withdrawing into a corner. Wait, what did you just say to take off? Yep Shen calmly said, that's right. In his heart Yep Shen thought, don't you feel uncomfortable wearing a mask? At this time the woman changed her tone yelling, what are you saying? I already gave you my sword, yet you still want my body? Too noisy, I said take off the face covering. Yep Shen's arm condensed spirit energy, gently waving. The next second, the woman's face covering completely vanished, revealing an unparalleled beauty. This made Yep Shen a bit surprised, especially her temples had a rather unique pattern. At a glance, Yep Shen decided he would protect this woman. Just then, noises came from outside knocking on the door. Come open the door. The woman's expression was gloomy as she stared fixedly at the door, not knowing how Yep Shen would handle this. At this time Yep Shen gently said, I'll go take care of it outside. You stay here, don't go anywhere. As soon as Yep Shen opened the door, he saw an old man with twin hair buns poking his head and asking, sorry for the bother. May I ask if you've seen any suspicious people around here? Yep Shen's pupils constricted. Aren't the suspicious people you all? Yep Shen glanced outside, there were about six ugly Pokemon standing there. At a glance, Yep Shen assessed their strengths were all at the half-step manifestation realm, a clan elder. 
the woman must have provoked an expert of some martial family. The twin bun old man said, ha 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 you really joke, we're all honest law-abiding citizens. He placed his hand on the mutated Pikachu, saying, that person is extremely dangerous. To ensure your safety, let us look inside. Hurry and decide. That old man is threatening me. Yep Shen's eyes narrowed the Pikachu beside also chimed in, Pika. Yep Shen sent a kick flying out. The remaining ox-faced horse-brained Pokemon shouted, Brat, you looking to die? Dare hit our brother, don't remember inviting you all inside. This is a warning, whoever dares enter I'll kill without exception. The twin bun old man spoke up stopping the others, then said to Yep Shen, little brother, we're of the two family in Jiangnan province. Tonight our clan leader was killed by a girl, we chased here of course couldn't neglect any household. Offending the family isn't wise. Before he finished, Yep Shen had slapped a badge straight at his face. Open your dog eyes and see what this is. He examined the badge and his entire body broke out in cold sweat. This was the badge of Long Hun Special Forces, moreover not low ranking. Can't inspect military personnel, touching them is seeking death. He immediately kowtowed deeply, esteemed sir, I'm sorry for disturbing your rest. Yep Shen glared fiercely at them. Scram, don't let me see you all again. They fearfully departed at once. After handling it, Yep Shen went back inside. The woman was lying disheveled on the sofa groaning from her wounds. Yep Shen leisurely said, it's been resolved. She gently thanked Yep Shen. At this time Yep Shen spoke up. What's your name? I want to know your real name. Hesitating a few seconds, the woman answered, my name is Luke Han Suong. Luke Han Suong propped herself up sitting. Thank you. Now I'll just wait until morning. But Yep Shen said something that shocked her. Take it off. Luke Han Suong angrily took out a dagger holding it against her neck. I knew your aim was my body. I'd rather die than give myself to you. Just as she finished, Yep Shen used spirit energy to slap the dagger from her hand. Then he tiredly said, what are you thinking? The poison in you has already spread to the six Fu organs and five Zhang organs. If not treated promptly you'll die. I don't want anyone dying in my home. Hearing Yep Shen say this, Luke Han Suong calmed down a bit because she could sense her own condition. Luke Han Suong shakily said, can you really cure me? Yep Shen nodded. Not only can I cure you, I can even help you break through a minor realm. But you must take off the poisoned clothes first. Yep Shen gazed at Luke Han Suong with great interest. Compared to martial arts, my medical skills are even more brilliant. Luke Han Suong slowly took off her clothes herself for Yep Shen to examine. Although extremely embarrassed, there was no other way. Lu Han Suong consoled herself in her heart this was just a doctor's examination. Just treatment, don't overthink it. Yep Shen's firm gaze observed above then looked below carefully assessing the wounds. This action made Lu Han Suong so shy she had to speak up. I hope it's curable but do you really need to examine it so seriously? Yep Shen's tone was low saying, it's worse than I thought but not hard to cure. Just as he finished, Yep Shen began circulating spirit energy into his golden hands, icy gaze continuing. I thought to just give you some pills to detoxify but now can only help expel the toxins out. She felt something was off, quickly saying, wait, what do you mean? Without explaining, Yep Shen brought his hand clasping at Lu Han Suong's body, scaring her tremendously. Next, Yep Shen used his hand filled with spirit energy to chaotically grab and press up down, left and right, in order to use external force. On the other side, Lu Han Suong couldn't resist, only trying to calm herself that this was just treatment, can't disobey the doctor. Lu Han Suong's shy, blushing face gradually relaxed. After some time, Lu Han Suong felt her whole body floating, unable to restrain a bewitching moan of pleasure. After a second she sat up breathing heavily, discovering her body was much better. Yep Shen coldly said, rest, tomorrow morning quickly leave this villa. From now on we owe each other nothing. After a treatment session from Yep Shen, Lu Han Suong laid sprawled on the sofa exhausted, thanking him. Yep Shen used doubtful eyes to look at Lu Han Suong, then also went to his room. The next day Yep Shen went downstairs, glancing over the living room to see Lu Han Suong had long left. You speak less nonsense. I miss you every day we don't meet, it's like a year as a day. Yep Shen said, you speak less flowery words. We should meet less, anything can be handled over the phone. 
Yep Lang Thien eagerly said, Please master, come with me to Tiam Long. The brothers also want to meet you once. Yep Shen hurriedly said, Forget it, I don't have time now. Yep Shen was actually a bit curious about Yep Lang Thien and the forces behind him. I need to go to the Has now. After I'll go with you to Tiam Long. Yep Lang Thien was overjoyed, quickly saying, Thank you master. Then Yep Shen got in the car for Yep Lang Thien to drive him. In the car Yep Shen asked, how is the investigation on that Long family in the capital? Yep Lang Thien shook his head with an uneasy expression. Infiltrating the capital is still very difficult. We sent six experts to investigate the Longs but none returned alive. So still no news. Yep Shen fell into thought. Looks like that Long family and the capital aren't simple. Sorry master, I'll personally go once to the capital and surely bring back news. Yep Shen looked at Yep Lang Thien saying, leave this matter for now, just send people in moderation. At the same time, somewhere in Jiangnan province, Luke Han Suang was sitting cross-legged cultivating, surrounded by spirit energy. Before her was a pile of documents. After finishing cultivation, Luke Han Suang opened her eyes full of doubt. Just what is that guy's background? Not only curing me but raising my cultivation. After returning she investigated Yep Shen but only knew he came from a tiny Jiang city. How can he be so brilliant? Lu Han Suang unconsciously recalled when Yep Shen had treated her, her cheeks flushing red. Forget it, someone must be hiding him. Yep Lang Thien brought Yep Shen to the Haz. From afar could already see countless experts guarding the Ha residence. Yep Shen silently assessed something big happened from the tense expressions. Through the phone call earlier Yep Shen felt Nuok Toyot's condition wasn't good. Wonder what problems occurred inside. Yep Shen used his strength to fly over the wall in just a few leaps he had basically entered successfully without the guarding martial artists noticing. A few seconds later Yep Shen landed on a balcony on the second floor outside. He softly called Nuok Toyot's name, startling her. As soon as she opened the door, Nuok Toyot anxiously said, Why did you come here? Didn't I say absolutely don't go out? Seeing her fear, Yep Shen didn't say much directly going before Nuok Tuyet asking, Who is threatening you now? Hearing Yep Shen ask this, Nuok Tuyet was a bit flustered answering, What are you talking about? I'm the young miss of the Haz, who dares threaten me. Don't worry about that. But Nuok Tuyet's lies couldn't get past Yep Shen. Is it the Martial Arts Association, Wangs, or Tans threatening you? Hearing the two words, Tan family, Nuok Tuyet shuddered without feeling cold. This expression of Nuok Tuyet seemed to answer Yep Shen's question. Yep Shen tightly clenched his fists, eyes flashing with killing intent. Tell me where the Tans are. I'll resolve all these troubles. Nuok Tuyet blanked for a moment then grabbed Yep Shen's hand. Yep Shen I know you're very strong but this is Jiangnan not Jiang City. You don't know how formidable the Tans are. Listen to me, find somewhere to hide. The Tans are currently concentrating all forces to find someone. I don't want anything to happen to you. Yep Shen immediately embraced Nuok Tuyet comforting her. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Don't cry anymore. If he said his royal advisor identity now she wouldn't believe it. Best to personally handle the Tans. She wouldn't say if asked so could only investigate himself. He suddenly heard people approaching, seemingly martial artists coming this way. Yep Shen hurriedly released Nuok Tuyet. There's a sudden situation, people are coming. Stay in the room, don't come out. Yep Shen carefully opened the door going outside, suspicious in his heart. This group of martial artists certainly weren't of the Haz. If they were, they wouldn't dare casually come to Nuok Tuyet like this. Very likely. Yep Shen stepped outside to see two women appear, also very startled seeing him. Who are you? When did you get in here? I know your aim. Let's go outside to settle this. I don't want bloodshed here frightening Nuok Tuyet. After speaking he directly went outside. The two women looked at each other then also followed. Not long after, the three were outside. Yep Shen's gaze filled with killing intent looked at the two. Who sent you here to monitor Nuok Tuyet? The Tans? The woman angrily said, Brat, if you know of the engagement between the Tans and Haz, how dare you be in the young Mrs. room? At this time Yep Shen boldly stated, because Han Nuok Tuyet is my, Yep Shen's, woman. The two women were stunned for a moment. There's actually someone daring to touch the Tan family's woman. Whoever opposes the Tans only has one outcome, death. The two swiftly attacked Yep Shen who also readied his stance guessing the enemy's moves. 
Yep Shen reached into his clothes taking out the staff swinging straight at one's face. Seeing her companion bleed, the other woman's expression panicked, her claw-like nail swiping at Yep Shen. Yep Shen's severe gaze seemed to see through everything, directly grabbing her right hand and fiercely pulling while his left hand seized her neck lifting into the air. Yep Shen casually said, want to fight me? Still too inexperienced. At this moment the woman's eyes were full of fear begging Yep Shen not to kill her. Yep Shen's icy gaze glanced over her body, words full of ridicule. Just two moves and you're already so frightened out of control. As expected of a Tan family martial artist. Tell me where the Tan residence is. The woman fearfully spoke, the Tans are on the southern road of Jiangnan province, go in 500 meters and you'll see their villa. However some of the Tan family's core members aren't at the residence currently. Yep Shen's hand tightened asking, where are they now? The woman painfully said, my status is low, I only know the clan leader took the young master and important people to Kunlun Mountain to invite a great one down the mountain. I heard as long as they invite that person, the Tans will soar to dominance. Hearing this, Yep Shen thought, the Tans going to Kunlun, could it be the one they want to invite down is from Kunlun Shu? Regarding Kunlun, Yep Shen knew very clearly the Tans weren't qualified to enter Kunlun Shu. They could only invite experts of Mount Kunlun. On Mount Kunlun there were quite a few cultivators, although unable to compare with Kunlun Shu their strength was extremely formidable. Most were expelled from Kunlun Shu. Among them some had strength far surpassing his. Yep Shen asked, do you know when they'll return? Being grasped tightly, the female expert answered with difficulty, if judging by previous times going up Mount Na am I, at least half a month. Mainly depends on that great one's attitude on Mount Kunlun. Having gotten what he wanted, Yep Shen lightly released his hand. The female expert fell to the ground coughing violently, gasping for air. The female expert secretly watched Yep Shen from below. Although a bit afraid, she believed after honestly confessing Yep Shen would spare her life. Then she could report back to Tan Zheng Yang to send experts here to kill and take revenge. Yep Shen pointed the soul subduing staff straight at her face, gaze icy cold. Now, will you suicide or shall I help you with that? Hearing this, the female expert was very frightened asking, you won't spare me? I've said everything you wanted to know. Yep Shen's gaze remained icy cold. Why wouldn't I? I kill every Tan family member. Why would I let you, a Tan family member, live? You think I don't know you'll report back to them? Without hesitation the female expert flung a hidden weapon from below at Yep Shen, seeking a way to live. Yep Shen coldly smashed the staff at the female expert's head. She immediately lost all signs of life lying on the ground. After handling it, Yep Shen called Yep Lang Thien to send people to clean up the scene. While on the call, a steady voice sounded from behind, Are you Yep Shen? Yep Shen turned to see a middle-aged man walking over, voluntarily introducing himself. I am the Ha family's clan leader, Nuak Toyot's father. I just returned and saw my daughter's abnormality. I immediately had people investigate and learned you killed the two Tans sent to monitor my daughter. Very good, I truly thank you on my daughter's behalf. I just returned and had people investigate after seeing my daughter's abnormality, learning you killed the two Tans sent to monitor her. Very good. I truly thank you on behalf of my daughter. The scene changed to the living room. At this time Ha Nuak Tuyit had also just come down. Seeing his daughter, Mr. Ha said, Child, go back to your room. Yep Shen and I need to talk privately. Nuak Tuyit was a bit worried, sticking close to Yep Shen, both hands clutching his arm to her chest saying, Father will certainly discuss those matters with Yep Shen. I can't leave. Beside her, Yep Shen laughed confidently looking at Nuak Tuyit saying, Nuak Tuyit darling, go to your room. I'll come up to find you after, be good now. Nuak Tuyit gently bit her lip next to him, nodding before leaving the living room. Mr. Ha watched his daughter leave, directly getting to the point. You must know of Nuak Tuyit's engagement to Tan Jung Yang. The Tan's background, you should also understand. To be honest, I'm very grateful to you. Moreover, I acknowledge your ability, calling you a genius isn't wrong. However, if not considering the Tans, Tan Jung Yang is also an extremely formidable genius. If you don't know, let me tell you clearly, he's one of Jiangnan province's top 10 martial talents, at the forefront. Right now he's ranked 199 on the ancestor list, the gap between you two is heaven and earth. Seeing Yep Shen remain indifferent, Mr. Ha felt some pity, 
placing his hand on Yep Shen's shoulder consolingly. Stop now. I'll try my best to help, pleading with the Tans to spare you. Consider that my apology to Nuok Tuyet. Yep Shen lightly brushed his hand aside. Thank you for your kind intentions, I'll handle the tan matters myself. The has needn't get involved. Yep Shen's severe gaze looked at Mr. Ha. One point, father-in-law, remember. The current situation isn't the tans wanting to bother me, it's me, Yep Shen, determined to kill every tan family member. An extremely powerful aura erupted from Yep Shen's body. Mr. Ha hearing this also felt fear, losing his footing. Feeling like in an illusion. There was actually someone wanting to destroy the Tans. Although Yep Shen was strong, his tone was too arrogant. How could he easily eliminate a Jiangnan province marshal family? Mr. Ha hadn't decided how to advise Yep Shen when Yep Shen had already turned leaving. Mr. Ha hurriedly chased asking, Yep Shen, how confident are you exactly? Yep Shen stopped, glancing back with a proud smile. Extremely confident. I'll let the Tans understand that for me, Yep Shen. There are no unsolvable hatreds in this world. After speaking, his figure flashed vanishing from the living room. Mr. Ha stood there in a daze afterwards, Yep Shen went upstairs. Father-in-law rest first, I'll go speak with Nuok Tuyet for a bit or she'll worry. Behind him, Mr. Ha massaged his temples calming down. That arrogant not knowing limits, truly regretful. It was late night when Yep Shen left the house to find Tiam Long. He discovered this building was extremely large, concealing no small number of experts who could immediately mobilize if notified. Yep Shen observed no one was monitoring him before directly going inside to see the layout here. Just after entering, a man stepped out blocking Yep Shen's path. As Yep Shen was about to speak, a girl came rushing over looking very urgent, calling out, don't obstruct him, he's a very important guest. Hearing he was an invited guest, the guard's tone also softened inviting Yep Shen inside. The girl also hurriedly added, Sir Yep I'm honored by your presence, please allow me to guide you. Yep Shen nodded. The girl led Yep Shen through the grand hall to an elevator. Sir Yep please. After they entered, the girl pressed floor 39. The doors closed and the atmosphere was quiet. At this time, the girl immediately kneeled before Yep Shen respectfully saying, Greetings master, your subordinate. To protect master's information, few know your identity. Apologies for the earlier incident. Yep Shen nodded. I understand, stand up. After all, core subordinates knowing too much isn't good for protection. Then the elevator doors opened and extremely strong spirit energy and weapons shot towards them from the front. Yep Shen carefully observed discovering over a hundred very powerful experts here. He was a bit surprised that at least fifty had reached the ancestor realm. Even a few with auras surpassing the Wang clan leader. As Yep Shen stepped out of the elevator, Yep Lang Thien hurriedly came over kneeling down. Greetings master. The experts behind him also kneeled with Yep Lang Thien. Greetings master. Greetings master. Their resolute attitude as if gathered here only to await him. With such subordinates, forging ahead will be easier. Yep Shen said, no need for such courtesy, stand up. Yep Shen stepped forward, lightly raising his arm saying, everyone rise. As his words fell, the experts there uniformly stood up. Yep Shen's entire body erupted with extremely frightful aura. Yep Shen glanced over everyone, opening his mouth. If you're willing to acknowledge me as master, I'll also recognize each of you honored sirs as hidden pavilion experts. You aren't my subordinates nor servants. You're all Yep Shen's brothers. If you loyally dedicate your hearts to me, I'll protect your honors. The group of experts below sucked in cold air, bodies frozen staring at Yep Shen. This evil aura was too dense, just how many had the master's hands been stained with blood? Yep Shen also thought to himself, the quickest way to make these experts obey was displaying strength. Yep Lang Thien should understand his method. At this time, Yep Lang Thien stepped forward respectfully saluting. Master, your subordinate wishes to compete with you once. Yep Shen revealed a satisfied smile. As expected, he understood Yep Shen's thoughts. Not bad to be called Yep Lang Thien. In his heart, Yep Shen also wanted to test how terrifying the rumored Jungnan king's strength was. Yep Lang Thien, what rank are you on the ancestor list? Yep Lang Thien shook his head seriously saying, Beneath master, I have no interest in that ancestor list. 
A few months ago, I killed an expert ranked below 200. I don't know the specifics, actually that list isn't necessarily accurate since many experts entered it 10 years ago. Now their strength has long surpassed then. There are also hidden masters in Jiangnan province not on the list. Yep Shen nodded. Based on this, Yep Lang Thien was certainly stronger than Tan Zheng Yang. Whether a match for Zhuang and Gao was still undetermined. Yep Lang Thien's pupils constricted, extremely serious. Then I've offended the master. Yep Shen also looked seriously at Yep Lang Thien. Make your move. I'll have a match with you to boost the men's morale. Yep Lang Thien's knees bent as he explosively shot out, strength like an arrow bursting forth, his whole body carrying aura. In a flash, he appeared before Yep Shen throwing a punch down. Yep Shen didn't dodge at all, meeting hardness with hardness. The two fists colliding created extremely astonishing pressure. The two continuously exchanged blows. Yep Shen also acknowledged Yep Lang Thien's strength wasn't bad. Yep Lang Thien's face couldn't hide his excitement as he charged at Yep Shen unleashing his killer moves. Facing this overbearing punch from Yep Lang Thien, in his heart Yep Shen assessed it wasn't bad, but the skill was still lacking. It seemed very fierce but truly only one punch was real, it can't get past my eyes. As he finished speaking, Yep Shen also threw a punch knocking Yep Lang Thien back unable to resist, smashing into the floor. The match ended. The surrounding experts' eyes opened wide, fearful yet admiring. The Jiangnan King's fist image was a very fierce killer move. No one in all of Jiangnan could see through the real punch among the fist shadows. Yet the master could easily discern it. Not only that but also defeat it. Yep Shen also let out a puff of air. Inwardly he also thought, he wasn't certain he could withstand that fist either. If carefully analyzed, Yep Lang Thien wasn't inferior, only losing in technique. Yep Lang Thien kneeled before Yep Shen conceding defeat. Yep Shen gently said, stand up. Yep Lang Thien, find me a quiet place. I'll give you some opportunity. Yep Lang Thien respectfully answered, yes. In his heart Yep Shen thought, Luo Yun's fist technique suited him very well, could increase his speed. The scene changed to a private room. Yep Shen handed a paper to Yep Lang Thien who didn't understand, asking, what is this? Yep Shen seriously explained, this is a martial skill. In the coming days you must quickly learn it. Yep Lang Thien looked at the paper's contents, his arm shaking. This isn't on the same level as the skills I've learned before, like two different worlds. Before Yep Lang Thien calmed down, Yep Shen continued, also, you're no longer an ordinary martial artist from now on. You're now a cultivator, no longer an ordinary martial artist. The scene changed to Jiangnan Provincial Hospital No. 1. Miss Ha had become very haggard after many sleepless nights worrying about her mother's condition. Nuok Tuyet gently said, Mother, Yep Shen came to visit grandmother. Nuok Tuyet was a bit worried her mother would be unhappy, but Miss Ha didn't show any displeasure, nodding at Yep Shen. In her heart, Miss Ha regretfully thought Yep Shen's character was much better than Tan Jung Yang's, but his strength couldn't compare. What a pity. At this time, Yep Shen also gently said, Not seeing you these days, you look much older. Are you okay? Have some fruit to regain strength. While Nuok Tuyet and Miss Ha were talking, Yep Shen's gaze fell on Nuok Tuyet's grandmother. He discovered her condition was very poor, only a trace of dying breath remaining, could die any time. Yep Shen didn't know what illness could cause her health to deteriorate so rapidly. Without hesitation, Yep Shen reached out to take her pulse. After a while, Yep Shen's eyes suddenly moved. So that's how it is. Yep Shen casually said, Granny Nuok Tuyet doesn't have an illness but was cursed by someone using a special power to seal away her life force. It has the effect of turning a living person into a living corpse. Beside him, hearing this, Miss Ha's expression immediately changed. Yep Shen looked seriously at Miss Ha. Who was the last to be in contact with her? Miss Ha could only shake her head. I was always by Granny's side caring for her, no contact with anyone else. Of course she knew it was Tan Jung Yang but saying it out, based on Nuok Toyet's personality, would surely disagree to the engagement with the Tans. Yep Shen coldly said, Mother is lying. Right now still lying? Yep Shen resolutely continued, She's not only Nuok Toyet's grandma but also your mother. If you can say the exact cause, I'm currently the only one who can save her life. Nuok Tuyet was shocked looking at Miss Ha, asking, Mother, tell me why did grandmother become like this? 
At this moment, Miss Ha stared at Yep Shen. She believed him because up till now, almost everything Yep Shen said was factual. Miss Ha painfully closed her eyes. It was Tan Jung Yang. He said if I don't agree to the engagement, he would let my mother die without a burial place. Miss Ha painfully closed her eyes for a few seconds before opening her mouth, saying, it was Tan Jung Yang. Hearing those three words, Nuok Toyot's expression immediately turned gloomy mixed with anger. Yep Shen promptly took out three silver needles. Saving her was most important right now. He struck three silver needles into Nuok Toyot's grandmother's body. The three needles embedded in the old woman's body continuously flickered as Yep Shen decisively activated the spirit energy technique spirit control needles, transmitting spirit energy into her body. Her body floated in midair, surrounded by energy expelling the evil spirit. Not long after, Nuok Toyot's grandmother opened her mouth as a wisp of black energy slowly flew out. Seeing this process, Miss Ha couldn't help being frightened, eyes wide open. So Yep Shen actually knows medicine, moreover can use spirit control needles. Only those with frightening strength can do this. Beside her, Nuok Toyot curiously asked, Mother, what are spirit control needles? Miss Ha thought for a bit before answering, it's legendary acupuncture, didn't think it really existed. Yep Shen ignored the two, his whole body's spirit energy erupting as he loudly shouted, break. Sensing danger, the black energy tried to escape but it was too late. Yep Shen grabbed the black energy in his hand. You still want to escape? You should deliver a present for me to that beast on the mountain. Yep Shen chanted an incantation. At the same time, somewhere on Mount Kunlun, several people from the Tan family were standing outside an ancient manor. The leader was Tan Jung Yang. Behind him, some old men spoke up, our Tan clan after all is a top family, being left outside so long is really annoying. Another said, in ancient times people ascended the mountain to invite talents three times. Without sincere intention how could the noble one descend the mountain? Tan Jung Yang arrogantly added, as long as an expert is willing to come down, our Tan clan will definitely rise to glory. Just then, Tan Jung Yang felt something on his face, a bit panicked. The black energy had returned attacking Tan Jung Yang's body. Tan Jung Yang was injured, spurting out a mouthful of blood. He discovered his blood energy was in turmoil, uncontrollably erupting outside. The Tan elders discovered this and hurriedly surrounded him, wanting to help Tan Jung Yang force out the black energy. But how could they have expected the black energy to be so strange and overbearing? Not only didn't they expel it, even they were injured. Young master, what's wrong with you? When they surrounded Tan Jung Yang to help him, he suddenly stretched out his hand roaring loudly, ignoring his own injuries to disperse the energy. Tan Jung Yang shouted, Who, who finally broke my technique? Tan Kun's face revealed anger. Jung Yang, what happened, why are you injured? Tan Jung Yang told the whole story. Years ago his master had taught him this to control some people. His master even said this type of technique, no one in all of Wawa could break. But now it was shattered. Hearing this, Tan Kun's face was full of fury. The has dare harm my son. Send some people from our Tan's mountain manor to the has to let them taste some color. The scene changed to Yep Shen's villa in Jiangnan. After saving Nuok Toyot's grandmother, Yep Shen happily went home while reading a message Nuok Toyot sent him. Now grandmother's spirit has greatly improved and she ate a lot. In two days I'll come find you. Reading this message, Yep Shen smiled. Earlier at the hospital, after learning everything, Nuok Toyot's grandmother had directly betrothed Yep Shen and Nuok Toyot. She even told the two to quickly go register. Yep Shen placed his hand on the door, about to go in, when his eyes constricted. Discovering martial artists auras inside the house, Yep Shen immediately kicked the door open while taking out his long thick staff shouting loudly. Yep Shen was a bit surprised to see a woman sitting on his living room sofa. Before Yep Shen could continue, Lu Kan Suang said teasingly, Yesterday you examined me all over so quickly yet today treat me like a stranger. Yep Shen coldly went before Lu Kan Suang saying, Remember I told you yesterday not to step into this villa half a step. Lu Kan Suang smiled, taking a phone out of her clothes. I don't like owing favors but I owe you three. You can't escape me. Today I came to repay the first one. Listen to this recording first, it's quite interesting. After speaking, 
Lu Kan Suang played an audio recording on her cell phone after 20 seconds, the recording ended. Lu Kan Suang turned off her phone, saying, I'm more and more interested in you. Didn't expect the Tans to put out such a high price to kill you. Lu Kan Suang arrogantly continued, after I discovered the target was you, I took the initiative to accept the mission. What's more, I killed someone else to serve as a scapegoat, protecting your little life. Do you consider this a favor? Lu Kan Suang thought Yep Shen would thank her somewhat, but Yep Shen shook his head once, going before her coldly saying, Lu Kan Suang, you're too confident. Let me be clear, it's not the Tans want me dead but that I want to destroy the Tans. If Blood Plum Hall took this mission and provokes me, I dare guarantee Blood Plum Hall's outcome will be the same as the Tans. Yep Shen's words made Lu Kan Suang reveal an extremely bizarre, frightened expression. After a few seconds, Lu Kan Suang bent over laughing, ha ha ha, want to destroy Blood Plum Hall? You want me to laugh to death? Blood Plum Hall is the top assassination organization in Wawa's martial world. Countless experts, just give a good price. All of Wawa's experts could be hired to annihilate you. Even if the assassination fails, Blood Plum Hall would just send out stronger martial assassins to deal with you. The key is Blood Plum Hall has a top-level expert, he's ranked top 30 on the ancestor list. So provoking Blood Plum Hall only has one outcome, death. I already saved you, save me. Yep Shen's icy gaze shifted somewhere else before coldly saying, sorry I don't need it. Just as he finished speaking, Yep Shen shot forwards. This action left Luke Han Suang astonished. After one second, Yep Shen had appeared before a door, kicking it open smashing into the black-clothed man behind the door. Being discovered by Yep Shen, the black-clothed man was stunned, not knowing when he was detected. In this situation he could only risk death but before he could move, Yep Shen had already used extreme speed to appear behind him, knocking the black-clothed man to the ground. The assassin's face was full of fear. He didn't expect the target's strength to be so formidable, basically not someone he could handle here as the verbatim at this time. Lu Kan Suang also ran into the room, her expression greatly changing as she stared at the assassin. Because this person was also an assassin from Blood Plum Hall. She didn't expect the Tans to have prepared another assassin, that the mission didn't just have her but someone else also accepted it. Lying on the ground, the assassin's whole body trembled as he shouted, Lu Kan Suang, you dare violate the organization's rules. If they find out, you won't get away intact. Yep Shen looked at the assassin on the ground, raising his foot prepared to stomp down. You're spouting too much nonsense. Those who want to kill me all die, you're no exception. Seeing Yep Shen about to kill, Lu Kan Suang shouted, Can't, you can't kill him. Blood Plum Hall will know he failed his mission, then people will come investigate this carefully. If they know you killed him, Blood Plum Hall will send stronger experts to hunt you down. Lu Kan Suang's words made Yep Shen's footsteps pause for a bit. On the ground, the man saw Yep Shen not making a move, laughing at Yep Shen. Brat, now you're scared? Dare offend Blood Plum Hall, you have to die. Now kneel before me begging forgiveness, I may consider it. Before he finished speaking, Yep Shen's foot stomped down. Blood splattered everywhere. Seeing this, Lu Kan Suang was extremely frightened, standing frozen there. Before she could recover, Yep Shen spoke again, I already said, if Blood Plum Hall dares provoke me I'll annihilate it. Lu Kan Suang's beautiful eyes revealed deep fear watching Yep Shen. In her heart she thought, this guy's crazy. He completely doesn't consider the consequences. With that kick, he'll pay with his own life. After killing the assassin, Yep Shen leisurely went back to sit on the sofa. At this time, Lu Kan Suang was still standing there in shock. Yep Shen spoke up, if you're from Blood Plum Hall then you should take this corpse away. Lu Kan Suang felt some fear. Yep Shen killed Blood Plum Hall's man then wanted their person to go clean up. He basically didn't understand how much power he offended. Truly an ignorant person not crying till seeing the coffin. Just then Yep Shen said, oh right, I remember one thing. At this time, Lu Kan Suang's gaze changed, somewhat hopeful. Lu Kan Suang anxiously asked, what do you mean? Yep Shen indifferently said, the cleaning tools are over there. You can get water from the bathroom to scrub clean. Lu Kan Suang angrily said, what needs cleaning is a corpse yet you tell me to use detergent? Although angry, Lu Kan Suang still cleaned up the body neatly. 
she clearly knew Blood Plum Hall's methods. This man dying, no matter what method she used, couldn't completely erase all evidence. At least it could let Yep Shen live a few days longer. She didn't want to owe Yep Shen any favors. After cleaning up, Lu Kan Suang angrily shouted, Why should I deal with an arrogant guy like you? Helping you dispose of this corpse will count as two favors. At Blood Plum Hall's side I'll cover for you. If I can't cover, you take care of it yourself. Best if you leave Jiangnan province. After speaking, Lu Kan Suang also left. Yep Shen also called Yep Lang Thien. Master, any orders? At this time, Yep Shen asked, How much do you know about Blood Plum Hall? Yep Lang Thien was startled, hurriedly asking, Master, Blood Plum Hall provoked you? I only killed one Blood Plum Hall assassin. Yep Lang Thien pondered briefly before saying, Blood Plum Hall is a top assassination organization in Wawa. Because if they fail, they'll send stronger assassins. This gives countless martial experts headaches. It's managed by a person named Lang Feng. I've met him once, extremely sinister with very strong martial prowess but compared to master, only an ant. Yep Shen Haid, inwardly thinking he had to quickly increase his strength. On the other end, Yep Lang Thien angrily said, Master needn't be concerned. If Blood Plum Hall blindly offends you, subordinate is willing to lead the hidden pavilion experts to annihilate them. Yep Shen nodded, further asking, I'm very curious, if all of Blood Plum Hall's people in Jiangnan can't kill the target, what will they do? Yep Lang Thien blanked, hesitating a few seconds before saying, that's the biggest trouble. Blood Plum Hall's true forces are in the capital, also Blood Plum Hall's headquarters. If unable to complete the mission in Jiangnan province, they'll certainly send experts from the capital. Those people's strength is on a whole different level than Jiangnan's. Understood master. Does Hidden Pavilion need to take action? No need. Yep Shen said before hanging up the call. Looks like Blood Plum Hall won't stop bothering him. If so, then Blood Plum Hall needn't continue existing either. Yep Shen immediately took out the black stone, holding it in his hand. Inwardly thinking, the Tomb of Reincarnation was his best trump card. He must strive to use it to improve his strength, that was the most urgent matter currently. As long as he had enough strength, everything would be easily resolved. Yep Shen promptly sat down entering a cultivation state. The black stone floated before him, madly unleashing spirit energy. After some unknown time, a tremor spread from Yep Shen's body. He opened his eyes with a loud shout, breakthrough. Having finished cultivating, a satisfied smile was on his face. Finally I've broken through the third layer of energy refinement realm. Yep Shen sensed his strength had increased a lot more than he imagined. Yep Shen smiled, grasping the black stone. After one second, he appeared inside the tomb of reincarnation. There, a grave tablet was emitting light, meaning it could be summoned anytime. Yep Shen's gaze was also excited. He reached out touching the grave tablet, sensing its might was much stronger than Luo Yun's. Yep Shen further discovered not only the three words Tran Kin Thuong, but Liat Wasek's Tran Kin Thuong. He was very curious about this grave tablet, badly wanting to summon but still endured because the chance to summon was only once. A few hours after summoning it would disappear. This kind of expert was Yep Shen's trump card, not to be used unless absolutely necessary. While Yep Shen was cultivating, Sun Yi Dan had arrived from Zhang City. She was stealthily carrying luggage, wanting to surprise Yep Shen. A few days ago he had given her the passcode to enter. After entering, she hurried upstairs to Yep Shen's room. Gently opening the door, she looked in but didn't see Yep Shen inside. Just as she felt some disappointment, from behind. A voice transmitted from behind, What are you sneaking around outside my room for? Sun Yi Dan was startled, immediately throwing herself into Yep Shen's arms saying, I wanted to surprise you but you discovered me instead. Yep Shen smiled, So, surprised yet? You were planning to ambush me. He gently caressed Sun Yi Dan's cheek, happily saying, since you don't know much martial arts, I'll deal with you in another, rougher way. Do you want it? Sun Yi Dan's face turned red, softly saying, want it, really want it. After fiercely battling all night, Yep Shen and Sun Yi Dan were still lying in bed enjoying the passionate moments. Sun Yi Dan's beautiful, satisfied face looked up at Yep Shen saying, let me tell you, our Tian Zheng group is now so famous we're in the top search results every day. Not only that, whenever a product is released it instantly sells out, 
secondary market price already dozens of times higher. Tian Zheng Group today has become the top enterprise in Jiangnan province, even of the whole Wawa. Yep Shen gently stroked her hair, embracing her in his arms affectionately saying, you worked hard. From now on, all business matters in Jiangnan province depend on you. Sun Yi Dan happily laughed, hee hee, not hard at all. Just then, Sun Yi Dan's gaze fell on a photo placed on the bedside table. Besides young Yep Shen, there was also a youthful man and woman. Sun Yi Dan curiously asked, is this your family photo? Yep Shen blanked for a bit before looking at the photo and nodding. After all this villa didn't have a family atmosphere. That photo being here was to remind Yep Shen of his family's grudge. Sun Yi Dan picked up the photo looking closely, feeling something was off. Your mother has this mole on her neck? Or was it dirtied when taking the photo? Yep Shen also felt something wrong, looking once before seriously saying, from young till now, mother always had that neck mole. What's so important about it? Hearing this, Sun Yi Dan pondered a few seconds. I feel something's wrong. Five years ago when I cremated your parents' corpses, I remember very clearly your mother didn't have that mole. Yep Shen froze. Sun Yi Dan's words were like thunder on a clear day. Yep Shen leapt up, his expression changing non-stop. He stared at Sun Yi Dan. Are you certain there was no mole? Could you have seen wrong? Sun Yi Dan pulled her legs in, face also full of worry saying, it can't be wrong. Because that was my first time seeing a corpse up close, it left an especially deep impression. I'm absolutely certain. Pausing, Sun Yi Dan suddenly thought of a possibility. Could it be before the incident your mother thought it ugly so went to get cosmetic surgery? Aside from the mole, everything else looks the same as in the photo. Yep Shen didn't speak, his gaze becoming grave. He clearly remembered on that day his mother's mole was still there. With Sun Yi Dan in such close contact with the corpses, she couldn't have seen wrong. If so, the only possibility was his parents' corpses had been swapped out by someone. The two were still alive. If his parents were alive, they would surely know of Tian Zheng Group's matters. If they knew Tian Zheng Group's legal representative was Yep Shen, they would naturally come find him. Yep Shen felt this matter wasn't as simple as before. Thinking to hear, he promptly grabbed his phone. Yep Shen immediately called Lei Shui Wei. As soon as it connected, Yep Shen spoke, Lei Shui Wei, where are you now? I need to urgently meet you. Lei Shui Wei's serious voice transmitted, I'm currently at the base. Xiao Dang is on guard near your villa. I'll have him come get you. After a while, Xiao Dang arrived to pick up Yep Shen. At this time, Yep Shen could hear Xiao Dang arguing with a girl outside. This person was Su Xin Yen who wanted to go in to see Yep Shen but Xiao Dang wouldn't allow it. Su Xin Yen loudly said, I know him, we were high school classmates. But Xiao Dang very resolutely didn't let Su Xin Yen in. Just then Yep Shen walked out from inside the house, calling from afar, Xiao Dang, what's going on? Before Xiao Dang could speak, Su Xin Yen hurriedly said, Big brother Shen, it's me Su Xin Yen. Only then did Xiao Dang explain, Sir Yep, this woman insists on seeing you, saying you two know each other, that you were high school classmates. Beside them, Su Xin Yen looked deeply at Yep Shen. Because Su Xin Yen had no other choice. Her father had offended the Meng family, a top family of Jiangnan province. Right now the only one who could save them was Yep Shen. Since the Jin and Zhuang families disappeared, the Meng family in Jiang city has become extremely domineering. The Mengs declared they would destroy the Su clan. Now the only one who could save the Su's was Yep Shen. Moreover, the Su's knew the Mengs were doing this to curry favor with Yep Shen. After all, the two top martial families in Jiang City suddenly vanishing had some relation to Yep Shen. Yep Shen glanced briefly at Su Xin Yen, indifferently saying, I don't know this person. Xiao Dang, let's go. After speaking, Yep Shen also got in the car. Seeing this, Su Xin Yen rushed over grabbing Yep Shen's arm, saying, Wait. How can you not recognize me? In high school we were classmates, you even said you liked me. These past months we've met a few times, although a bit awkward but I know you still have me in your heart, right? Hearing these words, Yep Shen's expression immediately darkened. Without hesitation he turned back and slapped her face. Yep Shen coldly said, get lost. If I see you here again I'll kill you. Su Xin Yen held her face lying on the ground looking at Yep Shen asking, why? 
At 2 p.m. Yep Shen arrived at the Long Hun Elite Squad's base. In the meeting room, Yep Shen stood before Lei Shui Wei and Ying Tian. Lei Shui Wei spoke up. Here's all the information I could find on the events at Yunyu Mountain Manor. As he spoke, he handed a file to Yep Shen who thanked him for it. Hearing Yep Shen say his parents may still be alive, Lei Shui Wei was shocked but quickly calmed down again. In this world, some executed criminals were especially valuable. Higher ups often used special means to conceal them, even giving new identities so they could continue living, serving the country. Although knowing this possibility, Lei Shui Wei's gaze was full of thought. Because the Yeps weren't that special. More importantly, the events at Yunyu Mountain Manor were huge. What means could be used to swap out the corpses right before so many people? Yep Shen's face showed some annoyance, cutting off Lei Shui Wei's thoughts saying, Sun Yi Dan told me there was no mole on my mother's corpse. But I clearly remember there was one that day. My parents' corpses were definitely swapped out by someone. Lei Shui Wei's brows furrowed tightly. After a few seconds he spoke again, if what Sun Yi Dan said is true, there are suspicious points. But the events at Yunyu Mountain Manor weren't handled by us Long Hun. The data we have is limited. If Mr. Yep really wants to know the details from that year, you need to find someone. As he spoke, Lei Shui Wei took out his phone then showed a photo to Yep Shen, seriously saying, he's Zhang Wei Shan. He was a high-ranking leader of the Criminal Investigation Bureau handling special criminal cases in Jiangnan. Five years ago, he was fully in charge of the Yunyu Mountain Manor case. He was also the first to be in contact with your parents' corpses. Yep Shen asked, where is Zhang Wei Shan now? You said he was a leader of the Criminal Bureau, don't tell me he's no longer there now? Hearing this, Lei Shui Wei hesitated for a long time before speaking. This Zhang Wei Shan has a tragic fate. I accidentally learned some things while investigating the Yunyu case. Three years ago, on Zhang Wei Shan's son's wedding day, what should have been a joyous occasion, yet that day his daughter-in-law was raped by Zhuang Yuan Xian, young master of the Zhuangs. Unable to bear the blow, she jumped into the river committing suicide. Zhang's son angrily went to confront the Zhuangs but was killed by their expert. Zhang Wei Shan suffered these two heavy blows. He used his power for revenge against the Zhuangs. Although inflicting heavy damage, he had to pay a heavy price. His cultivation destroyed, becoming crippled. He's currently imprisoned in Jiangnan Province Penitentiary No. 1. Yep Shen's pupils constricted. You said Zhuang Yuan Xian, not Zhuang Gao? Lei Shui Wei nodded once. There's only one Zhuang family in Jiangnan Province. Zhuang Gao is the head and also chairman of the Jiangnan Province Martial Arts Association. He can be considered to have high status in Jiangnan province. How could Zhang Wei Shan provoke them? Speaking to here, Lei Shui Wei sighed again. Zhang Wei Shan's entire life had no blemish. Who knew right before retirement he would encounter this? Truly regretful. Yep Shen sank into deep thought. It seems he would have to personally visit this Zhang Wei Shan to inquire about the truth of what happened that year. Yep Shen angrily stood up. After all, Zhang Wei Shan was a person with status in Wawa. Why didn't Wawa handle this matter? Lei Shui Wei shook his head. Sir Yep, this world isn't as beautiful as you think. These martial warriors are a rare resource of Wawa. At a glance, you can see who's more important between Zhang Wei Shan and Zhuang and Gao. To be honest, I also can't accept this matter. I tried to deal with Zhuang's son but the Zhuangs had long bought off connections, erasing all evidence. With only Zhang's word, I could do nothing. Hearing Lei Shui Wei's explanation, Yep Shen further asked, Why was Zhang Wei Shan imprisoned in Jiangnan No. 1 prison? Lei Shui Wei replied, Zhang Wei Shan abused his authority against the Zhuangs so they grasped his weakness, sending him to No. 1 prison. I want to meet Zhang Wei Shan. Lei Shui Wei knew Yep Shen would make this request. He nodded but still reminded, These years, Zhang Wei Shan has changed greatly. He bears immense resentment and will surely be difficult, not easily giving you answers. You must prepare mentally. Soon after, Yep Shen appeared in the visiting room of Jiangnan Province Penitentiary No. 1. After a while, the emaciated Zhang Wei Shan was brought here. As soon as he entered, Yep Shen spoke, You are Zhang Wei Shan right? As he spoke, Yep Shen pushed forward a photo of his parents, asking, Do you recognize these two people in the photo? Zhang Wei Shan glanced at the photo, angrily shouting, get lost. 
I don't care who you are, leave me be. Yep Shen as before placed the photo before Zhang Wei Shan's eyes, calmly saying, the two in this photo are my parents. They died at Yunyu Mountain Manor five years ago. You were in charge of that case. Zhang Wei Shan didn't speak, just stared at the two people in the photo. Yep Shen continued, I experienced something similar to you. With my own eyes I saw my parents killed by someone with frightening power. At that time I was too weak, without even the power to resist. I understand your feelings, understand why you came to hate and resent this world. Hearing this, Zhang Wei Shan's expression changed somewhat. Yep Shen still spoke from the opposite side, in these five years after I disappeared from Yunyu Mountain Manor. He slowly recounted his experiences over the years, wanting Zhang Wei Shan to understand he wasn't an ordinary youth. If Zhang Wei Shan was willing to speak the truth, Yep Shen would do his utmost to help Zhang Wei Shan regain his strength. After disappearing from this world, I experienced immense torment and suffering, almost unbearable. The only reason I continued living was for revenge. And you are my only clue to achieve that revenge. Zhang Wei Shan pondered deeply for a while before speaking, Go, I know nothing. Don't rush to conclusions. There is much injustice in this world that we can't choose, but some things you can choose. Yep Shen took a photo from his pocket, placing it before Zhang Wei Shan. If I bring you this person's head, what would you think? Seeing the photo, Zhang Wei Shan's eyes were full of excitement. Zhuang Yuan Xian, that beast Zhuang Yuan Xian. He killed my daughter-in-law, killed my son, destroyed everything of mine. He deserves death, truly deserves death. I only regret I couldn't crush his bones to dust. After a minute of agitation, Zhang Wei Shan's eyes calmed a bit. But what can you do? His father is Zhuang and Gao, ranked number 189 on the ancestor list. A youngster like you, what can you rely on to take his head? Yep Shen's aura violently erupted with boundless killing intent. Don't worry what I rely on. You just tell me, if I bring his head here, can you tell me everything you know? Zhang Wei Shan's body trembled, almost kneeling on the ground staring fixedly at Yep Shen saying, as long as Zhuang Yuan Xian dies, I'll do anything you want. It's a deal. Having received his word, Yep Shen immediately left the room. The scene changed to late night. Yep Shen appeared before a high-rise building. Inside a room, Zhuang Yuan Xian was enjoying himself with some women. Outside, Zhuang clan guards were standing watch. One of them was Zhuang Zhen Shan, number 251 on the ancestor list. Hearing the noises inside the room, he sighed. Zhuang and Gao was so formidable yet sired such a lustful son. If he was half as good as the chairman it'd be great. Just as he was thinking this, his pupil suddenly discovered a youth with a peaked cap at the end of the hallway walking towards him. His entire body erupted with cold aura as he asked, Zhuang Yuan Xian is inside right? Zhuang Zhen Shan? Zhuang Zhen Shan angrily said, Who are you? Yep Shen's entire body erupted with killing intent, saying, Who I am doesn't matter. Just know I'm here for his life. As Yep Shen finished speaking, Zhuang Zhen Shan's expression greatly changed as boundless energy erupted from his body like a hunting leopard pouncing at Yep Shen. Yep Shen didn't dodge at all very decisively throwing an aura-infused punch into Zhuang Zhen Shan's stomach. The energy shock twisted Zhuang Zhen Shan's face beyond description. Yep Shen coldly said, you're Zhuang Yuan Xian's bodyguard, surely helped him commit no small number of evil deeds. Go die with him. Yep Shen exerted his strength in a punch blowing Zhuang Zhen Shan away, directly smashing the hotel room door. This left everyone inside the room horrified. Seeing Zhuang Zhen Shan dead on the ground, they screamed, he's dead. But just as they screamed, two hidden darts flew piercing the throats of the two women. The two girls collapsed on the ground amidst Zhuang Yuan Xian's terrified cries. You actually easily killed Zhuang Zhen Shan. Impossible. Just who are you? Yep Shen slowly stepped closer to Zhuang Yuan Xian, his voice reverberating, I am Yep Shen. Do you still remember a Zhang Wei Shan from three years ago? Hearing Zhang Wei Shan, Zhuang Yuan Xian was filled with horror, screaming, What do you want? Don't get carried away. Let me tell you, my father is chairman of Jiangnan Province's Martial Arts Association, Zhuang and Gao. If you dare harm me even a single hair, he'll definitely make you regret it. Before Zhuang Yuan Xian could finish, a violent pain rendered him speechless as Yep Shen broke his fingers. 
Reaching out to grab Zhuang Yuan Xian, Yep Shen said, Zhang Wei Shan has something I want. And the price of our transaction is your head. Grabbed by the neck, Zhuang Yuan Xian struggled to speak, you can't kill me. My father is. Yep Shen coldly snorted, even if Zhuang and Gao comes, he can't save you because I'll take his life too. Zhuang Yuan Xian's head was directly taken by Yep Shen. Blood sprayed everywhere. At this time, at the Zhuang residence, Zhuang and Gao sat on a chair somewhat impatient. That rotten brat, who knows where he's out indulging himself again. When he gets back, I'll definitely severely punish him. Just as he was thinking this, a cell phone on the table rang. Zhuang and Gao picked it up, his pupils shrinking as he heard the news his son had died. Zhuang and Gao's face was livid, his voice like thunder. Who? Who killed my son? I, Zhuang and Gao, swear to slaughter his entire clan. At the same time, at Jiangnan Province Penitentiary No. 1, Yep Shen had brought Zhuang Yuan Xian's head to Zhang Wei Shan. Zhang Wei Shan looked at the bag Yep Shen brought with some fear. After seeing the contents, Zhang Wei Shan's whole body shook even more with joy. Ha ha ha, that beast finally died. Very good, ha ha ha. Zhang Wei Shan couldn't hold back, crying. Thank you for giving that beast his retribution. My son and daughter in law can close their eyes in peace now. Yep Shen sighed, no need for thanks. This is our deal. Now it's your turn. Tell me everything about what happened at Yunyu Mountain Manor that year. Zhang Wei Shan nodded. All right. I'll tell you everything I know. Five years ago, I was leader of the Criminal Investigation Bureau, specializing in handling special cases. With my experience, the Yunyu Mountain Manor case was the strangest I've encountered in my life. At that time, I was investigating a case in Zhang City so I rushed over there hurriedly. By the time I arrived, after all the banquet guests were chased out, your parents were already gravely injured. When I walked in, while Yep Shen was speaking with Zhang Wei Shan, an important meeting was being held at the Jiangnan Province Martial Arts Association. After his son's death, only rage could be seen on Zhuang and Gao's face as he sat in the middle. Beside him stood Ma Dui Qi. The atmosphere right now was extremely grave. This meeting had all the major representatives of Jiangnan Province's martial families as well as financial groups. Key figures like Wang Kai Yuan, the Haz, and Zhou Fu Luo were also present. None of them could have imagined someone daring to kill Zhuang Yuan Xian. Everyone knew Zhuang and Gao doted on his son. This time, Jiangnan's entire martial world would shake. This was a summons of authority by the chairman of the Martial Arts Association. And it seemed the Tans had specially come for this matter. Not making everyone wait too long, Zhuang and Gao sitting in the chair spoke, My son, Zhuang Yuan Xian, was beheaded. I'm sure you all know about it right? Before Zhuang and Gao's fury, everyone's expression sank, all silent. Zhuang and Gao looked over everyone, angrily saying, I called this emergency meeting today for one demand only. Use all your resources to help me, Zhuang and Gao, find the murderer. I want to personally torment him to death. Then Zhuang and Gao sent everyone the photo captured by the security camera. I want you to help me find this man. Today, any man dressed like this or with a similar backside to the photo, apprehend all of them and bring them to me. I'd rather kill wrongly than let one go. Also, this person killed Zhuang Zhenshan so he may also be someone on the ancestor list. Anyone among you with a similar back, bring them all here. No matter who it is or what background they have. Sitting below, as the Ha family head heard Zhuang and Gao's roars, he closely examined the photo. He wondered who was so bold to provoke Zhuang and Gao's wrath. Just glancing at it, the Ha family head was startled because the figure in the photo was very familiar. That person was Yep Shen. But Yep Shen was only ranked number 350 on the ancestor list while Zhuang Zhen Shan had the strength of number 251. The gap was too big, how is it possible? Thinking to hear to be certain, the Ha family had immediately texted Ha Nuok Tuyet asking where Yep Shen currently was since yesterday Nuok Tuyet had said she was going to see Yep Shen. And Zhou Fu Luo sitting below looking at the photo also fell into thought. This Zhuang and Gao has gone mad. Just based on similar clothes and back, also killing indiscriminately, how many innocents would die tragically? But the worrying thing was, no matter how he looked at it, the back really resembled Yep Shen's. Zhou Fu Luo also concealed his mood, deciding that after returning he would call Yep Shen to warn him. 
At the same time, after the meeting concluded, Wang Kai Yuan had gathered everyone from the clan. This matter caused great chaos. If any family achieved merits in this, there would be endless benefits. Compared to Zhuang and Gao, Ma Dui Qi's influence was far too lacking. Our Wangs, if we accomplish something in this matter, the Tans would absolutely not dare touch us. This is a great opportunity. Everyone looked at the photo. Their first reactions were all very familiar. A petite girl's eyes lit up excitedly. Isn't this Yep Shen? He actually killed Zhuang Yuan Xian? Just then Wang Zheng loudly spoke up, family head, I recognize him. Isn't this the brat who was arrogant at our residence that day? Wang Kai Yuan came to realization. That's why it seemed so familiar. Although quite similar, it wasn't certain it was him. That brat could resist his aura. Having the strength to kill Zhuang Zhen Shan. Wang Zheng coldly laughed, family head. This person's silhouette is very similar to the photo. We can directly tell Zhuang and Gao, right? With his temperament, he would absolutely not let this brat live. Even if it's not him, he still can't escape death. Wang Kai Yuan shook his head, his gaze looking to Wang Zheng. Too impatient. We still need to be cautious about this. Bring Wang Deng to catch Wang Ji Xing and ask clearly. Finding out the details before apprehending him isn't too late. The scene changed to Wang Ji Xing's place. After obtaining Yep Shen's cultivation method and pills, Wang Ji Xing had continuously cultivated without leaving his home. At first he discovered this cultivation method was very complex. Completely different from the Wang families. It could be said to not resemble any other cultivation method. Along with the effects of the pills, his cultivation speed increased even more. Wang Ji Xing inwardly marveled. As expected of Tan Vin Kuei. After just cultivating a few days, my strength has increased threefold. After another month, not to mention surpassing Wang Zheng, even father will have to be more polite to me. Just as Wang Ji Xing was filled with wild ambitions, outside his residence suddenly exploded with true energy. Before Wang Ji Xing could react, his room's door had already been kicked open. Two people rushed in, it was precisely Wang Zheng and Wang Dang. Wang Ji Xing was filled with wild ambitions when suddenly a loud sound rang out. His room's door was smashed open. Wang Ji Xing was startled but after a few seconds calmed down again. Realizing the two people were precisely Wang Zheng and Wang Dang. Exchanging several moves with Wang Ji Xing, but being resolved by him, Wang Zheng mocked, so this is where that brat raises dogs. Today you're not by your master's side? Wang Ji Xing's eyes were full of cold aura as he cursed. I and the Wang family have no more relations. Why have you two recklessly broken into my home? What are your intentions? Wang Zheng jokingly said, of course I came to find you. But it seems after leaving the Wangs you've been diligently cultivating. Looks like you were up all night training. Before he finished speaking, Wang Zheng's eyes lit up excitedly upon seeing a pill Yep Shen had given Wang Ji Xing placed far away on the table. Yep Shen said to absolutely not reveal his secrets to others. Wang Zheng and Wang Deng couldn't conceal their greed as they looked at the pill, then interrogated Wang Ji Xing, these pills have a rich fragrance. There's even pill markings on them. Wang Ji Xing, where did you get this pill from? Wang Ji Xing's heart was filled with rage. This is none of your business. I won't ask why you came here but leave immediately. Wang Zheng and Wang Deng sneered at each other, taking turns speaking, Wang Ji Xing, don't forget our strengths far surpass yours in the Wang family. Yet you dare speak to us like this? Immediately tell the origin and hand over the pills, otherwise it's you seeking death. The two immediately pounced at Wang Ji Xing. Wang Ji Xing knew his strength was no match for the two. But he didn't think much, only able to rely on instinct to utilize the Tan Vin Kui to fight back. Spirit energy circulated on Wang Ji Xing's two hands, spinning to block the enemy's attacks. After a round of joint attack, Wang Zheng and Wang Dang were blocked by Wang Ji Xing. The two retreated to either side, surrounding Wang Ji Xing before attacking again. But Wang Ji Xing still had the power to defend. Although with difficulty, Wang Ji Xing felt he wasn't at too much disadvantage. On the contrary, he barely managed to push the two back several steps. Wang Zheng's face was full of anger as he inwardly assessed. He could twice block my attack. Just a few days without seeing him yet his strength has skyrocketed like this? There's also that pill, he must have encountered great fortune. Not only Wang Zheng was surprised, even Wang Jixing couldn't believe it. 
His face revealed joy. This Sir Yep's cultivation method is truly powerful. My strength can actually hold off Wang Zheng and Wang Dang. Wang Dang cautiously said, let's use that deceitful move. Wang Zheng's deep gaze signaled agreement with Wang Dang's suggestion. The next second, Wang Zheng used a startled expression, pointing behind Wang Ji Zing's back, shouting in fright, Yep Shen, why are you here? Caught off guard, Wang Ji Xing turned around following Wang Zheng's pointed direction. Right then, Wang Dang rushed over attacking Wang Ji Xing. Seeing nothing there, Wang Ji Xing knew he had been tricked. Turning back, Wang Dang had already arrived before him, laughing, ha ha, lying fool. Wang Ji Xing was inwardly furious. I was too careless, unable to evade. I have to regain my stance or these shameless people will beat me to death. Just as he was thinking this, Wang Dang's fist struck Wang Ji Xing's head making him spit out a mouthful of blood. With Wang Ji Xing at a disadvantage, the other two continued their fierce assault. In this situation, the injured Wang Ji Xing fell to the ground. Wang Zheng and Wang Dang had smug expressions. Although I don't know how you quickly increased your cultivation, facing our combined attack you'll never have a chance to stand up again. After beating him for a time, Wang Ji Xing was left without strength to resist, lying on the ground with Wang Zheng's foot violently stomping on him. Weren't you willing to be that brat's dog? I'll call him here to save you. Quickly tell me, where is that brat? Where did you get those pills from? Wang Ji Xing stared resentfully, saying, I won't tell you anything. Lying in a pool of blood, Wang Ji Xing struggled to say, Sir Yep cannot be insulted. If you offend him, the Wang family will surely be exterminated. Wang Zheng stepped on Wang Ji Xing, laughing, he'll destroy our Wangs. Let me tell you, it's uncertain if he himself can survive past tomorrow. But first, we'll destroy you. Then Wang Zheng and Wang Dang went to torment Wang Ji Xing once more. Knowing he had bought himself a ticket to the afterlife, as he was being beaten, Wang Ji Xing used his remaining strength to write the character Wang on the floor in blood. Yep Shen was on the phone with Lei Shui Wei. Lei Shui Wei said it was impossible to release Zhang Wei Shan in a short time. Yep Shen angrily said, even such a small matter Long Hun can't accomplish? Lei Shui Wei's voice carried some helplessness, Zhang Wei Shan isn't an ordinary criminal. How can he be easily released just like that? We've tried our best, it's unacceptable. With much difficulty I finally got a lead on my parents. If something happens to them how can that be? We have to hurry up progress. Lei Shui Wei spoke again, Sir Yep, we only have one method left. I'll send technicians to bring equipment to Zhang Wei Shan. We'll swiftly restore that mysterious man's appearance. After speaking, Lei Shui Wei hung up. Yep Shen held his phone, falling into thought. Finally there was some progress. Sun Yi Dan and Nuok Tuyit had gone to work at the company. Handing Tian Zheng Group to them, he didn't need to worry about development. His task was to quickly raise his cultivation. By the way, he wondered how Yep Lang Thien and Wang Ji Zing's cultivation was going. Calling to check on them wouldn't hurt. Yep Shen dialed Yep Lang Thien's number. How is your cultivation going? Getting Yep Shen's call, Yep Lang Thien was extremely excited saying, it's simply amazing. I never dared imagine there exists such a fantastic cultivation method in this world. Sir, I have something to report. Recently, there seemed to be Zhuang and Gao spies everywhere on Jiangnan province's streets. He slowly recounted what he knew of the situation, asking Yep Shen to be careful. Right after hanging up, Yep Shen called Wang Jixing but no one answered. Yep Shen felt something was off. Driving over to Wang Jixing's place, he saw the front door already broken. Inside Wang Jixing was lying in a pool of blood. On the ground was a single character, Wang, written in blood. Seeing this scene, rage surged within Yep Shen's heart. Yep Shen's face was indifferent saying, don't worry, someone informed me and I know what to do. At this time, at the Wang residence, all the pillar members were still gathered, waiting for news from Wang Zheng to initiate the plan to gain merit with Zhuang and Gao. By now, Wang Zheng and Wang Dang had brought the crippled Wang Jixing back. Lying on the ground, he ceaselessly spewed blood from his mouth, miserable to the extreme. Wang Kai Yuan looked to Wang Jixing with a complex gaze, sighing. Then he spoke with some anger, although he is a traitor to the Wangs, after all he is of the Wang family. I only asked you to bring him back. 
Must you be so excessive as to cripple him? Wang Zheng awkwardly laughed, family head, don't be angry. This Wang Ji Xing is now just a dog. What's the difference if a dog lives or dies? The key is this dog wouldn't cooperate, not saying that brat's location. As Wang Zheng spoke, he took out Wang Ji Xing's pill, continuing, he wouldn't even say where he got this from. Before Wang Zheng finished speaking, Wang Kai Yuan was so excited he swiftly left his chair rushing to Wang Zheng, greatly frightening him. Wang Kai Yuan's expression was extremely agitated. Grabbing Wang Zheng's hand, he asked where he got this pill from, then snatched it to observe up close. Wang Kai Yuan became even more excited. This pill is so fresh, it seems like it just came out of the furnace not even half a month ago. The markings are still intact. Disregarding everything, Wang Kai Yuan directly swallowed the pill down. After a second, a rich medicinal fragrance spread through Wang Kai Yuan's body along with vigorous spirit energy circulation. Wang Kai Yuan's entire person was immersed in an optimal state. Good, good, good. The effects of this pill are even more astounding than the rare pills passed down in the Wang family. Once the Wangs gain this medicine supply, we can definitely become Jiangnan's number one martial family. At that time, what would Zhuang and Gao and the Tans count for? Wang Kai Yuan's breathing also grew hurried. At this moment he no longer cared about Yep Shen. To him, this pill was most important. Wang Kai Yuan immediately grabbed Wang Zheng. Quick, where exactly did you get this pill from? Wang Kai Yuan's pupils fiercely stared at Wang Zheng. Frightened, Wang Zheng stammered pointing to the lying Wang Ji Xing, him. We took this pill from Wang Ji Xing's body. We didn't want to cripple him but he was too tight-lipped, refusing to speak no matter how we asked. Wang Kai Yuan deeply gazed at the lying Wang Ji Xing. You said this pill belonged to Wang Ji Xing? Behind him, Wang Zheng hurriedly affirmed, that's right. This pill came from Wang Ji Xing. The next second, Wang Kai Yuan immediately slapped Wang Zheng while putting on a worried appearance as he rushed to Wang Ji Xing's side. Brother Wang Ji Xing, my close friend. I only wanted to see you again yet those damn dogs actually beat you to this extent. Wang Kai Yuan cried while embracing Wang Ji Xing. Tell me the origin of this pill. I'll take you to the hospital now to find the best doctor. I guarantee your body will recover as before. In a weak voice, Wang Ji Xing said, Stop it, Kai Yuan. There are some things you shouldn't poke your nose into. Your vision is too narrow. Sooner or later the wangs will be destroyed by your hands. Wang Kai Yuan immediately stood up, eyes full of anger. My vision is narrow? Then people of broad vision like you, have you thought of the outcome of opposing me? Wang Kai Yuan summoned his aura to strike Wang Ji Xing. Right then, Wang Han Lan's voice rang out, Father, stop quickly. Seeing Wang Ji Xing covered in injuries, Wang Han Lan couldn't conceal her heartache. What is everyone doing? Uncle Wang is righteous and upright, innocent. Why treat him like this? Wang Kai Yuan glared at Wang Han Lan. I do this for the Wang family. Don't meddle in men's matters, do you want confinement? Wang Han Lan's expression changed, unable to say anything more. With her status, she could only let her father arrange things. Just as Wang Kai Yuan was about to continue interrogating Wang Ji Xing, Wang Zheng received a message on his phone. Holding up his phone excitedly, he loudly shouted, Family head, important news. Our people responsible for gathering intel have made progress. Wang Kai Yuan was also excited. Oh? Very good. After reading the message, he smiled sinisterly looking to Wang Ji Xing. Wang Ji Xing, did you really think without you we wouldn't know anything? Are you familiar with Ming Shui Biu? Hearing Ming Shui Biu, Wang Ji Xing's expression greatly changed as he weakly said, Don't, you'll bring destruction to the Wangs. These words Wang Kai Yuan completely disregarded. His eyes filled with excitement and wild ambition. Let's go, we'll pay a visit to that Sir Yep. Wang Kai Yuan decisively ordered, The master of Wang Ji Xing must know more than him. Wang Zheng and Wang Deng, immediately lead people to Ming Shui Biu to apprehend him and bring him back here. Wang Kai Yuan was full of smugness inwardly thinking. The reason Wang Ji Xing followed that dog was because he had pills in hand. Zhuang Yuan Xian must have died trying to rob his pills. I must capture him before Zhuang and Gao and force him to hand over all the pills he has. If we acquire that batch of pills, then our Wang family. Thinking to hear, Wang Kai Yuan couldn't restrain his excitement, laughing loudly. 
As long as we get those pills, what's there to worry about the Wangs not prospering? By then, whether the Zhuangs or Tans would have to submit before our Wangs. Just as he was complacent, someone was thrown in from outside. Wang Kai Yuan was startled to see the person battered inside was precisely Wang Dang. Wang Kai Yuan angrily shouted, Who is it? Who dares make trouble here? Yep Shen slowly walked in, one hand dragging the unconscious Wang Zheng. Yep Shen slowly said, Didn't you want to see me? Now I'm here. Shouldn't you bring out some tea and snacks? Wang Kai Yuan's gaze fiercely looked at Yep Shen. So he took the initiative to come here and even killed Wang Zheng and Wang Dang. This brat obtaining such strength, just what pills did he take? As family head, his strength far exceeded Wang Zheng's. Adding Yep Shen's young age, Wang Kai Yuan confidently said, Being able to kill those two, it seems I underestimated you before. Was it you who killed Zhuang and Gao's son, Zhuang Yuan Xian? Yep Shen lifted his head. What if it was me? Anyway you'll soon be going below to meet him. Won't it be clear if you directly ask him yourself? Wang Kai Yuan coldly laughed, since you admit it, nothing could be better. You have some ability to kill Zhuang Yuan Xian but don't forget, right now you're in my Wang family's territory. At this time, all the Wang family experts stood up, surrounding Yep Shen. This time it won't be easy for you to leave here alive. A group of top experts released their auras, forcing Yep Shen back step by step. But Yep Shen's expression was indifferent, provokingly saying, What? Just this bit of skill yet you still boast shamelessly? Yep Shen's provocative gaze looked down on them. It seems today there are many people here. Very good, this saves me the trouble of finding you one by one. As he finished speaking, Yep Shen's entire body erupted with aura as he moved in a flash, fists and kicks flying. Over ten Wang experts were brutally killed by Yep Shen without the slightest resistance. The remaining Wangs retreated in fear. Even Wang Kai Yuan was somewhat apprehensive, gnashing his teeth as he watched Yep Shen, thinking inwardly that something was off about this guy. After a display of power, Yep Shen glanced over the remaining Wangs before slowly sitting down and looking to the heavily injured Wang Ji Xing who had become crippled. Suppressing his rage, Yep Shen took out a pill placing it in Wang Ji Xing's mouth to help him endure. This scene caused the nearby Wang Kai Yuan to be startled. By now, Wang Kai Yuan had completely affirmed the secret behind Wang Ji Xing's pills was deeply linked to Yep Shen. The value of obtaining this pill supply had overridden his fear. Wang Kai Yuan loudly laughed, just as expected, you were the one who gave him pills in Wawa. Alchemists have practically gone extinct so you must have chanced upon a trove of pills somewhere. Quickly hand them all over to me. Yep Shen stood up, indifferently looking at Wang Kai Yuan. Pills? What use are pills to dead people? Wang Kai Yuan was shocked. I'm number 192 on Wawa's ancestor list. Arrogance will only make you die faster. I intended to give you to Zhuang and Gao but now I've changed my mind. I'll hand him your corpse. As he finished speaking, Wang Kai Yuan leapt up dozens of meters, bringing a surge of aura crashing down at Yep Shen. Yep Shen jumped away with a stomp. Wang Kai Yuan's fierce punch smashed the floor apart. Howling, Wang Kai Yuan pounced at Yep Shen, unleashing a barrage of lethal punches that didn't touch a single hair on Yep Shen. Yep Shen simply used extremely fast speed to dodge, even seeming to intentionally anger Wang Kai Yuan. Yep Shen could even see afterimages in the places he passed. Looking at Wang Kai Yuan, he coldly laughed, it seems you're quite skillful. Yep Shen continuously evaded, not letting Wang Kai Yuan touch him. His mocking words even angered Wang Kai Yuan to the extreme. Weren't you very arrogant earlier? Why not fight back? Yep Shen watched Wang Kai Yuan, thinking inwardly this guy's family boxing skills are quite interesting if examined closely. At this time, Wang Kai Yuan's speed rose. His fighting style was fierce and valiant. He shouted, Die! Charging straight at Yep Shen. This time, Yep Shen was a bit more serious, coldly laughing, turns out you're in a hurry to die. Then I'll fulfill your wish. Yep Shen concentrated his spirit energy into a fist, smashing out. The two fists collided, a surge of aura spreading in all directions. Wang Kai Yuan was sent flying by Yep Shen's punch, shocking everyone in the Wang family. Who could have thought a youngster could defeat the Wang family head? Looking at the fallen Wang Kai Yuan, Yep Shen ridiculed, just this? I thought I could play a bit more. 
Wang Kai Yuan kneeled on the ground. The force from the clash just now had already injured him. The fervor in his eyes gradually disappeared, replaced by seriousness. Just how many pills did this brat take to obtain such strength? Hateful, I was too careless. Wang Kai Yuan angrily said, if I had a blade I would kill you this instant. The other Wangs echoed, family head's strongest skill is blades. This brat is exploiting your weakness. With a blade you can instantly kill him. These nonsense words angered Yep Shen. Wang Kai Yuan, quickly find a blade. A machine gun or bazooka will also do. Wang Kai Yuan immediately took out a longsword, his aura surging murderously as he said confidently, my swordsmanship is unmatched south of the Yangtze River. To die under my hand is your honor. The now slightly lucid Wang Ji Xing looked to Yep Shen's back, saying, Sir Yep, beware, his blade work can kill. Yep Shen didn't turn back but calmly said, Is that so? Then I'll experience this peerless sword skill of yours. Yep Shen told Wang Ji Xing, Rest well. Leave everything to me. Staring at Wang Kai Yuan, he said, Come, I want to see just how capable you are. Wang Kai Yuan shouted, I'll let you taste my strongest move. Then he cleaved at Yep Shen with his blade. Only when the blade was about to touch his shoulder did Yep Shen slide aside to dodge. The blade's momentum heavily chopped the floor. By now, Yep Shen had already moved behind Wang Kai Yuan. Yep Shen's deadly gaze coldly said, I'm bored of playing. Now you go die. Yep Shen's aura filled palm shot at Wang Kai Yuan's body. In this situation, Wang Kai Yuan was unable to evade and could only await death. But suddenly, a hand appeared grabbing Yep Shen's arm along with a voice saying, Stop. Yep Shen's eyes contracted. He didn't expect there to be someone in the Wangs able to grab his hand. Moreover, this person's strength exceeded Wang Kai Yuan's. Looking closely, it was an old man with surging killing intent in his eyes. The old man said, Young man, you should know some restraint. Wang Kai Yuan was shocked to see the old man. Father, weren't you in closed door cultivation? How could I handle him myself? The old man waved his sleeve with a cold humph. If I didn't appear, you would have become a spirit under his hand. His words caused Wang Kai Yuan as well as the other Wangs to feel some fear. Father, what are you saying? I'm the Wang family head, yet I'm not this brat's match? Disregarding his son, the old man coldly looked to Yep Shen. Boy, I acknowledge your strength is powerful. I quite like you but making trouble at my Wangs like this isn't good. Today you must give me an explanation. Yep Shen closely observed the old man, discovering his body was shrouded in black energy. Curious, Yep Shen asked, what kind of explanation do you want? I'll give you a chance. Kneel before these dead people, kowtow three times, then cripple your own cultivation. My Wang family will be willing to spare you. The old man's words were extremely cold and arrogant. Yep Shen suddenly understood. This old thing must be the evil ancestor Zhang Zi mentioned. Yep Shen silently took out his execution dragon sword. Seeing the sword, the old man was still arrogant. Oh? An ancient blade. Don't tell me you plan to trade your life for a broken sword? Or will you use it to cripple yourself? Yep Shen's words were icy cold. You're thinking too much. Today I will use my execution dragon sword to take the Wang family's blood sacrifice. As he finished speaking, Yep Shen had already cleaved out his speed so fast that the old man couldn't react. Wang Kai Yuan watched this scene, his entire body trembling. In Jiangnan, his grandfather could also be considered a legend in the martial world, yet he died under a youth like this. Yep Shen looked at the surging spirit energy from the execution dragon sword, marveling. This execution dragon sword is quite easy to use it seems. The old man's skull rolled on the ground. His body heavily collapsed. At this moment, the Wang family experts were rooted in place, their breathing seemingly stopped. They stared fixedly at the old man's body. Wang Kai Yuan instinctively retreated several steps, weakly calling out, Father, while looking to Yep Shen. The young man before him was like clouds enveloping all things. Their Wang family simply wasn't on the same level. He now felt endless regret for offending this youth. Wang Kai Yuan completely understood why Wang Ji Xing was willing to betray the Wangs, even killing a Tan family expert. It was because of the young man behind him. The Wang experts began to react in terror, saying to each other, We're finished. Old ancestor Wang is dead. He was the Wang family's most horrifying existence. 
an almost mythic figure in Jiangnan province, yet he died under a young man's hand. Are we dreaming? Yep Shen withdrew his execution dragon sword as an overbearing aura enveloped the entire Wang residence. His gaze looked to everyone, saying, all of you from the Wang family, kneel before me. Yep Shen's voice was like thunder assaulting their minds. Wang Han Lan's beautiful eyes displayed horror. Her legs went soft, drenched in cold sweat. This was the fear of facing death. Everyone vigilantly watched Yep Shen. After a second, without any discussion, all the Wang family experts uniformly kneeled down before Yep Shen. Facing such an overbearing powerhouse, what choice did they have? With what could they resist? Wang Han Lan's legs trembled as she turned pale, also kneeling down. In an instant, the main hall was left with only Wang Kai Yuan still standing. As current family head, Wang Kai Yuan represented the Wang family's dignity. If he kneeled, it meant the Wangs had submitted. At this moment, Wang Kai Yuan inwardly blamed himself for not listening to Wang Ji Xing, for not having him explain. If they had this relationship, the Wangs could have soared. Even father wasn't a match, what chance did he have? Just as Wang Kai Yuan was lost, Yep Shen's words sounded, again I tell you to kneel. Dare you not kneel? Along with his words came an overwhelming pressure enveloping Wang Kai Yuan. Unable to resist, his knees smashed into the ground as he kneeled. With Wang Kai Yuan kneeled, the experts behind continuously kowtowed, pleading, Sir Yep, we know our wrongs. Please spare us. We will agree to anything you want, just give us a path to live. At this moment they didn't care about dignity, only wanting a chance at life. Yep Shen slowly approached Wang Kai Yuan. You're not begging me? I gave your Wang family a chance but you didn't treasure it. You shouldn't have touched Wang Ji Xing, moreover shouldn't have provoked me. Wang Kai Yuan lifted his head, cold light flashing in his eyes as he looked at Yep Shen. Even if I begged, would you forgive me? No matter how you kill me, you've offended Zhuang and Gao. You won't escape death either. Although on Wawa's ancestor list he ranks number 189, that's outdated data from years ago. I know two years ago he obtained great fortune, his strength sharply rising. It's not something you can contend against. No matter how strong you are, offending Zhuang and Gao means you won't live past three days. Yep Shen reached out, directly grabbing Wang Kai Yuan's neck, forcefully squeezing. Wang Kai Yuan's inner spirit energy immediately erupted. Seeing this, Wang Han Lan hurriedly kneeled closer, pleading, Sir Yep, please calm your anger. My Wang family is willing to serve you. We absolutely won't leak anything about you. The other Wang experts also hurriedly echoed her words, kowtowing. Yep Shen coldly said, serve me? Why should I need you to serve me? His hand tightened even more. Wang Han Lan fearfully rushed forward, once again kneeling before Yep Shen. Sir Yep, I beg you spare my father's life. I'm willing to be your ox, your horse. With her beautiful appearance and angelic face, she pleaded, that's right Sir Yep, please agree to spare my father. I'm willing to serve you for life. Yep Shen indifferently glanced at Wang Han Lan. Are you qualified to beg forgiveness for him? Wang Kai Yuan is absolutely unforgivable. Then Wang Kai Yuan's neck was directly twisted broken. His life force completely dissipated as he died. This was Yep Shen's principle. No matter who it was, they could not plead for Wang Kai Yuan. Wang Han Lan was extremely heartbroken seeing her father die but she also clearly understood everything was brought upon by him. She only held a sliver of hope to save her father but evidently Yep Shen wasn't someone she could voice opinions to. Yep Shen glanced over the Wang people then reached out to grab Wang Han Lan, coldly saying, indeed I don't like killing women but that doesn't mean I will let enemies grow strong. You should also go down there and reunite with him. Hearing this, Wang Ji Xing immediately spoke up, Sir Yep, the young miss and the other Wangs aren't the same. When I met Miss Fortune, she spoke up to defend me. Moreover, she also voiced opposition against dealing with Sir Yep. This subordinate implores Sir Yep to spare the young miss. Give me one reason why I shouldn't kill you. Wang Han Lan then said, First, my strength is insufficient to kill you. This matter cannot be dragged on. Second, the Wangs are my sole reliance. Without them I have nothing. Third, Although the Wangs aren't Jiangnan's strongest martial family, I know in the capital, the Wangs have a powerful branch. If I live, I guarantee you will not face threat from the Wangs or capital people. Yep Shen's eyes narrowed as he condensed a technique in his hand. If you're willing to become my servant, I can spare your life. 
Wang Han Lan looked to Yep Shen, slowly kneeling down. I, Wang Han Lan, am willing to serve Sir Yep for life, carrying out your orders. Seeing her pledge allegiance, Yep Shen nodded with satisfaction. Since she took initiative to pledge, there was use in keeping her. Wang Han Lan hurriedly said, I agree. The next second, Yep Shen imprinted this technique onto Wang Han Lan's sea of consciousness. At this moment, she felt the power of this technique. With a single thought from Yep Shen, she would immediately die. Yep Shen paid her no more heed and went to Wang Ji Xing. Seeing his broken limbs and bruised face, he sighed, Are you okay? Tears filled Wang Ji Xing's face as he miserably said, Thank you Sir Yep for avenging me but with my current condition, I've become useless. I cannot exert effort for you. Please allow me to end myself. Yep Shen slowly said, With me here, you cannot become crippled. Then he took out a paper and wrote a prescription, calling Wang Han Lan over to instruct her, bring this prescription to the best medicine shop in Jiangnan province. Fetch medicine for Wang Ji Xing, having him take it three times a day. Since he cannot move, he can only stay here. You will be in charge the next few days. Wang Han Lan was somewhat doubtful, hesitating a few seconds before saying, Sir Yep, is it really not necessary to send senior brother to the hospital? Our Wangs happened to know an expert doctor. Before she finished speaking, Yep Shen said, Before me, no one is qualified to be called expert doctor. Yep Shen looked to Wang Ji Xing again. I guarantee in three days you will recover as normal. Hearing this, Wang Ji Xing was overjoyed with non-stop tears. Just as Yep Shen left the villa, he discovered a black car parked not far away. As Yep Shen approached, the window rolled down as Ying Tong's voice called out, Sir Yep, get in the car. There has been some progress in the matter. Yep Shen nodded, guessing there were results regarding Zhang Wei Shan. He opened the door and got in. Inside wasn't just Ying Tong but also Lei Shui Wei. The car was also equipped with a set of advanced computers. Sitting down, Yep Shen asked, Did Zhang Wei Shan describe that mysterious man? Lei Shui Wei nodded, handing over a photo. This man has a 90% similarity with the mystery man who appeared at Yunhu Mountain Manor. This means Zhang Wei Shan provided factual intel. I've already sent people to investigate near Yunhu Mountain Manor. We will soon have news. Yep Shen took the photo, glancing over it. He felt something was off. He discovered this man bore some resemblance to his father, only their temperament was completely different. Of course Lei Shui Wei noticed Yep Shen's reaction and explained, Our experts at Long Hun Academy analyzed this man. He certainly has blood ties. Through comparison with Long Hun's database, we found some information on him. Yep Shen was stunned. Then his eyes displayed great seriousness. What's his name? Where is he now? I need to see him immediately. Lei Shui Wei shook his head. His face showed frustration. Long Hun used all resources but could only investigate his name as Zhang Jian Feng. The rest is blank. It seems this person's information is fully protected. Yep Shen murmured, Zhang Jian Feng. His mother is named Zhang Rong. They both have the Zhang surname. It seems there really is a relation. He reminisced a bit. In his impression, his mother was gentle and generous with a perfect personality. She and father loved each other deeply. But since young, Yep Shen never heard mention of paternal grandparents or any other paternal relatives. Even when asking, his mother would say she was born in the mountains and it wasn't convenient to return home. If he tried to probe further, she would always change topics. But not infrequently, Yep Shen saw his mother blankly gazing north with a pained, unbearable expression. Yep Shen realized the Yunhu Mountain Manor incident was shrouded in dense fog. Why did that long in the capital destroy the deeps? Who was this Zhang Jian Feng? Why was his mother's corpse taken by others? Where was his mother gazing? He needed answers to all these questions. At this moment, killing intent erupted from Yep Shen's body. The atmosphere in the car immediately changed. Even Lei Shui Wei and Ying Tong were suppressed by this aura. Unable to endure, Ying Tong spoke up, Sir Yep, please calm down. Your aura is too great. Chief and I cannot bear it. Yep Shen calmed himself, withdrawing his aura. Sorry, thinking of this matter just now, I was somewhat impulsive. Yep Shen looked to Lei Shui Wei asking, You said Zhang Jian Feng's information is protected. What specifically is the situation? Lei Shui Wei explained, Sir Yep also knows in Wawa, information is fully protected only under two circumstances. 
First, the person has an extremely special status to Wawa, like Sir Yep whose information is also completely protected. Second, the person comes from a special martial family in Wawa. Yep Shen nodded, thinking to himself this person falls under the second condition. But Yep Shen had a doubt, if that Zhang Jian Feng came from a martial family, why did his mother not have even basic martial arts? Also, his mother's background family seemed not weak either. While Yep Shen was pondering, Lei Shui Wei hesitantly continued. Actually there's one more bit of info that's probably just coincidence but I think Sir Yep should know. The number 9 ranked person on Wawa's ancestor list is also named Zhang Jian Feng. Hearing this, it was like a sledgehammer struck Yep Shen's heart. Rank number 9 on Wawa's ancestor list, what concept was this? They were simply the peak experts of Wawa. Evaluating the experts Yep Shen killed recently, his strength could rank around the top 200. But the maximum strength Yep Shen could erupt with could only be around number 150. Even so, it was in a different world compared to number 9. If he faced that person now, Yep Shen would undoubtedly die. Luckily he currently had the Tomb of Reincarnation. He could now summon the second tombstone anytime and the third also had a faint response. Yep Shen told himself he must keep calm. Much more confident, he looked to Lei Shui Wei saying, If you uncover more intel on Zhang Jian Feng, inform me as soon as possible. Of course, Sir Yep. At this time, Ying Tong also spoke up, By the way Sir Yep, do you still remember the people you killed in Zhang City? Yep Shen nodded. They planned to come to Wawa to find me? Ying Tong continued, Recently there's news from the other side that the Five Imperials Union may deal with Wawa. I suspect these people will bring disadvantage to Sir Yep. Yep Shen coldly laughed, If they dare come make trouble, I'll kill them all. His aura erupted, shocking Ying Tong and Lei Shui Wei. Yep Shen glanced out the window. They had arrived at Tian Zheng Group headquarters. This matter could be slowly investigated. What was urgent was improving his strength. At the same time, at the Jiangnan Province Martial Arts Association headquarters, Zhuang and Gao angrily shouted, Are you cripples? Turning Jiangnan Province upside down yet only finding a few brats with similar appearance? I want the real culprit, not a bunch of useless people. I give you three days. If you still can't find him, get lost from the Jiangnan Martial Arts Association. Hearing this, everyone present sucked in cold air. A vice chairman said, Chairman Zhuang, don't be so angry. In a few days is your 60th birthday celebration. We will certainly give you an explanation. This only made Zhuang and Gao even more furious. Don't mention any 60th birthday before me. I don't even have a son anymore so what 60th birthday? We haven't even found his head yet, so cancel this year's celebration. Just as he finished speaking, an old man stood up and hurriedly said, Chairman Zhuang cannot do this. Have you not noticed the unfavorable events lately? Our martial arts association is in turmoil. First Inspector Kai Fu Chun died, then two vice chairmen went missing, now there's this. I think the matter is not simple. Zhuang and Gao seemed to calm down a bit, looking to the old man. What are you trying to say? Get to the point. The old man seriously said, Subordinate believes this is your unlucky age. Everything is destined to be unfavorable. The only way to break this evil trend is by holding celebrations. Right now is your 60th birthday. My humble opinion is you should hold it. Hearing this, Zhuang and Gao nodded, seeming to agree. It does seem so. My fate needs change. If it continues like this I probably can't endure. Then do as you say but on a smaller scale. Yuan Xian's matter, I shouldn't have done that but without breaking this evil trend it will be very troublesome. Just then, an association staff member hurriedly entered, carrying a box. He went before Zhuang and Gao saying, Just now a man brought this box, saying you must receive it. He also said it's an early birthday present. Zhuang and Gao glanced at the box. Put it aside for now, don't you see I'm busy? But the staff insisted, Chairman, that person repeatedly emphasized you must open this box yourself and not let others move it. Zhuang and Gao was quite displeased but still took the box, opening it himself. Immediately, his complexion greatly changed. Inside the box was actually Zhuang Yuan Xian's severed head. Who would dare do something so brazen? Not only daring to send this to Chairman Zhuang, but even using Yuan Xian's head as a 60th birthday gift. This was no gift but naked provocation. At this time, Zhuang and Gao's blood surged. He spat out a mouthful of fresh blood right there. 
Zhuang and Gao thought, although his strength wasn't invincible, he was still chairman of Jiangnan Province's Martial Arts Association. Never had anyone dared provoke him like this from past till now. Zhuang and Gao suppressed his rage, slamming a hand on the table. Looking to the subordinate he asked, tell me, who brought this thing here? Where is he now? The frightened subordinate couldn't speak, only pointing outside while stammering, he, he wore sunglasses, went west from the gate. Hearing this, Zhuang and Gao roared, erupting with power as he charged outside, carrying boundless anger. Half an hour later, Zhuang and Gao returned, his expression gloomy. His eyes were full of bloody light, extremely frightening. Everyone still waited there, not daring to breathe loudly. They thought seeing the chairman's reaction, it seems the culprit wasn't found. Things were more troublesome now. Zhuang and Gao deeply breathed in, looking to everyone. It seems that brat wants to declare war on me. Very good, very good. I'll see who can laugh last. Just then, the phone on the table rang. This phone only rang for major events in Jiangnan province. With the many incidents in Jiangnan lately, no one dared imagine what big event happened now. No one dared answer the call. Carelessness could anger Zhuang and Gao, leading to death. Seeing everyone too afraid to act, Zhuang and Gao angrily shouted, still not answering the call. Do you want me to directly go over there? An expert immediately stood up taking the call but his expression swiftly changed. In a trembling voice he asked to confirm, what? What did you just say? The Wangs of Jiangnan province were exterminated? After a second silence, the room became chaotic. Heavens! The Wangs were exterminated? The Wangs were a top martial family in Jiangnan. Although they declined some, with Wang Kai Yuan and old ancestor Wang there, who would dare exterminate them? If not for Chairman Zhuang's matter just now, no one might believe this. Zhuang and Gao's gaze swept over everyone as he said, If I guess right, the one who exterminated the Wangs is the same person who killed my son. This person looks down on Jiangnan province's rules, seeming to provoke the entire martial world here. Starting now, all families and powers in Jiangnan activate emergency defenses. Search the city for that person's background. Also, we currently don't know that brat's name. For now, we'll call him Hunter. From today, Jiangnan's martial world and Hunter are enemies. Let's see who hunts and kills who in the end. A few hours later at Ming Shui Biu, an unfamiliar guest had arrived. It was Ma Wei Qi sitting on the sofa. The corner of Yep Shen's mouth raised a faint smile. Has Zhuang and Gao received the gift? Ma Wei Qi cautiously nodded. He received it. Even spat out a mouthful of blood on the spot. This was my first time seeing him like that. But Sir Yep, you need to prepare because he couldn't find you and has labeled you as, Hunter. He even declared Hunter and Jiangnan's martial world as enemies. Things are escalating, Sir Yep. Do you want to restrain yourself? Yep Shen laughed. Hunter? How interesting. Will he still hold his birthday banquet? Ma Wei Qi nodded. He insists on holding it, quite confident it will change his fate. By doing this, Sir Yep truly plans to make a move that day? Nothing will happen right? After all, Zhuang and Gao is still. Before he finished speaking, Yep Shen's aura erupted. Ma Wei Qi didn't dare continue, lowering his head. He knew he shouldn't question Yep Shen's decisions. Yep Shen indifferently said, there are some people who must die. At this time, Luo Hanshuang arrived uninvited at the villa. Yep Shen coldly said, didn't I tell you that you're not allowed to enter this villa? Luo Hanshuang looked at Yep Shen for a few seconds before saying, I came here just to let you know Blood Plum Palace won't make a move against you in the short term. Consider it me suppressing the news but this matter cannot be hidden if passed to Blood Plum Palace headquarters in the capital. Yep Shen was stunned, thinking inwardly. Could it be true she concealed this? If so, it seems she has very high status in Blood Plum Palace. Seeing Yep Shen not responding, Luo Hanshuang's gaze turned to his sword. Are you planning to reforge this blade? Yep Shen looked at the sword in hand. I named it Execution Dragon Sword. What do you think? I want to know where you obtained this sword from. Luo Hanshuang didn't answer but made a condition instead. I can tell you where I got it but first you must tell me one thing. Are the Wang family's extermination and Zhuang Yuan Xian's death related to you? Yep Shen answered somewhat mockingly. I think this matter is better kept a mystery. Sometimes not knowing is happier. Since you're not telling me the sword's origins, I won't tell you anything either. At this time, Luo Hanshuang said, although I don't know much about this sword, its name was just something I randomly came up with. 
After all it was an unexpected gain. I obtained it from someone I killed. That person kept this sword well when alive so I also felt it had cultural value and kept it by my side. Over the years I've been investigating this sword's origins and finally made some headway. Seeing Yep Shen listening intently, Luo Hanshuang slowly continued, unexpectedly. This sword was forged 200 years ago by a genius named Chu Hong Hai. He spent a full three years forging it, pouring his heart and soul into this sword. But when it was completed, he was somehow poisoned, not surviving. Afterwards, the sword disappeared with no one knowing where it went. By the time I discovered it, the sword was already broken. I've thought of finding someone to reforge it but the materials needed are really too much. Even in Wawa now, finding a swordsmith of Chu Hong Hai's level is difficult. But luckily Chu Hong Hai has descendants that may be able to accomplish it. Yep Shen excitedly asked, where are Chu Hong Hai's descendants now? Luo Hanshuang's beautiful eyes indifferently said, the Chu family of Jiangnan province. Hearing this, Yep Shen immediately realized. Chu Rende and Chu Zi Zan in Jiang City. They seem to be a branch of the Chu family in Jiangnan. He could ask them about this matter. But Yep Shen was somewhat puzzled. The Chu family in Jiang City was a medicine corporation. Why were they involved in sword forging as well? Seeing Yep Shen's change in expression, Luo Hanshuang spoke up, it seems you know something. The Chu family outwardly appears as just a medicine corporation but it's actually not that simple. Luo Hanshuang said, doing medicine business is just the Chu family's way of concealing things from others' eyes. The Chu family of Jiangnan may outwardly seem harmless but in reality, even top martial families don't dare provoke them. Their ancestors have forged countless weapons for experts. Relying on those connections, no one dares touch them. Gosh, so tiring. That's right. Luo Hanshuang quickly left. Not long after, Sun Yidan and Ruo Shui pushed the door open, immediately greeting, we're back. Ruo Shui looked to Yep Shen saying, just now outside, I seem to hear a girl's voice yet I don't see anyone. Little brat, you couldn't have secretly brought another girl home right? Yep Shen looked to the two females, lying, with two such beauties at home already, why would I need anyone else? Ruo Shui humphed, who knows if you're looking at the mountain in front yet thinking of the mountain behind. Sun Yidan's face was bright red, the word, jealousy, clearly displayed. A mouth so sweet must have ulterior motives. Let's check the bedroom. Yep Shen laughed loudly. Haha ha, remember to check the second floor balcony too. Maybe a beauty jumped down from above. On the balcony, Luo Hanshuang sneezed. How annoying, who's slandering me from behind? She leapt down, leaving Yep Shen's villa. Not long after, Yep Shen was sitting before Chu Renda and Chu Zizan. Yep Shen spoke up, I just called to ask you to something. Didn't expect you'd be in Jiangnan province. Chu Renda hurriedly said, it just so happens the Chu family is having a clan meeting these days so I'm here. What's the sudden matter? Yep Shen immediately took out the execution dragon sword, explaining the whole story to Chu Renda. Chu Renda said, so that's how it is. In other words, Sir Yep wants materials to reforge this sword? That's right, but not just want, I need them. Yep Shen clearly understood whether now or later, the execution dragon sword would definitely be greatly beneficial. It must be reforged no matter what. Chu Renda thought for a bit before saying, Sir Yep, this sword was indeed forged by my Chu family's ancestor, Chu Hong Hai. I also know he put painstaking effort into it, not leaving behind the forging method. Even in our Chu family, no one can accomplish what he did. Let me think of a way. Chu Renda said, Sir Yep. The materials are certainly extremely precious, moreover they must be overseen by the Chu clan head. Although he's clan head, his temper is quite fiery and irritable. Wanting to obtain anything from him is simply impossible. Chu Zizan also chimed in, that's right, everyone in the clan is very selfish. They definitely won't give precious things to outsiders. But sir yep, if you need it so much, this old man will try his best to think of a way to put in a good word for you. It's just my position in the Chu clan isn't high so it may not succeed. When the time comes, success or not will depend on you. Yep Shen nodded. Then I'll have to trouble Elder Chu. I can also use pills or other valuable things to exchange. Large clans care about benefits. As long as it's suitable, they can't refuse. Chu Renda hesitated a bit before suggesting, Sir Yep, I'll bring you to the Chu clan for a trip and do my best to help introduce you. 
It's just my standing there isn't high so it may not succeed. When the time comes, it'll depend on you. Yep Shen nodded. Half an hour later, Chu Renda brought Yep Shen to the Chu clan residence in Jiangnan province. The place was extremely massive. Just approaching, two experts called out, halt and declare your identity. Chu Renda went forth, saying to the two, seniors, I am Chu Renda of the Chu clan's Zhang city branch. I have an important matter to report to the clan head. Please notify him. The two indifferently looked over Chu Renda, coldly saying, to meet the clan head requires at least a prominent figure's recommendation. Do you have such qualifications? Go back where you came from. Chu Renda was extremely awkward. On one hand, he didn't want to offend Yep Shen. On the other, he feared Yep Shen's anger leading to extermination of the Chu clan. Chu Renda looked to Yep Shen somewhat worriedly, Sir Yep, it seems we can't meet him today. Why don't we return first? Next time there's a chance to meet the clan head, I will report this matter. Yep Shen nodded. Since this was Chu Renda's background clan, he didn't want to make trouble. Just as Yep Shen prepared to leave, a girl came out saying, what's with the commotion? Don't you know father has important matters inside? The girl looked around 20 years old with an elegant bearing and extraordinary temperament. Chu Zizan softly said to Yep Shen, you must have heard of Jiangnan's three great beauties right? Miss Ruo Shui is one of them. This young lady before you, Chu Nuo, is also one. She's just a year or two older than Miss Ruo Shui. The two experts immediately regained a tame demeanor upon seeing Chu Nuo, saying, Sorry young miss, we'll be sure to pay attention in the future. Chu Zizan continued, This Chu Nuo has very high standing within the clan. If she agrees to negotiate, your matter has a chance of success. But her temperament is fiery and eccentric, not easy to get along with. Just then, Chu Nuo also gracefully approached Yep Shen, calling out from afar, Yep Shen, I knew you'd come to Jiangnan sooner or later. At this moment, Yep Shen was somewhat confused. Something felt off. How did this person know his name? Drawing nearer, Chu Nuo extended a hand, saying, I've heard of you for a long time. I'm close friends with yours. Of course I'd know you're the chief drill instructor of Long Hun, the youngest major general in Wawa. My ears can even hear ants crawling. Naturally I'd pay attention to you. After introducing herself, Chu Nuo invited Yep Shen for coffee, even saying she's never asked a male out for coffee before. If Yep Shen rejected, it wouldn't be good. The scene changed to a cafe. Looking at Chu Nuo, Yep Shen indifferently asked, Miss Chu, to be honest I don't understand. What value do I have for the young miss of the Chu clan to take such interest? Chu Nuo smiled gently, speaking sincerely, if it was just your martial status, even the top person in Zhang City wouldn't be worth it. But you've received special attention from Long Hun's leaders. That makes it different. Yep Shen's eyes faintly moved, showing curiosity. Oh? In that case, can you tell me who it is? Chu Nuo smiled captivatingly again. Heaven's secrets cannot be revealed. For now, let's talk about your reason for coming to my Chu clan. Surely it wasn't just to find me right? Yep Shen's eyes flickered. He felt Chu Nuo was somewhat interesting. Since you're so direct, I'll also speak directly. I came to find materials to reforge a sword. If you can provide aid, we can discuss proper compensation. Chu Nuo nodded. I knew it must be some big matter for you to come here. To tell you the truth, I'm precisely in charge of the Chu clan's underground forces. Yep Shen was quite surprised. This woman didn't seem simple. Chu Nuo nodded. I see, you want to reforge it. That should be easy. Out of regard for your friend, I'll do my best to help you. But the Chu clan has forged countless swords. I don't know which one you want to repair. Yep Shen placed a hand on the table. Spirit energy circulated as the execution dragon sword suddenly appeared. Seeing the sword, Chu Nuo couldn't help crying out, sky-breaking sword. How is it in your hands? The beauty couldn't control herself, wanting to snatch it but was stopped by Yep Shen's gaze. Yep Shen coldly said, I have a habit, only one kind of person can touch my sword, and that's dead people. It seems this sword is very important to your Chu clan. Before dying, your grandfather left the phrase, sky-breaking asks the world, false must return. For 100 years, your Chu clan has searched for it yet now it appears before you today, moreover already broken. Chu Nuo struggled to calm herself, then seriously said, Yep Shen, can you sell this sword back to the Chu clan? We're willing to pay any price. Still feeling inadequate, Chu Nuo continued, 
let me make an offer 20 billion. Aside from money, you can add other conditions. Our Chu clan will even owe you a favor. Yep Shen's gaze was icy. I'm not lacking money. Favors from your Chu clan are worthless to me. I only want the materials. Hearing this, despair flashed in Chu Nuo's eyes. Though furious inside, she forced herself to stay calm. Sorry for getting emotional today but my offer was completely serious. You have 10 days to consider it. As for providing the sword's materials, I must tell you it's absolutely impossible. To our Chu clan, this is a matter of faith. Yep Shen stood up, glancing at Chu Nuo. Then it seems there's nothing more to discuss. Since it's so, I'll take my leave. Chu Nuo angrily watched Yep Shen's departure, thinking to herself that she took initiative inviting him for coffee, wanting to build rapport and understand him better. But now with this sword's appearance, it seems they've become enemies. She must make her clan head take action. This person cannot leave Jiangnan alive. At the moment Yep Shen left, on the rooftop of the building across the street was a sniper aiming at the two. With a bang, the glass window instantly shattered as a super high-speed bullet shot towards Chu Nuo. This all occurred in a flash. Chu Nuo couldn't evade but in that instant, Yep Shen appeared in between, using the Fire Cloud Demon Sex Peerless technique to catch the bullet barehanded. When Chu Nuo regained her composure, she saw Yep Shen pinching the bullet. She understood without him, she would have perished without doubt. Gasping, Chu Nuo expressed her thanks. Inwardly she thought, using one's hand to catch a sniper bullet, what concept was this? Top experts could accomplish it but definitely not as effortlessly as Yep Shen. Ending her thoughts, Chu Nuo immediately made a call. I was just assassinated at the cafe three kilometers south of the clan headquarters. Bring that assassin before me within 10 minutes. Hanging up, she looked to Yep Shen gratefully. Thank you. I owe you a favor. Without you, I would have. Before she finished speaking, Yep Shen had already left, leaving behind, your favors mean nothing before me. Hearing this, Chu Nuo was furious yet also fearful. Many prestigious families wanted her favor yet this brat didn't care one bit. Ten minutes later at the Chu clan headquarters, Chu Nuo was hurrying to a room, the Chu clan's prison. Of course she was going to where the assassin was held. At this moment, Chu Nuo was like a different person, emitting cold intent. She looked down at the man, asking, why try to kill me? Who sent you? The upside down man struggled, speaking words she didn't understand. Chu Nuo coldly said, it seems to be the Dong clan, using such methods to punish our contract violation. Can't sit still huh? Picking up a dagger, Chu Nuo said, too bad. The blade slid across, beheading the assassin. Chu Nuo narrowed her eyes, a cruel smile on her face. Dong clan, looks like more of your people will have to die. Chu Nuo ordered her subordinates, dispatch our clan's top experts tonight to the Dong clan. Kill them all, no need to keep any alive. Back to Yep Shen walking down the street. He thought to himself that the moment he left the cafe, he sensed an extremely powerful aura rushing at him. It must have come from Chu Nuo. The Chu clan's strength was indeed abnormal. Outwardly they just dealt in medicine yet could have such background. It seems Jiangnan's waters ran deep. The Wang clan was merely the surface of the iceberg. Just then, Yep Shen's phone rang. It was Sun Yidan calling. Yep Shen picked up, asking if something happened. Sun Yidan's worried voice came from the other end, Yep Shen, where are you now? Can you come to the 15th floor of Huayuan building? Something happened with Tian Zheng group. Hearing Sun Yidan say there was trouble, Yep Shen's expression darkened somewhat as he asked, isn't Ruo Shui with you? She's quite adept at business matters, you should call her instead. Sun Yidan explained, Ruo Shui already went with mother to pick up grandmother from the hospital. She won't be back for a week. And director Tham just flew out on business. He's on the plane so I can't reach him either. Her words sounded somewhat urgent. Don't ask anymore, hurry here. Yep Shen quickly replied, all right, wait there. I'll arrive shortly. At Sun Yidan's location was a very cocky looking youth sitting there. Behind him were two stern men. Though they didn't act, Sun Yidan felt their intentions weren't good. The youth kept demanding to see the person in charge to talk. Sun Yidan's face held some worry. He's coming. What's the matter? You can tell me first. The youth nodded arrogantly. Do you know what your Tian Zheng group lacks most? Sun Yidan was also curious. What are we lacking most? The youth pointed at Sun Yidan. What you lack most is safety. If you want to survive in Jiangnan, you must have backing. 
I'm Lei J. I'm your umbrella. Hearing this, Sun Yidan laughed instead of getting angry. I've never heard Tian Zheng lacks an umbrella. Lei J stared fiercely. Girl, looks like you don't know the immensity of heaven and earth. Let me tell you, in Jiangnan, anyone who dares provoke my Lei clan will die miserably. Sun Yidan clapped slowly. Good threat. Unfortunately it's useless against me. Lei J smashed the table. What an arrogant girl. Brothers, teach her a lesson. Don't hit her face. I still want to play with her later. The two men walked over but before they could act, a voice sounded. Play? I'm afraid you won't have that chance. Lei Jie's eyes displayed fear looking at Yep Shen. Yep Shen said, weren't you looking for me? It seems I must pluck out your hair today for daring to think of cuckolding me. He hurried to Sun Yidan, asking, did he touch you? No. Sun Yidan moved closer to Yep Shen, saying, luckily you arrived in time. The company's security team was supposed to come tomorrow. Didn't expect this to happen today. Yep Shen's gaze was icy. Good thing nothing happened. Fire that entire security team tomorrow. I'll have experts come guard this place. I'll handle things here. You go out first. Sun Yidan hurriedly said, he's from the Lei clan. Came to demand 20% of our shares for protection fees. After saying this, Sun Yidan also left. Do you know who I am? Lei Jie didn't get to finish speaking before Yep Shen slapped him. I'm from the Lei clan of Jiangnan. Not even my father has ever hit me. Yep Shen punched him straight in the face. I'm not your father. Lei J covered his face with both hands, screaming, I'm young master Lei. If you dare touch me, my Lei clan won't let you off. Before he finished, Yep Shen's kick sent Lei J flying far away. Ignoring his screams invoking his clan's name, Yep Shen slowly approached, grabbing his hair and viciously tearing out a large patch. Yep Shen coldly said, Today no matter who you are I'll pluck you bald, Lei J. Yep Shen called Deep Lang Thien. As the call connected, he coldly said, In ten minutes, I want the Lei clan gone from Jiangnan province. Remember to have the Lei clan head call that wicked creature before dying. At this time, Lei J slowly crawled up, cursing, Destroy my Lei clan in ten minutes? Who do you think you are? Yep Shen emotionlessly slapped him again. I'm Hunter. My words are law in Jiangnan. Be patient, news will arrive soon. Kneeling on the ground, Lei J stubbornly said, Stop hitting me. My father won't let you off. Just then, Lei J's phone rang. Taking it out, he smiled smugly seeing it was his dear father calling. Lei J jumped up, threatening Yep Shen, now you better stop. Otherwise I'll tell my father everything you've done. Yep Shen indifferently said, Answer it, don't waste your breath. Seeing Yep Shen's calm, worry appeared in Lei Jie's heart. Why was father calling at this time? Could he really have destroyed the Lei clan in 10 minutes? Yep Shen repeated, this is the last call of your life. Answer it. I don't believe you can destroy my Lei clan in 10 minutes. Wait for your company to go bankrupt. Lei Jie yelled defiantly but still shakily answered the call. The phone transmitted, Lei Jie, is this Lei Jie? Lei Jie anxiously said, father. It's me, your son. I'm being bullied. Hurry send someone to save me. Before he finished, the phone roared, wretched beast. Who have you offended? The Lei clan now only has corpses. This is all because of you. At this moment, Lei J sank into despair. A clan's life and death relied on just one sentence. What kind of devil was this? He didn't even dare look Yep Shen in the eye. Noble one, I was wrong. Please spare me. I beg you. Lei J pleaded. Before he could say more, Yep Shen condensed a blade of spirit energy, slashing across Lei Jie's neck. Blood sprayed everywhere. Lei Jie died in despair. Yep Shen's face was icy cold. You dared touch my woman, you don't deserve life. The scene changed to the Jiangnan Province Martial Arts Association. The atmosphere here had become extremely bleak. Zhuang and Gao looked to the martial artists, saying, it's been so many days already. You all assured me yet until now, there's still no news of Hunter. Didn't I say if there were no results, you'd all be expelled from the association? At this moment, an old man stood up and said, Chairman Zhuang, actually we've received intel many times. It's just those who knew the information mysteriously vanished. It's not that we can't find Hunter, but his background is too powerful. Our anger has never diminished but we must continue to investigate the forces behind him. Other than making excuses, what more can we do? The old man was at a loss for words. Just then, someone entered from outside saying, Chairman, there's an important matter. 
Zhuang and Gao's expression was stern. What is it? Can't you see we're in a meeting? The subordinate's face displayed worry. Chairman, outside is a girl claiming to know Hunter's identity. Hearing this, the room erupted in shock. Zhuang and Gao's gaze was fierce, staring at the subordinate. Is that true? Why haven't you brought her here yet? A few minutes later, the subordinate led in a rather pretty girl. Zhuang and Gao looked her over, seeing obvious unease on her face. His tone strict, he asked, you know who killed my son? Su Ningen nodded, quickly introducing herself. I'm Su Ningen of the Su family in Zhang City. My family is currently under threat. If I tell you Hunter's identity, can you help us? Zhuang and Gao approached, gazing intently at Su Ningen. Are you bargaining with me? Su Ningen was frightened, stammering incoherently. Not waiting for her to finish, Zhuang and Gao happily said, As long as you tell me Hunter's identity, from today on you'll be my adopted daughter. Not only will I protect you, many others will work hard for you. I guarantee you a glorious and wealthy life. Hearing this, delight appeared on Su Ningian's face. She then pointed to a photo, saying, I'm 100% certain this person is Yep Shen. He's the top of Zhang City's martial world. Zhuang and Gao stroked his chin. Yep Shen is the one who killed Inspector Kai Fu Chun, but Inspector Kai was only ranked above 300 on the ancestor list. How could Yep Shen's strength be so powerful? Su Ningen hurriedly said, Chairman Zhuang, Yep Shen's strength is unfathomable. My Su family suffered great losses at his hands. Moreover, he has an extremely terrifying backer, the Deep family. Their influence encompasses the entire Wawa. Zhuang and Gao's gaze was questioning. Are you certain? I don't think his strength could accomplish this. Inspector Kai was only ranked above 300 on the ancestor list. Su Ningen immediately took out her phone. If Chairman Zhuang doubts, please look at these photos. They're from when he fought Inspector Lao. It's identical to the photo you have. After observing for a while, Zhuang and Gao's face revealed a vicious smile. It's him, it's this Yep Shen. His back when fighting Inspector Kai is exactly the same. Zhuang and Gao erupted in unprecedented fury. Everyone go find him for me. Even if you must dig up all of Jiangnan, he must be found. I will personally behead Yep Shen. I'll definitely kill you. I'll kill everyone around you. I'll make sure you don't remain intact. Seeing this, a smile appeared at the corner of Su Ningian's mouth. Yep Shen, you saw my Su family dying yet didn't save us. Don't expect to live either. Let's see if you can withstand the anger of Jiangnan's entire martial world. Everyone at the meeting didn't notice Ma Wei Qi's awful expression. His forehead was drenched in sweat. Although Yep Shen planned to show himself at Zhuang and Gao's 60th banquet, this sudden development had him worried Yep Shen wasn't prepared yet. A while later at Ming Shui Biu, Yep Shen received a call that was of course from Ma Wei Qi. Picking up, Ma Wei Qi anxiously said, Sir Yep, big trouble. Zhuang and Gao knows your hunter. He's mobilized all the Martial Arts Association's resources to find you. The news hasn't spread yet so hurry and flee abroad as far as possible. His tone was extremely urgent, greatly worried for Yep Shen's safety. But Yep Shen didn't care at all. Instead, he was somewhat surprised. I'm very curious how he discovered me. Ma Wei Qi hurriedly explained on the phone, just now. A girl named Su Ningen came to the Martial Arts Association with many photos of you. Because of her meritorious deed, Zhuang and Gao has adopted her as his daughter. Yep Shen's eyes flashed coldly. So it was this woman. Yep Shen said, I originally had a principle not to kill ex-lovers but it seems there's one who must die, Su Ningen, and die horribly at that. Yep Shen's gaze turned icy cold yet his face revealed anticipation. Now that my identity is exposed, what's next? The game has only just officially begun. Ruo Shui has returned to the Ha family. With their status, no one would dare touch her. I just need to worry about Sun Yidan's safety now. After thinking for a while, Yep Shen decided to bring Sun Yidan to Hidden Dragon Tower. Standing before the skyscraper, Sun Yidan curiously asked, Little Shen, why did you bring me here? What is this place? Yep Shen didn't reply, only pulled Sun Yidan into the elevator. Sun Yidan was still guessing out loud, are we here to discuss cooperation? I'm not prepared at all though. Yep Shen gently reassured her, don't worry, this is my territory. You mean this entire building is yours? Shock appeared on Sun Yidan's face. You're just teasing me right? At this time, Yep Shen seriously said, 
the situation in Jiangnan is somewhat chaotic now so I need you to stay here a few days. When things settle down, we'll return to the villa. The elevator door slowly opened. Deep Leng Thien was already waiting outside. Seeing Yep Shen, he immediately knelt, respectfully saying, Subordinate Deep Leng Thien pays respects to Master, pays respects to Miss Sun. At this time, countless experts were also present, shouting in unison, Subordinates pay respects to Master, pay respects to Miss Sun. This stunned Sun Yidan, her gaze looking at Yep Shen now held some fear. She wondered if the man before her was still the Yep Shen she knew. Was this the true force behind Tian Zheng group? Sun Yidan didn't look at Yep Shen anymore. She surveyed everyone present. Although not a martial artist herself, she could vaguely sense that these people were all extraordinary and powerful experts, yet they were Yep Shen's subordinates. At this time, Yep Shen slowly spoke, Deep Lang Thien, how are the preparations? Deep Lang Thien respectfully answered, Please rest assured master, everything is ready. Deep Lang Thien was very confident, saying, Please be at ease master. Leave Miss Sun to us. As long as she remains inside, no one can get near her. Satisfaction appeared on Yep Shen's face hearing this. Very good, then I can rest assured to go deal with that trash. The scene changed to the Ha family residence in Jiangnan province. Currently, not a few experts from the Martial Arts Association had arrived. After finding out Yep Shen was Hunter, news of his close ties with Ruo Shui also quickly spread through the association. But as Yep Shen expected, with the Ha family's status, the association didn't dare act rashly. An expert stood outside the Ha residence, shouting, Ha family head, do you know of the relationship between Ruo Shui and that Yep Shen? Did you know he was hunter for a long time already? Ha Jia calmly said, what does my daughter have to do with this? To be honest, I was somewhat suspicious back then whether Yep Shen was involved. But it was just speculation. I didn't want to wrongly accuse an innocent person. The expert impatiently asked, then why didn't you speak up back then? Ha Jia said, even now, I still can't be completely certain it's Yep Shen. I've always looked down on him. How would I know where he is? I have no obligation to help conceal him either. The expert angrily grabbed Ha Jia's collar, his aura erupting. Are you seeking death? Everyone knows this Yep Shen has an intimate relationship with your daughter. Where is she now? Call her out to see me. Ha Jia thought for a bit before speaking. It's true my daughter knows this Yep Shen but she's the fiancé of young Master Tian. How could she have any special ties with Yep Shen? Hearing the names of two influential families, the expert didn't dare act rashly. He could only coldly state, since it's like this, remember to keep your daughter under control. If she secretly helps that sinner Yep Shen, your Ha family will accompany her in death. After leaving this threat, the group of people also quickly dispersed. Only after they all left did Ha Jia secretly breathe a sigh of relief. Luckily Ruo Shui and her mother had returned to her maternal home, now safe and sound. After hearing Tian family's name, the expert's complexion eased somewhat. Inwardly, he thought the Tian family was a top-tier martial family. Even Chairman Zhuang was wary of them to some degree since they were still kin. If it was so, he shouldn't make trouble unnecessarily. Very well. I won't disturb you further but remember to immediately inform us if any news arises, the expert said before leaving. Ha Jia was internally overjoyed. Luckily everything was resolved. Despite his immense wealth, before martial experts, Ha Jia's life and death were just a single word away. The scene shifted to the Chu clan residence in Jiangnan province. Chu Nuo was sitting in a garden pavilion at the main Chu clan complex, holding her phone. Alarm showed in her eyes after finding out Yep Shen's identity as Hunter, that he not only destroyed the Wang clan but also killed Zhuang Nguyen Heap and openly opposed Zhuang and Gao. Chu Nuo suddenly recalled Yep Shen's image, saying her favors were worthless. It wasn't arrogance but madness, looking down on the entire martial world. Just what were you relying on to be so wildly ambitious? Where were you those five missing years? What were you doing? While Chu Nuo pondered, a middle-aged man walked over, respectfully greeting, Greetings young miss, you summoned me? Is there anything? This was Chu Wen Tian, current head of the Chu clan. To outsiders, Chu Nuo was just a clanswoman but in truth, she had a special status only he knew of. Seeing his deferential manner, a smile appeared on Chu Nuo's face. Family head, you're always so courteous to a junior like me. If others saw, it wouldn't be good. 
Chu Wen-tian replied, with no outsiders present, how could I be impolite to young miss? Chu Nuo nodded, her attitude becoming serious. Very well. I called you today because there's an important matter. I've discovered the whereabouts of the sky-breaking sword. It's currently in Yep Shen's hands. Chu Wen Tian cried out in shock before saying, Wait, Yep Shen? Does Young Miss mean that Hunter causing chaos in Jiangnan right now? Chu Nuo nodded. Exactly him. If our Chu clan exerts our full power, what are the chances we can obtain the sword from his hands? Hearing this, Chu Wen Tian frowned in thought before saying, 70%. Zhuang and Gao's ancestor sword was forged by our Chu clan. If Zhuang and Gao is wary enough, he could protect Yep Shen. However, the Zhuang and Chu clans would become adversaries so protecting Yep Shen wouldn't be wise. Chu Nuo indifferently said, we're not protecting him but the sky-breaking sword. You and I both know its value to the clan. Sensing Chu Nuo's determination, Chu Wen Tian respectfully said, then I'll begin making arrangements. First we must see if this Yep Shen accepts or not. I'm guessing he won't dare refuse. Among the many forces in Jiangnan, only our Chu clan can protect him. At this time, in an abode in the capital, Zhang Jian Feng was cultivating. His whole body was covered in a golden armor, continuously absorbing the spiritual qi of heaven and earth. After a period of cultivating, he opened his eyes, sighing, if not for the old fart continuously providing me with those heavenly treasures, my strength wouldn't have progressed this far. Now even ninth place on the old ancestor list should be left behind. Just then, knocks sounded as a man pushed the door open and rushed before Zhang Jian Feng. Zhang Jian Feng glanced at him coldly. How was observing Jiangnan province? The man hurriedly said, reporting to Sir Zhang, big things have happened in Jiangnan. It's been found the one who killed Zhuang and Gao's son and destroyed the Wang clan is that brat Yep Shen. What? Shock flashed in Zhang Jian Feng's eyes. He thought inwardly that he assumed Yep Shen wouldn't have lived long but unexpectedly, he was not only alive but causing such huge trouble. The key was where did he obtain such strength? The young man gloated, Sir Zhang. Zhuang and Gao is currently frantically searching for him all over Jiangnan. I reckon he won't last a few more days. Many families want to present his head as a gift for Zhuang and Gao's upcoming 60th birthday banquet. Anomaly flashed in Zhang Jian Feng's eyes. Although that brat is wicked, he shouldn't die so meaninglessly. Tell Zhuang and Gao I'll handle this matter. Yep Shen is my sworn enemy. Killing him is my business. The young man revealed a disappointed look before leaving to pass on the message. After he left, Zhang Jian Feng snorted. Brat. Just what background are you relying on to dare be so unbridled? Looks like I must make a trip down south. The young man was stunned tentatively asking, does subordinate need to take action? Zhang Jian Feng shook his head. No need to act. He's just a pesky ant. You just need to keep me updated on matters in Jiangnan. Withdraw. After the subordinate left, Zhang Jian Feng seemed to have some idea as a smile appeared on his face. 